The story in this world begins a field in which only red blood can be seen. Some young man is lying on earth because of the wounds he received in battle. His body is completely covered in blood. After he wakes up, he looks around and sees the corpses of people. There were enemies of his loved ones there as well. He is very angry at himself for being so weak and he couldn't do anything about it. This bloody battle involved the elite of Murim and Cheon. This battle resulted in the total destruction of all living things. Absolutely everyone was dead. I wonder who the stranger called Kianma was. It was the demon who descended from the heavens, the founder of the Meijo, the one who colored the world purple with his power, the founder of the demonic sect, Kianma. Through the hellish pain, our protagonist remains kneeling. Every piece of his body emitted such pain, one could die at any moment. At that moment, Chionma speaks to him. He says that it was a great fight, but the end became for both of them. Still, he should have the measles with him. Because thanks to the efforts of all those people, his sword was able to reach him. And he recognizes it saying that his skill is the greatest and existing. But our protagonist didn't want to hear it. Taking his sword in his hands, he just wants to end this battle. Cheonma regrets that he has very little time left. If he had four days, he would have been able to reveal his true identity, which is worthy of being called Cheonma. But he says it's not over because the demons will be reborn, and when that happens, the whole world will screech a leg in front of Mado, and then no one will be able to stop it. Our hero didn't need this stranger's words. He just wanted to take his final leap. Not only did he make his final leap, and was able to cut this stranger apart. Nothing was left in his place but many corpses of his family and enemies. After this battle, he was glad that the war was over, but he also knew that his death was imminent. Even then, he only wondered what would happen to Hwashanam. Looking back, he sees a pile of corpses and says that this place has become the grave of all the followers of the school. The young old ones are all dead, absolutely all of them. The followers of the school were completely wiped out. Only the weakest children survived. Here he loses his last strength and falls to the ground. He thinks that if he had tried harder, he could have saved one life. But it all makes no sense now. And so came the death of the thirteenth disciple of the great school of Hua Zhang. He was not one of the three greatest swordsmen in the world. His name was Cheon Min. After Cheon Meng's death, which threw the whole world into chaos, his body sank into eternal sleep on top of the heads of thousands of demons. After a moment, a picture of a child who was wrapped in a straw figure is seen. There are still apparently many kids who are practicing diligently repeating after the master. Of course, one of them was Keon Man. As a child, of course, he was naughty. Sometimes he was a bully, and because of this, he was always told off. Of course, it was all a memory from his life. Yes, he was a narcissistic fool not worthy of praise just for his innate talent. He was blind and didn't realize that it was Hua Zhan who gave him everything. In his mind, he regretted not practicing enough and not taking his studies seriously. He regrets being so lazy. He says that if he had only taken things seriously, he could have avoided such a terrible end. Suddenly, he sees the silhouette of his teacher who says that this is Hua Shan and that whatever happens, the school will go on living. A moment later, someone kicks our hero's head so hard that he almost passes out. Someone calls him. When he opens his eyes, he sees a boy holding a stick of bamboo in his hand. He asks him why he's sleeping here. He says that everyone is already begging and he's no exception, but the protagonist thinks he's threatening him. Chion Mayan turns to him like a kid and says that he doesn't understand anything and that he should stop waving his sticks around and explain the situation to him first. Chion Meng doesn't understand why this boy is laughing because of his words. After all, he's a noble blade of plum blossom Chion men, and this recruit allows a lot of things. When he swings his sword, our hero thinks he needs to teach him a lesson and plans to block his baton. At the last moment, he realizes he can't reach it and wonders why his arms are so short and how they can be so short in the first place. That's how he gets hit in the back of the head. Of course, from that blow, he goes stupor. And that companion doesn't stop hitting and says that he is going to beat him to such an extent that he won't be able to stand. At that moment, one of the students from the school comes into the room. He's watching this and doesn't understand what's going on. He only hears the sound of a stick hitting him. After this battle, our protagonist sits by the river fixing his appearance. He's angry and says that the next time he sees this kid, he'll wipe him out. But when he looks at his reflection in the water, he sees a small figure, and he doesn't understand what's going on. 
He assumes it's some kind of reincarnation he's heard about in Buddhism. So he turns around and sees a boy and asks him if he's the one who watched him get beaten up. But this boy first asks him his condition. He says that their chief has always been aggressive, but today he got angry. Then Chianmin raises her hand and shows two fingers and says she has just two questions. The first question he asks is, is he a beggar? After receiving an affirmative answer, he was not only upset and angry, rather he was dumbfounded and didn't want to accept that he was a beggar. Then he is created with a second question. He asks if he knows who a Kayonma is. Then that boy answers that Cheonmin has gone crazy and forgotten everything. He says he knows who Cheonma is. He says it's the demon founder of the Meijo who died a hundred years ago. Cheonmin didn't expect such an answer. Especially the word hundred years really hurt him. He sharply takes the boy's sleeves and rephrases the question. He says that he shouldn't lie because the consequences would be very strong. I, the boy says there's no point in lying to him, and answers that it's really been one hundred years since the death of this demon. After receiving this answer, our protagonist remains stunned. He doesn't understand why he wasn't reborn after death immediately. He feels like he's alone in the world. When he asks what happened to Huashan, but that boy didn't know anything about that word. Then he says that if that boy is a beggar, he means he's from the Gabang school. But how can he not know the nine great schools of Huangshan martial arts? Then that boy replies that there is no Huangshan in the network of the nine great martial arts schools of Gabang, Shaolin, Kantong, Zhongnan, Kunlun, Zhongsan, Wudang, Emei, Danzan, and Henam. Hearing the boy's answer, our protagonist does not believe his words. He can't imagine that among the nine great schools there is no Huangshantian. He interrogates this boy because he can't believe that among the nine martial arts schools there is now no Huangshuantia. When he says that he seems to have heard there is such a place in Shangxi province, he says that yes, it is in the territory of Shanxi province. That's right. But he certainly hasn't heard that it's in the nine martial arts schools. Then after thinking for a few seconds, he says that Huashan school was destroyed. Our protagonist doesn't believe his words since his favorite school was the eleven great ones in this province. And it couldn't just disappear. It is one of the three most famous schools in the world along with the Udan and the great Nangong clan. The fact that it disappeared is very, very strange. When he does, Sergei lets this boy go and tells him he won't believe it until he sees it with his own eyes. Then he decides to go to Mount Huashan to find out what was and is going on there. Then that match tells him to go collect alms so he won't get beaten up again. Then he yells for that boy to shut up and just listen to what he's saying. And he says he's going to ask him a bunch of questions and he has to answer him calmly. When he asks a weird question like what's the name of the owner of this body? That the beggar doesn't have a name and I tell him to call himself whatever he wants. But he's usually called Chosam. He ironically says that's an appropriate name for a beggar and asks his age. To this, the boy replies that a poor man, how do you know your age? When he says everything and asks about the guy who beat him up, then he says his name is Kuchil and the leader's name is John Powell. When he hears what he needs to hear, he says he pays double for mercy and tenfold for offense. Then he tells the tired boy to memorize Cheonmin's name. And when they meet again, he is sure to cry to him for his kindness. And at the end, he asks which side of Mount Huajan is. He runs at a speed faster than his body. He says that he must run. He remembers that in his past lives, he never rode a slow vehicle like a horse. Yet after running a few kilometers, he falls flat on his face. He is upset that he has such a dead body, and with this body he will never reach his destination. He says that this is absurd and he might die on the way before he has time to get a glimpse of Shanxi province. Then he tries to start talking about some grand plan of his. Turns out we just need to get physical training for martial arts. About himself, he says that the common man cannot even imagine how amazing and possible it is. He thinks that at such a young age, he should have time to do everything and lay the foundations for himself. And it is necessary to train when the coach demands it even when you are lazy and difficult. Even when you have talent, you can't defend at such a high level without hard work. So after that, he finds a great place to train and plans to start all over again with this new body. The first thing he does is position himself in lotus pose. Thinking about the many theories and advanced martial arts techniques he has acquired during his past life. He knows all the martial arts and theories from Hua Shan, and he also knows a dozen different breathing techniques to cultivate qi. And if not limited to the Hua Shan school, he knows twice as many, and of these, he decided to master the principle of the six interactions. 
This technique is very special because in the first year of his school, every beginner starts his journey with this technique of six interactions. Although this technique does not increase the strength of the trainee so dramatically, but you can fully feel his body. And now he begins to purify his body with chi energy. This sensation is like sifting out the shifting threads from a giant bush of cloth. A complete cleansing of unstable energy if one gathers all the cleansed Dantian energy. Then it will become the foundation and guide that will open up a new world to the user. Small, at full energy, it seems like a snowball. But it's a raging torrent that no one in the world can stop. He's down because he's using up all his energy. He's angry because it's no use if he wants to use that leg right now. Then he remembers his teacher who said he had to use his brain before he did anything else. He's angry that at this rate he'll never get to his destination. In some village, a bunch of people are haggling, some are offering goods, and some are buying what they need. In short, there's life in this village. In some alley, two boys approach some man saying that there is some vagrant who is intercepting their alms. They say it's a small child, so they throw all the coins to him. To this, the ungroomed man says they should make life difficult for him because he deserves it. When they point the finger at this little kid who's been intercepting their alms, then they turn to this kid, of course they use a couple bad words to address him. At snack time, he turns around and with that disgruntled look on his face, answers what needs to be said. This boy's manner of speech really hurt them. This time, their tone has increased several times they are already serious against him. He says that he does not know from whom he got permission to beg here, but since he is young, he will let him go. In addition, he says he has to give back what he's collected today, and then he can go. Taking away good food? You beggars have no conscience, says our protagonist. He stands up abruptly and checks his physical condition after his snack. He says that he hasn't recovered from the energy yet, but it will be enough. He says that he now understands how to control this body and that they attacked him all at once because he was too lazy to deal with them. During the time when the man is drained, he also says that he's not in the best shape so he can't hit properly and that they wouldn't mind if he beat them up a little bit. Then the man says his patience was wearing thin and our protagonist has shattered that edge with his statement, so he orders them men to beat the crap out of him. So one of them immediately swings his arm, but he did not expect that this little boy would quickly and cleverly dodge this blow. After this little maneuver, he hits the man in the face with all his might. From this blow, he falls a few meters. Afterwards, he shouts that he is a grateful plum blossom blade of the great Huashan school. He had punished those bums after all and put them in their place. What they are saying is their fault after all. Just so I don't distract them from their minutes of questioning and talking, our protagonist asks them a question. He asks if there is a quick way to get to Shanxi. They are surprised by such a question. They say that if they knew such information, they wouldn't live like beggars and asks him to ask another. He says they probably misunderstood each other. Grabbing the man by the sleeves, he says that if they meet again and when he asks a question, absolutely any time all must reach a clear answer, if he does not want to die. Then he lets go and says that if they understand, they should get the hell out of here. After that, these rascals run with all their might to avoid getting even more from our hero. Misty Skies Somewhere in the Mountains begins the next story. Some man is probably the foreman you hear knocking at the door and tells that man to come through. Then some young man says there's nothing wrong, but a child asks to see you. At these words, the master is surprised because it was a child who wanted to meet him. This child was, of course, our protagonist. He greets and says his name and says that he wants to join Hua Zhan. The master addresses this young man as Un Am and asks him what he said that they are no longer accepting new members. And in turn, he says that even after what he said, this boy did not stop. They look at this boy's face and see only a smile. This, of course, caused some emotion in these people. But actually, the main character was furious, and to know the reason, one has to be transported back a few moments. After such a huge journey, it still reached its destination. He didn't have the strength to even walk and take a single step. The shortcut that the beggars had given him didn't help him much, but in the end, he managed to get there on his own. But still, he started to climb the huge and long stairs that lead to the top of the mountain. He says that whatever it takes, nothing is impossible if you have the willpower, and he will definitely climb this mountain. When he does climb the mountain, he notices that the wooden sign that was at the entrance has disappeared somewhere. It just wasn't there, and it made him very angry. He remembers that Sanyang wiped it down every morning, and he doesn't understand where it went. 
and just as he's screaming and expressing his emotions, a young man enters from the cabin. When he sees a silhouette, he's surprised that it's a little boy. He asks him if he came alone and how he managed to climb the mountain alone. Then he tells him to listen to what he says and asks him to answer one question. He asks if he is Dao Song Huang Shan and says that he has been looking for him. Yet the young man answers the question in the affirmative. The boy rejoices at this answer as he hoped the school had not fallen apart yet. Then the young man tells him to go ahead, but they are not accepting outsiders at the moment. But he is hardly in a condition to come down the mountain now. Still, they will not leave those who have come to Huashan on the street. He says that it is very cold here at night and that he should come to visit them. When our protagonist entered his homeland, he was deeply disappointed. He wondered why the training ground was covered with earth. Where did the blue jasper pavement disappear to? He thinks they probably needed the money, so they sold it, looking at this fashion. The man says that it's a great spacious playground. Our boy notices another thing that was dear to him is missing from the place. It was the golden palace that enlightened this whole area. He asks why the place looks a little empty. He asks why there was nothing there in the first place. To this question, the man replies that you have noticed that there used to be a palace on that empty place. He also says that he's too experienced for this story, and he's ashamed to talk about it. He says he can't put it into words. Then he shows this boy the oil palace. Our boy is happy that at least it's there. When he does go into the palace, it's the same thing. It's been completely emptied out. He says that all the pictures, pendants, and scrolls have disappeared somewhere. And he notices that you're missing the most important thing. He starts looking for some flower that was standing by the locker. He angrily asks where the flower is, and the master is that this boy knows about this thing. He remembers some strange white metal plum, and he says that it was sold at some point. He says that it was of no use anywhere. Yes, and he was killing it from the general interior. He also said that the merchant offered a good sum for it, and they sold it. All those statements killed our hero. It turns out the white plum is a relic of this school just like the Sword of the Celestials. It doesn't shine like the gold that carries the pure waters of Huang Xin. He doesn't understand how such a thing could be sold. That you have to break it all up quickly. And it's easier for this master to meet with Jan Moon. He asks them to accept him into the Huang Shan school. He didn't care about anything. His main goal was to join the school. And so back to the present, they are all gathered and looking at each other. The main mass asks about our protagonist's intentions then asks if he knows what this school represents. This our protagonist replies that he knows absolutely everything. So our protagonist thinks that they will not take such a stranger so easily, but still she has a prepared plan. He says about some plan that a man fell down the mountain and was spotted by a logger passing by. The traveler decided to patch up Cheon Jin, but early on the cuts were deep, so he had to delay. And in gratitude for his rescue, Daos took the woodcutter as his apprentice, teaching him the techniques of Huang Shan. And he is Qian Men, the descendant of this woodcutter. But the biggest plus is that he can adjust his distribution. If this woodcutter is my grandfather, then I'm on the same level as Jiang Mun. So he is ready and can start refusing and asking A reasons. He is ready for all questions. Then this old master answers that he accepts it just so accepts it. This simple answer surprised our hero very much, and he asks why he accepts it so easily. To this the old master replies that if he wants it, so be it. Then the young master says that you said that we will not accept anyone. No, the old master replies that he has changed his mind and will accept the boy. He says anyway, this boy knows our school. That's why he came all this way. With a smile on his face, he says that they have no right to do that, since this boy has come all this way to meet them, and he says that they have nothing precious to chase away the mole. He tells his youngest to make him a bed and prepare the rite of passage. He agrees and goes to do as he is told. Then he is presented with the room and clothes of a third-generation disciple. When he is in the room, he notices that it is a reception room. He does not realize that this place is now being used as a temporary residence for those who have not yet been initiated. Usually in this school, right after initiation, the student takes a room close to the teacher most likely so that the teacher can teach the student everything he knows. As our protagonist walks around studying the past dwelling place, he hears a strange voice behind him. When he turns around, some strange stranger asks who he is and what he needs in a strange room. Around this boy gathers a lot of the same young students of this school. It turns out this student's name is Ghoul. 
He explains this noise by saying that this little boy was snooping in his room. He also tells his senior to check this boy. All this is heard by some senior of this school. He speaks to everyone and tells them to keep quiet. He says that practice isn't over yet, and they're already making a mess. It turns out one of the masters and all the students apologize profusely. Absolutely everyone bows their head to the master and apologizes again. The only one who didn't apologize was our hero. Then the master asks the name of this cocky boy. He responds by saying his name is Kaon Man. From the fact that he hasn't heard that name until then, he assumes he's new to the house of white plum blossoms. He says that it's late and he should rest and says that he mustn't forget to come to practice. He tells everyone else to come downstairs. Absolutely everyone immediately obeys the master's orders. Then one of the students turns around and it was that boy who made a big fuss about nothing. He says he'll deal with him later and I'll be sure to punish Chian Man. Our protagonist didn't react to that. He just stayed in the room. And so the night came, it was a large room, more like a building built long ago. But still there were candles burning inside. Inside the room, there was a very interesting conversation going on. That disciple tells Chung Mung not to play the fool and take off his clothes. He explains that this way men become closer, and our protagonist should dance naked while being beaten. What they don't say is that it strengthens the bond between him and his elder. All these words hurt our protagonist a lot. Then Chion Man asks about Counselor Un Am, and that boy says that Counselor doesn't practice after the first half of the day. This arrogant guy says that he's fed up with Kaon Man and he's going to start by giving him a beating. He just finished saying his last sentence, but out of nowhere, a piece of paper flies into his face. When it hit so hard, it shook the roof of this building. The shockwave engulfed the entire roof. No one, absolutely no one, expected this outcome. It was evident from all the eyes that saw it. Cheon men sealed that poor guy on the roof. Everyone was shocked because it was done by a rookie and with one more punch. This time, our protagonist began his instructive change to the type of elders. Absolutely everyone recognized Chion Mung as the oldest after that beating. Of course, that's partly because they didn't want to get punished next time. He calls the jerk and asks a few questions about what's going on in Hua Shan now. And then he quietly replies that he can ask anything he wants. The first question he asks is about the heavenly golden palace. Doesn't ask why that school is in such a mess now. That boy then asks if our boy knows about the Plum Blossom Ball. Chion Min answers that of course he knows, because it was him too. According to the elders, the Plum Blossom Holy Sword played a major role in defeating Chun Ma. But right after that, the Heavenly Demon Sect went on a rampage and made their way to Zhong Yan. And for some reason, they reached Hua Shan and burned it down. Because of the damage they had done, they still hadn't returned to their former greatness. Then the protagonist thinks to himself that the reason why this school has fallen into disrepair is himself. Taya Flumox's ball technique has no strong fundamentals. Without them, it is extremely weak. There will most likely be no problem even if you get rid of Hua Shan's technique. This sword technique is terrible. It's not worth it. So it should probably be discarded, answered the scale on the hero. That would cause some problems because it's a technique of our ancestors. Why don't you just take it out of the library, said the headmaster. After all this talk, they come to a common conclusion that they will do it. The master turns to Keon Man and begins his speech by saying that he didn't call him here today just for this question. He says it's time for him to get his students and asks how he would train them. The joyful Chung Mung says that he would just beat them first, and when they are on the verge of life and death, he will surpass himself. After that, it turns out So Hyun Jang Moon never offered him any more disciples. As he was resting and lying down, some junior approaches him. He says that Counselor An Um has summoned him to the training ground and said that he should definitely be at today's training. In the training area, all the students repeat the movements of the headmaster who teaches them everything he knows. He shouts for everyone to get their blades ready for future training. Everyone finds their pose and is ready to repeat after the master. All this training drama is seen by our protagonist and his man standing nearby. They are just watching, but at this point, our protagonist is very upset and wonders what kind of sword technique is this. It's like he's saying it's a load of crap. To which the master replies that the technique your elders are practicing is called the ball balance technique. And this technique is the foundation of this Huashan school. Cheon Men appears that this technique is the basis for Gor Hua techniques. He doesn't understand what these students are doing. 
He's in his mind saying it's only stopping the kids from stopping harder. It's like learning the alphabet through a complicated book. In addition, he says that this technique will only get them half a step further, so it's practically nothing. And what good will they get out of it without the proper fundamentals? And even if they do, they have the wrong technique, the wrong construction, and even their basic foundation is not quite right. Then he asks one of the students what they are taught here besides this ball technique. He replies that after learning the balance ball technique, they learn the seven sword sage technique. Then they learn the last technique of the house of plum blossoms and begin to learn the sword technique of the little chin. And only after this whole, they are allowed to learn the secret technique of Hua Shan and the sword technique of Tai Yi Flumox. Then he remembers that they had once discussed this technique and they had once agreed that they would exclude this technique. He is very angry that they still didn't eliminate this technique, and instead of learning the sword technique of the 24 plum blossom movement, they started learning something that won't help them in any way. That's when he addresses the past bully, hearing Cheon Men's voice, Tot immediately reacts, and addresses him as Mr. Junior. Then he asks for a follow-up so that he can gather everyone in front of the house by 5 a.m. with white plum blossoms. He says something to make him listen carefully. Next, he says that he has prepared for each one five pieces. And he asks if he has to make five each. If it's really necessary, of course, he'll do it and do it right. And our protagonist likes his enthusiasm and finally lets the poor guy go. The current Hua Shan has no tech, no wealth, no talent. And he says it's no wonder this school collapsed so easily. And the only thing that he can help this talent, the current students, are third rate. They don't look talented in any way. But as we know, the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. And educating useless seniors will be his first goal, because we all need to change ideologies to find the right direction. One of the elders is unhappy that some junior makes his elders come whenever he wants, and the others all think they must not have been with them last night. Then some man comes out of the shadows and says he's the junior they're talking about. You make your elders get ready so early, how dare you, says one of them. Then he says he's sorry and the elders must have misunderstood him. And as an apology, why don't they have a chat in the boarding house? So he gathered his elders and at the same time praised them for coming over to the boarding house. Here, our protagonist has gathered absolutely all the elders into this building. Then this Machugan notices that this boarding house seems to be wobbling. After a few seconds, all the elders run out of it, all of them. They were frightened by something strange. They ran out and got into formation. They were noisy because of that. They got a remark from the main character. He happily and respectfully says that every morning at this time there will be training. And with respect, my elders. Early in the morning, the master gets up and wonders why the students have not come for greetings, and he assumes that they are all still asleep. He justifies this topic that they have a newcomer and rather, they are tired after the visitation ritual or something like that. He's serious about teaching them a lesson. He thinks that if Joe Gould suddenly turns out to be a discharged beast, Yoon Jung shouldn't have let him overdo it. After a moment, we see the surprised face of the martial arts master. He sees so many disciples who were exhausted. All of them were asking for help from him. Many didn't even have the strength to stand up and greet him. He is surprised and shouting asks what happened here. But no one dared to answer him. Even to the master, they did not say a single word. He thinks what must be the reason for them not even telling me on Woon. Then the master sees a stiff and exhausted Joe Gully. He says it's not important, it's who's behind him. He sees a newcomer, which surprised him very much. A little boy lifting a huge load on his shoulders. Turns out he's not just lifting, he's squatting. And this time he did 10.085, exactly to one. He looks at this boy and notices that he's so exhausted that his legs are shaking just from standing there. He yells at the others to get him some water now. Our boy says not to worry about him and that she's fine. When he has quenched his thirst, the master asks for details. He asks what happened to make all the students so worried. Cheon Mung replies that it's nothing special, and it's a little exercise they decided to do every day starting today. And because it's the first day, the guys are overdoing it a bit. Looking at the other students, he suspects that they were not full of energy. He wonders if they're all still here, and asks himself how scared they are of this kid. He also thinks how dare they call themselves disciples of the Huashan sect and yet fear him. He thinks he should probably reprimand him. Changing his tone, he starts talking to Cheon Man. He starts reprimanding him, saying how dare he deviate from the existing strict set of rules in the White Plum Blossom House. He asks who told him it's okay to sacrifice sleep for training. 
To this, our protagonist responds positively and simply nods to his request. The master is surprised by this answer, as he did not expect to hear these words. Then he dismounts from his horse and says that he will now press the point that he threatened his elders. Seeing the boy's face like that, he manages to keep his emotions to himself. He says to himself that it makes them look bad. He thinks that the third grade students already look like complete idiots for teaching the newcomer, and he in turn looks like the biggest idiot for teaching them. So his musings are interrupted by our protagonist. He's only asking for one month. He says that he guarantees that in one month there will be a very good result. He says that he appreciates the determination of his elders, and despite the hardships of this training, none of them have ever complained. When the master thinks he must have meant that no one would dare complain, and he thinks to himself, where did he come from? He's come and taken over all the third graders so he can use his authority to teach others. He says that for him, for our hero, it will be easy, and asks why he already proposes a training session every morning. In turn, our protagonist replies that they can become stronger by learning from the great Sosuk, but they can speed it up if they offer more effort. And that's why they should sacrifice some of their sleep time for training, and they should spend more time training. But he says that's not the most important thing. Then with curiosity, the master asks what's most important. Our boy replies that it is courtesy, and he will take his master's words as the will of heaven. He doesn't look down on his elders, but maintains courtesy for the good of the hierarchy. And that's the perfect deal, thinks the master. In a second, you guys have volunteered for the dawn training. I am extremely impressed with your determination, said the master. He also says that if they keep trying so hard, they will achieve unprecedented success, and asks them to continue in the same vein. Surrounded by his students, the master separates himself from them, and they in turn give him a helping hand. All these words are heard by our hero. He says there was no such order to kill or anything like that, and he asks why they're screaming like that, and he says that if they go on like that, they'll have another negotiation at the boarding house. A few days later, we see our hero sitting in lotus pose. He's practicing his Dantian technique, which in turn cleanses his body. Not only is he practicing, and he reasons that he's tired these days. Firstly, the white plum blossom house, as he thought it was more of a dormitory, this was due to the lack of people for the contracting of disciples and masters. Second is the sect leader and his bloodlines, putting aside their personalities. They are simply weak. Their strength is not even comparable to the sex of my time. Because the masters are weak in proportion to that, so are the disciples. Besides, most of the third grade disciples join the sect just to connect. But he's saying what's important now and what does it matter because Great Chung Meng is here at this moment. To become the strongest sect that has been and will be in the future. This is an unusual dream is just a goal our protagonist thinks to himself. After the training session, a lot of students are probably all gathered in the canteen and are having a big lunch. During the snack, one of them merges and tells all the others that they shouldn't train so much even to not be able to eat properly. He asks Joe Gull to say all this. To top it off, he says that he hasn't been able to use chopsticks for days, and it's driving him crazy. Joe Gull gets angry and says that they talk too much. He says that he and Jongmen are not errand boys. He says he's not avoiding or hiding from you or anyone else, so why don't you go tell him what you think? Toward evening, Joe Gul and So Yen meet outside near the Sakura trees. Joe Gul then starts to give him questions. He asks what he thinks about Huashan. To this, the other says that it's a complicated question and can't give an answer right away. Joe Gul says that as soon as he decides to return to his hometown, everything will be over for him. Joe Gul asks his friend that didn't you plan to spend your whole life in the Huashan sect? So Yen answers in the affirmative. Joe Gul confesses that he thought the Huashan sect was over, and suddenly says that he should show great respect and not follow saying this with such a simple face. But then he replies that he has changed his mind. It's all because of this newcomer who everyone thinks is a master. After he showed up, even though we were forced, he realized something after the training. He says that he realized he'd never put himself in that condition. He'd tried to lift weights he'd never even dreamed of. He's been working out like hell. But this kid pretended he wasn't tired when his deadlifts were so much bigger than ours. And at the end, he says he wants to learn to do the same thing. He's saying he wants to try his best to become a master at a level that the whole world will know. Smiling, his friend says that he shares his idea and will go all the way to achieve this dream. He says that if things get difficult, he will continue and follow the straight path. 
These twosomes are of course followed by our protagonist. He thinks to himself that they're ready, and he's happy to like them very much. He reflects on the fact that even Ag Gamma was easy to convince, but he still has challenges. Then he hears some voices. There were heard the words, Come out here, cult leader. Yes, Lydia, all you must come out. Someone slams the door very hard, and it's easier to open the door immediately. Some serious people with torches on their hand hacks the door, and something else goes to this room. Screaming, they tell the cult people to go outside. They're telling everyone to get out of the way. And we told them yesterday that they can't do that here, and they have no right to do that. Our boy is watching. He's wondering what's going on here. He's very happy about these guests because they ruined what he cared about. These people say that they have waited too long and they don't have that much time and ask for a refund. This whole situation has dumbfounded the protagonist as he doesn't understand how they came down to such a state that they owe money to such people. These people say what doesn't the head have any shame and yell for him to go outside now and do what needs to be done. When the head of the Huashan sect comes out and says that what brought them to such a remote place so late at night, Chung Meng watches all this and says that there is no doubt that he is indeed the head of the Huashan sect, since his every move and word drains a ton of aura layer. Then I these people say why is he trying to act so calm, but they don't realize that this master is just trying to act calm. Then one of the main ones, the owner of the Kong Pavilion, asks the head's business. He addresses him with seriousness and respect. Then the master says that he didn't expect the owner of the Kong Pavilion to come here, when the man says that he is embarrassed to visit him on such an occasion. He says that he did not want to climb this mountain again, but not a few people have asked him to do so and ask him to understand. He says that the master understands perfectly well what these people want, he says that the terms they agreed on have long since expired. The foreman just reacts calmly. He says that they have already tried to understand the situation in this sect, but if they had followed the contract, they would have had to add half of it to the amount in the contract. But still, this school saved their lives. And because of that, they're trying to be as lenient as possible, and he gives them seven days on the condition that if they don't make it in time, they confiscate the Huashan sect temple. Then some strange sound comes from behind them, and they all turn around, then some kid. I don't say what they shouldn't let the kid see. Then he asks his elders what happened and who those people were. Then that boy replies that they are merchants from Huashan and Prefecture. Joe Ghoul intervenes in the conversation and asks him if the Huashan Am structure is not the name of the village under the mountain, when he replies that he's right and says that he remembers all this from when he was trading with his father. Joe Ghoul interjects that the Huashan sect borrowed money from the merchants, and so the boy says what he doesn't know. He says what he knows, and the owners of the Kanji Pavilion. He is the owner of the Huashan Tai Pavilion in Huashan Am Prefecture, and he says that he is the owner of the largest pavilion. He also adds that he participates in many events as a rich merchant. When our protagonist asks Te Hua, when they look at our boy's face, they are startled as they see only disgust and anger there. It turns out he's angry because the original Tai Huashan pavilion belonged to the Huashan grid. Then he grabs this poor boy's sleeves and yells that this fired man is really the owner of Tai Hua, and also yells that he is also trying to confiscate the temple of the Huashai sect just for lending us money. When we let go, he starts to think and says that it is very strange that the new owner of Tai Hua volunteered to be the first to lend money to the Huashan. Only then does he realize that it was all planned. Then he turns to Joe Ghoul and asks him to bring those things he told him before. Even for a second, immediately, he hurries to bring the thing he asked for. Then he brings some clothes and is asked what he's going to do with it. Then he starts talking about some Buddhist literature. There's a saying that killing someone is like killing your ancestor. And if you meet, I will kill him. If you meet your ancestor, kill him. To reach the highest level of the Tao, you must violate the very path of the Tao. And he says that he's going in search of the true path. And the others see this and laugh to themselves that this little master was born as a clown. They ask that he's not going to a sect temple. Then with one swing, our protagonist leaves the temple and goes on his way. At the feast, they discuss that the cult leader looked very puzzled. They laugh in his face. And they say that they gave them one last chance. He reasoned that how much do they think they owe us over 100,000 yang? They also say he was even more surprised to see the owner of Kong Pavilion with us. Then it says that even though he's a profit-seeking merchant, he's sorry to do this to them. After all, their relationship has been going on for generations. 
Then one of them says that they've already done everything they can and how much money they've already been given. He also says that this man is very generous for this sect, which in turn does not give and does not keep its word. Some voice says that they are so carefree they can live such a simple life amazing. War all you Huashan should not be looked down upon. Their true strength is not in combat power. What is most to be feared from this sect is its history. There was no one in the Shangxi province who didn't have ties to Huangshan. However, they were now greatly weakened. They had become as tender as a duck's skin that was torn by the pressure of the sticks. Then another one of the members of this assembly asked the chief what he will do with the temple when they confiscate it. And he adds that it will be hard to sell it. It turns out to be the counselor of the pavilion chief. He also asks to take something else from them. Then the pavilion chief replies that the value of the temple is higher than he can imagine. Although it looks old at first glance, he can guarantee that it will be worth a lot. Then they ask what exactly he's talking about. He gets angry and says that he can't talk about it now, but they can use Huashan's enemies to their advantage. So he asks how many sects they think would want this opportunity. To spend a substantial amount of money to rebuild the temple and destroy the Huashan sect, and says they will all get paid for it and not to worry about it. Everyone is absolutely amazed at how insightful this man is. Then they don't say that everything is fine and that they should raise a glass to the owner of the Congo Pavilion. They start celebrating to the point of drinking whatever they want and eating whatever they like. After this celebration, some person comes outside and says that he feels just fine. It was one of the members of the pavilion, and he says that if he manages to get very much money from Hua Shan, he will have enough for the rest of his life. And he says that the pavilion owner Kong is very meticulous when it comes to money. He says he feels great and the moon is so bright. When he looks up at the sky, he doesn't see the moon and wonders where it is and thinks it's a new moon, and assumes he must be a historian on the main street at this hour. After a while, his eyes go dark and the image seems blurry. Yet after a few seconds, concentrating, he still has tea from one person. He says that it is like a descended picture of a robber and says that he is very small. Then he wonders if robbers don't wear clothes like that. Then he assumes it's some little boy who's trying to play a trick on him. Well, then this man starts his conversation. He says he's not interested in the money, and he demands that he answer a couple questions and go home unharmed. When he says that it's not that he doesn't want to answer questions, and he says that he doesn't have much of an election. He says he has quite a few friends, and they won't let him go out alone any time at any hour they'll be with him. Our protagonist looks at these people and assumes they're high-class calves. Then this man tells his bodyguards to just catch this man and tie him up for questioning. And says he doesn't like violence, and after a while he thinks his guards are overdoing it. When he hears a huge explosion from something big. When he turns around, he says not to shout that he told them to let them talk, not kill. Then he notices that all his guards were already dressed by this man. He just couldn't believe that this little creep would defeat his guards. Then our protagonist says that people should really listen to what they're told and do what they need to do. He tells him to go with him to work out some issues. He also says that if he serves him and stays quiet, he won't get hurt, grasping that if he answered his questions the first time he wouldn't touch him, but he decided to resist. He tells him not to worry and will make sure he can at least talk. He dressed him so that his face turned red like a tomato and his eyes were like raisins. With anger and our protagonist says why he can't tell at once and why he has to beat him to such an extent. Then he finds out that Huashan owes at least a hundred thousand yen. This was suspicious as it was a very huge sum even for this time. Then our protagonist says that if he rips him off now, even so he won't be able to collect that amount. Then he says that all how can they claim that almost 100.000 ruined in the school, they could lend such a huge amount of money. Then this fatso says that it's all about interest rates. It turns out they lend at high interest rates, and if the loan interest keeps going up. And after that, the interest rates of the main loan seems to be something insignificant. Even the main character hears it and is absolutely annoyed by his whole statement. With anger, he hit this man on the head would hit so powerful that his head would respond a few meters down. Then he says what he heard, that he is the owner of a Juan cotton shop. This cotton shop was one of the businesses of this area. All profitable businesses belong to Huashan. He also says that thanks to this school, it was able to grow to the level of such a city. If not for it, it would have been a godforsaken village. He hears that the board of directors was handed over to trusted individuals. Most likely when Huashan went into decline, they took over the business. 
The protagonist hears a strange voice behind him. Somebody was calling him names, but he didn't care. He wanted to get it all out of the bastard. Then this man says that judging by his skill, our protagonist is no ordinary warrior, and he asks who he is. He says that in front of him stands one of the strongest warriors named Die Hard, and he must know that name. The protagonist apologizes and says that his knowledge is very poor, and why even if he recognizes his name, he says he must know who will die by his sword. To this our protagonist says that he fainted from a single blow, and it is not for him to say such a thing. After a moment, the man points his weapon at our hero's side. Our protagonist just stands there and thinks it's obvious that he has a powerful family behind him, but with his skill and speed, it's silly to compare him to our protagonist. Then our protagonist gets into position and makes a huge swing with his sword. Then he calmly blocks the man's blow, leaving his sword in front of him. Then our protagonist says that they have a huge difference in experience because he still has the memories of the noble blade plum blossom blossom in him. And if he's not strong enough, he should just use his opponent's strength. He somehow throws his opponent so far away that he flies a few meters away. Then he wields his sword around him, creating an abra that throws all objects away from him. Turns out this was the second style of the 24 Palm Plum Blossom Sword, and the full name is Plum Blossoms Bloomed Again. After that, he overpowers his opponent in an instant and throws his sword towards him. After this fight is over, he somehow notices this man in a green robe. This man says that he admires his technique and whether this gentleman can take him as an apprentice. On this, our protagonist was not at all ready. He was surprised by the insolence of this man as he himself attacked and asks for a favor. In fact, this man meant that he would like to learn the secrets of such techniques, and in such difficult situations was able to stand up for himself. After these conversations, there were several minutes of silence as they evaluated and analyzed each other. After that, the man asked if he was a disciple of Joe John by chance. This school is one of the great schools at the moment, and it has a very deep and long history. Our protagonist happily replies that he is a disciple of this great temple, and completely agrees with the man's assertion. And at this moment, the Huashan school was waiting for our hero for a long, long time. These were his students, maybe we can call them as friends of our protagonist. Since the moment of departure of our hero, they waited for him near the door, because on the one hand, they were afraid that he will be noticed by the master, on the other hand, they were worried. They hoped that nothing happened to our protagonist and that he came back in time before departure. Here, finally, our protagonist walks into his school, a former school that was once one of the great, maybe the greatest school of all time. Then the two of them ask what happened during his time out. The main character answers that he had a heart-to-heart -heart talk with his friend about the money he gave him for the road. Remembering what happened, he is glad that this man did not learn the whole truth about him and glad that he was able to outsmart him. When he thinks what time was the great plum blossom, he is no longer the symbol of Huashan. However, this man will see in this area and is still alive. And then after seeing his special style, he could not even recognize this school. At this point, he is approached by his friend who asks why he left the school. And our hero replies that children don't need to know about it. To this, they reply that he himself is a child. Then our protagonist says that no matter what it is necessary now to gather and train. Then our protagonist on rain, snow, or wind from today, they will not miss any training, though snow will cover everything even though it will hit. Even though it's snowing, even so they still have to train every day. After hearing the whole motivational speech, they were totally motivated, and his friend says he's going to get everyone together and start practicing now. To this, the other says that the training can only be organized by the master or our protagonist, because if they try to organize themselves, no one will listen, and because of this, we'll need a master or our protagonist. On these statements of our protagonist says that he will definitely be with them someday to organize training. Then he thinks that how to deal with the financial situation of this school. So somehow a huge amount of money cannot be borrowed from others in a short time. While thinking he also thinks about some people, these people are certainly the organizers of this financial fraud. Even so, if everything is true on the surface, it cannot be proved in any way it is necessary to search for some evidence. One of the easiest ways to solve this problem was to destroy the very pavilion where these bad thieves are located. Our protagonist thinks that he could kill them all and thus solve this difficult problem from a financial point of view. After thinking of all the options, he comes to the thought that it would look strange, and since a little boy destroyed such a big building and such strong people, and of course it would ruin the reputation of the school. 
Then he remembers his master who used to write some kind of paperwork and go everywhere with it. And usually when he came to him for advice or about something important, his master always hid this book under himself and just did not want to show what is there. It was always interesting for our hero. He thinks that it can somehow help in this situation, since in this book can be written the whole history of financial or historical events. He also remembers that his master always kept all the documents in one place that was hidden from everyone. But he assumes that most likely this place will be somewhere underground and will be very well guarded, and of course this place should not be far from the school. He remembers that there were rumors that the entrance to this dungeon is at the house of the representative or master. This thought turns out to be very good information for him and makes him very happy. After thinking about it for a few moments, he suggests that it is most likely to be inside the hill, as it should be close to the new master, but should not be visible to the eyes of ordinary people. He says that's a great idea, and he'll have to move out to find it. He says that if he finds the treasure, he will tell the head of the treasure and runs there without breaking his arms. So he starts exploring the place near the huge hill around the school. He uses his powers to find the empty space, since if he finds this empty space using his power, it will there interfere with the entrance to the dungeons or the dungeon itself. He uses his powers for a very long time and a lot in finding this dungeon, but still he has spent a lot of ki and mana, and his body is completely protected because of that. But he still tries and tries he needs it because this dungeon can save the situation that is this school. This is his last power. He uses it to locate the school. At least somehow he wants to know roughly where it is. Here he spotted some waves around the area where he was checking the location of the treasury. He picks up a pickaxe and starts digging very hard and vigorously underneath himself. Here I discover some strange place that was already created using bricks and some strange materials. He assumes that this is most likely the roof of this dungeon, and underneath it is the dungeon itself. He begins to slowly pick up one brick at a time and clear himself the entrance to this dungeon in anticipation. When he looks through the gap he created, he sees a huge space in which there is not a single person or even a soul. But after some few seconds, he sees a power man. He walks very quietly, and his surroundings are very gloomy. Turns out it was the current master of the school. Our protagonist is surprised that the master and yet he did nothing to solve this problem. Then he sees a cracked wall he assumes is the entrance to the dungeon. When he sees that this wizard is doing something, he learns that the wizard is unable to do anything, as he simply lacks the power. This school is collapsing, and there is no avoiding it. The ignorant state is falling apart, and the school management is unable to do anything about it. Seeing the school collapsing, which once read into his life and unable to do anything about it, feels his heart thinks our protagonist and about himself and the master. Looking at his trembling hand, he says that the chapter can't share this with anyone, as the head is the one who should be a support for his students, and so in this place he is left alone with his pain and sorrow. A few moments passed, and it was morning, and at that moment the head left for his native school, leaving this case to his fate. Using this moment, our protagonist leaves through this gap he made himself. He is inside the dungeon and looks at the treasure room itself. He comes closer and uses the true power. This power was great even for the master himself as it was the energy key that purifies only powerful fighters of this school. But what was the surprise of our hero after using his powers? This dungeon did not change in any way. Especially nothing happened to the door. He was very surprised because it turns out that the door was made of eternal iron, a material that is more valuable than even gold, and to make an entire dungeon out of it was surprising to our hero. Such a door could only be destroyed by the strongest of wars. Now I see why the head didn't even have the courage to open it, so thought our protagonist. He says to himself that the problem is that even he can't break down this door. He says to himself that his elders didn't have the skill to cut the eternal glands. But if this door and the elders quietly went inside meant a way to open it, then he suggests that he just needs to learn that way. Looking at the pattern on the door, he puts his hands on it and he notices some lines from the sword. Then he notices some patterns on the door and assumes the swords are those of his elders or masters. Then he remembers the name Plum Blossom. 24 palm ball mark is very similar to the Plum Blossom style. This is the mastery of the bamboo leaf, the secret of the Plum Blossom sword art, and this is the principle of the six interactions the picture begins to emerge. And it became clear to him how many steps it is more precisely only by combining the mastery of the six interactions bamboo and the 24 palms will you unlock the true power of the Plum Blossom sword style with the left.
That's the way to open the door. He's figured out the activation method so well, and there's only one problem. He's thinking how to pull it off as it's a challenge. He thinks if he were passed, he would have no problem. But now his body has the usual statistics since he is a teenager, but in his memory stored with the technique, and he can use it. But this body does not have enough energy to make up for all the stages at once. He says that there is always a way out of this situation, and he will do it for that. He expects it to take about a month to recover. He says he'll use just a little bit to stay alive. Here he goes. The circulation of natural chi is the force that keeps a person alive from birth. In other words, the life energy that gives a person life, and that's the QE I use. And you must be ready to pay a high price equal to your life. However, now there is no other way out, so thinks our protagonist, and starts to use his M for the sake of achieving his plan. He thinks it's just one time, and he has to be patient once. During this, he bleeds in the hope that it will work, and... He says to himself that he won't get a second chance, and he has to do it once. He rests both feet on the ground and makes a huge leap towards the door afterward. He makes a huge swing of his sword at the door the first time this mage was very huge and strong waves of air and color. His body is completely exhausted. Blood is coming from everywhere. He had already lost a lot of blood. This is because of using an extremely large amount of chi. It was very hard for him. Of course, he knew that it was too slow, but still his body and mind was already at its limit. However, he couldn't enter as everything was laid out in this plan. He made the six interactions into bamboo mastery and then began to do the 24 palm plum blossom technique. Here, after using these techniques, he fell to the ground from the depletion of chi and exhaustion of his physical body. Looking at the door, he thinks that even if it doesn't open like this, it will be a total disaster. But still he sees some kind of rift and is glad that it all worked. He was still able to break that seal and open the door. But he's abruptly doing all this because he's using an extremely large amount of chai. He thinks he's not going to lay down for a month, but he's going to lay down for at least two months. And he realizes that reviving his school is proving to be a hell of a challenge. So he gets up and heads to the treasury. His expectations were, of course, huge. He thought he would find something great there. He was curious to see what his eldest had been hiding so hard from him, and smiling, he goes in. Here he opens the door and enters the treasury. Here he goes inside the treasury. It turns out to be probably more like a library. The image generally says that he expected something more, as even the door was made of expensive eternal iron material. Looking around him, he assumes that only the best of the best could afford a huge vault of eternal iron, and there was most likely something wrong here. He had always heard that there was no money in this school. Turns out that all the money had gone to the side and not to the dungeons, was he pulls one of the books from the shelf. He was on top because he found this book. Turns out it's the school's ledger. Besides the original in the finance and economics pavilion at the same time, and looking at it, he says it's a done deal. He says that the goddamn merchant's done with them all and it's over. He's got the books he needs and is about to leave. Looking around in the library, he stops that there's nothing here but paper. And that was strange, of course. If the old man was hiding bribes, it would be the basis for reviving this great school. Then noticing the green book, he began to examine it very hard and clearly to see what the interest of this thing was. It turned out to be a forgotten teaching of the almost lost school of Huashan. Looking at the book, he thinks that it is very interesting and he can basically use it. Rather, even a teaching he should have destroyed— and it should not have been passed on to the next generation. It turns out that he hid them here in case they turn out to be a bad influence on the school in the future. If the first cupboard proves that the senior has faithfully fulfilled his duty to the chapter, the second cupboard contains his worries and love for this school. Then our protagonist finally decided that he will finish his job to the end and revive this school. No, he will not only revive and raise it higher than in the past, so he decided. He notices one book that's in the third closet, and he wonders, why he's the only one in his repertoire with such a pile of books. When he opens this paper, he sees a lot of numbers related to this school. When he personally opens this book, it says if someone reads this text, it means it was approved by the head of the new generation sometimes. One line of paper contains more than a hundred words spoken aloud, and so he expresses his will in a letter. All this is considered by our protagonist in the light of the moon in this secret treasure. It was written there that to be the head of this school does not mean to keep the school strong everywhere, and if you are my receiver, you already know this. But those who do lead the school are the students' children. Tech life to stretch that goal of helping students reach their potential. I wish that when you become the head, 
you do not worry about how to exercise and manage the Huashan school, is Huashan is the spirit and energy that no one has the power to curb and help at will. Even having fallen into decline, even experiencing a new dawn of Huashan to continue to exist. That the aspiration of Huashan diligently guarded by the ancestors, and so that the school does not change existed for many years, we raise successors and pass on to them their will as the eldest of the great Huashan school. All these words our protagonist read clearly and was both upset and pleased with his senior master. Of course he grabbed this letter and says goodbye to what the old man likes to meaninglessly coddle with words. Looking at the library, he says that he got everything he had hoped for, but it is still enough, but he expected something more. He says the most important thing he's got is that he can get back all the business that belonged to this school. But then he realizes that the storage building is a bit suspicious. The older head he knew was too squeamish and meticulous. Even the kerosene legs standing symmetrically so that the light flooded his room evenly. Then he notices that only the third bookcase is absolutely. He looks around completely and guesses that the secret is in this bookcase. He uses his power to pick up this bookcase and move it. Then he notices something and that something shines very strongly like a ray of sunshine. This light was coming from some crevice that was more like a passageway to something, and he went to investigate it just then. He realized what he had really found was a treasure trove of treasure. It was tantalizing bars of gold tightly stacked on top of each other. The precious swords neatly arranged against the wall were also worth a lot they were worth as much as money. But that was not the main thing they balls were of the best quality that gave more value. And even the mountain of techniques and secret knowledge that he knew he had discovered in this treasure. He rejoiced greatly because with this fortune he could revive his school entrusted by the master. Morning, on this day, the present master stood at the window of his house looking at the surroundings that he might lose in the coming days. He says that morning has already come and that this day will bring joy to some and despair to others. And there are only five days left of the time the pavilion owner gave him. And it was a surprise to him because at this time nobody usually bothers him. So he goes outside and is met by Ungam, who in turn gives him some information. But the junior master says that he has to see and learn all this on the way. The head is surprised to see where he has to go and why he says that since he says to do something urgent and without knowing the details, he has to go there. The two of them are heading somewhere with great speed, jumping through the trees. There they are in the woods, running towards an unexpected something that the head himself doesn't know on the way. Then he notices many students who are lying on the road from exhaustion or something like that. Then he asks the younger one what happened to them. Why are they so dead and lying on the road? And the younger master answers that they are training by themselves in the morning because of that they are so tired and lying on the road. The approach of the masters is noticed by our protagonist. He heard it and felt his own. He looks that his name is Junior Master and plans something. Our protagonist hears that his name is Two Masters. Everything goes according to our protagonist's plan. He meets them. Then our protagonist comes out and tells them to follow him. When they notice our protagonist, the wizard's face became like wood just tight, which shows complete surprise. They notice the boy and ask what finally happened to him, why he looks so strange. So they get a better look here and say it's a matter of importance. But it's the head replies what could be more important than that. The head sees a shiny thing. He is surprised by it. Turns out it's a mountain of gold swords and many books that are in a chest. Well, it's the main character seems to be overtraining and somehow gets away from the wizard's question. He says that he is tired and leaves the master and the master in turn, of course, agrees and puts this young man down. He looks at these jewels and thinks that it can solve all the problems that are connected with the pavilion. But the most important thing here is the spelling of the chapter. It turns out to be a record of the great Huashan clan's enterprises in Huayin. He says that if he carelessly opens the book and accidentally rips it open, he won't sleep a wink until he dies. Then he sees some green book. It was special. Then he opens it and almost faints. He wakes up in bed. There are 107 postulates of the wild plum swords. When he goes to his assistant and asks what happened to the box, he is most concerned about the box and what happened to it after he fainted. So he takes all the books to the head of the finance department, and in turn, this man replies that they're all original editions. He says that he is sure without a doubt that it is original he even checked for authenticity accordingly was correct. He says that the state certificate can be proof of everything that can be, and he says that he can return all the businesses including the Taihu Tower and all these treasures will cover the debt of 100,000 yen. 
and the master says what a blessing it is to have a shoulder to lean on. But no matter how many times I listen, it's all good news. And he says it's because of this child who knew that one child who planned to change us from our knees, he says that he became happy at that. That if the load of boo is real, he must call someone. Then he says, let him and all those listed in the ledger of the Huayin Enterprises. The next day, all the members of this financial corporation come up to the mountain. All of them were tired as this road was one of the easy ones. Looking at his people with his eyes, said that it was only a short distance to school, and they only had a few hours to walk to get there. The man in green says that after he gets the money from the school, he'll never come back here or even think about this place. And then he listens to the conversation with other people like him, and hears what they say about the money that the master of this school may have prepared. Then this head of the pavilion says that if they get the money from the master of this school, then they will all be rich for the rest of their lives. But he notes that the head called a few days earlier. Maybe he demands either from outside. He assumes that the master will invite them to carry over. Hearing all this talk, people became very angry, as they have never met such shameless debtors. They also say that let them have problems with debts and do not talk about them too harshly. The man thinks to himself that he may be out of money. One appearance of a man from Junan says that they also have a view on Huashan Manor, and he thinks that his share is 5,000 nannies, and that he can live on that money all his life without thinking about trading for a day. So they come to the ground with this school, and they all come just to get their precious money. Coming to the main gate, all the merchants shared a similar feeling of being overwhelmed by the mountainous thoughts of Huashan's heritage. Having stood guard over this city for centuries, they thought that this heritage would be cut off by their hands. Especially the head of the pavilion knew about this information. He also knew that Huashan was not seven days old, and they should take the money faster than that. Near the entrance, they were greeted by a junior master. He summoned everyone and said that the head was waiting for all of them inside the house. All of them listened to the words of the junior master and went inside the house peacefully and together. The head in turn greeted all those who came to meet him. In return, they all bowed to the head and showed their respect. At this, the head began his word. Of course, he said that they had made a great journey and this journey was quite dangerous. They had a lot of work to do, but the head should have been more concerned, and they should have come themselves said these traders having listened to their words, the master said that it was difficult to climb the mountain and offered them tea. The head said that he had acted selfishly and said in truth that he had gathered you here today to tell you the position of Huashan. Hearing some strange sentences of the words of the master's statement, the head povelion something and wanted to listen to what the head of this school had to say. Should said what he had been looking for a long time, tried to find grasp any opportunity to fulfill his duty. But alas, no matter how much he tried, he could not repay it. Closing that debt is one of the hardest things to do. And the compliment said that they also need something to live on, and they cannot delay the date of the debt. Then the foreman asked them for a postponement. He said that he could not pay back all the money, but he could give a part of the payment. He asked and asked if there was anyone present who was willing to wait a little longer. The head is a master. He bowed his hands and asked everyone here to help Huashan. Everyone was surprised by this gesture, as no one expected it. He thought that surprisingly things had taken a different turn. He assumes that the head is doing this in order to push them into the underworld, or he wants to show mercy. It was an interesting and puzzling question that did not leave the mind of our hero. But he knew for sure that the head was not as forgiving as he looked. For the head of an entire clan to be secretive is darkness even if there are followers of the true nature. Because the head must skillfully wield profit and loss officially must welcome all financial. He wondered whether the current head is overcome by a strong anger. Then the head of the shopping center told everyone that the master did not tell them that he could not delay the payment date. Even last time it was a problem he asks that he did not misunderstand them. This time he is not asking the owner of this pavilion, but to everyone here. Each of you should receive a different amount of money so he's asking everyone who's willing to delay their due date. Then to the question of who can't make a concession, you will be able to pay off the debt immediately to this question, our chapter answers, yes. The Huashan school may not be the same as in the old days, but that doesn't mean that no one can lend a hand, and he says that he hasn't been able to raise the 100,000 he has prepared. That's why he's asking them, 
and says that Hua Shan will definitely repay everyone who steps into their shoes today. To this, the head of the pavilion says that he is not satisfied with this situation, and they must pay back all debts now. Then the man in the green coat asks if the school will thank him if he postpones the date. He asks for an honest answer. He asks that everyone realizes that the Hua Shan school could collapse tomorrow. But if they trust them and postpone the payment date, doesn't that mean they could end up with no money at all? He asks on the basis of what they can get their money from them. Then the master says they can pledge their money on the history and name of Hua Shan. Then the head of the pavilion laughs heartily and says that the head is crazy since he is hoping for some name of this school. Then the head calls a counter question and asks what the name Hua Shan means to you. Its history has no value to you. Who would take the name Hua Shan lightly and who would call Hua Shan's history meaningless? It may be in decline now, but Hua Shan has always been inextricably linked to this area along with you, means this word. Hearing all the words of the master, the head of the pavilion says that we will do things this way. All those who delay the payment date will go to the right. And those who agree and want to get the money today, let them stay where they are. However, the responsibility for the decision is yours alone, and not to expect the trade alliance to come to your defense. After a few seconds, we see that nothing has changed. No one has moved from their seats. Then the head of the pavilion says, I'm sorry, but no one is going to postpone the payment date. But after a moment and the pillars are gone, this familiar man in green, he comes out heading to the right. All he says is that he doesn't do this and asks to stay with them in this crowd to get all the money. He asks them not to make that face he knows he's acting like a traitor. Then he says that the owner of the pavilion cannot understand him because he is not from this area. He says that the head of the pavilion has settled in this area as a son-in-law and therefore he does not understand. He says that this area means a lot to him. He grew up on Hua Shan's stories. He says that he grew up surrounded by stories of how the horse stood guard over the peace and the shang -Shi. And even though he learned he had no talent to get into Hua Shan, he always dreamed of going to that school. He says that his father, and that's how much he cares about this school. Once you get the money far away from here, you'll need it very much. Where will I go? I've spent my whole life on Earth Hua Shan, and that's your reason for giving up so much money, asked the head of the pavilion. He asks again if he will regret such a free choice. He says that while he was climbing the mountain, he thought only about how to get the money and to get a wide leg, and now he has changed. Saying that even if I don't get the money, I can still live, maybe wishing I'd taken it then. But if he bankrupts this school, he'll regret it till the day he dies, taxing them with useless money. Do as you know, nothing will change because of you alone, says the head of the pavilion. Then he notices several people who also joined our man's idea. They were no longer just a few, but a crowd of five. Watching this magnificent scene, the master says it's nice to know that there are still those who honor Hua Shan. He angrily begins to say that since ancient times, Hua Shan has been favorable to you, but they have repaid it with betrayal. Based on the ledger, Hua Shan confiscates all the businesses they run, as well as all the profits on their property. The rotten merchants begin to look at all the records found on the organ hero. They don't understand what happened during their absence. The chapter seeing all this says that after that, there will be confiscation of all the property that they started during this time. Reading all these books, the head of the pavilion says that it is necessary to stop sooner or later, as the joke has gone very far. To this, the master replies that it is unfortunate that the head of such a great school as Hua Zhan looks like a joker in your eyes. Having read all the additions that our protagonist has found, the merchant says that they cannot know for sure whether it is true or fiction. To this, the master rudely and confidently says that they have no right to accuse Hua Shan of forging in the physical evidence. The master says that he is still obliged to call a person who understands the matter. Then the master summons to this place the head of the financial institution in this school and in this locality. Then this man says that the matter requires thorough investigation and will take some time. Hearing such words from this man, all the merchants say that it is not proven and it takes a long time and it may be fake. Then this man says that foreseeing such doubts two days ago, he sent half of the consignments to the government of the locality and now they are being verified for authenticity. This man did not expect such statements if during their absence the officials start a thorough inspection of the local enterprises. All the merchants including him are now in the Huashan school and they cannot fight back. Then it comes to him that the head's main goal was to lure them out of town. Two days is enough time to check all the ledgers.
Then the pavilion owner remembers that the master said he sent half of them. But who would check only a part of the ledgers? Most likely the boxes have already been checked. In other words, at the foot of the mountain, they're being pressed by a government army prepared for a raid. Then he starts yelling at the head that he is a liar, and somehow Poe body this evidence so that the government believes in it. Then the head yells at them to calm down, and they have no right to open their mouths. To push away the outstretched hand of a close friend in distress. And stab him in the back, you're no longer worthy to be called friends. He says they were coming back, and it's over as soon as they get back to town. He also says that he had originally planned to confiscate everything from them and take one wagon full of possessions looking at the master's face. He sees that his face is so wrinkled with anger. Hearing all the words of the master, the head of the pavilion leaves saying that he will not be indebted yet. So he turns around and hurriedly walks away from the area. Looking at Mr. Yu and at the other people who took the school aside, he says that until the last moment they kept their humanity. Your businesses belong to Huashan, and that will not change. Huashan will return everything that has been lost. However, he will allow them to continue to run the enterprise locally and make a profit. He says that he proposes to discuss their future cooperation and asks them to come inside. When the Lord thinks it's better than depending on the owner of the horse, because in one moment he's gone from master to deputy. Our boy watching all this is angry that the master gave them some wagon. He calls the master a damn fool. He says it's Huashan property who let him scatter them. So he decides to follow the trail of these people with great speed. So we see that these merchants who took the wrong side were leaving the city. One of them recalls that when they came down with the school enterprises were already APOC and occupied by government troops, and they were extremely unfriendly, if not for the request of the head of the pavilion they were either alas or far away. The owner he if only he didn't fall for his words. When he speaks, the owner turns to the horse and asks what they should do now. He asks him to say something and says that it all happened because they trusted him. Looking at the owner with a cold stare, he says not to blame him for what happened. Looking for shelter from the rain, he says that most likely the papers the master has provided cannot be genuine. He says it's a forgery and that the head slipped in false documents. But to this, the others say that the government has not confirmed its authenticity. To this, the head replies that they conspired with the county head to divide the property among themselves. He says that it is necessary to go to his hometown first and then see what happens there and solve this fraud if possible. And he says that if these bastards are pressuring people with power, they'll find their way out. At this time, someone overhears their conversation and comes out of the shadows and he says it's all a lie. The two men meet their gazes looking at each other with suspicion and some surprise. The head of the pavilion doesn't realize what's going on here in the daylight in a robber's suit who would be an idiot walking around like that. He says that if he has stolen their property, then he should go far away to save his life. This, of course, irritates our protagonist as the property is not theirs, but the property of the school. He says that he is not going to steal them, but just wants to return what was stolen. These words caused fascination at the head of the pavilion. He says that how fortunate, and he just wanted to attack someone from this school. Then our hero is attacked by one large group of samurai and plans to completely destroy him. But our protagonist with one swing completely destroys fluff and ashes in this small army and samurai. This amazes the head of the mall, as this was an elite army that could destroy a small village. He is surprised that there are still some masters left in this school and orders them to go somewhere far away. He says he doesn't understand why someone like him would hide all inside four walls. If you were on the front lines, this school wouldn't have gone under. He says he picked a bad time because today he will die by his hand and his dead body will be a message for the head. He also suggests that if this master falls by his hand, the headmaster of this school will likely be very upset. After hearing all of his statements and seeing his power, our protagonist says that he knew he wasn't that simple, but he doesn't look like a pavilion owner in a provincial town. Yes, so this owner attacks with a quick swing using his magic or chai against our protagonist. With a quick swing, he lands with great speed and force on our hero. But he was angry that he couldn't hit him. He was surprised that somehow the protagonist was able to dodge such an unexpected blow. Without saying anything, he makes another dive towards the masked man. This time, he really wanted to chop him into pieces. He makes a strike that was reinforced with chi. Normally, such punches could break even big, strong rocks, and in some cases could reach such a level that they could destroy even a small mountain. 
But this time when he tried to hit him back, this protagonist struck back with his fist. He didn't see that coming. And it turned out to be impossible that he got hurt. But it happened. Our protagonist reflected this blow and because of this Chai returned to his hands and did the opposite effect. But still he continued to attack and used his crowning kick of light with his foot, which is usually used for stealth attacks. But all these attacks were kind of childish for our hero, as he had seen very strong opponents in his life that were times stronger than this merchant, if not one thousand. In an instant, it was as if he teleported behind the merchant's back. Eventually the merchant noticed this and made a strike filled with ki. It was more like a sword swing that could shatter even wood. But this blow was repelled by our hero. And after this blow, our protagonist told him not to do such a stupid action because he would lose his fingers. It was absolutely true because after this blow, the owner of the pavilion had a sharp pain in his fingers. Due to the protagonist getting too close, this con owner was able to again use his crowning technique with his foot. Well, even the attack on the posh hero managed to repel, he just dodged doing nothing. The owner of the con thinks that he will never hit this man even by his clothes. He notices that our protagonist is constantly slow, but catches the perfect precise moment moving in the right direction, and at the right distance his movements have no flaws, and there is nothing personal. When he starts comparing this man to a monster who has a lot of fighting experience, he says something that he can't even begin to fathom how strong he is. Then the protagonist says that he wanted to have fun, but he still has a lot of strength left, and will have to finish this very quickly. Then the head of the pavilion asks how such a man is so talented and a man like him has never declared himself. But our protagonist just doesn't answer this question and says that it doesn't matter anyway. After hearing this, the head of the pavilion says that he didn't expect such a strong opponent to appear. After that, our protagonist says that there is no need to talk anymore and we must act. Certain eyes were surprised at the boldness of this man, as he knew that he was also a Nestle. Then our protagonist says that he does not like such empty words and he wants to know what happened here and where he came from. He suspects that the head of the pavilion is an unusual person and does the work for others. Maybe he is some spy from another school who just wants to destroy the dignity and history of Hua Shan. Pointing his hand at the head of the pavilion, he says that he doesn't like to waste his time on people like him and says that everything he did was not on behalf of the school. It was all personally his and carried his initiative. He did not use any orders. Then the protagonist says that to find out information about such people, you have to act colossally and not stop for a second. The best solution is force. Having finished his words, our protagonist starts to act. He makes a very strong leap towards the head of the pavilion and finds himself near after a few seconds. He takes his sword and mind wants to kill this nowhere as that has done such a bad deed towards his school. Such a quick event was not expected by the head of the pavilion. He almost fell down because of such fast movements of our hero. At this time, the protagonist strikes a huge and strong blow, which in principle could even kill a large elephant with a single swing. He delivers a vertical strike to the attitude of this one. The head of the pavilion flew back from this blow so hard that he almost lost consciousness. He was surprised that he thought that our protagonist was aiming at his leg, but in the end, the blow hit his neck. When he pulled back from the blow, the masked man gave him several more blows to his body that pierced him like a needle. He didn't understand why the blows that were supposed to hurt another place were hitting a completely different part of his body. Initially, he thought it was all just luck. But after he looked at the eyes of the masked man, he realized that these were the eyes of a killer who had already killed several hundred thousand people. And most likely what was here was planned by this man. Realizing the enormous power of the difference between them, he thought he was going to die, but he didn't want to. Then he saw that the masked man was going to kill him with a single swing. He felt such fear that he had never felt in his life. It seemed as if death had come to him and just wanted to take his life in one fell swoop. Then a strange wave of some kind appeared near their battle. In comparison, it was a strike from some kind of magic or utilized kuai, since this strike covered a very large space and had tremendous power. It turns out it was the pavilion head who was using his another crown technique. This turned out to be the technique of Lord Tai's palm technique, a powerful technique that strikes a huge radius and destroys absolutely everything within it. What was the surprise of the head when he learned that this technique did not work, and yet this man somehow managed to survive after him? 
he not only parried this blow, he just dodged. Then our protagonist realized that this man is unusual and is a student of the Zhongnan school. After the protagonist learns that the owner of the pavilion in Huang is shaking debts in Huangshan and is skillfully wielding the techniques of another school, he is surprised by this turn of events. He asks the pavilion owner if the other school has sent the other school to destroy the history and everything in Huangshan. Realizing that he has made a foolish mistake by using his school's secret technique, he thinks that he is about to be finished and will have to reveal the secret of his school and the secret of his life. He says that the fatal mistake was that when he swung his sword and came upon him by surprise, he got confused and used the palm of his hand to use the tie, which normally should be used to destroy opponents, and this technique should not. He thinks that this man will never get away from him if he doesn't beat his, and most likely he will need to reveal all the secrets and even Kazari. Our protagonist likes this as he says that loyalty is a very good thing, but he doesn't like this outcome. He says that the Zhongnan school is not a bad school, and not one of the weakest, just that since a long time ago between it and Huang Sheng, there has been animosity, and so the relationship does not work out. Even so, he cannot help but recognize that the Zhongnan school is rightfully ranked among the nine great schools, but such a powerful school probably won't solve its problems this way. He says that this man probably doesn't know much, but because of the long time that has passed, the new Murim may still be acting so low, most likely even they sacrificed their deeds for the sake of wealth, and emphasizes that times are not the same anymore, and everything can change, and absolutely everyone can do anything, even sacrifice their pride. He talks about his enjoyment of the times in which he now lives. After listening to our protagonist talk, the head of the pavilion begins his story. Then this bastard says that isn't this the best outcome for this school, and says that there is no more and there never will be. Having lost the school's secret technique, this school will never be the same again. The only question is whether it will collapse now or last a little longer. He just wanted to ease the suffering of the dying Huashan. Then our protagonist interrogates the school, which is the same school that lost and left without masters left only to die. He says that someone like you will never understand about the life and history of such a powerful school. He says that who says that Huashan has lost its power and its secret techniques, and even its masters. He beats him up and says that they should have taken Huashan on strength instead of such a menace of tactics. He says how the two schools had a lot of history in common, and even the sword styles were similar. If there are two great schools with similar systems next to each other, one of them is bound to have a hard time. But still, thanks to him showing such a secret technique to him, and he's going to be rewarded in some kind of even-handed way. He says it's fun if you do, but a shame if you don't. At this time, our protagonist rejoices that he holds a sword near the head of the pavilion and maps something unimaginable to him, and tells him to hand over every last detail to the bastard who sent him. Then our protagonist starts swinging his sword. He only swung his sword fast enough to create the illusion of left swings. Mr. Khan is surprised that the man swings his sword so hard that he created a huge, strong wind wave. But he notices one thing that hurts him very much, and he doesn't realize what it is why he is doing it. Even so, because our protagonist makes a lot of fast blows, but none of the blows hurt his opponent. Then our protagonist says that when plum blossoms bloom on the snow, they emit the thickest fragrance it may be winter now, but the Huashan age has not yet come to an end. After he said all that, he made one very fast and clear dash and was already behind his opponent in a second, but nothing happened to Mr. Khan. Our hero says that with the passing of spring, plum blossoms decorate the whole mountain. And at that moment, there are a lot of flowers that fall out of the sky. Then all the pink blossoms of this technique disintegrate on the head of this Mr. Kona. This turns out to be one of the sword styles called 24 plum blossoms that is made of fallen petals. This is a very powerful technique that is rarely performed now or even in history. After using this technique, this person falls down permanently. He just fell and most likely lost consciousness. Our main character says that it is an illusion, and even a very strong illusion that can control everything and everyone. He says that he can still die as the force is not enough. He also says that for the past and himself, it would be barefoot. And now when he died with the ball, it's as if all the powers have left him. Someone was watching this situation. It was one of the members of this crew. He was present. Our protagonist calmly notices him and tells him to come to him. 
He also tells him to go to him quickly and at the first time so that there are no repercussions. It turns out that he was not the only one who observed this. They were a group of four people who were hiding from the threat in the person of our hero. When our protagonist asks who is next to drink, absolutely everyone was silent and did nothing because no one wanted to be beaten. But when the masked man said who wants to leave just like that, everyone fought for this opportunity as for his life. It was really like a fight for reality and life as they saw the consequences of Mr. Kona's example. When our protagonist answered Tam that they can go, everyone quickly same started to run towards the direction on the road to another town. After all this, our protagonist turns around and asks them if they are really that stupid since he is not going to let them go just like that. When he says that he needs them because he has to take it all to the main gate of the school and pins them to say how much is their possessions worth. Then one of them says his property is worth 2,300 nyang and another says it's worth 3,000 and 4,000, and the last one says it's worth 8,000 yang. Then our protagonist says that one of them should go to the bank and bring an amount equal to their property. He says that there is a nearby bank, and they should bring the cash, because he will not give it for another amount. At this time, one of the merchants is surprised that he is meeting such a man for the first time. Since this man asked for more than just money, he said that you can't sign the receipt, or there will be consequences. Then he asks what happens if that man goes and runs away from this place. What happens if he leaves if there's anything left but seized property? And he says he doesn't see the point in running away from this place. Well, it's better to go back and get all his property that's left with no interest without any of that spendthrift stuff. Then one of the brave men asks what would happen if instead of returning with the money, he just calls the authorities. To this question, our protagonist did not answer. He just stomped on the ground showing his superiority over everyone. In addition, he said if he came back, then he should run to the edge of the mainland to survive, and to say that if he had to do such a thing, he would rather die than let such a man go. All the merchants realized that they shouldn't run away from a psycho like that because at best they'll die quickly, and at worst they can't even imagine what awaits them. So after all this, they came back with the money, and then it went to the masked man. He was very happy about the money as he could achieve his goals of rebuilding the school. After that, he let these poor people go, and he himself went to his home place. So at this time, we see one of the students who listened to their clothes. After long training, he has a noticeable change, so, and his physique has become much better. By the look of it, just muscles and became much stronger. He says to himself that today's training has left him with no strength at all, and they seriously need to invest from the dawn. Looking at his guys, he notices that they have changed a lot. They are all much better than more than even months ago. They have become like real students of this great school. At this time, he is approached by his eldest. He asks why he is so happy today and what he is looking at. To this, he replies that it is good that they have become like true disciples. To this, his elder also answers that they have really become much better than they were before. And of course, he welcomes these changes as everything is improving and going up. Laughing, he thinks that. He didn't even think he would be training in sweat. Then he tells everyone to go home because practice is over. He notices that they used to come down the mountain to do the standard and go home right away, but lately they've been thinking more often that things have changed. He says it's probably because of Cheon Man who encouraged them to do it. It's only because of him that it's become so commonplace that everyone's used to doing it every day. He says that even though it's just a slight breeze now, no one knows if it's just a slight breeze or if it will become a typhoon that will turn Huang Shan's whole existence upside down. But he says it will bear fruit in the distant future. As they approached the main gate of the school, they were surprised by something. They see some people, and the junior master tells them to take all the materials inside and then do something else. Then he says that if they break this tree, they will immediately forfeit a month's wages. Then they see the youngest foreman ordering everyone else to do what they need to do. They were surprised and asked the junior master what is going on here and what are these people doing here. He says that they are laborers and says that they are taking advantage of the moment to overhaul the estate. And he says that they themselves know that this school has long needed such a major overhaul because all of you are also outdated and to make everything perfect in training and even the mood of the students was good should make a great repair. He also says that they should help the laborers because they are already tired enough to do and carry these materials. He shows them what to do and says that they should not relax and help these people. 
Hearing the master's orders, the apprentices began to help the laborers. During the evening meal, they saw a dish that they had rarely, if ever, seen in the area of the place. It was an appetizing chicken that seemed to glow like gold in their eyes. They couldn't believe that they were going to eat a little meat today. They compared it as a gift from above and rejoiced so much that they lost the power of speech. And if they began to rejoice at such a celebration, and absolutely everyone began to eat this sweet meat at the same time with pleasure. They say that most likely, who knows, maybe the changes can come much earlier. They were surprised that the repair began suddenly, and the meat on the table appeared and two sets of new uniforms were handed over. They say that money is good, I can give many opportunities, yes, now and in the future. He says one of them says that it was nice even though they have money but they think that the older ones will immediately start to change something. When an older person says what you think, they're willingly poverty of patience. If not, there's nothing to be done. He also says it's the first time he's ever seen a junior mentor smile so happily. He thought he didn't know how to smile. Then they say that Huashan will probably change at the speed of light, and they have to get used to these changes too. But most likely all these changes will not be positive even so they have to be ready for anything. The elder is talking about the secret document in the box that was discovered by our hero. They say that this case was very suspicious, since he played along and did everything in a strange way. The fact that he found this document and played dumb, it was a bit of an act. They say he probably did it to avoid questions and interrogation. He says that what is clear is that Huang Shan is changing and they must avoid change. That's why they must be determined and ready for anything. And if they act rashly, they'll be caught in the huge hurricane that this boy raised. Then Joe Gull tells the elder not to worry about him, because he's ready for all the trials that await him in the future. Then he asks the elder, Where is our main character because he hasn't been seen since morning, and he's disappeared somewhere? He says that he is worried and wants to ask something more about him. Then he says that the head was looking for him this morning, and he is probably at the head's house. We go to the head's house, which is a very nice and humble place where a lot of experience and information about techniques and about the school is gathered. Inside the house sits four people, head our main character, junior master, and a man who is the financial manager. Then the head says that he should be rewarded with very nice and good things. The head says that he has gathered all these people for this, and now he is planning to think about the reward. Devastated, our protagonist thinks about what will be offered to him as a reward. He thinks it is better to choose something necessary and useful for him now and in the future. Remembering these treasures of mountains of gold and many, many good balls, the chapter says what to allocate the amount of money he needs. The chapter was very happy that our protagonist did not choose money, that is, gave up a lot of gold. The head is happy that there is a generation in which money does not decide anything, and this boy is very well brought up that he does not pass on greed. The main character turns out to have given up such things because his storehouse of these things is very large and he is poor, of course after taking all the property that belongs to this school from the merchants. Then the head asks what then this boy wants. He can allow him to get to the secret equipment earlier than he should, and to this our main protagonist also refuses. The head was surprised that this boy refused the secret techniques of this school. But to this our protagonist said that this tradition was invented by the elders and it is not worth to destroy it. The protagonist thinks to himself that he should teach them and not the other way around, since he is older and even wiser. Thinking about the secret techniques, he thinks that he should rather teach these people to use these techniques well and correctly. He says that he does not need anything from this school, as it has already lost everything and is left with only a name. Even with this, you can see that since many people have already forgotten about the existence of this school. He thinks that I first need to get some freedom and increase the radius of his actions, because when he gets freedom, his terrain of movement majesty in times, after thinking he tells the head to allow him to go down more often in Huayin. He reasons that he feels he can't develop in a confined space. He argues that he feels that he can't develop in a confined space, because he feels that training is empty and doesn't produce any results if he doesn't feel that he can act freely without any shackles. He also says that if he can move freely at any time, he is sure that he will be able to discover new boundaries and achieve better results. But at this, the master says that he cannot and does not choose to do so because he fears that it will cause discontent among the other students as well.
It violates the law of discipline of this school. He asks our protagonist to ask for something else, but the refusal surprises our protagonist. Then our protagonist tells the master about some physical problems. When he tells the master that his body is in a very poor condition and he needs something that will help to improve this condition, the master agrees and says that he needs to find such a thing, and if such a thing exists, he will try to find it and give it to him. Then our hero remembers that according to Letcher W.U.'s words, the circulation of natural key has been disturbed, and in that case he asks to be provided with healing pills. The master hearing such a request of his disciple says, To others who are here that from now on the only disciple of Qian Meng is allowed to visit the city. He then took his so-called ordinary water and began to drink. It was a very tricky trick that he uses because he doesn't want more unnecessary words. Everyone after hearing this said that they understood, and from now on this person will be an exception. After that, the master himself escorted our hero to his door and said that he was grateful to him for everything he had done. Wishing him good luck for tomorrow and that he would do well with his training, he just threw him out of the door. Such an outcome of events our protagonist could not have expected, he thought to himself that he had done well and asked for a very worthy reward that could help him in the future. And this man not only did not give what he needed and did not allow him to leave the city and said that he would control him even during his departure. After the protagonist left, this master closed the door and started a conversation with his companions. They started talking about our protagonist, that he is an unusual boy, and as if there is something strange about him from an adult. Another not insignificant information was that this third person, he was a financial master. He was a real master who would be in charge of the students in this school. The master started his word that this boy came out of nowhere and started to build this school, and he is unusual because with his passing started a white streak in the life of this school. The junior master also noticed something strange about this boy. He also thinks that he is not an ordinary average teenager. When he looks at him, he somehow sees a man who has gone through life from scratch and understands all the difficult situations in life. It's like he's draining a huge amount of mana and chi, and this is usually seen in great warriors or big and strong wholesale masters. Then the master starts talking to the mentor who will be teaching all these children in the area. He says that this man is obliged to teach the new generation all that he knows, including that. He must also teach the new secret techniques that were provided after the discovery. The master reacts to this very unusually as he shoulders the fate of the entire generation and the fate of the history of this school. Looking at the junior master says that he too will be of great use if he will help him getting used to and adapting to this area and such duties. Of course, the junior master answered positively to this question, saying that he will definitely help if necessary. Then our master asked what opinion he had formulated after seeing our hero. To this, the mentor says that this boy is like a diamond among stones. He stands out very much. He also says that this boy has already grown up and formulate and think like a mature adult man. He also noticed that this boy thinks and expresses his opinion very well, as if he has seen a lot of things in his life. The master was glad to hear such words from the mentor who will also mentor this young man in the future. Then he says that he was very glad that they had gone through and said their opinion about this situation that had arisen in this school. He also says that he is very glad that they will help and develop this great school in the future. Those two also express their gratitude and respect for the attitude of the head master. Then the conversation with the junior master about the overhaul that is going on at the moment begins. The junior master states that everything is going great, but because there are problems with the delivery of some materials, sometimes you have to get and process some materials yourself. Many materials are changed to wood because of the complexity and position of the school. The school is located in the highlands and there are a lot of trees that could be used to make many products. But even so, because they make everything from scratch, it takes a lot of time. The master thinks about this situation saying that everything is fine and there is no need to rush. It will take a lot of time and effort to rebuild this school. Then the junior master says that it is more likely that he made a mistake because he chose the appearance first rather than any other. On this account, the master says that there was no mistake and appearance plays the main role they must show to all that this school has been revived and has the same power that it had centuries ago. He also notes that the appearance will attract new students also. It will raise the status of this school in all colors and all over the world. 
Hearing the praise from the headmaster, the junior master says that he will continue to do and try his best. Then the senior master turns to the mentor and tells him to study the new additions and try to apply them in a short time. These secret techniques were discovered during a very difficult situation in the school. This situation arose because they had lost a lot of information and had no secret techniques. To this, the mentor says that he will try to do everything, and of course he will do it well and very quickly. Then they show each other. The mentor has a way of telling the headmaster something important. He thinks these century-old secret teaching techniques look like new. He wasn't himself when they were discovered and didn't notice them right away. In some places, there were even marks from the rush to find out that it was someone's evil plan. He says to himself that he thinks too much and would rather not say such a rash thought of the mastermind, and yet, as you look at the content, is similar to the original. Then he thinks that someone is helping in secret, and most likely this person who is helping wishes only the best for this school, but he doesn't even suggest who it could be. At that time, our main character is walking through the forest and is angry that this master has jammed some one pill for the sake of such a thing. He says something that he has done many things, and even for the sake of them, he rewrote all the additions he found so that there would be no mistakes and even to make it easier to master them. He also remembers that he changed all the additions and rewrote them all over again. He had to do it in a hurry because he had to give it to the master in a short time. He is also angry that he has it written all over his face that not only did he lose the money and the results of all the elixirs he lost, he is also angry that the school has been afloat all this time. He says that he knew that he had to prepare for the worst things and expectation because he knew how bad things were here and how low they could go. But he didn't expect it to be this bad. He is angry that it will take him a long time to rebuild and revitalize this school. He also says that he can't go without training and miss training for a long time. This is because such a young body is changing every day, and during this time he needs to fill the training and develop physically. This is the most favorable time to develop and improve the inner energies. If he misses it, he must find some other way to develop his physical data. He has to take a drug or something similar in a short time in order to also be at the level of his previous strength and even go around and jump to the floor. This can be done in two ways to restore the circulation of ki. The first way is to eat an expensive medicinal healing pill. The second way is this internal transmission from a more powerful warrior or master. But now it is impossible because at this time and in such places, such strong masters or wars do not pass. And the only last option left is the power tides that are said in our time to be pills for healing. He remembers that once upon a time, he would just pick up A now of the earth and eat it every day. In those days, he ate these pills in order to gain the so-called explosive with which he could do his evil deeds. But now he doesn't have such an opportunity because something happened, and the quantity of these pills decreased very much. He says that when he gets drunk secretly from his elders, he will take the pills and become as good as new, as if the hangover will be taken away with a hand. Then he gets a great idea related to the pills. He remembers about some place where you can find something similar or themselves. Then he runs somewhere very fast, as if in a hurry to find the dust itself there. During his running, he says that from a bad head and strange people can arise, and brilliant ideas usually such happens that thinking about something else, you pass generally another idea. Then he comes and stops. He comes to the place where he spent time in his past life. Huashan Sacred Mountains is famous for its rocky terrain, and Duanshan Rock is the highest and most dangerous. And in the middle of Huashan is the mouth of the edge of which you can't even see, and there is the place he is looking for. In all Huashan, he alone knows about this secret place in the center of the cliff. There are caves that cannot be found if you do not go up there on the cliff. Duanshan training is forbidden because of the high risks, but thanks to this. This is the best place is hidden from the eyes of the head and cannot find. She says that this place helped him a lot. He could get drunk secretly from the chief and often got meat there and could take a nap without the chief seeing. He is that his head never did anything. If he were in his place, he would have beaten himself to death. Then he says that it doesn't matter. And anyway, he has to go upstairs and climb up very quickly and carefully so as not to fall to his death. Turns out that's where the pills he kept in his past life are kept. In his previous life, he could get there in two jumps, but with this dead and weak body, he will never make it. But he says that if you try to get down from the top of that mountain, it's possible. 
but he says that it's about ten times more dangerous than before. He also says that the hell he's here and he's already died once and he'll die the second time. But he says that it's very hard to save his homeschool and wonders if he's doing such dangerous things for the sake of it. He says that practicing on the Duan Chan cliff was forbidden not only because of its height, but also because of its height. The Dandelion Cliff was called So Not Easy. Its name means steep cliff with nothing to hold on to and nowhere to put your feet. In two words, it is not sadly smooth cliff, and during this it stumbles and falls to the ground. So our protagonist falls with huge misses and almost dies, but when by chance he falls ever so slowly resting on some rocks, falling he comes to consciousness, and using his father's he somehow starts to control this situation. The first thing he does is concentrate his chi in the palms of his hands and starts to brace himself. But because his body is not as perfect as it was, one sudden movement deprived him of the ability to brace himself with both hands as he accidentally broke his hand. But in the distance about ten meters away he sees a cave, and he thinks that if he gets there he will probably survive and everything will be fine. But there's one thing, if he lets go and does a little acceleration, he'll fall down. And in order to get there, he has to make a small leap, but he has to hold a huge amount of chai in his hand. But when he makes the leap, the rope he's tied to somehow breaks. But still in milliseconds, our protagonist kills to react, and with his remaining arm intact, he grabs onto the rocks. He was very lucky as he caught onto some tree and stayed alive. Even so, he was very close to the cave. He lay there for a few minutes as he was very tired, and this use of a huge amount of father had drained him of a huge amount of energy. Still pulling himself together, he managed and climbed up into the cave. He was cursing the fact that he had taken this rope, which had broken at such a crucial moment. But still he made it, and when he entered the cave, he saw only darkness. It was not surprising since it was night. But still he managed to turn on some light, and everything became clear. It was a source that absorbs the owner's energy, and when our protagonist entered this cave, it felt and automatic. Reacted to the presence of a living organism, most likely even she could sense that it was our protagonist who was here. Finally, the goal was achieved. He still managed to find a chest and some devices for himself and alcohol. Here our protagonist is not so Bianin opens his own chest, which stored all here for more than a hundred years. When he opened this friend, felt the bright aroma of spring special, felt Sakura leaves and some pleasant smell. There were a lot of healing pills lying around in the chest. Even one could say healing pills. Then he remembers how he hid such precious things from his mentor, but at that time these things were like paper that was scattered all over the place. He says that to begin with, one must become fully empowered, and after that, it would be good to build up the inner energy. He says there's no time to hesitate, and so he eats one snow plum pill. He says that it immediately melts in his mouth, enveloping his whole body in its purest flavor. He transmits a huge amount of sea, thereby healing even the most complex streams that have been damaged or even closed. But complications arise for starters. It is necessary that the energy of the mortal plum does not leave the body, and it is necessary to retain it. But there is one more thing that this will not help to restore the natural key, as it is not a heterogeneous source, as Huashan is not proud of its people's snow plum in it too many impurities for assimilation. And in this case, you have to filter it all. You will have to sift out most of the energy, but there is nothing you can do about it. There's a long way to go to create the most perfect base. It's not an easy choice, but the rush is to keep only the purest energy and the rest must be sifted out. Each carefully selected shard must be maintained and channeled into the core. Not only does it have to be guided, it has to be maintained before it goes to the core of natural chi. That's when the explosion of energy and chi happens. This energy is known by the color of water and the sky, which is blue. Even after traveling this long way, you will feel that this was the beginning as you have to control and be in a meditation posture afterwards. Because of the huge amount of energy released, you have to control and filter it. Chung Meng, after the flow of qi, begins to feel that the energy that encompasses his body begins to gradually reach the core. He starts to feel the whole energy ending with his fingers but it was very difficult to control it since this body was completely undeveloped. Even so, our protagonist tries and taking all the strength of spirit still achieves his goal. This I'm a little energizer starts by spreading throughout the body. So he was able to perfect and complete his resurrection of new energy. After that, he felt that all the wounds he had received before were healed in an instant. 
He also felt that his body had become much stronger. He thinks that surely if he can manage the energy in a young body, the effect of the sawing off will exceed all expectations. He says it's not enough yet. The toxins left in his body are spreading throughout his body. It's like something is stretching his cells and veins, and he doesn't understand why his heart is beating so fast. After that, he suddenly feels as if his body is shutting down. He compares it to the energy rushing out from behind the Dantan pierced through his Dantian like a huge wave, and he can't control it. If it gets to, and most likely after that, it'll kill him after a while. He says to stop the flow and takes his hand and concentrates a huge amount of chi there to stop the flow. Then he remembers the words of the Elder Chapter when he said that the warrior will take control and suppress it. But those who follow the path to Wuxism will leave everything as it is. He also remembers what the Master said about the fool thinking that logic decides everything in the world. In this world, it's not only logic that decides everything, it's also the mind that acts only in a straight path. He does nothing and just trusts his life to flow. He lets his hands go and just imagines his life of simple luck. When he finds himself somewhere where there is a lot of water or this chi energy, this place is completely enveloped in an energy that is released at a super powerful rate. Then the protagonist starts exploring the place to find something useful. He says what he realized is that this place is the foundation of all foundations. The wall in front of his eyes covered with cracks must be the entrance to this place. He put his hands on the wall and thinks that this wall will give him a great deal, including physical stability. Judging by the power, it's only a matter of time before the wave hits this place. It's more dangerous than he thought if he doesn't move the wall. It'll just collapse. If he does, he'll be swept away by the wave, and then there's only one solution. Oh, he thinks if he tries to close it off, the water's just going to overflow. He homes in on the fact that he has to trust and just go with the flow, then everything will be clear and simple. He also remembers what it once seemed to him. But 100 years later, he realized the essence of his elder master's teachings. When the great wave of the entire core reaches everything. When he wakes up, it's morning he's been meditating all this time. All the vital points had completely opened up, and even fortunately, even his young body was able to hold on to it. A little more, and he would have lost his mind or said goodbye to life. Only thanking the elder's rays, he miraculously did not run into tragedy. But it was all worth it. All the vital points expanded, and the internal energy he needed so badly increased. The bottom line is this body is much stronger than it was before, more like a hundred times stronger. It was worth dying once to realize that the words that had appeared to him had a different meaning now. He was just a swordsman before, not a scholar as a subject, and that's what Huang Shan is all about. All this he thought is that he would do anything for his school. After he looked at the box, he saw there were a lot of healing pills that he learned were useless to him. But he grabbed them all anyway because he thinks that even if they don't help him, they will help the other students. He thinks to himself that only this cave has changed so much. Once inside, it's as if he's back in the old days and the one he longs for is there. He thinks that he should come here more often because this place is the basis for the school. Then he started to move like the wind, and his jumps were so fast that he could go around this distance in two jumps, which he had spent two days before. After a while, he was already on top of the mountain watching the sunrise, which was so beautiful that no words can describe it. While he was enjoying the view, he feels some strange smell. This smell was not particularly pleasant. Then he smells it and starts to blend in because he doesn't understand where the smell came from. We move to the evening. At this time, all the students had already done their training and were tired. They start talking about our hero, saying that he's been very strange lately. They say that she looks like he's about to fall off. Then they remember that the protagonist has been absent from training lately. Some people agree with them because it all seems so. They say there's a rumor that he has a chi distortion. He's skipping training every day because he's not feeling well, and he's probably in a position where he's going to lose to absolutely everyone. Then they say to themselves that they have already trained, and from this day on, they can ease up on the training schedule. Remembering they say that there's another reason why they're out of work following the protagonist, isn't it because they lose even if they attack all together? But now our protagonist looks to be at such a level that even the weakest of the students will have a chance to defeat him. And taking that chance, they say it's better to take the risk. Then an elder hears what they say about our protagonist. They say that all that's left of him is skin and bones. If they attack him all at once, they'll probably win. Then the other older one says they should leave them alone so they can realize their mistakes. 
they need to come face to face with reality. When they are all talking, the main gate opens, this is the eye edition, and a ray of light comes out of it. By the looks of the others, you can see that everyone was surprised to see this creature. It turns out to be our protagonist, his appearance was absolutely normal. Even you could say that he looked good. He begins to say that he is immensely to blame because of his poor health he had to skip all the classes. He says that he feels deeply responsible for these things. They all say that they are not offended by this. On the contrary, they support him because they understand his case. When our protagonist replies that it's entirely your teacher's fault and that he says that mistakes can't be undone, but they can be corrected in this case. If the training wasn't enough, they're just not enough. Pointing to the mountain, he says to start running. Then when he starts telling the conditions of this task, he details that half of those who come later will have to complete another lap in addition to the main training. Upon hearing all the conditions, the elders were the first to run. They were ahead because they realized the serious consequences of defeat and disobeying the teacher. They knew that failure to comply would result in punishments and loss of privileges. While the elders were already several kilometers ahead of the others, the novice students were still standing in their seats, wondering what awaited them if they were in the second half. Realizing that being in last place would mean receiving much heavier punishments, they all instantly picked up speed to avoid additional trials. The protagonist watched this process with interest and rejoiced at the enthusiasm of the new generation. He assumed that the young students still lacked the experience and strength to fully learn in this school. He also observed that they lacked the key skills and knowledge needed to succeed in their studies. Since the time of time, all the students of this school have achieved tremendous success in the world stage, striving to be the best among the best. However, in order to revitalize the school and raise its reputation, each student must become stronger than ever before. One protagonist cannot achieve this goal alone. It is important that all students work together to develop and grow. The protagonist repeats his promise to make the school better than it has ever been, and this time his words sound even more convincing. The training session finally comes to an end, and all the participants could barely get off the ground after a five-hour marathon. But even in their exhausted faces, one could see perseverance and determination. One of the elders watched in amazement as his comrade rose to his feet after such an ordeal. He was amazed at his fortitude, as he himself was barely breathing and could not even get to his feet. He realized that their strength was not only in their body, but also in their will. The protagonist, meanwhile, was lugging around the training tools, which were much heavier than they appeared. Most likely all the tools he was carrying weighed more than all of them combined. All the students delicately suspected that the strongest among them was the youngest one. He easily managed to throw so that the ground cracked from the impact. After finishing his duties, the protagonist ordered all the students to help put all the tools back in place. In the morning, everyone gathered for breakfast. Absolutely everyone wanted to eat because they had spent all their energy on this exercise. Rather, it was even a strength training session. One of the students complained that the workouts were getting harder and harder, and he couldn't eat properly because of pain and fatigue. Listening to his comrades' complaints, the senior realized that this was the case. He himself felt that his strength was leaving him. He has his hands from such hard training he just couldn't grip the chopsticks with his fingers. He wondered why they were all afraid, and why it was so hard for them to tell the main character about their problems. Another student claimed that the training was getting harder and harder, and his body couldn't take the strain. But, as he said, the blows only make them stronger. He urged to stay strong and endure until it was time for school to change. But during all of this, he remembered our main character's face as they all trained because of fear from him. He knew that Chang Meng was only leading this school on a prosperous path, and he supported him strongly in his heart. His comrade thought a lot about his thoughts on this situation and he also supported him and said that he will definitely tell our protagonist when the time comes. Everyone admired his words and agreed with his opinion. The elder promised to speak out when the time came. After all the training, one of the students was resting in his room, wondering if his body would be able to withstand such an ordeal. Lying on his bed, he questioned his resilience and endurance. Thinking about everything and analyzing all the actions he had seen today, he didn't even notice he had fallen asleep. Suddenly he heard a strange voice that was familiar to him. It was Chang Min. In his small hands was a strange pink pill that promised healing and restoration of strength. 
He hardly realized that the main character was offering it to him because he had just woken up and didn't understand what it was all about yet. It was a pink pill that was very expensive at the time. He knew that this pill was able to widen the channels and improve the physical and mental state of a person a lot. The protagonist asked him to keep it a secret from the others. He urged him to swallow the pill first and then transfer some of his energy so that the recovery process would be faster and more effective. He was amazed and confused by such a suggestion, especially since he had previously thought of the protagonist as an enemy. Now he was faced with the choice of honoring the promise or refusing and abandoning his prejudices. With anxiety and indecision in his heart, he slowly took the pill and tried to imagine how it would affect his future and his relationship with the rest of the students. The main character was very, since he had found a way to use these pills and improve his relationship with the others. He was excited that everyone else would feel that they owed him and feel something so similar to affection. The next morning came, and at this time a junior mentor was watching all the training. As he looked around and analyzed the situation, he realized that the ball technique of these students had become more stable. He noticed that they are doing the same lunges, but their sharpness and confidence is on several times. In each step, the body felt strong, and even the sharpness of the sword had increased several times. He was surprised that in such a short time they had all improved their technique several levels higher. Then he remembered our hero's words that he would train these kids to the level of junior masters in this month. But still he couldn't believe that all this had become a reality because of some morning training. When he looked at his students, he saw the fire in their eyes. He was very happy because he had never seen it before. Then he turned to everyone saying that their swords had not lost their life. And it was nice to see the fervor of training reflected in your eyes. He says that he is thinking of giving them the mist blade technique beforehand, since they have improved their Fesian condition in the meantime. He says that he will definitely give this technique to them to learn after they finish learning the previous ones. Everyone was surprised that the third generation would learn this secret technique, and they thought that they were probably the exception. Having been rewarded for their efforts, the honored ones will try harder if the circle of good children are worthy ball players to represent this school. Then the older mentor walked out of that building and told the younger mentor to follow him. The junior mentor didn't expect this and asked why the senior master had called him and how he could help him. Then the master says that they probably have some kind of problem since the six interaction technique from the chess that Chung Meng found. He tells him to check the last page. When the younger master saw what was there, he was not only surprised. He was completely dumbfounded. He was telling the master that this could be one of the big problems that it was written there that the teachings should be endless and changing and improving. But the principle of the six interactions is the foundation and the skeleton of this school. To change the six interactions is like turning the soul of this school inside out. I hope posterity will remember this unbreakable truth. The six interactions are the foundation that has sustained this school for many years. Every teaching begins as soon as the principle of the six interactions is mastered. Then the junior master says that the age has already changed. Why should they hold on to it? Then the head says that the sixfold principle is very slow to be mastered. Isn't that why everyone has been racking their brains to create a blade of the true sixfold principle? That's why he came to listen to his opinion as he said Hua Shan decided to keep the six interactions and base the blade on the true principle of six interactions. The words of the ancestors are very important as they wrote everything they knew and verified. These spellings are the centuries of experience of all the ancestors. The words of the elders are like a guide for the descendants as they have already been verified. Every school does its best to follow the path of the ancestors. But how can one go against the will that is so clearly stated in these spellings? He says that he is the one who teaches the children in Huashan. He cannot ignore the opinion of the one who stands at the origin of teaching these young boys. He asks that he not be shy and say what he thinks whether he followed tradition or chose to change. This school was at the bottom, and his were not numbered because of this head-created true blade principle, saying that they couldn't afford to procrastinate on training followers. The gate sign could fall at any moment. Now he asks the master if he can discern the future of this school. He says that things have improved a lot compared to the past, but because of a whole load of problems, we have only been able to resolve one problem with difficulty. The master then says that the issue is not an easy one, but we still need to solve this issue. He says he understands he can't give a clear answer. Then he says he is against this change and says it is not easy. 
He says the Blade of True Principle and the six interactions have the same origins, but the teachings are completely different. The teachings of the six interactions are slow and heavy, but have strong foundations. Whereas the Blade of True Principle is easy to learn, very fluid, and because of this children learn quickly. And he says that he has already passed on the foundation of introduction to combat to them. If you throw everything away and start teaching them the six interactions, it might not bear any fruit. Moreover, to succeed in the six interactions, you need stability in your feet and serious intentions. Then the master asks, What is the importance of steadiness in the feet and serious intention? Then the younger master turns around and sees his students. He also sees that they have steady legs and they are more than persistent and confident in their serious intentions. Then the older master begins to chill the younger master because all the students have become so strong in such a short time. But the younger master is embarrassed since it's not his doing. He looks at the group of students and sees our main character there, as he stood out a lot among the others. He strongly then, he asks for a little time tired and says that he has to ask one child something. So after our protagonist joins this important conversation, they ask him slow steps to the very top or quick and instant results. They give him only two choices and ask him which one is for this school. To this difficult question, Chang Meng answers that of course it is to the very top. He says that for a school like Huoshan, this is the only way, and there is no other way for such a school to consider. Also, as an addition says that the unshakable confidence in this school is a piece of the lost past sounded from the junior. Normal school fits the second option, but this school fits most likely the second option answers our protagonist. To regain the former glory and make the name of this school rumble all over the world, they must accept the reality. The master was surprised by the junior's answers as he unraveled the hidden meaning in the words of the junior master. When he asks that they have to put up with it because it's Huoshan. Then our protagonist replies that this is just his opinion and they may not even consider such an opinion. The elder master even says that he was ashamed because who would have thought that a child could do such a thing? He sees our hero as a wise and mature man. Then Junior says that it may be just a boy's empty words, but he may not bend to reality just because he is young. Also, to add to this, the younger master says that he does not want to feel confronted by this boy. This short dialogue overnight turned into a huge snowball, I determined the choice. It's not a trivial matter. Hard work will lay the foundation for the road that will follow this school. After this long deliberation, the senior master turns to the junior master. He says what he commands in the name of the head of this school from now on. They change the basic technique of the true principle to six interactions, much to our junior master's surprise. He says it's not just about the six interactions and they must revise all the teachings of this school. Your role as master of the Salt Plum Pavilion is more important than ever. The school cannot leave in limbo because this is the great school which has only a bright future ahead of it. He who walks under the name of this school must strive to become better and better to be the strongest in this world. He says that it is the duty and vocation of the followers of this school. These children of its future may not happen in their lifetime, but as long as these children do not give up in Huashan, there is a chance to regain its former glory. At this time, the main character is angry that they are asking such stupid questions he has already laid all the groundwork and they just had to make the right choice. He says that it is necessary to face the truth in the eyes of these losers cannot do anything to thick. He says that he is sure that there, and this time, they all will go wrong. Anyway, we need to go back to the city to look into other things about this school. Since this school is now in such a position that any bad cooperation from the outside can lead to total destruction. He's saying what's probably going on in the businesses as well. He assumes that there's a lot of nonsense and confusion going on in the enterprises. He is angry that without him this school has not returned anything, and he said it very loudly, and everyone was surprised by this behavior. All the former troubles of this school are over, and finally this peaceful moment has come to this area. All the problems were solved as if nothing had happened before. The problems with the technicians and also the economic situation became much better. It would seem that the happy laughter should not fade, however, at this moment, there was another new problem related to this school. He says that things in this school are much worse than they seem and should rather be dealt with quickly so that the economic situation is not even worse. He was at this point talking to a student who has been together for a long time. He asks that they speak simply and precisely. Our main character asks if he is some rich son of some merchant. 
He says this because he has heard from someone that he is some kind of heir to great riches. But the one in turn replies that all this is nonsense. His father is an ordinary merchant who lives a simple life. But the protagonist replies that he has something from his father because he notices everything absolutely quickly and is very good with money. After all this, he says that he should just look at the situation that has arisen in this school. He especially asks him to express his opinion about money. Suddenly, some hype even gets in on this, and they just turn around to realize. They see then in some men who quarrel over some tea that this tea is too bitter and expensive for such an establishment. Then they come back to the problem. They say that it's all about the men who were originally in charge of the yard. Then the silhouette of the crooks appeared in our protagonist's mind. Then the student says that they had some authority, so when they left, many of the workers quit as well. To be precise, they had not authority, but perfect relations with the school authorities and influential bloodlines. And if you pay attention, all those who quit were either their relatives or family members. Then our protagonist asks if there are any problems with the staff that should work in this month and in this sphere. Then the disciple says that this is one of the problems and there is not one but a whole bunch of them. He says that the elders of this school is the biggest problem is that they do not know how to run a business. In other words, the current state of this school at this point in time is not able to sustain the business. It is like putting a pearl necklace on a pig. He says the problem is with the leadership because they don't know how to run a profitable business for this school. And because of people like them, there are problems with fees and salaries. There are a lot of problems with the interconnection of merchants among themselves and even with ordinary civilians. What he's saying is that we need to make sure that a certain person figures out and is responsible for the finances of this school. If such a person is not found, there will be more and more problems with the adjustment from ordinary citizens to large enterprises. It is necessary that the work and everything else should be fair and just to the attitude of all people involved in this transaction. He says that by choosing easy ways and high-quality ingredients, one cannot even wait by using cheap products. By using cheap ways and solutions to this problem, they are likely to lose not only guests, but their own citizens. And if they hire entrepreneurs not coping on their own, they will leave the workers penniless. But to this, our protagonist replies that it is not too late to learn, and each person must improve in every aspect of his life. To this he replies that it is most likely difficult to teach 40-year-old children something, as they are already formed personalities. He also tells him that they have a big problem with the fact that they have a problem with food selection. He says that there is likely to be a problem with ordinary people coming to buy, and he will buy without even knowing the price of the material. He thinks that they will not only take all the money of this common man and the bones possess. He assumed that from the very beginning, it was clear that nothing will work out. Only then did the protagonist realize how great a man his foreman was who was handling all the business at the time. He was frustrated that at that time he did not have to do anything and also all these jobs were done by the head. Then our protagonist asks what I need and what to do in order to fix this terrible situation. Then the student says that if he had the talent to find a solution, he would have already taken over the family business and would have made a mountain of money with it. Even his father probably can't figure it out. Plus. It's a very complicated problem, and it can only be solved by a certain genius who knows a lot about money in their situation. Most likely, it will be very difficult to find such a person. To run such a business, there must be at least a competent merchant who knows good merchandise. There are no such people in this town. If only Mr. Huang would do it, there would be no need to worry about anything, as he is the smartest and also the most responsible person in this field. This man is one of the great ones who could take such measures to improve all business conditions. He is one of the most influential merchants who acts without partiality under his management goods, not only from Shanghai, but also from other areas of this country, are transported everywhere. He has been sponsoring Huashan for a long time, and many people know about it only with his help. Huashan has continued to exist until now. Then our protagonist does not stop asking about what he is for this school, why he looked after, and why he also sponsored this already crisis school. And such questions of the students became awkward, and he realized that our protagonist does not understand anything. But still on questions, he says that he knows nothing, and most likely there is no right answer, but he once heard about some rumors. That he cares about this place, but he also sponsors some other schools in other cities in this country. 
Anyway, he's never had any serious problems under him. He's been giving advice and support for a long time. Then the question arises, can he just go and ask him for a helping hand? If he is such a kind person who has been helping since a long time, he probably won't refuse even now. When the disciple explains that there's no way to meet or even talk to Mr. Huang because he's been sick for over a year. They meet a junior master who also happens to be near them. They, as students of such a great school, begin to greet each other first and then only ask what the junior master wants. Junior master greeted and asked our hero to go to the main pavilion in a short time. The protagonist was surprised by such a request as this house is located on the slope of a steep mountain where even birds can't reach, he asks the junior master to send there some elders who are stronger than him. In turn, the junior master says that this is not the case, and even so he does nothing, and gives a message to be delivered to the head or to the pavilion of finance. He says that this is an urgent matter and should not be delayed. It turns out to be a letter from the Milky Way Trade Guild, so you have to be careful with it because it's a very important letter. He hands over the letter, trusting that our protagonist will deliver it in a short time and won't cause any problems. The student notices it and was surprised that the situation from their conversation was so coincidental. Then the apprentice says that it's the guild of the same Mr. Juan. The junior master says this letter is very urgent and urgent, so we should go right away and deliver it at least before sunset. Chung Meng receives this letter and says that he will handle it much faster as it is a very important letter and will be very careful with it. Once he's gone to a place where he won't be disturbed, he opens the letter when he thinks it's not a letter from Mr. Huang the head of the local road, but rather a letter from his subordinate since Mr. Huang has been unwell for a year. Then he was very happy because he was so lucky to get his hands on this very good and useful thing. When he opens this letter, he notices that this letter was sent personally to the head of the school. If there's an urgent message in his head from the distracted gentleman, it means something's happened to him. Then he starts to use his for read the contents. Since we're doing this, we need to help each other out. Maybe we should help each other out, too. He carefully removes this badge from the paper so the contents won't be damaged and no one will know about it. It said that it had been a long winter and that buds were swelling on the trees. He feels immensely ashamed of the ambassador and the letter after so long of silence. However, he directly has to inform him as his father's health is deteriorating day by day. As you know, they should accept the inevitable Berea during his father's age, however. Lately, the senile disease surprisingly appears not as it should other symptoms have begun to appear. Pulse racing like a frantic affair, the body breaks off in a red color as if liters of blood are escaping from the veins. He is unconscious and can't move, and also this black mark on the bridge of his nose. It's all very strange. No one has ever seen such symptoms before. Then only one idea came to the protagonist's mind. Most likely, this disease was projected by demonic energy. He had encountered such a thing before, since he himself had fought a great demon and won there. The letter said that they had invited famous doctors from a provincial city to observe the course of his father's illnesses, but none of them could make an accurate diagnosis. Absolutely all the doctors they invited said that they had never met such a thing in their lives and referred to some strange disease that they did not know. Grasping at the last straw, he says that he started sending letters to people close to his father and himself. Dear Chapter, If you suddenly know the symptoms of his father's illness, he will be very grateful for feedback no matter what way. To anyone who will share information about the illness and symptoms of his father, who is now bedridden and not even come into being. He guarantees a huge reward in the name of the Milky Way Trade Guild. This letter he certainly wishes and will wait for good news from them. Regards Junior Heir Huang Zheng Yi of the Milky Way Trading Guild. Cheng Meng is angry that usually doctors can't cure such a thing, as they have no idea where this disease came from. Mo Huashan Devil Flower. The external symptoms are similar to poisoning with strong poison. Of course, the only way to treat the patient is to neutralize the poison. However, the reason why he can't calm down is because the symptoms of devil flower are caused by the demonic sect's special technique, which will poison not only the body but also the qi flow which is the basis of everything in the human body. The protagonist thought he had exterminated all the members of the demonic sect in Shiwan Dashan, and who knew that their legacy was still being passed on. He became uneasy as he realized that there was something plotting in this city, and it was something very huge. He is angry that these people are most likely even feeding off the hatred of his home school.
It makes him very angry because when something bad happens anywhere, it will somehow be connected to Hua Zhan's school. Why was it necessary to make a fuss about Mr. Hua Zhan? When he wants to look at the content again and fully analyze the whole meaning of the text. It's hard to say it's the devil's flower based on the contents of the letter. He has to see for himself first. But still, he was very attracted by the amount of reward written on this paper. It's a great way to get rich and make good money, and he has no choice but to go there himself. According to Cho Gol, the money is so much that it can provide for years even a small country, and how much would be a huge payoff in their mind? If during his century-long absence, the war between the demonic sect and that provincial town didn't break out again, then few people know about the devil flower. And besides, those who could recognize the symptoms fell at the hands of that demon that day at Shiwan Dashan Hollow. But still the world is not so predictable. Who knows? Maybe some of them survived and are still living. Well, if anyone else receives this letter, they'll lose the opportunity to make a good living. After thinking about it for a millisecond, he didn't even hesitate and went on his way. He thinks to himself that some insolent man dare not take such a good client from his hands. For the sake of money or even for the sake of morality, he should be the one to make the decision. By all means, he will do everything himself, and even the reward will not come from the school, but from his personal person. Let's move to another part of the province where the students are arguing that they could just rent a permanent courtyard in the city because it's inconvenient for them to go downstairs in the morning and upstairs in the evening. It's very draining for them because it takes a lot of time because the distance between the city and the school is so long. Then Joe Gold turns to the eldest. He runs like lightning and shouts something, but he shouts couldn't hear what he meant. And hear what he then Joe Gole says that it's an urgent problem, and he has to be accompanied by a senior to solve this difficult problem. When they went inside, the elder saw that it was the absence of our protagonist in his room. He's yelling that where did this boy go at such an important moment and at night? He decided to get out of here in the dark like that. Then the student says that it's not the most important thing, and that he should pay attention to the paper he left behind. The letter said that he had a body and would be out for a couple of days, and had to come up with some excuse and if they missed training. It's gonna hurt his back, so don't skip any training. What he's saying is that you have to make arrangements with the others so they don't tell the master, and even if they tell the master now, the effect will be the same. Since he said he'll be back in a couple of days until then, there's no way to cover up his absence. If only they weren't looking for him today, the elders wouldn't care about the younger third-generation students. He says he cares a lot, but he's got to trust him, and then maybe it'll work itself out. He still doesn't understand what he will do that he will be away for a few days. At this time, our protagonist has traveled several miles. He stopped to rest and realized that the distance of about a hundred kilometers, he cannot even jump over two jumps. He remembers that in the old days, he could cross an entire mountain in one leap. And he could cross a wide river in two jumps. He says that walking such distances didn't take so much energy. Then he notices the beautiful buildings and colors that surround him. It was the provincial town he needed. Once he was here to get a break from the hustle and bustle that greeted him at school, usually he would take a walk, and while he was walking, usually someone would notice him, and you could say even harass him. At one point, he remembers that he once bumped into a man when he was walking past him. Then he lost his sake, which was very dear to him, not because it cost a lot, but because it was given to him by his favorite teacher. When he asked them to just give him his sake, the other said that he should apologize for touching him in some way. He says that he is a student of the great school that is on this land and on this city. It is more accurate to say that it belongs to this school. The protagonist then got angry that they called his school's honor to the bottom and said that people like them will never become great like their school. Then he once again asked them to just pick up and give him back what was dear to him, and then he would let them go and not drink to blood. But they refused and said that such trash as he was should not be here, and now they would teach him a lesson. Each of them thought that he was stronger than our protagonist because they were confident in their skills. And the other, in turn, thought that he would celebrate this victory and remember and tell his master. Then one of them told him to swoop down on them at once, and most likely even they would give him some chance. And after they beat him up, they wouldn't finish him off. Our protagonist was extremely angry at such words as he didn't expect the students of another school to be so brazen. Then he silently approached them and started to use his technique somehow. While using his technique, he simply kicked his bottle with his feet so that it would rise up and distract their attention. 
When the bottle flew off, he moved to the direction of the enemies in an instant, and with one swing struck them all. The next thing he did, it was very interesting since he had just picked up his possessions. It turns out his technique was so strong that everyone distinguished with one swing and was hung in a second. When everyone had already fallen, he went to the other side of town with a calm soul. Only then did he notice that his gift that he had received from the master in which was his sake had already been emptied because it had fallen. Why did it start like this, I wonder? It's the great neighboring schools that can't have good relations in the first place. They had much in common. Their schools followed the same dogma, learned the art of swordsmanship and so on. That's why they competed even in small things. But above all, when the question of who was stronger than them or the others came up, there was nothing left but to bear the blade because it was a question of honor. And so it came to pass that when they met the followers of another school, the disciples felt, and of course they tried not to appear in this city. But it was not for him this city where he could rest without being seen by his elders, but he could not come here often. Of course, he was harassed a lot, but he never got into it with his fists. Plus, they always found him first and attacked him in droves, but it didn't matter how many people attacked him, he could handle them all. Once there was a time when almost the whole school attacked him, but the outcome of the battle was obvious our protagonist could not be stopped. But still, it's worth giving credit for their fortitude for a hobby they don't know how to get bruises. They can't be again. It's that fortitude that made this school stronger and put them on the world stage and showed their name all over the world. And that's the only reason why anything can happen between them, because they are always competing with each other. But still our protagonist thought that nothing so serious would happen. There's no one looking for him in the past because it's been over a hundred years. At this time at the room of Mr. Milky Way, something strange happens. The doctor who examined the father of the current head says that this case is very serious, and in a short time it is necessary to get rid of this disease, or at least find the source. Then the son thinks that even the master of the Tan Clan, nicknamed the Lord of Poison, can't cure his father. He was so sickened by what he heard that he hoped that this man would somehow be able to deal with the problem. Then he says that our kind is the best among those who know about poisons. But even so, he can't help because this disease is not caused by poison. But the son did not understand why the symptoms are so similar to poison poisoning, and the doctor replies that even if the symptoms are similar to poison, the disease is definitely not caused by poison. Then the son realized that the cause was definitely something else. It scared him because he didn't know what else he could do to help his father. So he grabbed the doctor and started asking him what the problem was and what it could be. He apologizes for doing such a bad thing and says he knows it's not the doctor's fault, but he's so upset because he doesn't understand what's wrong. Then he sat down with his father and thought what he could do, maybe call someone who lives in a faraway land and somehow might know about the disease. And his father is getting worse and worse every day. Even the huge money doesn't help them in any way. All his life he worked in sweat for the poor, and now he dies of an unknown disease after spending a whole year in suffering. That this is in no way fair and even too cruel for such a man. Then a man knocks on the door. He was a huge man in his forties. He had a kimono that meant he was a master of this school. His name is Ki Mok Sung, and it turns out he is the master and elder of Jongnan when he tells this heir to humble himself since there is no new way out. Even the most famous clan sent their best doctor, and even he couldn't do anything about the disease. He tells this junior that the only way to save him from this disease is with Huang Downey. It's a memorial rite in Taoism. But the current head says he knows what he's talking about. But he doesn't want to resort to that kind of thing yet. But the man says that it is not often that the head of the great Jongnan school offers to personally perform the ritual, and says that he can't understand that such honors are bestowed only because of the head of the Huan. Then the son said that his letters had not been answered yet, and that he would make a decision only when he had received feedback from everyone. Of course he realizes that it all sounds when stupid, he just hopes for a last chance that someone unknown will come, and by some miracle cure this severe disease. The reason he has to put up with it and let it pass by is simple. It's because it's coming from the elder of this school. In the past, this school was renowned as one of the nine great schools. But recently, it's been ranting around the world as a synonym for the word combination, invincible force. Well, it took a few generations for it to rise to the rank of the world's best fencing school. Besides, since ancient times, this school has had a strong influence on this city. 
If you're aging at the school, he's not even the head of the trade guild. He's just the successor. He has no right to reject it. And if this troop were to be brought in now, he would again demand a huge sum in payment for this right. He's not sorry for the money. He's willing to give up all his possessions, if only it will help his father. But if they were really sure that it would save his father, they wouldn't ask for payment in advance of the ritual. So they're up to something. It doesn't make sense because even the renowned doctors couldn't cope with the disease, and even they don't know what the disease is, how they can save his father. During this thinking, the room they are in, someone knocks, and he and the master of this school turn around together. It was an ordinary worker of this school and this town who just wanted to say that, at the moment, this man is being looked for by a man who came from Huashan itself. This was surprising because he had sent the message to Huashani, one of the last ones. At best, it should have only just arrived. However, the school had already sent a person this was surprising, and at the same time, strange. This master leaked that a person from another school just in Huashan came and is doing whatever he can think of in this town. He gets angry at this and says that this is in no way acceptable because this person is from a school that doesn't even appreciate the history of Zheng Nan. He also says that it's a waste of time to give such a person any time at all since you should always expect trouble from them instead of good. He also says that a lot of things have happened to Hua Shan during this time, and with their current condition, they can't even heal a scratch. But to this, the son says that he himself has bound the neighboring people and will not bend them out of such a long way. It will be unfriendly to the attitude of the other school and also not responsible on his part. Then he asks this assistant, where are the gentlemen who came from distant lands from Hua Shan? And the assistant says that they are still waiting for you at the main gate. He is angry that he has left the guests who have come from far away languishing at the gate. The aide says that he was going to escort him out, but the situation is completely unreasonable, and he could not make such arrangements. Coming out of his mouth, he apologizes for his ignorance and introduces himself as the future head of the Milky Way Trade Guild, Wang Zheng Yi. He says that it's all his fault that the servants are not brought up properly, and he just apologizes for his lack of farsightedness. When he notices that the man has painfully small feet for such guests and for the age he expected, he thought that it might be some old man, and it could not be some little boy who had come and traveled such a great distance in a short time. Then as he looked, he saw a very immature little boy who was just standing there and had probably been waiting for them for a long time. Then he asked if he came alone. Our protagonist says that he came alone and he knows the way to cure Mr. Juan, so we should bring him to him soon. Then he says that first, he wanted to check what your huge reward from the letter means. Such an outcome of events very much surprised the current owner of the Milky Way. Our protagonist all the time waiting for him this opportunity and earned fabulous money. His face and sweet smile amazed everyone with one look. At that time, he thought that this school would not put the Milky Way Guild in any way since they had sent such a young kid for such an important request. Then Master Zhang Nam leaves and says that the fear mongers from this Huangshan school don't even have the sense to see each other since they don't even have the manners to send a more worthy person. They don't know anything, but they don't want to stay away. They're ashamed to show their faces, so they send a young man. He's saying what he heard the Huashan chief is a noble man, but to use such a stupid trick even within their competence was too strong and impudent. Our protagonist didn't understand this kind of treatment because of his age. He thought he should diffuse the situation. He bends down and says that he was a little late with the greeting and makes a bow towards the others. He says that he is very much a third-generation Huashan Changmeng, and he has scrutinized their letter. After that, he immediately came here because he has some guesses about the symptoms mentioned in the letter. Then the guild leader asks if he really has any guesses about his father's illness, and he notices that he is the only person who immediately said such words. They've been visited by countless doctors and masters, but none of them have ever talked about symptoms before examining his father. Then the head of this school says that he is a young man who has already learned to fool and deceive respectable people. He tells young Constantine not to listen to him and asks him to go back inside, because it's not worth wasting their time. The protagonist says that he doesn't mean anything by it. He just wanted to see, and if possible, help them to cure such an important person. Then they ask, who is he to treat him like that? Then the man begins to lash out at the fact that such a young man speaks with such a tone that he is the master of the whole continent. He starts shouting that he should have been brought up from childhood to respect others 
and not to interrupt during the conversation. Looking at this boy, he thinks since when other schools don't teach or inform about schools like Jenin, also they are in essence and they must surely know such a great and dominant school like theirs. Then our protagonist responds by saying that he originally thought he was some kind of official since he started talking with such a facial expression. He also asks if he is such a master, why don't they cure this gentleman? And that master says that this man is not sick but has simply strayed from the path of Taoism. And the only way to cure him is to accept and lead the ritual. In turn, our protagonist says that if it is so, it is better to call some shamans who are more knowledgeable in such matters. After all, their schools are very similar in many aspects, and he knows for sure that the usual master, even who has achieved everything and remade still, cannot remove the curse. He says that if they have already decided to do it, they should find a place where the costs are lower. Then the man gets angry and says that you are laughing at the elders and this is what your head taught you. He starts shouting to the young gentleman that it is not necessary to listen to such a little boy, and it is already time to go inside and not to waste time. In turn, the young master says that he wants to listen to what this little boy has to say. Because of the fact that the young master did not listen to the words of such a great fighter, he becomes angry and simply begins to be silent. He turns to the protagonist and asks him to ask him a couple questions first to decide the final exodus. He says that he said he had a hunch about his father's illnesses, so could he elaborate on that? Chung Meng says that he heard rumors that the head often traveled on trade affairs and expeditions. Then he's sure that on one of these he traveled near the Shuangdashan Hollow. After some thought, the young gentleman says that his father never even came close to passing through this place. Then the protagonist says that during this time he was probably attacked while traveling. The young master replies that no one has ever been attacked in the past five years. After this, the youngest heir was upset because he was hoping that this kid would be able to handle the problem he was given. That man says that from the very beginning, Huashan has been a school of vagabonds fooling people, which is not hard to guess by looking at his impertinent command. Then the younger heir says he should understand him. He sees his desire to help, but his father's illness is too serious. Any rash action could worsen his condition. He tells him to go back to his school, Yes Darkness, and start closing the main gate of this estate. He asks that he tell the chapter that he is grateful for the help he has given. Then Chung says that his father's symptoms are blood-colored body and chills. Then he recalls the doctor's words that if he presses his hand, his father's red skin will change to white and then turn red again. Before losing his large island, Black Key has accumulated not only on the bridge of his nose, but also on the rest of his body. Then he opens the gate abruptly and asks how this boy knows the symptoms of his father's illness. Then he apologizes for his previous statement and asks him to come in and see his father. Then the schoolmaster says that this young man just listed the symptoms characteristic of a surge. Then the young heir says that this man didn't just guess but knew about the symptoms since black spots don't usually appear in a key surge and he asks if he himself knew about such diseases, why he himself did not deal with this problem and did not cure his father. Master couldn't say anything because he didn't expect such an outcome. It was obvious from his face that he was hiding something else. Then he says that he will no longer let them get in the way for no reason, and if you continue, you can be sure that they will officially oppose the Jongnan school. After hearing this, Master left and was only angry at the main in Hero A and the younger Milky Way heir. All when our protagonist looked at this old man, he thought things would be much worse, because his condition was very weak. He looked at the old man's body, then realized that he would still be able to fix it. He knew for sure that it wasn't poison, but was a disease that was caused by demonic energy. Because when he analyzed it, he realized that it was the work of some immature person who didn't know about magic. If the master had used his power, the old man wouldn't have lasted a year. So he takes the old man's hand and uses chi to detect and neutralize this energy. He says that his father's condition is too predictable for me because now he is on the verge of life and death. The junior tutor was very worried and realized that this boy would not succeed, but still he says thank you for his efforts. After a few seconds, when he looked at his father's face, he sees some changes. Slowly his body regains its normal color. He was distraught because he didn't expect this from the boy. He had long ago accepted that there was no cure for this disease, but out of nowhere came this miracle. At this time, the hero says that now he has done everything so that he did not die, but now it is necessary to get ready, and we should start with breakfast, because he's come a long way, and he hasn't eaten anything.
Here they are already at the table at this time. Our main character is raiding all the dishes and eating hippopotamus. At the table, the junior mentor asks what he should prepare to cure his father. In turn, the protagonist says that the treatment of his father takes a lot of effort and he needs to eat well. He also says that the cook who prepares all this food is an excellent cook. After such easy words, the youngest heir has some doubts about him. But still looking at what has happened, it is hard for him not to believe as all this can be explained by one word miracle. Then our main character that to tell the truth and treatment of his father is not the first matter of importance. First of all, it is necessary to find the reason that he is sick. When he says that it is necessary to ask the youngest heir some questions about topics of interest to him, he asks for his time, which people are the closest to him, and which play an important role in the life of the head. Watching the head's entourage, who accompanies him from his sleeping quarters to his expeditions, or token on whom no suspicion would ever be cast. This question surprised the younger Nastenik, and he asks why it is very important for the sake of curing his father. He says that to exclude him, there are many claimants who are close people to their head. All these people are close to his father, even the closest people in his life after him, of course. There are at least five people matching his description, and finding that person will not be easy. He asks what after all this man is looking for and for what. Someone from the outside, since this disease he could not intercept during the expedition, and no one attacked him. So it's up to his people to take care of him and pretend the chapter is part of his life. The apartment is just... This time the younger heir is not on a joke angry. He asks our hero to watch his expressions. He says that all the members of the trade guild to each other as a family bringing life together with the Milky Way all deeply respect his father. But to this, the protagonist replies that it's good if no one is suspected in such a case, if it's all true. It's only for the best. Then he says that he shouldn't worry. And yet all this will be investigated. The state judge, who was not skillful in using the demonic technique, constantly injected the demonic technique. It didn't say so at first, but he worked tirelessly for a long time. The only question the younger heir asked was how he was going to conduct this investigation. It's already started since he and he started talking in this room. You just have to watch our protagonist answered. Soon all the fun will begin, as the investigation will lead to unexpected decisions and consequences, then he asks the younger heir to do him a favor. He laughingly says he needs another bottle to loosen him up. During this time somewhere, that man says that not only is the child a school with all the honors of entering this city and this building, but his name is like that unkillable man. He remembers the name Noble Plum Blossom Blade. Then he represents the very man who was on top of everything. Then a second second generation student of Jongnan School asks what the Noble Plum Blossom Blade is. The master says that such a noble title doesn't suit this little brat. Then this disciple says that if you talk about another school, he'll lose his temper. It's been 100 years since his Plum Blossom style was buried, but it's still on everyone's lips how great this man was. This master is angry that this situation is getting out of hand. This boy has got the whole village up in arms, promising to cure the head of the Juan, and how can he not be alarmed? He asks if you think it's possible that this little boy can somehow cure the head, because they're already saying there's been an improvement. If this child can cure him, the head won't just turn his back on Huang Shan, who saved his life. He must be throwing all his strength to help them and think it's not good and must be stopped. He turns to the elder and says if this child causes so much trouble, they can just kick him out. If the elder himself intervenes personally, he'll be in a lot of trouble, and he'll be in a lot of trouble. They're second-generation students, and it probably wouldn't even occur to anyone if a student from a second-generation school and a student from another school got into a fight. The older one says that's not going to happen because they don't harass kids. Then the student says there won't be much of a problem if they accidentally bump into each other and get a little overzealous during the showdown. Besides, there's an assembly of all the masters coming up. It'll be a great excuse to have an event where students from other schools exchange blades. The master says what he understands and hears him, but he still can't agree. He is a third-generation student after all. If you offer him a duel, you will damage the prestige of the school. One of them says how the masters will look at them if they touch a child from a failing school. When he says that he'll take note that the master doesn't insist on it. But he says that it's okay if one of the students makes a mistake and takes the appropriate punishment. He looks at his master and says that still this student will raise the harshest punishments that there will be. The master says that it is a matter of course that whoever touches this child will be punished by him personally and in addition with a huge reward. 
They say that it is only natural that they look upon the Huashan as a shame at the time of their birth. The affairs of the Huashan were already going downhill. But in his Huashan youth, there was no school that Zhong Nan could bring under him. If the demonic sect's attack hadn't crippled Huashan now until now, Zhong Nan wouldn't have been able to overtake it. He's saying that it shouldn't happen from this school and can't go back to those times. He left Hua Shan and came all the way to this school, so it's safe to say they're going back to the beginning. He already thought that they had trampled them into the mud and they would never be able to revive again. He would talk to the head once the matter was resolved. A second-generation apprentice asks another what they plan to do with the child, and he says that after a few minutes of fighting, he'll hurt him a little and then they'll let him go right away. Even though he doesn't like to mistreat the kid, it's no good if someone like the elder steps in to fight with the kid. He's thinking what the school was thinking when they sent a kid like that out of the gates alone. But most likely the school has a different upbringing and the rules are different. They say that they don't need to know what other schools are doing. It's already clear what's going on in Huashan is complete nonsense. He says that you can't go off topic and now you just have to help the haircutters solve the problem. Then they freeze up on them because they see something ahead. They are happy that they don't even have to look for him, and then, of course, they see our protagonist. Chung Meng immediately notices some strange feeling of rage, and then he turns around and... He sees a student who says that he is very happy to meet a student of another school, and says that his name is Li Siong Baik, and he is a second-generation student of this school. He asks if he can tell him where he's going, and our protagonist replies to the head of the Huan. He asks why and what his purpose is in going to such a great man as the head. He says that he wants to see if there's any improvement after he's already done something about it. The disciple, because he thinks that no elders or famous doctors have been able to cure the head of Huang from where a child can do it. Besides, judging from the loud words about the treatment of the head of Huan, it can be said that he is not clean. He asks if it's not too much trouble. Can our protagonist give him a few minutes? He says that the thing is that since ancient times, these schools have been exchanging combat experience to improve their skills. Even now, they have periodic meetings to share knowledge and temper their swords. In turn, our protagonist replies that he has just joined some school and did not know about such customs between schools. Holding his sword behind him, he says that he assumed that this little boy about such a thing does not even make any sense. If he had ever attended an assembly, he wouldn't have answered so rudely and with his head held high. Then he began to say that experiencing the Huashan sword would greatly help his learning and further development. He said that it would not be worthwhile to exchange experiences and further develop together and become much stronger than before. The fact that he will still refuse even knew nothing cannot help but feel that the opponent is not up to you. However, he has a couple of ways to hold back this boy. The protagonist was not happy about this and says that this is just a fight between students and not an equal fight that will help both sides. But in turn, this second-generation student says it's not a fight. It's just an exchange of knowledge. But he says that a challenge is a challenge, and notices that the second-generation student's hands are shaking without knowing why. He says, come on, he always accepts a challenge to a fight. He'll just say one thing. He says that after this fight, and even during this fight, he did not regret this decision, asking our protagonist to say his rank. Our protagonist says he doesn't have any rank and his name is just Chang Meng. He says he probably doesn't even need to have any knowledge to fight like this. In turn, this second-generation disciple says he's about to give advice to a young child. He says that he should think that he has done nothing wrong, but the world does not judge who is right and who is wrong. He tells him to go back to his school before he gets more angry and if he fails now. When he's interrupted, our protagonist says there's no need to fight because the students of this school are only in chatter and competes first and why the time of this empty words. After that, they were very angry, but he still calmed down his friend, just showing his confidence. But it was obvious that he was very angry. He thought that he was not taught education, and now he will teach a lesson. Then he says that there is no point in being nice to him and stays his stand and greets his opponent. Then our protagonist looks at another student from this school and tells him to lend his sword. They reacted very strangely to this. As in the great schools, each student must have his own sword. But at this arcana, the hero replies that he didn't bring his sword to this school because he came to heal the head of this guild and didn't come here to fight. He says, okay, if they won't give him a sword to fight with, he will find another sword that looks like a sword. These words really pissed off, 
and this senior says that he has to give him his sword because this great school will not fight a man who has no weapon. Then this junior student throws at the protagonist his favorite ball that he got from his father. After grabbing the flying sword in our protagonist, says that he went to fight and to start attacking him. But to this, the school student says that first he must at least take the sword out of its covering. To this, the protagonist says that he is not going to kill, and there is no need to pull out the sword. Lee Sung Baek thinks that if he talks to him, he'll lose his upbringing. He was planning to scare him a little, but the kid won't understand unless he tells him straight. He thinks it's better to do the right thing. It's too late to expect favor from him, since he had made him very angry during their conversation and even all the time he was annoying him. Seeing that the student hesitates, our protagonist says that let him attack, because that's how the day will pass. Then this student gets into his famous stance for a big swing. In a second, he makes such a leap that he almost reaches our hero. He uses his personal style, which is inherited from his father, and strikes our hero with his sword, but at the same time, Jong Men fights back with his sword. But that's not all after he fights back, he notices that this student is charging at him from above, making a huge swing. But still, experience decides a lot, and this blow was also repelled with just a sword. But still, something surprised our protagonist. At this time, another student is watching him. He thinks that this fighter has spilled a lot of senior. He thinks he won't just let him go. He was attacking Chang Mian like a ravaged beast without leaving a second behind. Looking at our hero, he thinks that this boy hurt his elder too much and should have thought before doing something like that. At this time, the fight goes very hard. They fight very hard, but it's as if the Jongnan school student had the advantage. Because according to this other older student, could have killed him long ago if he wanted. But then the rumors spread that they are bullying children. This time, this student is very angry that this boy thinks too much of himself. He takes his sword in his hands and does his true technique that usually works on everyone. He takes a huge swing and hits our hero too, and he retaliates a few meters away and hurts himself very badly. But even so, our hero manages to deflect this strong blow that could have basically killed him. The student of this school was surprised that he was able to block his strong blow once again. He remembers that when he first hit him, he knew in advance where he was going to hit him, and that's where he put the block. He is angry that this little kid is somehow competing with him with the great student of this school. He thinks that our protagonist is about 15 years old. He is still young and probably even younger than his little brother. He thinks that he has been lucky all this time, and now he will finish it all in one fell swoop and put this impertinent boy on the ground. But even so, this blow was blocked very easily from the looks of it. But for our hero, it was like an ordinary game. Lee Seong Baek, who read that he is one of the strongest among his age, couldn't understand how this boy got lucky or how he deflected this punch. Then he thinks that he has to pull himself together, and the games are over. He absorbs his sword key energy and starts to use it. His true sword style that was passed down to his father by his ancestors was once a technique he had trained for the sake of great grabs from the field by worthy opponents. But after he realized that this boy is also very strong, he started to use this technique he immediately overcame a big gap and made a big swing. But at this time his junior says that he should not forget that this is a normal fight and should not do such risky actions. Well, it was too late he made his blow, and our protagonist was thrown so far that he flew away for dozens of meters, then fell immediately to the ground. He did not understand how he so adored that he fought with a small child at full force. At this time, his youngest comes up and asks him what he did and why. Then he remembers that he subdued his inner strength when he threw the punch, so that the punch was comparable to a stick. And how could this blow have such a result if even the most powerful blow didn't leave a scratch on him? Could he be thrown off by a sword devoid of internal energy? At this time from the main character flowed leaders of rivers of blood here, the student who was watching him did not understand how a man could leave so much blood. At this time he began to panic and asked what they will do with this child, and it is necessary to do something with him so that he does not die. At the same time, the hero who was fighting Chung Meng became stupor because he realized what a stupid thing he had done a moment ago. At that time, someone comes up to them and says, what the hell is going on? It was the youngest heir who saw all the devastation that had happened here. The entire fighting room had been smashed beyond recognition. And most importantly, that the health of our protagonist was at a critical level was the words of the doctor who examined him. He said that he was making a mess of the body. We should get him to a place where he could get first aid. 
Then they picked up this boy and gently carried him to the first aid place. At this time, this boy was wondering if any excuse for his action would work. The junior heir says that they are taking advantage of their high position, but he is just a child. How could they send an assassin to him? He has until now believed that this school and its followers are very wise and have a conscience that does not cross the line. He asks how he should understand those who do such things in front of his nose. He was angry and realized that it was his mistake, too, that he did not choose the right people. Turning to the disciples, he says that he will never forget this day and will never forget the incident that happened today. He turns to them and says that they should leave this guild immediately and he doesn't want to hear any excuses. At this time, the master of this school comes up to them and asks them what happened and why they are so annoyed. Then he notices that this training ground was completely destroyed and there was a pool of blood somewhere. Turning to the young master, he says that there was probably a small accident. The young master is angry that they are calling it an accident and comparing it to a small accident. The child who is treating his father was almost killed by the students of an influential school and asks, is this what you call an accident? He says what is now an accident is the absence of hidden intentions. At this time, the student says that it was just a misunderstanding. He never crossed the line and it was all an honest argument. At this point, the young master says that it's not a problem that they went overboard. It's just a boy. What was the original reason for a student from this school to raise his sword at a kid from another school? Also, sparring is not that he is very familiar with the terms of war and warfare, but he was told that sparring is when two rivals of equal betting come together in a duel to exchange combat knowledge. It's just a little boy who's come to heal his father. He's never wanted to fight anyone before. And he asks them if this is the valor and conscience of a great school like Zhongnan. He says he'll be brief. They must gather their students today and leave the guild. He says this on behalf of the Milky Way Guild's heir and acting head temporarily. The man then tells Madan San to remember that despite the unfortunate incident, the school wishes the head of the guild to recover with all his heart. Leaving the junior heir says that this is even an undeniable fact. And at the end, he says that it doesn't seem so because this case proves the opposite of what the apprentice master says. At this, the master says that now they are going back to the main mountain and he has made all this and he has to deal with it. He says that he will stay here and by any means you can pardon the master and only then he will return to the mountain. Until then, he'll be here to look after this boy and solve the problems he caused. At this time, the doctor has examined our hero and says that the situation is dangerous and his body meridians are in complete disorder. He says that now he is trying to restore them, but he can't guarantee a full recovery. And this means that his life is about halfway between life and death. The younger heir says it's all his fault because he didn't monitor the behavior of his men. He then asks when the boy will wake up, to which the doctor says that it will take at least two, three days. Looking at the younger boy, the heir hopes that during this time nothing will happen to his father's condition and that it will be stable until this boy wakes up. Because this child is the only one who was able to improve his father's condition and understood the symptoms of his illness, and most likely this is the last chance and hope to save his father. However, to attack this child and render him unconscious is the lowest of human behaviors. If I had at least a little respect for the guild and his father, they would not dare to do this, thinks the youngest heir. The cruelty and insolence that is the great school has long since exceeded all limits. During these musings, the doctor asks that can this child really learn a chapter from such a disease? He says that he does not harbor empty hopes, but this disease that has engulfed the entire body of the chapter is something inexplicable. The doctors couldn't tell him what kind of disease had befallen his father. However, the young swordsman did not even need to see his father to name the symptoms of the disease. Moreover, he had seen with his own eyes how his father had gotten much better after the fighter had applied certain techniques. Without that, he would not have succumbed to blind faith and must have come to their aid and sent this boy to him. In any case, spare no expense to make sure his recovery goes without complications, says the next heir of this guild. After this conversation, much time passed. Dinner clutched the night, and in the room where the protagonist lay, someone picked up. He was fully clothed with a cloak, his face was not visible, but it was clear that he wished something bad to our hero because he activated his demonic. The next step he attacked just immobilized Chen Meng, who at this time was just sleeping in his bed. But at the last moment, our hero manages to come back from this blow, as if he was not sleeping but waiting for this moment. 
He instantly grabbed the hand of this enemy and held it so tightly that he could not move for a second. Then looking at the enemy's face, he says that he caught him after all. This masked man just applies such a strong power that the bed on which lay and our hero was completely broken. It was already clear that he was about to kill our protagonist, but it was not to be because Chang Meng just dodged his blow. He gets angry and uses in his trump cards, as he cannot catch such an agile fighter. But his strong attack was just finished with one swing of his leg and our hero. After the masked man is pacified, Chang Meng says that he probably did not understand what is happening now. Then he says that it was not him who caught him, but he was caught red-handed, and at this time in someone walks in all the representatives of the Milky Way Guild. Absolutely everyone was surprised at what this masked man did to our hero and who he was. They ask what a master of such a great school like Jongnan Jabok is doing outside the patient's room. Then the junior heir says that initially he doubted the words of Chang Meng, but he has nothing to say about the result. Unexpectedly, the villain turned out to be the one the younger heir trusted the most and even the head of this huge corporation. Then, this man asks how he calculated that he was the man they were looking for. Our protagonist says that he was not looking for. It turns out he didn't have any assumptions about the identity of the villain. He just thought that if the one who treats Huang's head pretends to be sick, someone will definitely come to kill him. Then he asks what if he didn't come to kill him and didn't even show any signs. To this, the protagonist replies that such a thing couldn't happen because if he killed him now, all the blame could be put on the school. Was he mad about such a chance? Then he's angry that he and Junnan had already planned it in advance, and it wasn't interesting or fair in the first place. But it wasn't like that at all, because those guys just decided to tease him just in time. What about the internal injuries then? According to the doctor, the injury was so severe that even the Meridians were in a complete mess, asks that villain. Answers what he asks two obvious things, there is nothing complicated to fool one simple doctor. Then he says that he is very curious only to him with curiosity is not the right time. Now the most important thing is that he got caught in a trap and he caught the villain who was going to kill the head of Huang. And this master starts laughing and says that the fact that he tried to kill him doesn't prove his attempt on his head and says that the young master didn't believe the words of a liar like this boy. He turns to the young master and says that they are missing something important, and it is important and even illogical. Because why would he want to attack the head who had treated him well all this time and supported him every time? And isn't that why he never suspected that the villain who attempted to assassinate the head wasn't him? Then why did you try to kill the young swordsman, and why did you hide the fact that you are a martial artist? The young heir asked. And in turn, the master says that this child bewitched him and even the most famous doctors could not cure this disease of the head, as some boy will do. To this, the next one says that he should have warned him then, and he thought that it would be enough to solve the situation. The masked man says that he was confused, and yet the young lord would not listen to him. He who is bewitched will never listen to another. Then he says that killing this child was the only way to bring him to his senses so that they could continue to treat the head. All of this takes a very long time, and he wants to waste that time on someone like him, on people like him. This infuriated our hero in turn. He says that he doesn't have to think of a way out, and it's clear that he is the main villain. He says that they just don't have time to listen to his stupid excuses. Then the protagonist uses his powers to attack the masked man. He in turn starts using his fang-like technique, which in turn encompasses demonic energy and hits Chang Meng's arm squarely. It turns out that our protagonist missed the punch on purpose to show everyone. Showing his hand to everyone, he says that it's called a cinnabar monster hand. If you mark an ordinary man like that at high skill, he won't pull it, and before the first meal, his whole body will turn black and red, and he will die. Of course, now it's still so bad, but even at this level, you can kill a person, especially if it's an ordinary old man not trained in martial arts. He then says that if there was someone else near the head who could inject the energy of the cinnabar hand for a long time without arousing suspicion, then he would test his innocence. After the next master finally found out that it was all planned by this master, he ordered everyone to capture the manager. In a flash, everyone found themselves attacking the manager and were even ready to kill him since that was the order from the young master. And in turn, the manager was disappointed that he had almost reached his goal, and if he had waited a few months, he would have probably killed the head. At this time, 
The delinquent apprentice remembers his master's words that he needs to clean up his own mess and realizes that he has let his master down. He thinks it's more of a punishment than an order, but it's better than expulsion. He sees some huge smoke coming from the side where the head and his guests were resting. At this time, the battle was going on, and it was even apparent that things had gone too far, because all the guards of the Lord's mates had already been hanged. Out of the fog, our boy starts to say that he has already been exposed, and he is sure that he had good reasons, but he will tell about it all in Quana. He'll be given a fair trial in the Quan, and now we need to finish that fight quickly because our protagonist is not feeling well. He's getting angry because there's a little boy standing in his way who says he's going to punish him. Our protagonist is getting his hands cinnamoned because he's some boy from a weak school. And our boy teaches his own boy to say that he won't fight against him because there is someone better than him. Watching a second-generation student who has committed crimes, he says that he is the perfect match for it. He says that this hero is just in time to take down the main villain. After he notices he's come to save them, after he realizes this is his perfect chance to right his wrongs, he gets right down to business. In one swing and explosive jump, he had already covered that distance and was getting closer to protecting the citizens from danger. All this time, our protagonist, I just watched that this student would fight against his own teacher. He also realized that this apprentice from an illustrious clan could not fall at the hands of someone who had not mastered the martial arts. Then she turns to the junior master, saying that he didn't lie that all of this was true. He had studied the Cinnabar hand monster, but had shown his ability beforehand. Then the young master asks the video of all this if he is a swordsman and why he has other skills of other classes. Then to this, our protagonist answers that he really is a swordsman and even the most skilled in the world. At first, the fight has already passed about two hours, and at this time, Chang Meng just rested and waited for the end of the fight. But then he thought that most likely if it goes on like this, he will intervene. But after a few minutes, the whole fight was over, and the second generation disciple won. This whole video is the younger heir, and he says that he did a good job, and he will never forget this help. But he still doesn't understand how he reacts to this situation he will have to do later. Nearly a year. This boy has dealt with it in just two days was the solution really that simple. He says that it can't be if it was so simple. Why no one has even guessed the existence of the traitors until now. It's like there's a wise old master hidden in this child. He asked this young swordsman what will happen to the manager who tried to kill his father. He asks if there is no clue about this incident that happened that day. But to this question, our protagonist says that he has no idea. Then the younger heir says that he thought he acted because he guessed everything. To this, the protagonist says that his concern was just to solve the problem, and everything else that will happen in the future is Quan's concern. Because his job is just to get the money he deserves but the master says that nothing is finished yet and he didn't ask him to catch the villain. The main purpose is that he just wants to get his father back on his feet. Our protagonist says that he will take care of all this himself since that's what he came to this town for. The junior heir says that he promises to support the Huashan even if it means throwing all the forces of the trade guild. He says that this is only a small part of what he will be able to do after he heals his father. But the protagonist blurted out that he shouldn't pay Huashan. He should pay the man who cured his father's illness. It was funny, but the young master was disappointed by the protagonist's answer because he didn't expect that. After a few hours of Chung Mung sitting on a stool, thought that the only thing left was to lift the Hovan's head on his feet, and then the bodies here are finished. It's nothing difficult, and it's nice to be able to throw in some difficulties with the jerk from this school, our protagonist thinks. However, there is only one problem. He still has no confidence that he can do it. Because this case is already continuous, and this body was difficult to save, even though he said that he is omnipotent, but frankly speaking, he can't even say with certainty whether it is possible to raise this chapter on its feet. After all, he is not a noble plum blossom blade now, but an ordinary child who is just developing. Moreover, a single careless movement could cause a surge of demonic chi and weaken the body of the head would immediately die. But still, we must try to save this head by some miracle. He asks not to be hated if anything goes wrong because he is still trying to make a miracle out of nothing. He takes a hand with his head and transmits his chi through currents that this man doesn't even have. He eats these streams and through these streams enters the inner world of the head. But he only there notices one thing that was demonic chi that was displayed in the form of monsters that looked like snakes. 
After these monsters noticed our protagonist, they immediately attacked all together in a crowd. But still our protagonist is strong and he displayed all the attacks and held on very well. But it was not all as they were an infinite number and they attacked and attacked without giving rest. But still the result was very good as the heads began to heal and take on a more human color. At this time, our protagonist was fighting the remnants that were still holding on and attacking our hero. In this space, Chung Meng used all his strength for the sake of freeing this body of demonic chi. He cut through them, destroying them and attacking them with his ki using his basic abilities. It wasn't all difficult, just that it was all very long, and it might affect the outcome of this fight. A long time had passed, and looking at Gloa's body, it was clear that she was slowly coming to her senses. Wallpaper still lasted attacks came from both sides, but in the end, the victory was won by our protagonist. He is already tired because he is already using a lot and is in a different body and using his chi. Because all the meridians were filled with demonic chi began to attack the streams that circulate the streams. He says that this fight cannot be called his and the fight between the demonic chi as now everything depends on how long the head can endure. Then he looks at the head and sees that his situation is getting worse as all the demonic key is going straight to the brain. He says that one should be much more careful with this, as one rash attack and a brain fusion will happen. Then this man is definitely finished. But if you back off, the infection will spread like ink in clear water. There's no time to think about it. Either attack or the outcome will be the same. He says he's bound hand and foot and must act. Then he plunges again, but this time he plunges right into the brain base of the allocated chi. But as they say, this was probably such a bad option as he was enveloped by all the demonic chi energy. Then he felt such a wild going something that wasn't even comparable to a normal blade strike, as this energy was bringing his entire body. He said to himself that there was no way he would lose his consciousness over such nonsense, because he was the strongest. His pride would not allow the noble plum blossom blade to fall just like that, but such an easy fight with demonic key. However, everything is floating in front of his eyes as if he was literally hit by something with his head. Knowing his shortcomings about his body, he starts using a secret technique and circulates all the key around his core. After that, he somehow stands on his feet and thinks of ending it all in one fell swoop. Things are rolling much worse than he thinks as their numbers have gotten much higher than they were before. When he woke up in his body, he noticed that some were already attacking him. But he was able to fend them off with ease as if it was a training session for him. But still he was caught by one of them as they numbered over a million. But even so, they couldn't stop this monster. He slashed them as if he was practicing against small, inoffensive monsters. It was only at this time that he noticed that something was wrong. Most likely the speed of these monsters had increased many times over since they were inside his body. At this time, they all the crowd began to attack our protagonist. But by some miracle, our protagonist managed to avoid such a pitiful state, and he then began to concentrate his energy. He realized that this is a different level compared to when they were in the body in men, and it's all because they decided to desperately resist realizing that they no longer have nowhere else to retreat. But more importantly, it's not being rolled up because of a lack of power. If this fight is occupied, he'll eventually have to retreat. And if he retreats, most likely his body will be occupied by these creatures and he will eventually lose his new body. During all of this, he still fought for his life, but because he was already tired, he was grabbed by one of them. Then he lost his weapon, which was the embodiment of his TSU, and he despaired because he lost his precious weapon. This moment I devoured our hero, or rather the silhouette of his body, which was created by his chi. And the last desperate move, it was just destruction, or rather his explosion that would most likely help in this situation. He took this risky move since he already knew that if he didn't do it, he would most likely lose this war. Then all the energy enveloped his body and thus saved his body from all those pests. Then he fell because he used so much energy in such a short time and was exhausted. By some miracle, he was able to just become, but still he realized that he could die at any moment from it. He thought that if he didn't use this technique in the end, he would most likely face a sad end to his life. Then he looked at this old man and saw that from his body it was obvious that he was completely healthy. Then that same head opened his eyes and looked around him. The only thing or person he saw was our protagonist, and he did not expect to see a child near him, since he had been traveling like this for over a year, and he, when he saw our protagonist, thought originally that it was a celestial. 
After Head Huang passed into the consciousness of the Milky Way Trading Guild, the Milky Way Guild quickly put their affairs in order. If he didn't show up, this bastard's plan to execute his bloodthirsty plan and the entire Huang clan would lose their lives. Meanwhile, this bastard would take over all of their properties. In the meantime, it turned out that the bastard was the son of a merchant with whom the past head of the Huang family was competing. But what can you do? Everyone has a story to tell, and crime has a price to pay. The only thing of interest was the source of the cinnabar hand. Turns out he took the secret teachings from a corpse he accidentally found deep in the mountains while on a trading trip. On the other hand, if it was the work of the demon sector, they were silently untraceable. And Head Huang was cured even our head that the demonic sect was not involved, and it can be said that everything was resolved well. Because of this, he became a benefactor of the Milky Way Guild, and they began to treat him as an honored guest. He was given everything he wanted, and even though he was not looking at it all, he was just resting all this time. After that, our protagonist sat at a very nice table and enjoyed the food. As Chang Mang was enjoying his meal, someone came and greeted him at the door. It turns out it was the head of the Milky Way Guild, and he says that he doesn't need to be escorted to the end because he has more strength than before illnesses. He turns to Zhang Men and says he's come to discuss some business with him. Then Zhang Men says that he already talked to him when he woke up and thinks now is not the time for that. He says he can talk to him now because he has plenty of time to talk to him, and he asks not to think about anything because he's gained weight these days. The Marsh Air thinks he has because three days ago he was half the size he is now. Then this old man starts his word to the hero and says what? He has business with the young swordsman who later helped him in such a difficult situation and asks him to fulfill his request. After saying this, he suddenly stays against him to accept his apology and lead. He says that the young swordsman saved his life, and he in the century will pay for this mercy and kindness and also to help him. At this time, our protagonist was eating his food and says that this old man should rise as he did for his own sake and for the sake of the school. But this old man says that his son told him about everything that happened, doesn't even know if there is a way to pay for saving his life, and he wants to try everything in his power. He begs our hero to give him some way to pay for the mercy to say his request, and in case the benefactor wants something, he cannot hesitate to tell him about it. At this time, Chang Meng says that he has stopped asking for it because people like him don't ask anything for kindness. In addition, he says that he came here without the permission of the head of the school, and it was all on his own. He says that the matter was urgent, and he didn't have time for authorization, so he went on his way at his own discretion. After realizing all this, the head of the school bends down and says that in that case he should pay him, he will not say anything in his head if our protagonist is so willing. Then Changman says that they should promise him, and then he will tell Pro some details. He takes a book out of his pocket and says that he forgets some things, and in that case he takes this book and writes down everything, and in this case he wrote it down before he came here too. It was all written down, and he knows everything, and he always wrote down what was going on around him. Then this head is surprised that he recorded something before crossing over and asks what exactly this person recorded. Smiling, Chang Meng says that he wrote down all his wishes that he hoped would come true here. After a while in the chapter room, he tells his son about his condition at the moment, saying that it's somehow amazing that his body has become so light, as if he's really healed. He says that he has become younger in this short time by about 10, 20 years. At this time, the son turns to the father and says that he has not come to check his condition, and whether he is cured at the moment, the father says that he should not waste time and get to the point. He says that he heard that his father had arranged an arrangement with Huashan and promised a huge reward to Huashan. When he notes that his guild, or rather his father's guild, is in another city, and it is too dangerous to cooperate with a mountain that is so far away from them and in great decline. He also notes that naturally his father would feel grateful and would do anything for that. But he remembers that his father has promised him too great a reward in any way he can see it is too dangerous to strengthen Hua Shan's ties while cooperating with Zhang Nan. He asks his father to reconsider his decision and keep at least the previous terms of the contract with the current school. Then he asks the young head what the main duties of a merchant are. The son answers that the main duty of a trader is to conduct business without turning down the right path to create a sound trade policy, and also to develop and contribute to the country and the world. These are all the duties of traders that they should explore all their lives and work for the good of themselves and everyone.
At such loud statements, his father begins to crumple very much in front of him. He was, of course, pleased at such a noble response. He says that it sounded very plausible and enough of him for having such a smart and smarmy mouth. But he says that there is no need to be afraid of it and speak the truth and say that the main duty of a merchant is to earn money. And sometimes a merchant seeks to earn even transgresses the law and moral norms. He says that if you want to follow the money, you have to help others with that money. <laughs> there is only efficiency that will bring contribution and money in the future and may even bring it now. Hearing this answer, the young gentleman was distraught because he didn't know why his father was doing this and supporting another school. He thinks that his father somehow wants to benefit from the collapsing Huashan. Then he remembers how to expand the merchant guild. Then he remembers about the merchant acumen that followed in his genes. The most important thing is to find the value in what others overlook and deem unworthy and invest. Way before school or another merchant guild. His father was thus able to turn the outer path into the best trade guild of this province. Then he still asks what reason is there to invest in a crumbling and crisis school like Hua Shan and asks for a clear explanation for this. When he remembers and talks about that boy who cured him, and he says that the current situation is a school not comparable to Zhang Nan, but even so. If his thoughts are correct, then this school will rise up and they can get back on good terms with them. And most likely the belt from this will be so huge that he and his son never dreamed of it since the future in Ashan is definitely some huge achievement. Then the son asks his father because he doesn't understand how he can explain going to Huashan. Re. He says that doesn't it mean that if they fall, they will follow them and suffer great losses. Besides, no matter how much one thinks, there is no guarantee that Huashan will grow to such an extent. Then the father says his son is talking such nonsense because it's obvious. He says that a merchant is not someone who will just wait for a reason to succeed. They must create that reason themselves. He says that he doesn't expect this school to rise from its knees because he himself will make this school into a great one. He says that he has lived all his life as a merchant and has met countless great merchants and craftsmen along the way, but that child who confused him and made him admire. He has made a lot of money all over the world trying to find a python when it turns out he has a dragon under his nose preparing to ascend. He says there is no way to understand it with simple thinking. He says that no matter what he tries to understand, just follow the punishment and in time he will understand everything. If today, if the treasure promised today is not erased from the memory of the boy and returned to them with shackles, even so cannot be destroyed, the trade guild will not suffer losses. But if it binds them to a lifelong friendship, they'll do the opposite with little blood. What he says is that the demands cost five times what he had planned, and he was very angry about it. He is angry at the smart boy and says that Chang Meng was able to outsmart him, even for a large sum of money. But after they had already calmed down, the father tells his son that it had already been decided and everything had gone very well. Then the young gentleman says that if the father has decided so, then he will just trust his decision. But in addition, he says that he still has some doubts about it. And so he will try to do his best to overcome those doubts. And because of all these factors, he will try to raise this school to the top of the mountain. Then the father thinks that his son has grown up and is happy to hear such nice words from his successor. At this time, our protagonist thought that there is some hidden agenda behind this action, as no man would pay such a huge price just because of the feeling of gratitude. And yet what he wanted in all this does not concern him, as he has already done his job. He thinks that if he were a real child, he would feel responsible. But unfortunately, life has already worn him down. But this wonderful moment was interrupted by one of the students who came to him, when our protagonist asked what he wanted. He simply pulled out a wooden sword from his pocket and held it out to Jongmin. He says that he has no immoral intentions, and if he allows it, he would like to exchange it with him again. And he says it's in all seriousness. Then he says that weren't they going to put him up and do everything to achieve their goals? And that's why they decided not to hold a grudge against him. But he asks what this has to do with the exchange of combat experience since it was before as a real fight. Then the second generation disciple says it doesn't matter if he's been dishonored or if he was in an extremely precarious position because of him, and even if he was just a toy in his hands, it doesn't matter. Everything happened for his own personal reasons. But what really happened is that he still can't understand what happened at that moment, and says that's why he's going to exchange blades with our protagonist to find out. Though it's hard to believe, 
He knows that his skill is superior to his and there's nothing wrong with that, and the goal is to find out what happened then. He knows that our protagonist manipulated him and forced him to fight him. Then Chung Meng realized that this boy decided not just to fight, but he wants to understand what happened then and just compare with his strength. This pleased our hero as he was ready to fight with such a warrior who only wants to gain knowledge and not chase revenge. Then Chen Meng says that if he agrees to meet him again, he will probably regret it and asks if he still wants to fight with him. Then the second generation disciple replies with confidence that he will fight with confidence regardless of the outcome of the fight. Then he also says that during this time he has realized his weaknesses, and the next one he will not check now, and even if he loses, he will accept it with pride. A few minutes passed from this conversation, and they were already standing on the battleground. At this time, this disciple looking at our hero reasoned that no matter how strong this disciple was, he is one generation younger and more like ten years younger than him. And according to the principles of division, he is like a disciple of the second generation, he can take a child of the third generation as a disciple. But even with this difference, he felt some danger coming from our hero. He didn't understand why his body was shaking so badly, and he couldn't even... He remembers the fight with the chapter when he looks at our protagonist and compares him to the strongest. He can't believe that such power comes from an ordinary child. He thinks that it's just his illusions or the tricks that this little boy is using. And he thinks that now he must make sure of everything make a conclusion after the fight. He says that even though this little boy is no threat, he can't understand the trembling, as if a tiger is standing in front of him. All this is, of course, a wonderful classy hero. He especially notices his good intuition and enough for him to see the difference in strength and capability. He assumes that this match will become a great martial artist because he has a great future from now on. Through hard training, he will be far behind his peers, and he will not be surprised if in the future this swordsman will be called the best swordsman of this school. And he thinks that if he is such a good and experienced potential master, rather he should disappear a few lessons. Then he shows his hand to them to attack him and do everything to win it. That's when this student gets into his name stance and uses some strange technique. This technique is noticed by Zhang Meng and surprised that the students of this school already know how to use sword illusion. Well, the next thing that turned out to be different was a new fighting technique of this school-style 12 snowballs. But with surprise, it did not solve anything because our protagonist with a single leap defeated this boy. It was obvious that Chung Meng had no pity for him and hit him so hard that his mouth bled. After that, he wanted him for his battle suit, and it was obvious that our protagonist was very angry. When he asked how he knew the technique and who taught him, he says that the 12 snowball style is bullshit. He says you can fool anyone but him with it, because it's a style he knows better than anyone else. The sword that contains the essence of Huashan is one of the formations of the 24 palms of the plum blossom ball up plum blossom petals technique. The technique of two of the four palms of the plum blossom ball has been lost even to Huashan, so why is it used by a student like you, asks our protagonist. At this time, the disciple was only thinking of one thing, just how much difference in strength they had with this little guy. Because it's a feeling of fear, as if he met an evil spirit and he thinks that now he will probably die. After he lost consciousness, he woke up about some terrain was wrapped in bandages and he was lying on the bed. When he looked around him, he saw our protagonist sitting next to him. Then our protagonist says that he calmed the destructive internal energy and most likely the wounds will also heal quickly, and asks this technique is most likely already a new Zhongnan style? When a second-generation disciple says that the 12 snowball technique is already a staple of this school. Having committed such a low deed, they were sure that Hua Shan did not know how to sing anyway. There was no one left who remembered the 24 plum blossom palms. Then he asked who had been able to learn this sword style in the meantime. After he learned that all the second-generation disciples knew how to use this technique, he assumed that the first- and second-generation disciples of the chapter knew how to use this style. He was almost right that the first- and second-generation disciples of the first- and second-generation's knowledge about it, but still no one taught the chapter. But it was still so complicated and difficult information for our hero. But the interesting thing was that all the first you and the second-generation knew but did not know the chapter itself. If the style of 12 snowballs invented one of the chapters, then of course the style would be passed on to those below, starting with the students of the first generation, and that means that the last one is still alive and in Zhongnan.
Then he thinks he needs to find out what happened when the demonic sect took over Huashan. Most of this school was destroyed, and the rest of the people who arrived in a daze finished off the other parts of the school. All were wiped out because they were completely exterminated. Another problem was that the number of demons outnumbered them by a factor of ten, maybe hundreds. Those who remained were mostly small children, but even they fought to the end parents of this school and for the sake of their loved ones that they had to protect. But here is the sad time arrived most likely the army from Zhongnan, which was actually supposed to help, and was supposed to help rebuild with this school. Our protagonist guessed that Jiang Ku is bound to if just watching a demonic sect destroy a neighboring school. The problem is that one of them pretended to be a virtuous person and stole our school's teachings. Somehow he's starting to doubt that the Huashan passed on to the fire was made by the hands of the Zhongnan school. Hundreds of years ago, this school gave its life and protected an entire province and considered a neighboring school. But those bad people from the other school in return for Huashan's mercy repaid her like ailments. Even if someone was blinded by greed and made a mistake, the school's duty to correct it. But they dared to put up this new technique, even new names of snowballs, as if in mockery to Huashan. Then he stands up and his place, and it is noticed by the student of the second repentance, he was then our protagonist, says that this student should not practice this technique ever in his life. But to this statement, that student says that there is no way you can. So our protagonist beats him and says that if he said not to practice it, then don't do it. And he beats him to make him realize it. He explains that with this teaching, he won't be able to achieve the great successes he's likely to have in the future. Looking at him, he thinks of Jongnan and wishes he were dead. Snowballs that were stolen long ago. The martial arts of this school are based on laying the foundation of conditions layer by layer. The base is the art of swordsmanship, so mastering it can be hard and slow, but the more he perfects it, the stronger he becomes. That's the essence of Jongnan martial arts. He must forget about it if he wants to succeed as a swordsman of this school. Steps or techniques are confused and formations change chaotically. It does not fit the techniques of this school, says our protagonist. But all these words were not clear to this student since he did not know about the truth that was covered under this. Then our protagonist was surprised that the student, this school does not know the basics of fencing with his school and thinks why he should explain it. And in general, why did they even hit on such an unpredictable technique? This was the question that haunted him. Only then does he realize that the reason for all of this and the reason they stole this particular technique was because of him. Most likely they stole the technique looking at our hero's unprecedented success in the past. He realized that this thought appeared in a second and out of nowhere he just thought to himself and thought of it. Most likely he had chased the students of this school like mice. He himself had awakened them to this. As one of the nine strongest schools, Zhang Nan was loyal in the power of his sword. But some disciple of another school smashed their assertion, hence their confidence in their power. And of course, that disciple was Chang Meng. He thinks that they were foolish to do so, because if he had been in their shoes, he would have increased the school's swordsmanship. But of course, it was not the martial arts that mattered to them in the end, but the power it could give. Then he thinks that this student did all this our not knowing about it, and learning all this he felt something strange. Looking at this little boy, he thinks that he is not guilty of anything, and even if he tells it all now, he will probably not understand many details. I leave the room, he says that he should forget what was said, and no one can impose a certain way of art on him. Advice can only help, but he must make his own decision, and the guidance of his head and his words can only limit him to those. All this, of course, understood the second-generation student. He realized that to achieve something, he must make his own decisions to eventually become stronger. After that, our protagonist was on the threshold of the exit, and at this moment he hears some strange sound. At this time, this disciple pressed one hand with the other hand, shows his promotion to him, and says that he is very grateful for the instruction that he had previously explained and shown during the battle. Our hero just waves the other and says that it was all just a normal fight. After that, this disciple felt something different, as if he had met a celestial he was enveloped by such emotions. At this time, our protagonist felt some strange emotions. He now wants to level this school to the ground. He thinks that these bastards did not repay kindness, and he cannot tolerate it. He thinks that if he was strong like before, he'd do it even now. But for now, he needs to get stronger faster to get stronger. In these parts, only those who are real strong men are listened to.
Then it was clear that this school was up to the wrong person who just wouldn't wait, because this person would make them pay for all the sins they had committed to his relationship at the school. At this time, the school had a strange situation going on with our protagonist. Someone is biting their nails in fear because they think that this person must have had a reason, and Chang Meng is not the kind of person who disappears into trouble. It was, of course, his elders who were very worried because they were going to have a huge problem because our protagonist hadn't been back for a week. Convincing his mentors to believe that. They're saying that his mentor. Ungam said that the head called him again, and they are afraid that this will cause big problems. At this time, Un Gam, who in turn is the owner of the Salt Plum Pavilion, was just hearing something from someone. He was yelled at by the head of the finance pavilion that seven days and nights for a third-generation disciple to be absent without a solution is unacceptable. He asks for the head not to be silent about it, and the Infa formulated a foundation of what the others will think, says he in his head. At this time, the head of the combat exercise pavilion, Hyun Sang, asks that they all calm down, because they don't know for sure what happened to the child, he might even hit some bat. And that in turn, the head of finance says that what else can hit in this area? Even if he hit, shouldn't you personally come and tell the elders about it? Why do they have to figure it out themselves? And the head of finance is worried about the child and says that he could have gotten his leg back, and because of that he couldn't come here, and rather he is getting treatment somewhere in the extreme. He asks the head that they all check the neighborhood of these mountains again in case something happened to this child. Continues to yell at the head saying that why did they give a third generation student the right to a special visit to the city? Then the head says that there was a good reason for it. Then he is confused that any reason can be found, but they should not have let him go and should not have given him such rights. First of all, it's better to refer to the rules before looking for a reason. Because it decides in the secret foundation a special right to children, he is not even from the second generation, but from the third. All statements are listened to by the head and asks that they end with this. Then they all calm down and the head of finance apologized for such manners because he had overstepped the line. Then the head of finance starts to question his choice about that child. Because he thought that the Chang Meng he remembered would not cause trouble because he knew him well, and he acted like a wise man. At this time, the owner of this salted plum pavilion approached him and said that he would gather a search party of students and they would search the neighborhood of this school. But he didn't have time to say anything because at that time someone interrupted them and started saying that someone had returned. They all came out of the room and asked who had returned after all. Then it was clear that Chung Meng was heading back to the school. At that time, everyone had already left the room and the first thing we asked was what happened to him. When he was approached by the financial head, he says that he realizes that the head treasures this child, and of course this child will lead to a huge investment in this school and put it in order. But however the elders do not burn the child with their homeless care. Since you have to do everything on merit, this is really and right way of running a school. However, it is also the decline of a person as fast growth. If a child, even a mistake, will not receive appropriate punishment, is not so. It should not be forgotten that the more the head cares for the child, the more strictly he should talk and deal with him. Hearing all this, the head was just concerned and happy to hear such a response and demand. After that, he said not to worry and he will do everything else himself and right. He said what he wants most of all is for this child to grow up. If he is not hurt, then he will go for half a month in seclusion. But someone disagreed with this statement, and it surprised the head very much. Then one of Ungam's mentors says that he broke the order and didn't return is a serious offense, and that he should be locked up in the repentance corps for at least six months. When the head says that the punishment should be lenient because he's only a third-generation student, then he in turn says that if he were a second-generation disciple and the punishment would be harsher, he asks the head to give him a punishment commensurate with the severity of his offense. If the head does not do so, he himself will do it instead and punish him for such a thoughtless act. When the head asked the opinion of the others who are right there, they said that they completely agree with Ungom. He agreed and wondered what had gotten that boy to obey you and be out of this school for such a long time. They were already on their way out and saw our protagonist returning. He in turn was the first to greet everyone, elders and teachers who were around him. Then the head asks what was the reason that he left the main mountain, but the protagonist says that the circumstances were urgent and he had to do so.
A third-generation disciple behaves so willfully, and so if he's a toilet, a big voiceover awaits. If all of his denials aren't convincing enough, they'll have to punish him. Then our protagonist thought for a few moments, and when he started to speak, he was already interrupted because they are already here for such a long reflection. When the head of finance says that it is not necessary to make him angry, and it is necessary to answer quickly to the questions asked. But after a couple of seconds, the head of Huang Yi comes in and asks everyone not to blame the child. Everyone was surprised to see this man as they didn't expect him to be here because they haven't seen him in years. The head says that a week ago he received a letter about his foe and how he could get here in such a time and be well. Then the head of the Milky Way Guild says that this child did all the things that happened to him, and we should thank this young swordsman. He says that he saved his life, so don't go to her too much because everything is thanks to him. When the chapter looked at our protagonist, he just nods because it was real. After that, they were already transferred to the main building of the school, and then the head asks for an explanation from the punished Chang Meng. He talks about some herb that looks like wormwood but is poisonous. He says that as he knows he was homeless and when he found vagrants who mistook it for edible, he was poisoned. Remaining one day, you will be sick for a long time and eventually die. However, it is much easier to neutralize the effects of the herb wind than it seems to be just by giving crushed rare. Even doctors can't find ways to cure it, but if you sit on this stuff, you'll get better. Then the guests ask what it is that the head was poisoned by this herb, very much says that the symptoms were too similar, so he decided to try it, and he immediately got better. Then in turn, the mentor says that he had heard something similar, and many people thought that there was poisoning involved, and this is proof that he is not lying. Then the main character thinks they should catch any vagrant on the street and ask because he personally experienced it in the war. It has nothing to do with the Cinnabar hand monster, but who cares? He and the guild leader told the same story, so the main thing is to make it sound believable. At this time, Ungam tells the guild leader that if it's all true and real, our protagonist couldn't come back, and because of that, Cheon Men deserves a reward instead of punishment. But the other one says that it can't be like that. What reward can't be given because it's a serious act? Even though he behaved badly, it's a serious offense to obey the head of the department and get what he deserves. He asks him to do the right thing, but he can't let it go unheeded. Then he asks, should he praise a student who leaves a man to die and returns in time? Still, this school is following the right path and everyone absolutely understood that. What could be more important than helping and saving a person is a fundamental thing that every person in this school should know. And asks everyone, his pathetic preceptor, what's more important than building relationships. Then it comes to the mentor that he was the first to try his luck and angered the head. Then the other elders can no longer discuss Cheon Man's deed. And then everything turns out to be an afterthought. And you understand. And the head thinks that it's the mentor who should have said that so as not to shake me and make me not to ask about this misbehaving disciple anymore. Get up from the chair, he says that most likely his intentions were revealed and he should have done the same. He approaches our protagonist saying some strange things. Then he finally Sunday here says that he did a great job and helped this school and strokes him on the head. Mr. Huang says he owes this school a debt of gratitude. To put it bluntly, he was helped by the young butcher, Mr. Chung Meng but he decided to rewrite Hua Shan. So to pay Hua Shan for the favor, he wants to make an investment. This surprised the Minister of Finance because it will affect the financial situation of the school very well. And he wanted to say more precisely, he just wants to give support to the situation under the return, but the support can be accepted free of charge. The head of the school says that no support is needed because they are already grateful for everything he has given Hua Shan. Mr. Huang says he wouldn't have come here personally with the whole family if you planned to stop here. Now he just wants to give Huashan everything he has. If he brought the guild members here, we should discuss all the future plans of what Huashan needs and what they can give them. Such an offer from Mr. Hong was very much surprised by the head of this school after hearing it. He immediately thanked this gentleman. Turning Chung Meng, he said that he brings happiness to this school and now helped a noble man and glorify the name of the school. With a huge smile, you can't say that his virtue knows no bounds. Then he says that in that case, let the head of the finance pavilion and Unam stay and let the others leave the hall. At this time, the mentor pats our protagonist on the back and praises him for doing such a good job. He says that what he has done is not an outstanding deed that deserves such praise from everyone. 
although he says that it is commendable that he saved a man and also Mr. Huang, and now he is a golden egg for this school. All this is heard by another mentor, and despite our hero, he is waiting for a personal explanation. Chung Meng is told that he knows he has done a good deed, but it was rash of him especially to leave Hua Shan without saying a word. It's true that he disobeyed the head's punishment. You can't pretend every time with the excuse that he had no choice. But this our protagonist just apologized and said that he was in too much of a hurry and couldn't think about it. After hearing this, Mentor was somehow not himself because he realized that he even did a good deed. This boy apologized for such a deed. When the two mentors left, they said to themselves that now this school will have a good future, and during this time they heard only good news. Meanwhile, our protagonist was thinking about when he would be able to raise Huashan from its knees. Remembering his senior chapter, he thinks that he will try harder and harder in order to achieve would be glory. At this time in the head's room, Superintendent Huang says that he will take over all of Huayin's affairs, so that from now on this school will not have to think about money. And he tells the head of the school that he has a couple of conditions for this offer. The first condition is that he doesn't save his salary money, but spends it on the development of the school. The head says that he agrees with this condition because now this school is not at the level to save money. The second condition is to give the speech to his generation of students, especially Cheon men, a special privilege. This is the fundamental and the reason to make such a contract. To this, the head says that it's a rather vague word that there may be some problems. This disciple already enjoys rights that exceed the powers of third-generation disciples. What special privileges can the head think about? When the mentor says what about letting Cheng Meng learn the techniques of the school's secret teachings that he discovered in advance, he is referring to the Sword of Fallen Petals and the Sword of Seven Plums. Well, once they finish learning them, it will be possible to give this student the right to master them before many. Even when the head agreed, the finance minister of this school says that it will never happen. The head is already tired of reimbursing the head of finance and asks him what else he is dissatisfied with. The head of finance in turn says that this is nothing and rewards him. He should be given something fairly equal to his efforts. This statement surprised the head very much as we were expecting the exact opposite. The head of finance says that he is already busy mastering the martial arts cannot be considered a reward. Additional workload is more like a punishment. So, and a massacre is not long. He says that all this is not considered a reward. You cannot just throw what I already have. I do not pull what costs. Only something that will be a pity to part with can be considered a worthy reward. Everyone was surprised to hear such a strong statement about this boy, because he had only talked about punishing Chen Men a few hours ago. The head thought the same thing. Why did he decide that at the last meeting he insisted on punishment only? During the deliberation, the head of finance says that it's not an ordinary case and should be solved. Thanks to the fact that this child saved the head of the special guild, Huashan received money. No, a huge support. In addition, the head of Huang pledged to take even the management of enterprises. All of this was already very good news, but it was all free of charge. The head listened to it and silently analyzed it. Only then did he realize that Haiyan Young, the head of the finance pavilion, had started to think of another stream. Because the finance pavilion is the place that is responsible for Hua Shan's funds and existence, and during this time, the finance pavilion could only be characterized by one word. You could say that what was happening there was just a mess. There was just not enough money for anything. They had to save on everything. And all of this was handled by Hang Yong, who worked every day as if this place was an atom. How thankless it was to manage the finances of a school that was on the verge of destruction. At least the fact that Hua Shan had managed to hold on until now was entirely due to the head of the finance pavilion. Then a few seconds later, he says that he has every right to make these claims. All this time, the head of the finance pavilion has held firmly. I only dream of one thing— that this school receives so much money that even after the monthly expenses there is still something left and now this moment has come. Because of how much he's been blown away by this student who caused this situation. It is necessary to reward him properly then this boy will earn more feats. No feats are not earned but accomplished. Then this head of finance is burning that this boy is God's wealth having received the proper reward he will often leave school and earn a couple more feats. This time, unlike those gesture beetles that and coins are unable to earn this boy, 
He is already at this time boiling with rage. He has already become like a tomato and even says that this boy is gold among stones. To calm him down, the mentor takes him and embraces him with his two hands. Hugging this Hen Young tightly, I take him away so that the others can think in silence. When he is gone, the whole group says that this man has had a very difficult time up to this point. Then the head says that this man is very right that this boy deserves a great reward. All will agree and said that it is necessary to harm this student properly. And also by his reward, the other students will realize that this school rewards on merit. Since this child likes to go down to the city, why not make his responsibility to contact the Eternal Path Guild look like a messenger? And you agree because he thinks that Head Huang appreciates this kid, so he will receive him with honors every time. But there is still a question how about giving him the Sword of the Plum Blossom in advance? After all, this technique is the symbol of this school, or give him permission to freely visit the library. But at this time, an irritated Hyun Young says that it's not a reward, and he should just give him more money because money is money. But then the chapter just takes him back by shutting his restless mouth. The head thinks what it seems to him is that the further the Huashan goes, the stronger it gets slimmer and weirder. At this time, the main character and Mr. Huang were having a heart-to-heart -heart talk, then the main character says that without this Mr. will be a great actor. Even Mr. Huang says that they are already in the same boat now. The protagonist says that he was only lucky enough to save his life, but who is he to get in the same boat with him now that it's up to the gentleman to talk to the head? Then the gentleman says that he and he has no desire to be in the same boat with this school. They say he's not interested in this school, if it doesn't have this student. When he heard that about his identity, Mr. Changman was very happy, but he says that Mr. Huang overestimates him. Then Mr. Huang says he's lived his whole life as a merchant and he's going to stay that way until his last breath. As a merchant, he has one major weapon. He can see right through people. If his eyes were failing him, he would have been burned out even if he considered everything that happened to be a mere vision someday he is bound to fail. And in this case, it is something to lament and regret. However, if his eyes don't fail him, isn't the guild forever on the road and this school will not wait only good news and news? After hearing this, our protagonist says that he completely agrees with it, and it is easier just not to say such words because those who throw loud words are sure to put a knife in the back. All the same great expressions and already in fact, so there is no guarantee of everything. Because he had as an example his old school, the old generation, which he cherished very much and was a very great school. Then there were many who praised you and shed tears for them when they volunteered the whole world. But however, when he looked at these people, he expected everything, but in no way expected any support from them. Such a difficult moment, Wu Huashanha. In this short time, he remembered all this. When he came out of his thoughts, this chapter says that he too does not like such words. Because the merchant is free to come in from the boat at any time. But with a common goal, there's no reason to leave it. Because if two people take the oars, the boat will go faster. Then the protagonist says that it's all true and there's nothing wrong with falling in love anyway. When the head in himself thinks that it helped him to make sure that their views have similar views, something suggests that helping to support this school will bring the guild profit. However, this is more likely to happen if the cooperation with this kid is maintained. Because in his mind, this school is already rising from its knees as if this child is sure that this school will definitely revive. He is surprised at this little brat's amazing self-belief. The Milky Way Guild is throwing all its strength into supporting the Huashan, says this chapter to our hero, which all means that they are now considered Jongnan from now on. The protagonist asks, just don't tell them that they are expected to pay for something they didn't even ask for, and that's pretty shameless. Then the head says that he is in no way expecting payment for this, he just wanted this swordsman to know about it. Then they each realize that they wanted to fool the other, but it didn't work out since they are both shrewd. Then this gentleman says that this apprentice is very shrewd and gives himself to him to the point that there is no other apprentice of that age in the whole world. It's not that there is no other like him in the whole world. There is no other like me. Where else will you find someone who has died and come back to life? Then Mr. Huang says that this young swordsman should hide his identity better. Because the world is a scary place where ghosts and evil spirits wreak havoc. Where evil is rampant, pushing for nefarious deeds for mere gain. As soon as a young swordsman shows himself, there are crowds of those who will try to get closer and pounce. Hearing such concerns, the protagonist says to himself that this man overestimates him. He's just an ordinary boy. 
Then Mr. Milky Way says that he is already temporarily up and he should leave. Before leaving, our protagonist asks this man to do one favor and learn something for him. After this conversation, when this man is already down looking at our protagonist, he thinks that this little boy is like a monster. In his head, it's hard to even tell if he's really a little boy as it looks outwardly, but it's familiar for sure that this instead of soon to be great. He was the earliest to find out that there was a dragon in the unpleasant lake of Hoshan. If only the Milky Way guilds used this information correctly, they could achieve the title of the best in the world. At this time, to the head of the Milky Way guild passes by his son and tells him that he has done all the business and explore the new. Then I, his father says that he has changed his mind about this school again. He tells his son that they have a lot of things to do and need to prepare the foundation first. After that, they were leaving the manor to deal with him is completely different from Hung Jong, and the elder Hua Shan thought the head of this huge guild. In a world of trade and constant feuds, someone who had to survive all his life would hardly be like the Taoists. In any case, they had eliminated the biggest obstacle to the revival of this school was poverty. Now it is worth wasting time to insult the other school if that school has forgotten its foundations and laid its eyes on other people's foundations while Hua Shan has completely lost them. This was the moment to focus on learning martial arts. The impact of the Milky Way Trading Guild's power was truly astounding. They instantly stabilized the ruinous business in this city that was beyond the power of Hua Shan, even with the mobilization of all the disciples. Proving themselves as skillful merchants, they filled the places with buzz once again, and it only took them a couple days to do so. Everything was fine as everyone had work to do, and even the ordinary people had a good understanding of the prices that were being sold. Thanks to that, even the face of the head of the pavilion didn't slip into a blissful smile. The stability that had finally arrived after many decades, the Huashan time stretched out measuredly and calmly like the silent water current. Even though it applied to everyone, all the disciples practiced in time without tiring. Some even pulled a huge wave of cobblestone to become stronger. At this time, they were being trained by our main character, and he was saying that it's not enough, I don't have to try harder. He saw how tired everyone was, but joked that they would train until they died. But at one point, the student didn't want to lack his strength, and it was as if he thought he wouldn't get up. But still gathering all his strength, he did one last push-up that cost him his life, and still he was able to save his life. This is a video of Sasha, and he was happy that everyone and his juniors achieved such success, and of course he was happy that he saved his life. And the training was very good, and of course he was happy about that. He thanked everyone for the training. Then the elder thought that he initially, when he first started to cancel the training, he was overcome by many doubts. He wrote that simply hardening the body will not bring any results. Since fencing technique is based on the speed of change of the ball and sword and Lucy, could only be a hindrance to mastering the ball. However, to his surprise, it was worth it for them to harden their bodies as sword strikes became two things and faster. The change was noticeable on their faces as time passed. They enjoyed practicing more and more. Before, everyone used to wait impatiently for dawn training to end, but now there were those who even deliberately delayed. They had a second competition to get stronger, and they were glad that they were training. Their bodies became much stronger than before. Using the moments, they always showed off their improved body, but it was worth it as they practiced harder and harder. But the eldest got the idea that this school was slowly turning into a mountain bandit's den or a bandit's den. He recalls that these guys said that after they cleaned up the place, they would go to morning training. When he was talking to his youngest, they mentioned the main character not coming back today. Turns out he's rarely seen at practice lately because he's busy with something. And it was worth the wait since they started training voluntarily, the main character stopped showing up during training. But even so, he doesn't sleep everyone off and I wonder where he usually avoids. Then the younger one says that isn't he the Milky Way as soon as in school he started frequenting there. Chong Meng is the busiest person in the school and the older one was in complete agreement. They are left wondering if the elder feels this strength. He says that strength is a relative thing and that to know how much stronger you are, you need an evaluation criterion. And since all the seniors are getting stronger together, it's hard to evaluate the difference. However, with the appearance of Chang Myong, they became too stronger. He says that too, it's not an exact answer because it's still hard to evaluate, but he can say for sure that he is able to defeat three of himself in the past. 
But the younger says that this is definitely not enough, because soon there will be a meeting and they must become much stronger in the meantime. Are they stronger when they were in the past, and when they are because it is necessary in order to win? Then with the elder says, then as the main character returns, they will ask for a load increase and all the rest of the goal achievement. It's been about 14 hours, and already outside was Deep Night has developed, even if it's all for the sake of getting stronger. Why does he have to run away from the guys every morning? This training isn't even part of his duties, and all he came to while until death swung his sword is just a reduced disharmony between body and spirit. Way too extreme and ignorant. He practiced the unified sword in which man becomes the sword and the sword, in other words, man becomes one. Now his sword has reached a perfect harmony with his past physical body. Accordingly, even if it looks dangerous and bearable outwardly, he cannot bring the technique to perfection as it was in the past. In addition, the awkward imitation has already made him experience side effects, in other words. If he wants to increase his strength, you must train endlessly and become one with the sword. The problem is that he won't be able to translate the training in full view. Otherwise, if you train in full strength, it will turn everything well. The same huge kids and redheads so said so barely nightlight he was climbing the mountain peak, hit leaves practicing with the ball and descend every morning, but today he was surprised that someone was here besides him. That person was just practicing with the ball, and it was obvious that the sword technique was much more advanced than that of ordinary third-generation disciples. It turned out to be a very beautiful girl who just came here and practiced the sword art. Our protagonist watched all this and was surprised that such a beautiful girl had such skills. He was very surprised that there was someone else there besides him. Beautiful maiden under the moon, gentle but strong, bright but graceful, this ball dance looks soft. But there is not a shadow of hesitation in it. This sword is like a plum blossom in the ball dance do under the moon. He sees the technique of the past Hovan, and then he thought that except for him, no one seemed to remember it. Turns out no one else can see right now, unfolding under his eyes. The question is not what technique she mastered, but then what meaning is put into the sword. Except she stopped after doing such a beautiful sword swing that our protagonist watched. After she landed, she immediately put her sword of the protagonist, and it was unexpected for both sides. All the mood to hell to reveal his presence in front of the child from the great swordsman did not leave a trace thought to himself, Chung Mung. Then this girl, beautiful girl, says that he before this man that has not met and asks who he is. The protagonist thought to himself that who is she and what the hell is she going to do here? Then he notices that she is typing this his school and assumes that she is a student of Huashan, and notices that this girl is able to charm a man. In his past lives, he has lived over 50 years and traveled all over the country, even the continent, but in all their many travels, he has rarely met such beauties. And if he were really a boy not even old enough to grow up, he'd be stumped. But when he thought about it, he didn't expect that this girl would put her sword so close to his throat. Then he points to the symbol of the Huashan school and proves that he is from this school. Then she says that she has never met him, and most likely he must be a third-generation disciple. But third-generation students are forbidden to go outside the gate at sunset. But the protagonist says he has permission from the head. She says it's a lie and it can't be true because it's just not real. But Jae Kyung says that she can check if the student is lying under the name of the head. And so could you first put down your sharp sword? She lets go of her sword and picks it behind her to show that she is not an enemy to him, and says that outsiders are not allowed to watch this training. Chung Mung starts to say that even before yesterday, this was his training place out of nowhere and makes him look guilty. What should he say to that? She says he should have left as soon as he saw her. Then Jongman says that a stranger is leaning in the vicinity of this school. He should have checked it out. She just turns around at those words. Then our protagonist realized that she is divided and she has nothing to say and is not strong in verbal altercation. The sword is sharpened properly. It's exactly as it should be. What can't be said for the language? Well, with a face like that, I don't think she's had many fights. Then she asks the boy's name. The protagonist says his name, but she didn't bother asking the next question was whether the protagonist had already gotten a middle name. Then he remembers that it's the third generation student's turn to inherit the surname Zhang. But because his name is Zhang Meng, and his middle name is also Zhang, it's all obvious. And such stupid questions our protagonist thinks that this heroine beautiful girl is probably stupid. After that, she stopped the second generation student's Ya Yu Seol. If he is a generation Zhang, then she is his Shigu. 
When our protagonist is created by the question someone was from the Peck generation naturally, he was followed by the Ewan generation. But since he came back to this school, he had not met anyone from the Peak generation, he thought naturally that, because of the hard times, Huashan had missed a generation. After that, he is angry that it is all so satellite and not easy, and even the fact that she looks at him high up, it also pisses him off. She says that the whittling is starting and stop hogging other people's practice space and stalling. She says that to check the corners to see if he's telling the truth. But if he has heard, he must be prepared for the consequences. When they left, they thought they were very strange because there's some reason for it. Our protagonist thinks he should look for another place to train. It was already morning. Everyone was already having breakfast, and for tomorrow they had a great meal that included a lot of meat. And everyone had some kind of strange atmosphere, but however, it was always different, and there was always fun when there was meat at the table. Then our main character wondered why there was such a gloomy atmosphere. Then with Sasha says that the Peck generation came back to the city and we should always call them differently. They do not like to be called the Peck generation. And anyway, they left this school for a while to go to a closed practice. Since the practice areas in this school are not properly equipped, so there was no place to do a large-scale private toning. He asks when what is wrong with the rest of the guys. If all the older ones have a nasty temper and train the younger ones on that older ones, say that they don't drink people like some. He says that all this happened because of the end of the Blossom meeting. This meeting decided the whole exodus in the following actions that were done by the elders and even the masters. It turns out this gathering was very serious, and everyone had to be ready for it. Every two years, the Huashan and Zhongnan would get together to hold a martial competition to compare achievements. It seemed like it was originally held once every five years to strengthen the friendship. But gradually things changed and it turned into a duel between the second and third generation. But is it really worth calling it a duel? It was usually the time when students from other schools were beating up Hua Shan students. Turns out the back injury from two years ago is still lingering. And how can they get over it again if they have a hard time getting the seniors to walk around with iron masks on their faces again? And then the atmosphere will become a frenzy. The mentors can't personally enter the battle because the case is serious so only the second and third generation students participate in the competition, and during this time they were just beaten up, asked the protagonist. He replies something that's right, so the elder said they no longer want to relive this from, and goes into closed training now and only just returned. Otherwise, it is time for Hua Zhang's last bloom. This makes our protagonist very happy as it means they will have a showdown with Zhong Nan. In his time, there was no such thing, but now this friendly duel is being organized to expose the weakness of the Huazhong. He's angry that these Zhongnan masters just want to show their superiority on a crumbling school. Despite all the chaos in this school, he can't watch their students get beaten by other training, and now they can win. Then they reply that by themselves, hunting in a closed practice to prepare for the fight, say, and not favorable conditions, it is hard to claim victory. Then the main character faces and shouts that they too should win in such a case. He asks everyone if they are willing to do anything for the victory they will have in their next fight against other schools. Even if they have to drink me or break arms and legs, surely you are willing to go to the death to defeat these not up to the masters from Junan to restore the good name of this school. Now there is no need to worry, they will all be brought back. Such words were heard by everyone. The second generation head disciples are returning, some have already arrived in the city. The rest are on their way to the city. Such news will be heard from the head manor. Then Sadika asks why the meeting in the other city that was held six months later was postponed. Then the master says that the news came from the other school that this time they want to hold the meeting earlier. Then it turns out that they have to postpone the meeting. Isn't that what the mentor asked? In the next question, it turned out that Huashan's disciples would still be able to participate in such an event. All matters have been resolved, and at least they should be able to live without worrying about food, and compared to the past few months, this is a significant change. However, they are still not a real big school, although they have managed to find new battle drills, which they are actively mastering, but it is too early to prepare the results with Zhong Nan. If suddenly the outcome is the same as before, he fears that Hua Shan, who has barely found hope, and the children will tolerate the savings, decide that they are not capable of anything. The head says that he understands all of this, but still. But will the disciples find hope if they avoid the assembly? And do you think that they will decide that Dasha's own head does not believe in them, asked the head of his junior? 
He says that he himself does not know that it will be difficult to get good results. Another school has gone so far ahead that they can no longer catch up. There is no shame in losing. What can you do if you lose even with all your efforts? You just have to try harder, but avoiding the battle to avoid losing is something else completely different. They will cause great anger for the sake of a moment's peace, and it is not what others and even students expect. The children have had enough of new things. They need to set the table and have a big feast. When the head was left all alone with his thoughts, he thought very long and shrewdly. He looked out the window at the nature that surrounds this school. It was very difficult for him as he was very worried about his students. He was in pain with every breath. It seemed that someday the thorns would grow deeper and his breath would be cut off. He had one thought in his head as to how they could win Zhong Nan and how this fight would affect his students. At this time, there was a discussion in Chung Meng's room. There was a familiar face there. They were discussing how much stronger they had become, and Chung Meng at this time said that they had become with her just a little bit. Then one student lingered on the fact that they didn't die while they were practicing and became only a little bit stronger and how it was possible if his body could feel it. After that, he had to listen to a lecture from Chung Meng about not being able to make their bodies stronger in a short period of time. Now the growth of the third-generation belt disciples did not fart. They had never shown such a speed of development before, after all. However, to the third generation, old Huashan is still far away and not even comparable to other schools. If the other school's abilities remain at the same level, then now no one and meeting generation is capable of defeating them. Well, the only one who can somehow defeat them is Cho Gol. There is a chance that he will win if he meets a suitable opponent. If they're older, there's no point. If they have almost zero chance. Then Strachey says that the meeting is half a month away at best. They can't beat the opponent after months of training. How can they catch up with another school in two weeks? Because they have absolutely no chance against the techniques and abilities of other schools, as they are already more honed and already capable of defeating other opponents. Then our protagonist says that is why he asked the question concerning death. All gathered at the pavilions where the training takes place as it was, but it's all good since there is already a result. In an instant, everyone turned to somewhere where a bright light shone. It was our main character who was waiting for them and wanted to say something very important to them. When the older man reported to the younger one that everyone was gathered as he asked, and everyone was waiting for some orders or answers to questions, then our protagonist pulled out the sword and waved it so hard that it looked like they were using an illusion. Everyone saw the real sword and was surprised to see exactly what kind of training they are going to get today. Then our protagonist says that the new way of training is just a training and there is nothing to worry about. He says that in order to pass this training, they only have to try to die once, and then they will understand the meaning of this training. Everyone was scared. They said that Junior was crazy and that today he was really going to kill them. They were afraid of every breath of our main character because they didn't expect what he could do this time. He was dangerous without the ball, but... What will happen if he uses the sword? In turn, says that they must be ready to fight Zhong Nan. He says that however seniors can win, no, you must win, and he will make it happen. When one case says that, well, if so, he will go all the way no matter what this new training is, he will endure everything, absolutely everything. But he doesn't understand the word try to die. What does that mean for him and for all these students? Then our protagonist turns to him and tells him to go to the arena first. When he went back to his elder, expecting him to support him or do something to save him, and his elder just turned his back on him. But it was obvious that everyone was afraid of that. So he merged and at that moment he hated everyone as they betrayed him at such a desperate time. Because of the hopelessness he decided himself to go to the arena and face the prison, he realized what he said in vain about becoming strong. Then our protagonist says that it probably sounds strange, but they are already strong enough. All the training didn't come to nothing, but still they are not even for the third generation Jungnan disciples. But it's all confusing all at the same time since they are strong, but at the same time they are also weak. If Young Nan's Lee Xiongbaek is considered strong, then their abilities are still at about the same level as in the past. Zhou Gol can stand for victory. Yun Jung will need some luck. But the rest of the third generation students will never win unless fate decides so. He doesn't think even the help of fate will lead to victory over Junnan. In fact, if you can't defeat another school because of your weakness, it's because even when you strengthen your body, you keep doing the same things. Then you have to think about why you need to learn fencing and what you need it for. 
This school has already formulated the answer to repair the body with a ball and finally achieve immortality. In Taoism, the sword is just a tool for training that will help to enter the path of truth. However, this guy and the creature will want to give such an answer. Then the student replies that to see the enemy and to make it easy, one must learn swordsmanship. In turn, Chang Meng just laughed, saying that this is a typical answer of a follower of the dark path, which is not suitable for a Taoist at all. But still, it's only half, so it's only half, so it's all about winning, of course it counts. And in the same case, what do you have to do to win with the ball, asks your sword? That in turn is stronger so that no one can defeat you. You'll only win if you're stronger than your opponent. That's the basic answer. But it carries a slightly different meaning. You have to find out for yourself what that meaning is. Then he throws a wooden sword, and at the same moment, this student grabs this weapon. After he got this sword, he didn't know what to do with it, as he didn't think he would fight with a wooden sword. Then our main character tells him to fight with this particular sword and fight enough to win it. This was too strong a statement for this student as he was imagining the difference in strength. He was saying something that on many stronger than a few months, even six months ago. This is our main character just laughing and saying that he also just did not lie on the couch. And during this time also trained for this fight and is now ready with him to assess their strength and exchange combat experience. Then he says that he attacked the protagonist with all his might so that he could evaluate his strength. Well, at this time, nothing happened and that of them did not want to attack, but it remembered about something. He changed the times where Joe Gall was just playing dumb, but after a while he was going through such a difficult training, so he was probably so tired. But during these musings, he was interrupted by some strange sound or some people. But it was a single person, and it was, of course, the disciple who was already making to shorten the distance. After that, he made a swing of this wooden sword to somehow overpower our protagonist. In turn, Cheng Meng was very pleased that this disciple was using his abilities a lot. He was attracted by the fact that he immediately reduced this distance. If you compare only his abilities, he is not inferior to this student from the other school, and his confidence is very high. Then he begins to wear like a beast to hit our hero. But he still did not hit in any way he would like to finish the air where there is nothing in the last moment as if vaporized. He realized that his weakness is very visible and he will not be able to do anything to our protagonist. He was angry that he was just wasting time during this time and not progressing in any way proportional to his attitude towards Chang Meng. He was trembling that there was no way he would win and trembling that he didn't have the strength to separate an opponent like him. It wasn't fear, he just wanted to win, and his anger, he began to look for some blue color. Turns out this was the ball flow ability, which is very rare in this school. Making a huge leap he carried and to our protagonist to one blow to decide the outcome of this fight. But there was no way on the gorgeous hero was not a weakling, and in one move made so that he fell and struck his crushing blow, at that moment the student thought that he would really die. From this blow happened, I nothing terrible, this blow in no way touched this student, and the area that enveloped him just exploded. At this time, the student felt great fear and really felt what death is. He did not stop laughing after that. At this time, on the posh hero said that he rested, and now he will take care of others who will be his next opponent. When our protagonist looked at everyone around him, he saw that they were all just afraid to go out with him in battle once for all. They were just stealing their responsibility and not to go out and get hurt. They didn't want to stand out from the crowd. Then one of them says something that is older, you can go out to wallpaper with this monster to deal with it somehow. Well, then he warns his elders that if they don't, he will attack them, and in that case, there will be nothing left of them. After this statement, our protagonist is happy and laughs, saying that he is already attacking them and warns them that it will not be easy when he jumps on the crowd and starts a very fierce and long battle, but still the outcome of the battle was already written. The crowd that had been waiting for our protagonist for just a few hours and they just lost very quickly, with our protagonist fighting them like children. After all the beating, our protagonist asks why didn't he repel the attack even when he warned him. Then the student starts to get angry, saying that he is too fast, so fast and strong that he didn't even think in time to fend off the attack even a three-year-old would understand. When our protagonist says that this turns out to be a wonderful thing for everyone to know, but then why doesn't the older ones do anything about it? And this question really confused him because he didn't understand what the child wanted to hear, though. Then our protagonist makes a huge swing which makes a wave comparable to the wind. 
When the student says that this is the movement that he saw, but it was many times faster, then the protagonist replies that a sword coming down on your head and a sword being watched from the side cannot be perceived in the same way. In other words, it was a very basic strike that can be repeated by anyone if they temper their body to the same level as the elder. First of all, the position of the legs first to the right. You have to make sure that the legs are stable so that the body doesn't wobble. And then as this force is transferred to the extremities of the toe and shifts the inner toe, only then can you get to the point where your kick can break anything. Even the strongest and biggest boulder. Not to say it's some kind of outstanding technique or speed invisible to the eye. It's just a swift and decisive sword brought down in a straight line without a single extra movement. Then hears some voice it was an older man who says that only now he realized what our protagonist wanted to say. He says that it is better not to try to chase dumb steps unskillfully for the present U.S. most suitable techniques combined with a hardened body. And you must have the determination to kill the enemy with one blow to prepare for the fact that you cannot swing the sword twice, say our protagonist. Only then Strashi reaches the fact that all this showed that the protagonists that if they do not kill in one blow, then most likely they themselves. They say it is better once to see than one hundred times to hear if the huge difference is to feel the sword on their own skin when executed to kill in one blow or to know about it only by hearsay. If the guys themselves now would not have experienced how Chen Meng falls on their heads, is much more difficult to think of the main elder. Then the older one is saying that they are still a disciple of a great school like Huashan. Shouldn't they disciples expose the opponent to the techniques and swordsmanship from their school? Because the first technique formed by the sword's six interactions is the chopping blow which in your kind is fundamental to everything in Huashan. The six interactions do not go into the Huashan technique. The principle of six interactions is the basis and skeletons in Hua Shan, but you have to have a very good body to use the technique. Everyone turned in to listen to our hero's lectures, at which time he said that everything in Hua Shan begins with the principle of six interactions and ends with it. However, they had not even mastered the six interactions, what sword of fallen leaves, what steps of the stars, so Chung Meng was born. He says that they have chalked it up to the fact that it is useless to learn other techniques until you possess the six interactions. A building without a foundation will collapse from a slight breeze because all fencing techniques in Huashan are based on the principle of six interactions. When he speaks to everyone, he says that they must first at least drag their body to the shooting ground. Then the elder says that he understood his meaning of the words about the importance of the six interactions. He says that they are not he send only in his hands of all here present less than six interactions possesses such power. But it may sound silly to him, but they need power not in the future, but that which is now the jerk next door. And so he asks him if they do as he does, will they be able to collect at least a huge bazaar send Jongnan? But this our protagonist starts to get angry saying what kind of idea could this have gotten into his head? He once again asks what kind of person can lose to such people of such schools? If there is such a person, he is not worthy and does not deserve the right to live. And asks, where is it that Huashan disciples lose to a loser from Zhongnan and says that he will definitely lead them to victory? Then he says that no one from this school has the right to lose to such a loser from such schools. He says that he is doing everything to win this fight, and if he has to tear out his tongue or anything, he will do it to win. Appeal to all he says that they must every day actually train and obey their elders and advise him. They some figurative must win these assholes so that they do not affect them as strong. They will have to train so much during this time that his body can be so out of fashion, and they will train until they become a level higher. And when that fight came, they would all become much stronger, thus showing just how much the power of the Hua Shan school was ahead of Zhang Nan's power. Everyone was motivated like they'd never been motivated in their entire lives. They were willing to go to any lengths to make these words a reality in two weeks. As we move to the flashbacks, someone refers to the chapter about how if senior Zhang men doesn't take on a student, his swordsmanship won't be passed on to the next generation. His technique is too valuable to lose it like this. It turns out that this also bothers the head a lot. However, he as a man for no reason cannot entrust this man to become his student. Today, terrible punishment. For what sins children should his turns out to be created by such a question? 
This guy is the kind of guy who says that even a dog will become on its front legs. If it is retreated to death, he cannot let someone who only wears the mask of a man do it. So if this man is really on the path of Taoism, then don't even bother talking about it. Turns out I've been listening to all of this our main character and says what he's already behind. It turns out all this conversation he was behind, just no one could feel him as he was, at that time one of the great warriors may be the greatest. He's just thinking about it now, and his mood takes a turn for the worse. He's just saying what he's trying to raise them to be worthy is like teaching a child to walk. Although it's a little different than him personally moving their feet to show them how to take their first steps. If you want to do something good, do it yourself. He doesn't need a bloom that will fade with his death. He must revive the soul of this school so that it will be as strong, even if he disappears, the bloom is beautiful with flower petals, but fleeting. But the soul is like the root. Though it doesn't show on the surface, it keeps the tree alive. Even if he understands everything, it's only in words. At last, he has arrived at the training ground where he can train and develop his skills without any people. He thinks this girl won't come again. Maybe she's obsessed with training, but she's unlikely to be on the mountain at the top of the hour. It's about 2 a.m. Stronger than his past self isn't about getting his old self back because that wouldn't be enough. He certainly has a definite goal that he must accomplish in a short time. This is, of course, due to the heavenly demon that in his past life he alone could not win. If not for those who ascended the array back then had not weakened it with their combined efforts, he would have never been able to contend with it. He is angry at himself, too. He, the great swordsman, couldn't convince one single heavenly demon alone. But what if he could separate it with his own strength, then maybe no one would die? These thoughts haunted him. He wondered if he could have defeated it alone, the head and other disciple mentors. All returned safe and sound and went on with your quiet and measured lives. There's no guarantee that some sort of celestial demon won't reappear. And maybe whoever attacks this country again will be even scarier. In order to protect this school from danger, he must simply become stronger. Strong enough to defeat his past in a matter of moments. And when the next time he is stronger for his past self, he must simply defeat him in a split second without even feeling any difficulty in the battle. He must become so strong that such opponents for him appeared to be some kind of toy, and the past heavenly was so weak that he could defeat him with a single blow. During all this, he was practicing his art, an art that had been passed down generation after generation, so beautiful resembling cherry blossom petals. Behind all this beauty was this girl who met our protagonist past his meeting. At this time, our protagonist thought that he must find his own style that will allow a path beyond his capabilities and will come to new beginnings. It seems that he is about to because of this opportunity, but it is still a long way away not only to invent a new style, but also to master a new level. When he thought about it, a misfit appeared in his eyes, and it was the same girl he met last time in this area. And such an unexpected appearance, he was just scared to the point of goosebumps, and took a few steps back as it was instinctive. He didn't understand how he had managed to get close to him without being caught. Even though he was deep in thought, he couldn't have failed to notice the man's presence last time, and this time without any sign of him. Come to think of it, he could still vaguely sense her presence, who she was. Maybe she had mastered the skill of assassination. Such questions intervened in our hero's mind. By the way, how it is now is not important now. I wonder how much she has been able to see wondered Chung Meng. Looking at such a cute face on the protagonist says to himself that to begin with it is necessary to behave naturally as if nothing happened. After she, he felt some danger coming from her. He immediately increased the distance from one jump and moved ten meters away from her. Then he just became a greeting pose and said that he had to leave because he had some body. After that, in a moment, he was already walking so far away that her eyes couldn't follow him. She just wanted to ask about the plum blossom she had seen because it was so beautiful, and she had only heard about it before. At this time, the main character says that she scared him very much this time, witnesses one so no one will believe her, but they say that three people will give a tiger. It means that even the lies of a few people are accepted as truth. He should be careful when he returns to the PX generation. Then he remembers that he has some things left to do. Before returning, he should go there first, then go back to school. It was a beautiful morning. There was such true peace everywhere, and everything was fine because people had everything. In this really chic hero was having a very good time because he was eating at the popular restaurants of this city. 
He ordered dishes that normally the disciples would not even be able to order and taste now because these dishes are palatable. He says that since the drinking from the cave ended, he has almost returned to normal life, but one must actively use the privileges given by the head. He recalls that the head had said that almost everything flows at its own pace, but why so often forbade him to do so because it was a slam dunk to get out to skip the charka. He always liked to drink and have fun in his spare time. It was very difficult for him because he didn't have much spare time. Then he remembers the moment why the head forbade him to behave like that in front of everyone. The reason was that the main character was also a Taoist. But now it's a different matter because he is over 100 years old and he has the right at least to behave alone and drink as much as he wants. But he says that in the past, the alcohol that he drank in secret from him was the most delicious. Funny thing is, he's never needed anyone to sit across from him in his life. If only the elders had seen him sitting here alone, they would have laughed at him. These gentlemen were just ordinary old men. There's no such thing as ascension there. It's a paradise corner. Is there any need for anything else? The protagonist thought to himself. He was very nostalgic for the times when he was young and did what he wanted despite the warning of his elders. But at this time, someone comes into this room. They were completely shrouded in black and there were more than a couple of people. When they entered, this presence was certainly experienced by our protagonist. He noticed that they were unusual as they exuded some other aura from them. Then he assumed from hearing their conversation that they were the older generation of pecs who were returning from their long and lonely training. Looking at them, he saw that they were young and handsome young men who were about 20 years old or less. The proof that this is the peak generation was the symbol of a plum blossom that sat on their chests, and this is the beginning that I am the oldest one. Then he thinks that he should contact them and get the hell out of here. Their conversation was about Yu's sister in this city. Apparently, she went to Huashan earlier. Then one of the disciples said that it was all already solved because their sister was somehow special, and she could handle all the difficulties by herself. After that, they ordered some portions of the most delicious food they had today from the owner of this stall and into their beers. For this followed on the closet, Hero was surprised that they barely grew up to the second generation, and the first thing before returning went not somewhere but directly to the beer center of this city. Even if the school is a mess, it should not be allowed to happen. He was disappointed in the youth in their years when he was caught staring at the cave wall for a week and only knew how to swing a sword. When he looked at the crowd that sat across from him, and the man who was in the middle thought that he was the oldest. Then they didn't talk about, this is the baked goods they were not supposed to drink when they are in the territory of this city as students of this school. But today is a special day when they come back from such a hard workout, and today they have every opportunity for such fun. Our protagonist says that he's a future man who can feel his charm as if he's a noble husband from the legends come down to earth. And this boy in turn says that they all this time tried so hard and deserved this drink, and he has already paid for everything and they should drink it to the end. Just don't get too drunk, because after a while they have to go to school and be greeted with head and constituents, and at that time they have to turn off being regular second-generation students. All of this, of course, our main character listened to our main character. He listened to talk about how much they have increased their strength through this training. They say that they have spent so much effort and they have managed to achieve good results and they certainly hope to win all the disciples in the upcoming assembly. In his turn, the chief says that those that school is very strong, they fully match the title of the first of the nine great schools. Although in the past they belonged to the nine great schools between Zhongnan, however, this is only reputation. Reputation and ability need not necessarily be proportional. Everything can go the other way altogether. Everyone else listened to this and agreed with this opinion as it was true, even though they lost at the last meeting, but he didn't see such a big difference and they have a chance to win and they have been working hard for it. Hadn't they progressed in their training? Looking at the hand they'd made, even cutting down on sleep time, they'd endured that hard, solitary training and hadn't given a second's indulgence. And they've worked their asses off and hope they get lucky. And then it doesn't mean that says that they are more likely to accept the challenge from Zhongnan school this time with confidence and give them a very good fight. Then the main one of them asked whether this school from the beginning was stronger than theirs, because history records that Huashan has always led in all aspects of the nine great schools. 
Now, nothing can be known for sure if they are this all-forgetting fatigue, then eventually can happen all the school and become the strongest, because there is already a history of such a case. Our protagonist almost choked because he was amused by such statements. It was very strong even for the second generation of Peck. There appeared to be some country atmosphere between our main character and the rest of the students who were sitting and eating in a normal setting. Chung Mung hoped that he wasn't hurt in any way because he didn't want any trouble at all and just wanted to eat in peace, so he just pretended to put something in his mouth. But of course it didn't work because it was very empowering, and because of that, these students asked who he was and who he was going to be why he did that. That who he is, and he asked this because he had never met him in this city before, and asked if he was from what clan. Only then the head student realized that when they entered the pub, he immediately felt a subtle feeling of discomfort, and now he understood why. It was because of this boy who was near them at the time. It was strange that a boy who was barely fifteen by the looks of it ordered expensive food and drank alcohol. For as long as he could remember, none of the rich officials and merchants in this city had sons who would spend their leisure time alone like that, at least none of his age. When our protagonist says that all this was an accident and asks them to continue their meal, the one in turn says that I even such things can happen here nothing to apologize for, and he takes this order with him and says that their meeting is otherwise not fated, so why not introduce themselves to each other? Then that second generation disciple says that he is a student of the great Huashan school, but all this annoys Chang Meng as he realizes that it will bring him trouble. He's not happy that this disciple is clinging to him and he's so annoying. Then he does not say at all that he has never met him and would like to get to know him better and become friends in the future. Then he says, if they live in this city and you will meet after that, it is better for them to get acquainted now. But our protagonist didn't agree to that because he had no plans to get closer to the second generation. Then he stays from the chair and says that he does not have the right name to meet him and says that she has a case. Or rather... He has a case that he has forgotten, and he urgently needs to go there to take care of things. The student says that he wanted to do everything without using any tricks. He just wanted to get to know her and become real friends. Then he uses his hand to drain chi. Most likely it was a technique, but this technique did not work because our protagonist just turned around. Todd, in turn, was surprised that this man was able to wrap himself that despite this technique, even so, it is not easy even for a student who is in his level. Then in turn, the other disciples say why he in turn let go of such a naked little bastard. This in turn says that he did not want to disturb such a person who was in a hurry to go somewhere it would be unseemly for students of such a great school. But he still wondered how that little boy managed to dodge his swift kick. At this time, Chung Meng was having a drink and thought that one of the reasons why life on Huashan had been peaceful until recently was the huge age difference between Un Yi Cheon's generation. For a new recruit, the most feared person is not a general or an emperor, but someone who is one generation older. When you think there are no elders and they show up, and in his time it was a very scary burden. He so understands about that saying type who talked about some skill he had picked up during this time of absence. He thinks he's some kind of weakling because he's sure Cho Gol will beat him in a second on even terms. It was worth it to see that this nonsense is called the Palm of Sinan from Stenob because it shocked him even more than the first meeting with the third-generation disciples. How far could the third-generation disciples of the third generation have progressed? Studying martial teachings, even with decent teachings, everything is about timing. However, with the second generation, disciples is a different conversation third generation, at the level of grinding basic at the stage of learned training to hone the skill. When our protagonist says that there is no need to waste his precious time now, but since when do things like this make him feel responsible? Then one of the disciples comes to Jogol and says that all the third generation disciples should gather at the training square because their senior accomplices have returned. Then Jogol remembers our protagonist and thinks that he probably doesn't know that there is a meeting. When he enters the room, he sees our protagonist sleeping and smelling very strongly of alcohol. Then he decided to wake him up. He woke him up very carefully because he did not want unnecessary problems associated with training. That in turn sharply became, but the stench from his mouth, especially the stench of alcohol, increased. Then our protagonist hears from this student that his eldest returned, and it is necessary to meet the second generation of Peck with dignity, and because of this they are gathered in the main hall. After hearing our protagonist say that it is necessary to remove the smell of alcohol, 
and does his technique thereby turning all alcohol into smoke. Then he says that they must hurry up, or they will be late for this important meeting in which they will meet another generation. Our protagonist asks the student why they have to meet them after such things in time. He in turn says that they need to greet them because they came back after going through a difficult, secluded toning. Then our protagonist says to himself that they should sit for half a year in the cave of remorse where even light does not penetrate, where only bugs and cockroaches are edible. What can be done with this fencing? Then they can call it a training. They swallow a little sword, and then they have the nerve to drink alcohol and say how hard it was to be alone. Then the disciple says that this time they sharpened their knives and say that their favorite ways it turns out that even the head was generous and provided support in techniques and training. And he needs to be the last senior peak Jong is quite strict, and if he continues to behave as usual, he will not be too bad. After a while, they came to this point where all the third generation disciples were waiting for them, and they meekly stood in that formation. Then after a while, the very second penance who had gone through the difficult training to become stronger came out of the main gate. They all wore black robes. It was probably the uniform of the last generation they had trained in. And at the head of them was that same Peck Chong, who was rumored to be the strongest and most promising student of this school, who had also gone through this infernal training. When they passed by our hero, our hero thought that it was necessary to hide his presence to such an extent that they did not even notice his face. Because if someone remembers him somehow, he will have a problem because he will be pestered by everyone who wants to get to him. At one moment, this Beck Chung turns around and notices a very similar face that he seems to have met that time. Although to this boy who showed his disrespect when he sat and ate during their morning celebration, then he also says that he is his seemingly close friend whom he met this morning, and when he covers with his hand, he was sure it was him. Well, he, the main character, says that he has never met him because he recently transferred to this school and is a freshman now. Then he asks him not to throw words around because you can't accuse someone you're not completely sure of. To accuse someone, he must have some high arguments or evidence. In this case, he says that he has no such evidence and should not accuse him of such things when he in turn says that he is absolutely sure that it is him, and if in this case his memory does not fail and even proof is not necessary. Then in turn, one of the elders says that this boy is telling the truth because he really came after they left for their drills and training. Beck Chong thinks that he can't be wrong about this boy because his face and even his behavior was very similar to that of the man he met in the morning. He wondered how they became friends in such a short time because he knew the character of those two and knew that it would be very difficult to become friends with them. It was also surprising that this boy had a strong character for such an age, and he was protected by the strongest of the third generation. After he had said everything, he said that the meeting was fate for them, and they would probably meet more often in the future than they did now. This whole conversation was interrupted by the mentor saying that their second-generation disciples were waiting for the head, and they should reach him in a short time. When the second generation elder says that he has something to do and has no time to waste for such a small boy. After he left with his elders, say that you can't contact and address him with such a tone because there may be problems in the future. As it turns out, Senior Peak Chung is considered to be the most outstanding talent in the school and is considered to be the one who will revitalize the failing school. Then our protagonist remembers that he was called so many names as a child but after some incidents, he was called by a different name due to his strength and character. Then he says that he heard that the talent of this school is Joe Goal, because he is very talented and smart even if he is among his peers. Then this student says that he didn't say that anymore because it would make Beck Chung very angry. Then he says that this person is much stronger than him and he can't even compare to him in any aspect of his strength. You could see that he was embarrassed very much because our protagonist was saying that he is also stronger than this Beck Chung. He says that it is commendable that he is praised for his skill and he seems to stand out among the stones as if he is gold. But this can have a negative rather than positive effect in some cases. And in the extreme, it can have the effect of making him perfect in this crowd or even among the students of this school. When as the older generation was going to greet with the head, our protagonist notices that in this crowd, there is that girl. He then hopes that this girl has not told anyone about his meeting with her and hopes that no one from the second generation will recognize him. 
Joe Gall notices this and says that it's really hard to get away from Sister Yu as she is very beautiful and attractive for a school like this. Then the main character looks at him with a strange look as he wasn't interested in her at all back then. But he does not stop talking about what he cannot even dream of Senior Yu is already in love with Senior Beck Chung. But at this time, no one did not want to serve that, especially our protagonist and his eldest. They just covered their ears and pretended that he did not hear anything. Then our protagonist says that one of them is the most beautiful in this area, and the other is the most talented, and such a thing cannot be. If he had spent time practicing together, he would have already made a name for himself, as a swordsman says about Cho Golia. At this time, the second-generation students welcomed the head after such a long absence from this school. In turn, the head also welcomed them and said that he was very happy to see them in good health. They said that they were very grateful for such an opportunity to train in seclusion, and all these trainings were not in vain as they had gained strength worthy of a swordsman. It was the turn of the mentors and the head that said that they should train for this, and he expects more than worthy support from them and wishes them good luck in the future. Then I turn to the financial class Pavilan. He says that they should make a feast for such an event. But that in turn did not want to do such an event at all, because it was only the return of the prodigal disciples of the second generation from which there is no use. But of course he didn't say that, but he agreed with the head and said that he would organize a feast for such an event. As he was leaving, he very quietly muttered that it was not necessary to organize a feast for such a simple event, and that it was not worth it. They were just wasting the school's money. The chapter notices that this man, after the Milky Way gel started supporting them financially, started saying some strange things. After that, he asked Mentor Onam to help these students relax after such hard and long training. Then the head turned to our hero, saying that he should again stop by his house to solve some problems. But this appeal to the head surprised Beck Chung because he did not understand why he was again going to the residence of the head. And what personal matters can they have that this little student can solve and wipe out his generation? He has many more questions about this disciple, and the most important question was where he came from and why he plays such a role in the chapter's life. Then Onam's mentor says that he should not think about this boy because he is having thoughts from such a big information. After that, this Park Chong has an opinion that this school has changed a lot because of their absence. When he came to the evening dinner, he was greeted by a juicy fried chicken and he wondered how this school got the money for the celebrations. But another student said that during the year they had been away the pavilion, and even the refectory had changed a lot. He was embarrassed at first, but it was so clean and neat. Then one of them suggests that most likely when they were gone, the god of wealth had not entered, and judging by the reaction of the children, it is so. When they heard these children talking, they were already dissatisfied with this meat, because they wanted something varied like fish or other seafood. This surprised the older one from the second generation very much, because in their time such a thing was very rare, and it was impossible to get tired of meat when there was simply no such thing as meat. Is it possible to hear something more unlike and inappropriate in this school, this school he knew could rival Gaban for the title of the poorest school in the world? No, even that school wasn't as poor as Huashan, just the students of that school are beggars themselves, they don't suffer from poverty. And for that school to suddenly become rich is not even like a dream. When the mentor asks why he doesn't eat anything, is the problem the taste of the food? Then this student says that he doesn't understand anything. Because what happens here is not like what happened to them when they were studying and training here. Then the mentor says that it's a long story and that he will learn everything in time. But that it's necessary to live a normal life for a while. He says that he will only say that this school has acquired one lucky talisman with the help of which it found money, and glory even did more than it could in a decade. Suddenly, out of nowhere, the door to the cafeteria is broken by Chang Meng, and the rumble was so loud that everyone heard it and turned around to see what happened. Turns out it was Chang Meng who was very angry about something and was like a bull who could say anything. But after that, he just sat down at his table and started eating what he was served. The second generation disciple saw this, of course, and wondered why he was behaving like that and acting like that in front of everyone, even his mentor. Then Beck Chung's mind had even more questions about why the third generation disciples didn't ask what was going on with the younger one. 
Moreover, why didn't the elder Ungam, who takes courtesy very seriously, say a word as if this situation was nothing to take for granted? He thinks it can't be that the little guy has gotten the entire third generation under his thumb, and they're all absolutely afraid of him. In addition, there are third-generation students sitting next to him, and the most capable among them is Joe Gull. That means he sits exactly in the middle between moral obligation and authority. He's thinking, what trick did that little guy use to get everyone including all the third-generation students under him? Then the protagonist starts saying, why did he call out like that? And it turns out he was told to go to the Milky Way Guild. But then these Sashis started saying that at first it was very funny and fun to him, but why did it seem like a punishment to him as time went on? He says that because they send him often, but at least it's good that they only send him to the branch in the city, if he were sent to another city, he would really get sick. That's right, he doesn't know what method he used, but all the third-generation disciples are dancing to his tune, Yoon Young. So he thought he'd bow his head even if he didn't push hard, but it seems that's not the case. He thinks he should take the time to come back later, but now he's asking what and where Sister Yu is. He says he's been gone a long time. And after this dinner, they should all look for her, even if they trust her a lot. He's mad at them because their friend is out somewhere and maybe something happened to her. They're just eating and enjoying this time. But they say that no one can find her. They know that if she doesn't want to come on her own, no one can find her. And the others agree with him because there was an incident before when they tried to find her, but no one could. And finally, she came after some time. When one of the students smokes that Beck Jong is very fair, but when it comes to his sister, he becomes unreliable. And at this time, this gorgeous lady was already entering the dining hall. She looked very chic and like she was looking for someone. She ignored her companion. Well, probably did not even notice them and went straight to Chung Mung. Then she turned to our hero and asked him to give her a seat so she could sit next to him. Everyone was shocked that she was talking to someone other than Beck Chung and even asked to sit next to him. But in turn, she gets the answer that she can't sit next to Chang Mung, who is eating. He asks her to go away because he has no desire to talk to anyone right now. He just wants to eat his food and enjoy the flavor of the food. Chogol doesn't understand what kind of situation is going on at this table right now, since no one in Huashan was trusted to have a friendly conversation with the elder Yu, but she is the first to talk to Chang Meng. He thinks to himself that he should hang with her a little because the other second generation may attack him. She says it won't take long, she just wants to know some details and then she'll leave right away. But our protagonist on this one says he has nothing to talk about with his elders. He is angry that she does not get away from him. He just wanted to eat at this time, and no one gives him peace from students to the head. But then she sits down next to him, and they say that she will wait until he eats, and then she will ask him some questions. We have the main character saying that he won't say anything and won't go anywhere even if you try to talk him into it. She says she came to him and is waiting for him. But in the meantime, all eyes are on the three men, one of whom is this very talented second-generation student. Then he turns to our protagonist and says that he is a bit unusual among the others. He so recalls his unusual behavior that concerns him and the elders he behaved arrogantly towards them and asks for an apology. But this lovely girl thought that his elders were talking about her and her behavior. Then she apologized to him and said that she had committed a very bad deed for which there is no forgiveness. When our protagonist says that she is apologizing to the wrong person, she should apologize to the master who put up with all this. Then she started apologizing to the master for making such a mistake and making such a fuss. When the master just accepted the apology, but this whole situation hurt the elder very much because the little third generation disciple is doesn't take him seriously. Then he stays from his seat and says that all this has gone too far, and it is necessary to teach this small measure a real lesson. In turn, the eldest of the third generation told the eldest of the second generation to rest and go to his room. They asked this because they wanted to mess with him. They also additionally asked him to rest because he had a very hard training. That senior then started to ask Chung Mung if he had any questions about him and what he could say now. Even all the other students were hoping that our student would just support him and tell him to rest. But that one in turn says that it is the elder who speaks with such a tone that it is as if he is very tired. If that's the case, and if he insists on it, of course, like after such hard training, he should definitely rest in his very soft lump that he doesn't deserve. Pyuk Chung once again says that this little boy from the third generation has a very bad tone and asks him to speak respectfully to his elders when he talks, 
Then he once again asks if he was not the one that morning. Our main character says something he doesn't understand, and the person who heard him is definitely not him. Bak Jong says that he has no other choice, and he intends to take the situation seriously. That's when the sound is called when a person greets Bak Jong Chung. He began to address the mentor about the request and saying that this student is asking for his support and for him to analyze the situation. When he started to say that it seems like the rules are that third-generation disciples are not allowed to go out on the town at any time. But today, he and someone randomly met someone who was wearing the uniform of this Hua Shan school and walking around the city. But on this, he would not say anything. But the most interesting thing was that this man then went to a bar and sought alcohol while still ordering expensive dishes. This same person could say with certainty it was the boy who did everything that violated the rules of this school today. When the mentor says it's no big deal, sometimes it happens because of stressful situations. Then he says that it is a normal thing that happens at least once a month and nothing can be done about it. Here the student thinks that his ear is failing him since the mentor who was always the term for such things demanded always decency and common sense, he says so. Then the mentor tells him to just forget about it and eat his food quietly sitting on this table. Because all the things that are in this school and all the things that have appeared while they were gone are because of this boy and he can sometimes do strange things. Then Bak Chung once again says that this behavior and the fact that he was drinking alcohol at that time is not the same. It violates the rules and laws of this school. Then Mentor Unam says that some laws have already been set on our protagonist because he is special among all. Then he asks him to sit back down and not to cause any more problems related to Chang Min. He and all the other second-generation disciples heard what the mentor said and were surprised that this man would not punish such behavior of a third-generation disciple. Then the persistent Pig Jong says to himself that if the mentor became like this, he should act colossally and notices the mentors and financial affairs of this school and says that if the mentor does not do it, rather this person can. Then he formally greets him asking his business and everything else related to this school. Then the head of financial affairs of this school says that it is not necessary to address him formally now, as he is here to see how things are going with them. Then he also speaks to Unam's mentor and says that he should follow up with all the students and make sure they are in good condition for tomorrow. Then Puk Chung says that he has come to this man for a very important request, and he has information that he needs to know. He says that one of the third-generation students is going out into the city without adult permission and drinking alcohol and ordering expensive food. This information makes the man very angry, and he asks which of these disciples is the person he told him about. At the same time, Bek Jong says that this student not only drinks alcohol, but also picks on the words of his elders. Then he thinks to himself that this little asshole will be very difficult and bad today, since he's being read by the strictest person in the school. Then he points to Chang Meng's face and says that this person is this boy who is just eating his fill. Then this head of the financial situation of this school says that if this is him, what is so supernatural and wrong about it? He says that he is fully entitled to rest for a while after such hard days of training. But the disciple still starts to object, saying that there are prescribed rules that must work for everyone without exception. Then he asks if the poem has a rule about drinking outside the school. And he says that he can drink a little what's the big deal if he is under stress because of this situation at school. He says that they didn't even save me money to pay for food, and there are so many of them, and this guy that feeds them all decided to buy his own booze with his own money. He says if he became a senior, and you can't pick on little things, it's wrong even for seniors to treat the younger ones. And after that, they still call themselves senior, which is the second generation who in turn have to feed their juniors. He was very angry at these disciples, saying that they only know that they wave the sword, yes, go and consume, and there is nothing to be proud of, because in this situation, the younger are right. Turn to everything he says that they are currently consuming meat with the money that is earned by this disciple. And if this apprentice decided to drink a little on the saved money, they can tolerate and accept this situation. Then he gets very angry and says that if they don't want to eat this dish that was earned at the expense of this boy... Then the head mentor comes and takes him away from these students who have heard too much for such a thing. But even so, this head of finance of this school does not calm down, and it was evident that he wanted to say more. Then this same student, the most important of the second generation of this school, looks at the protagonist and pays attention to Chang Meng. 
After some time has passed, and in his room, this second-generation head student drinks his tea to calm down and understand the situation he saw today. Beck Jong is listening to his friend's opinion, and he thinks that this child is not only taken care of by the elder's mentors and the whole staff of this school, and he's disappointed that even Sister Yu cares about him a lot and that she's attracted to him. It's the first time he's seen Sister Yu actively trying to talk to anyone, and it's not the first day they've been together, is it? When that student says to calm down and not to get mad at someone for something like that, just because they didn't do it right, some kid monopolized all the elders' favor? And that in turn says that the time when they already received the favor of the elder and all the staff of this school has long passed since they are an older generation. But in turn says that he didn't mean that at all, but something deeper? Then someone walks in and immediately starts greeting these students. When during this tea party, the elder says that he did a great job accompanying the mentors as a senior disciple while they were away. Then he says that he was only acting as a Sashu student of this school while the elders were away. But from what he sees now, unprecedented things are happening to the school because of one child. Then Senior says what he says prologue, which in turn came not so long ago, but at the same time was able to change this school yes recognizable. But still, he starts to apologize, saying that it's his fault that he couldn't manage the student as a senior and asks if it's necessary to punish him if they are angry about it. Then the elder says that to tell him everything that is going on and has happened during their absence. Then he tells him that after he tells everything and after he hears everything as it is, he how to proceed. He remembers that when he called Chung Meng to the meeting that his elders called for him, Chung Meng just refused, saying that he didn't want to go. He just waved his hand, saying that he doesn't care about it, and the elders are just a number that separates them. But his one complicated answer on the contrary makes one worry it would be much calmer telling him how he acts, thought the elder. Naturally, he has to report everything to the elder, but he can't get rid of the feeling that he's passing it on to Chung Meng. Then he begins to clear himself with the elder. He analyzes all the actions of all the third-generation students and begins his story. He says it's worth starting the story from the moment the sucker first entered Huashan. About two hours passed, and during this time he was able to tell everything again from the beginning up to that moment, and all this time they listened to him without even interrupting him for a minute or a second. After that, they were surprised that this little boy found the treasure in battle drills of the past generation, and they ask if he was, and if he himself found these treasures. When he says that he not only found these treasure additions and paid off all the debts of the school, but also seized the traitors, all this information surprised this senior, and he starts to say that this is not the most important thing. And during the chapter of Vanna, who in turn is the head of the trade route called Milky Way, and he for this as a guild fee pledged to finance this school. It was all like a fairy tale to the listeners, and this senior could not believe his ears. But still, he knew that this real man in front of him could not lie to him as he knew that this man was a man of integrity and pride. Then he asked because he had some business to attend to in a short time. In turn, the elder let him go because they heard what they wanted to know during their absence. After he left, his friend said that this boy had single-handedly saved the school from all the headaches. Only then did they realize why the seniors and all the staff of this school supported and protected this boy from everyone. The problem does not end with a simple accomplished achievement. Once this boy has connected with the trade guild by the status of the boy will increase every time Hua Shan will earn under her leadership. And so he can now that the same head looks at him differently since he has earned such trust from the highest person in this school. Well, his friend says that there is something new in this situation that he has just now realized. He says that if you look at it differently, maybe Jongmin's achievement isn't so great. He justifies it by saying that the Huasha is a martial school, and throughout history it has been a school that educates only warriors and masters. And it's unheard of for a martial school to favor a student who makes money. Wouldn't that have happened if things hadn't gone wrong in Huashan? It's worth it to be careful with the words his senior says to this student, because he is now blaming it on the elders and mentors, who in turn decided that this boy was able to earn them the money they really need and suddenly says that he had something else he did not want to say that his elders and masters had the wrong way in opinion. Then the elder says that he agrees with him in some ways because of the story of the truth he has in mind. He says that he is right, because Huashan Marshall School, no matter how much money is made, is a martial school and not a trading guild, and in the end, it is only the martial drills that matter. In addition, the gathering where the disciples of this and the other school will gather and fight for their honor and title is still close. 
When the elders realize it is coming, they will no longer care about the generation below them or even about everything in the school. They'll concentrate on martial arts training. It won't be long before they'll have no choice but to return to their roots. Then the younger one asks the assembly, not only they are involved, but also the third generation, because for them, it is also some kind of battle experience that they will get during the battle. In such a case, not only they need hardening, but also they are not doomed to such a defeat, and the worthy should save them from such a disgrace. Then the elder says something that he has not yet understood his main meaning that he wants to tell him there, so throw it to him to continue. When he says if worrying only about themselves, it would be right to focus on training, but as elders, they can't worry only about their generation. So about her personally being a third-generation martial practitioner, then that way they will understand their strength and can measure their potential well. Then the elder, he will be praised for coming up with such a great plan, and notes that he is very worried about this school and his juniors, and this is a good idea for it. But in his mind, he thought that it wouldn't be enough just to get the attention of the seniors. If it's left like this, the generation after them will rise up, but before that, it's worth explaining to them who their adults are and why they should bow their heads to him. Yet he is somehow afraid that they will be stronger than they are and will eventually shut them out from the eyes of their elders. Then he openly says that this child Jin Meng has what he hopes is a martial arts ability that is needed for the future and even now. If not, he will be in trouble because he was already very serious and ready for the consequences of this conflict. At this time, the third generation elder finds Chung Meng's room and sees that he is sleeping very soundly, and he was not surprised. But still, he was glad that nothing happened to them during his absence when he talked to ours. He thought that something could not happen because of the altercation with the second generation. At that time, Zhou Gaul, who was there to control the situation, asked him what had happened during the conversation and what they had decided. He starts his story saying that the elders made him tell everything he had done up to that time, and he had to tell everything. He says that he couldn't hide anything as he couldn't just do that because, first of all, he was very tough. Secondly, he wouldn't lie to his elders for some school-related nonsense that everyone knows. There is no point in hiding this information as they can still start others, and at the very least they can ask the head to tell everything. When he remembers that this person in the first meeting started to make inconvenience not just the senior but the mentor, he remembers that the elder Bak Chion was not strict with the third generation at all. He was always supportive and always tried to help them in everything. Now it's unknown what will happen to them since the relationship has deteriorated so much, they are afraid that somehow they may be caught by a stray arrow that will be very strong and fast. Anyway, all agreed on that since they heard the elders were coming back. He asks that he gather all the boys and tell them and tell them to be careful tomorrow. It's no big deal, but it's best not to give them anything to pick on. When he leaves, he says that he was curious about what happened during the conversation and says something else. If both the elder and Chung Meng meet in a fight who will win because it's a very interesting question, and I wonder who will win in this fight. Then, with the third generation senior presents this fight, where the two geniuses of this school will meet, and you can't imagine what will happen in the end. Then he thinks that this guy is in trouble too because now he treats him like a neighborhood senior. Looking at Chang Meng, he says that he doesn't even realize what he has done and what the consequences will be for his actions. At this time, the head was having a meeting with all the representatives of the great, great school. He was told that everything was exactly as the head said. The second and third generation disciples had a rather strange relationship now compared to the past. It would still happen sooner or later. The age difference between the second and third generation disciples is too small now. The youngest second generation disciple, Yu Xiol, is practically the same age as the eldest Yang Zong of the second generation. They may not be in the best shape, but their school is still one of the most respected schools. They tried to be selective in enrolling students, but the financial problems were getting bigger and it became difficult to regulate the enrollment. In the end, they started to take children and their supporting families. If the age difference between the second and third generation is large, then they will see each other as rivals. But if earlier in ten years or less, then enmity is inevitable. When the head thinks that he made a mistake acting so fast, and he realized that they were in a hurry for nothing. So he's saying that the third generation disciples who couldn't stand up to the second generation have changed. 
still realized that his experiences had turned into reality, today's distinction will serve as an example. The change of the key figure when Yang Zong and Zhuo Gul were the foundations of the third grade, they were ordinary students of Hua Shan school. But after starting to communicate with Cheng Meng, they began to develop and do more. They became stronger by leaps and bounds, and most likely even comparable to the second generation disciples. Then the mentor says that it's all his problem and his fault because he couldn't handle his responsibilities that needed to be done right. When Masya says that it's not his fault, it's all because of the situation they were all in, and it's the school. Especially he was the one who promised to make the White Hall a separate building, first of all. They created it because they started accepting third-generation students earlier than they should have. They wanted to separate the second-generation students so that they would look at the first class during training. Since the third generation has nothing to learn, the second generation has nothing to learn, so they grow up separately. Then the mentor asks, what will the head do now? The head says that these are the kind of people they can't hurt to bump into each other from time to time. This will most likely help them develop together. But the mentor disagrees completely, because there is a great possibility that they will have conflicts with each other. But the head says that you should not think that way and just trust them because they are not little children anymore. The head thinks that this mentor doesn't see the whole picture of what's going on because the problem is not the second generation's problem. Moreover, he pays a lot of attention to Jay Kyung, even though he's never taught him himself, so he sees the boy as a lucky star that has fallen on their school. He then asks Baek Chun if Baek Chun is a rude and responsible student, even though he's angry because his pride is hurt, but he thinks he's the one who will let the relationship between the second and third generation go bad. He says that he thinks that he will solve everything and not to worry about such a small problem that doesn't even exist. At this time in the training ground, everyone was practicing, and it was obvious that they had no strength left because they were already lying on the earth at this time. All this was seen by our main character who just walked and looked at these dead bodies. Then he began to say that with each new blow, the iron only gets stronger and stronger when they are strained. He says that if you just say that and don't hit them, they won't develop even a little bit. At this time, the older woman comes in and says that who decided them to lie on the training ground when they are in training. So they said that they came to check on them because they were worried and were right that they are unsupervised and longs from training. He says that they think they can rest when the Huashan and Zhongnan school meeting is coming up. After the training, they should stop here and make sure that there is not a speck of dust in this school and that the school is in good order. When they left, they said that it was a punishment for shirking the training they were supposed to do until the end. None of the third generation realized what had just happened because it was very fast, and they were very tired. But they heard what they were saying about some cleaning up after training, and this behavior of the elders touched Chogul Seven very much. His sad face sees our protagonist and asks what happened to him. Maybe he is sick or just shirking from training. After that, some hours had already passed, and he was dissatisfied with the fact that he was being chased by the elder for something stupid. He says that he is even getting used to being beaten, but he will not bear such torment. He did not think that their elders are such people, and before that he respected them. Then her generation's elders say that it looks like they're going to bully them by bringing back the old rules. Then Joe Gol says that there used to be a rule that students of Hua Shan school should never let go of the sword, so they should take the sword with them to the bathroom for lunch and while they sleep. The elder scolds them all. Even when only one has made a mistake, it is completely wrong and something is wrong with them. And he says that they have to do something because they should not tolerate such torment. He says that they are overreacting. They don't even hide the fact that they are humiliating them. They can't let them continue to treat them like this. Then he says loudly that they need to do something about it, but Chung Meng says what? Then the older man replies that he didn't want to tell him because he can't make him swear to any actions he might commit in the future, to which the protagonist asks, what do they want then? Then the forehead says that he misspoke and didn't mean it. Then the forehead says that he has a better solution according to what they assumed, when he says that this solution is very simple and easy to implement, he will just make meat out of them. He says that this whole situation annoys him, and he will solve it by just beating up the second-generation elders. He solves this problem in a short time that even they won't notice because it will be very quick and painless for everyone. Then he opens the door and notices that somehow randomly all the third-generation disciples are gathered at the door of this room. 
It turns out that all of this was already planned, and the third-generation elder yells for everyone else to grab Jin Meng. But still no way to catch him initially, as his speed was extremely fast for these guys. He was leaving everyone in the dust and running at a speed like he was running from a predator. He could dodge all the unforeseen attacks, which were also in turn were planned. In this small corridor, he somehow miraculously dodged, dodging merged from all the tricks that were invented for this occasion. But still, he failed to come back from the unpredictable attack from Jogol, who attacked from the ceiling and held him back at that time. Everyone asked him to calm down as he was like a rabid dog who wanted to bite everyone to reach his bone. He shouted for them to let him go, and he dealt with this problem in a split second just by beating up the elders, showing them who was in charge. Then the remaining third repentant says that he understands his feelings, but he shouldn't do it now because if he hits an elder, he'll be kicked out of school. He says that it's not long before the Huashan and South Valley schools meet. If senior Baek Chun is respected by the second generation students, if he can't fight after he beats him, what will he do? Then Chung Meng says that he will beat him so that he will still be able to fight and he will be able to do it without any problems in a split second. Since the elders won't have any pride left after he beats them, he asks them to refrain even though it's not easy for them right now, but it's better than being humiliated by this and the South Valley assholes. Then Jongmin says that the best decision he can make now is to just let him go and do what he plans to do. But at this senior meeting, Repentance says that he should think about it because Huashan School's conference with South Valley is a very important event. When all the students let him go trusting because he will just calm down and not do some valor after Senior's statement. Senior was surprised that Chang Meng stopped making a big deal out of it after he said all this and convinced him. But he had a question what would happen if they went at him and fought him personally. Then the elders there as the third generation says that if such an eventuality happens, he will not know and just entrust this situation to him. Then our protagonist laughing and smiling says that if so, he agrees with it, but it was obvious that he was planning something very, very bad. The next day it was already morning, the day was very sunny, and at that time the elders from the second generation were standing on the mountain. Then one of them reported that surprisingly he had reacted completely calmly. On his face clearly read anger, but he shows no resistance, not even to say anything that could cause problems. Then the older man started to worry that everything was going against his suggestions that he thought that this man would come out if he hurt him a little. He thought that if he got angry, it could be considered a riot. And then he was taught a lesson so that he didn't even have the courage to go against his elders anymore. On the contrary, he thinks he's the smallest of the third generation. Then he suggests maybe they didn't push him hard enough, but the other in turn says that harder would be very hard. By pushing them harder, they too could have problems in terms of right and wrong doing things. Then it came to the main and meetings of her generation that all this was not just a coincidence, and this boy was very smart meetings have company. When he asks what about the rest of the students to lose his generation is not, then the other answers that they have seen them crayon. But apart from the strange training, Nothing much. Except they can't procrastinate anymore because there isn't enough time for them and the whole thing doesn't need to be completed at a very fast pace. There's no telling when the mentors will be displeased. It's only a short time before the meeting. It's time for them to start preparing for it. Then the elder of the second generation says that he knows the water has boiled enough and it's time to pour the porridge. Then he says that the students of the Kayon generation have always been good kids. Before they went into closed-door training, they were all naive kids. Who would have thought that everything would change so much in a year that they would look like mature men? He says there's no need to punish all the chi on that eye, guys. The only problem is this kid named Chang Meng. Most likely all the problems are coming from this annoying kid. Then his friend asks what to do with this kid and what their plans are for him in the future. Then he says that the only thing they have to do now is to follow the Hua Shan laws and just be active and decent elders. Chung Meng is his precious little junior, and he needs to take good care of him. At least Chung Meng is a little bit of a worthy swordsman, who is worthy of the title of a disciple of this great school. If possible, I wouldn't want to use rough methods, but luckily they don't have time for that, so nothing can be done, says the elder. Sometimes it may be necessary, and the rod. One day they will surely realize what deep meaning their elders put into all this. They say that this will happen in spite of the laws of this school on the relationship between the second and third generation of this school. Though these actions will be painful, it will teach them something higher that they will realize after that, and will respect not only themselves, 
but also their elders. Dinner is night in this palace, all the lights are out, even at the main gate. You even out of Denmark comes out some silhouette, and it was of course our main character who went outside in such darkness. Then he goes somewhere, somewhere say that he is on the same place, does not return, although he was caught two-third times, certainly will not be who generally gets caught on the same. And yet you have to avoid some green how he got to this level. He says that this guy is like Kaisen's brother, invented some non-existent rules and trained people with them, wants to do something but does not do it himself. He would have turned the whole thing upside down a long time ago, despite the masters and mentors, but there's only one thing stopping him. The request of his elder and disciple because he forgave him from the heart and asked him not to commit any actions that will lead to terrible consequences. Lately, this person reminds him of the face of his head, if more precisely it is similar not faces, but the expression it suffers pure expression. Every time he did something surprisingly, it is able to cause guilt. After that, only he decided to be patient until a certain time, Hui Zhong's meeting to be exact. He would like to kick the faces of the Pak generation, but he would like to kick the heads of the Zhong Nan bastards more than them. It wasn't until he reached and found a certain place where there was no one, and the place was even the right size for him. But still, he decided to check for the absence of people and found no one. He says to himself that he can't relax because it's his sister or mentor because of him. He can't do anything because she's attached to him as a turnout. At least she keeps her distance when he's with other generations of Qian. But when he wants to be alone, she appears out of nowhere and bothers him with talk if he could at least sense her absence. He could avoid meeting her in advance. She seems to him like a ghost that appears out of nowhere, but realizing that it's complete nonsense, he relaxes. Then he says that sometimes people all meet and the presence is felt vaguely because of the faint sense of chi, although it is particularly difficult to recognize. Then he drew his sword, but during this he noticed on the reflection of this ball some strange picture, and there was seen that it was her. The same sister Yu who had been following him until now, it was a surprise to even Chang Min. Then he was not badly frightened and shouted why she was clinging to him, and where did she come from such a night as if she was a ghost that follows him around? Then he effectively took a couple of steps back, increasing the distance, and asks what she is doing here such a night. She in turn says that she is his elder and he should observe manners towards his elders. If this situation saw the head now, his stomach would from laughter at not even a granddaughter, not even grown up, indicates his ignorance. So what if she is outwardly very beautiful? It is impossible to figure out what she has inside as if he has something unpredictable inside. When she starts to say something related to the sword that makes the plum come down. But to this, our protagonist pretends to be a fool who doesn't understand what she's talking about, saying that he's never heard of it. He says that he doesn't know what she's talking about and has never practiced it in his life and asks her not to waste his time practicing. But she ignored everything Jiang Meng said and then started saying to teach it to him. She said that he taught him the sword under which the plum blossoms. Only then did it come to our protagonist that she had been following him all along for this. He thought she was asking where he had learned a technique that didn't belong to Hua Shan and was bothering him with the fact that he used some kind of sorcery. But still he didn't want to train her because, well, you know one would have some problem that he would never want. He kept pretending, saying, I don't know what this is about. Then she says that if he doesn't teach, he'll be punished by the mentor after she tells all this. She begins to threaten that she will not only tell the mentor and the masters, and will reach the head who in turn makes a choice about him. When our protagonist says that do what you want even tell the mentor and let this information even give to the head of the chapter, he does not care. And he says that he will believe that a youngster who has not spent half a year in school makes the ball blossom the cream of the plum blossom. And anyway, she's a senior like she said she was a sister mentor. And how can he teach someone who is older than him is his elder while he is also the youngest of the third generation? He starts saying that on the contrary, she should somehow teach the younger ones, helping them to develop in the structure of this school and in learning. But to this she says that you do not teach older and younger people, but those who want to learn something are taught there and age does not play any role. But then our protagonist says that even if she saw something, it's most likely that she dreamed it because he doesn't know anything like that. Or it's an illusion, and if not, it could have come from fatigue. He doesn't know what she's talking about, so he asks her to stop and go away. She says she can't be wrong about that. She saw clearly what was there. And she says that in the past she's already seen it. But this statement of hers is very much on the case of our protagonist because he has some strange questions. Sword-making plum-blossom ball technique. 
plum blossom ball, among the countless techniques existing in Huashan, there are only a few that do not just imitate the image of the plum blossom, but can leave to bring it down for real. In contrast to the techniques that can be learned by ordinary disciples, some of the leading plum blossom techniques could be inherited only by attaining the position of an elder. However, on that day, all the elders, and no one could think of destroying the Huashan school so they couldn't even leave any records. But she says she saw the blossoming sword on someone else besides him. That's very scary and would lead one to believe that there's some kind of trick in her words or she is a student affiliated with the Jungnan school. He was angry and yells at her to answer the question he asked. He has already drawn his sword because if I were to get the answer he expects, he would immediately destroy this man from the face of the earth. She says what makes him think she's connected to the school next door. Our protagonist thinks it's more likely she's a fake. But he doesn't think that this silly girl could play it so perfectly right down to the clueless expression on her face. On the other hand, in Zhang Nan, she could see the 12 snowballs technique. It's unlikely that anyone there can use the sword of blossoming happiness. It can only be fully realized together with Negong Hua Shan. Then the protagonist asks if she has seen such things, and thus has she seen such things in another place and another time? She says that she has seen it a long, long time ago, and she has only seen it once in her life. Just deflecting all follow-up questions, and she simply asks that this man teach her the technique. Then she says that she really has no idea what he's talking about. Then she says that he has no other choice, and she is now going to attack our protagonist since he can't negotiate. She draws her sword saying that now, if he doesn't change his mind, she will punish him to such an extent that he will wake up only tomorrow. Our protagonist didn't understand why she would withdraw herself. He thought he had a problem with his head. Because a normal person would not threaten another person with murder, and for such a small reason, and he really did not want to teach her because he did not understand why she wants it. But she still said that she is the eldest, and as the eldest he will now teach and at the same time punish his youngest for such actions. She holds the ball close to him and says that this is his last chance to correct this situation, or it will be too late, and there will be bad consequences for him. Then she gets into her position where she can make a huge leap and reach her target in an instant. Only then does our protagonist realize why everyone else thought and acted the way they did towards Sister Yu, because she was rabid, and for example, this situation proves that this is really true, as she attacked our protagonist for nothing. Then our protagonist thinks that she really wants to kill her, and it was dangerous and lucky that he could come back. When he thought that what kind of mentor raises his sword on his student, and even so would be serious in such a position, then she says that the reason she does that is because Chen Meng is stronger than her many times over, and it doesn't count as a wrong action. She starts hammering fast and flexible words at illusion with her sword, thus creating the illusion that she is attacking hard and fast. At the same time, she targets the opponent's weaknesses such as the main organs or places that are more unprotected, and it was noticeable that she really wants to kill Chang Meng. Naturally, this is not something that can be done by the disciples of the Zhang generation, or even by the sword of Ungam. A style that goes back to the very roots of Huashan was her style that she uses when fighting our protagonist. She makes the most of the favorite situation that is created during the battle, and in this case, she somehow caught our protagonist in it. Had our protagonist not dodged, he would have been dead by now, but even so, it was obvious that she has a lot of her strength for this. She says that he could not help but dodge she was sure of it from the very beginning and did it because of that. During the battle with the other schools, one wrong move by Ball and he's branded a moral-less person for harming an elder. So he only has to restrain her by fighting back so she doesn't get hurt. He starts yelling at her about how she's a crazy woman and to just stop trying to kill him. He says that yes, what a senior will get for the life of a student, and it is very irresponsible for a senior to try to kill his junior who is many times weaker. When our hero notices that her gaze is a bit unfocused, still intoxicated by the sword, most likely, she has a widespread murderous desire left and right. She has fallen into a self-induced trance. Entering a trance state, she tries to find her sword's path. If not careful, she can interfere with it, and in the worst case, she goes into a state of insanity. Others would not even think of interfering and retreat as soon as possible. But despite the fast speed and her continuous attacks, there are many errors. You only need to hit at a high angle to doom your target to a disadvantageous position, then, at a certain point, beat her flat and win the fight. 
but she starts hitting strangely. She hits unfocused and doesn't hit accurately. Her punches are much weaker and unreasonable. When our protagonist confirms his thoughts and he was surprised that she fell into a breakthrough state during the fight, and now she needs a mentor and someone close to him. He thought that the most capable cheek in this school was Cho Golia, but he's no match for her, because she's already on a different level from the third or even second generation students. When she is in the state of this stream, begins to attack our protagonist, and it was unexpected for Chung Mung. He knew that the speed of this person returned several times in this state, as in this state all physical data increases several times. The next blow almost went down the throat of our protagonist, and he notices that the blows became much more accurate and faster. But he did not want to interrupt this pace, he just fought back and analyzed her actions to make a more detailed report for him and for himself. Somewhere near the top of some mountain, the most important of the second generation is watching all this and just analyzing what is going on here. At this time, our protagonist thinks that it seems to have gotten better, but it is only temporary while she is in this state. Judging from her condition, she is sinking deeper and deeper into oblivion and losing a lot of her sanity while losing energy and strength, which may lead to some complications that may appear after this battle. At this time from the top of the mountain, someone house starts yelling at our protagonist saying something not usual. He notices this jerk surrenders to the question, where can they come from at such a time and how could he find them in such a shower? Then he starts his rush and exposes his ball still and injects his chi into it to increase his abilities. Of course, our protagonist sees this and rushes at this man too, as he knows that if he doesn't do this, the girl will probably get hurt. But he doesn't meet this blow with his sword, but simply hits the enemy's ball with his usual foot, which was also enhanced with chai. This maneuver was completely unexpected by the main second generation, who didn't expect this little bastard to just beat his sword with his foot. But the result was obvious that Chung Mung had repelled this blow, and the energy he had asked down thus just winning this air combat. Then this boy was already on the ground, and it was clear that he was hit very hard, because when he was already there, there was a huge wave of sand. Then the main character also came to the ground, but unlike him, he was the target, and on the contrary worried about this student who attacked him. He didn't understand why he acted so rashly, because using a sword is very dangerous. Then he also says that the moment of immersion in self-development is incredibly desirable and valuable for a Taoist. If she suddenly wakes up because of the noise, it will be very bad for her in the future, because it could stop her development and worse. Then he looks at her and sees that she has not woken up and does not pass into consciousness. This makes him very happy. Since he won't have more problems and nothing will happen to such a promising student during this time. If she had woken up because of a recent conflict, she would have regretted it for the rest of her life. Then his buddy still wakes up and says that he rather doesn't know how important the moment of self-development is for a Taoist. It's true that he doesn't like him, but he couldn't even think that he is so petty that he is capable of disturbing an elder in the state of self-development. The man bared his sword to attack. If your precious elder had hurt himself, what would you do then? And asks our protagonist when this elder he should not have counterattacked, then this disaster would not have happened. Then our protagonist says that he did not do it on purpose, he just did not want to die and such a blow and could not stand aside. When he thinks that this generation is a generation of lunatics who do not think about their childhood and do as they please. Normally the bulk of the generation is made up of normal people and only occasionally there are nutcases mixed in. But it seems that in the Piek generation, everything works the other way around. That arrogant Hong says he didn't mean to kill him at all, he just wanted him to fly under the radar, and he did it all because he didn't realize what was going on. And the protagonist says that since they unleashed a murderous aura using the sword, that's all they could do. Prepare in turn says that he actually released his murderous energy before, and he also exposed his sword and used the energy. But how did this boy manage to stay in one piece without a scratch? When he says what he says is that he will no longer ask what he is doing what I had planned during his absence, and... But now he must immediately put down the sword and step back otherwise. Not as a mentor, but as an enemy to be destroyed. Our protagonist at the time thinks what he was meant to chance, and somehow he was lucky enough to fight this boy. Looking at this girl, he thinks that he will adjust a little more, and it would be something very grandiose. At the moment of breakthrough is very valuable, someone spends his whole life waiting for it, and the fact that he was there and could guide her can be considered any that will not come twice, and suddenly there is a strange pest that prevents this process to end safely now. 
but still makes about such a case this girl is not to blame that this bad boy appeared out of nowhere, and it should be dealt with so that it does not take much time. It's a shame to miss out on a skill that would help revitalize Huashan, but it looks like she's already gotten off the boat port. However, beating this boy who made him miss the boat is another matter of giving him pleasure and showing him instruction. Then he interrogates him. Everything will be all right after this fight. There will be no questions or problems. Still, his face is very infuriating on the word of the main character as he takes on a lot even without having anything on him. This kid looks like an imposter who just wants to piss him off and make him uncomfortable in his life. Then he gets angry at such an arrogant attitude towards his elders, as the boy is not the strongest even from the third generation. To this, our protagonist says that he just asked this because of being worried about him. Still, he is his mentor. If the mentor clashes with the younger one, then goodbye good name, because that name may be polluted by this act. Then this boy says, what else is the good name to do if he is greatly mistaken? If he thinks that he will be protected by his mentors and elders, he is deeply mistaken. He says that if he is punished in any way by the elders and either the mentors, he will surely get it after a while. But now there is no one to shield him from his blows or training. Even the mentors can't do anything in this fight. Well, then he says that he has a better idea. He suggests that he first listen and then decide what to do. When this older guy thinks that this little kid wants to rip him off and just wants to cheat him. But during this time, our protagonist says that he does not want to come up with any tricks. He just wants them to repent to each other. That no one in the whole world will know about the fight unfolded here. This means that even if he gets hit and injured, that it won't get to the mentors, especially the masters. He says that he, as the elder, will also behave like a real man, and the battle that was fought here will not go anywhere. He says that this battle must be even and fair, and that what will happen during the battle must not go beyond this field. Our protagonist says that he thought nothing bad and completely agrees with his opinion, and says that it is necessary to start this fight. Well, the one in turn thinks that this is some kind of trick still does not want to agree to such terms as he does not know what this little boy can think in his head. But still our main character says that without any consequences and tricks, this battle will be equal and fair for both sides. No matter how much he gets hurt, the older boy will not hear a word from him, and if he blabs, he will do whatever he orders, so says our protagonist. But the same applies to him. If he breaks the laws and rules of this battle, he must do whatever Chung Mung asks him to do. He agrees to the terms of the battle and says that he agrees and will act like a real man. Then they agree that everything that happens in this field stays here and doesn't go anywhere, even under the most unpredictable circumstances. Then the protagonist says that he swore that everything that happens here will be here, and that he in turn also swore that this fight will be only between him and no one will know about it even after his death. Then he says that no consequences in this even fight he will not be his mentor, and he will not be his junior also. With the help of this fight, he will get rid of all unpleasantness. At this time, our protagonist heard what he said. Equal fight laughed at the fact that he was completely disagree with it. He says that who told him that this fight will be equal, and tell him that from now on he will be very bad because he is finished. This was confirmed by his bloodthirsty face. Looking at this boy, he thinks that it hasn't been half a year since he joined the school. Why this boy looks like a demon who can kill him in some time. Then he says that this fight is just to humiliate him and put him in his place. Before it's your turn, he says he's a psycho because he'd never do such a thing. He says that he has made him very angry, and now he has to inflict his punishment for such a thoughtless action towards him. That one in turn says that the psycho is the person who is attacking or trying to attack Che Ryung because he is now seeing the reason for it. Then the older man of the second generation says that now it is not necessary to talk but to fight, and now he will do anything to achieve his goal. Then he begins to attack Chung Meng in large attacks he uses and techniques that he learned during the second coming at the Huashan school. It was evident that our protagonist was not surprised that he had such powerful attacks in his arsenal, but still for him it is when with some childish a toy or attacks. When something older about maximize this distance, our protagonist thinks that he does it for nothing, because there is some reason for this action. Because when he reduces the distance so much in a short time, the opponent has time to prepare and can carry the answer to the blow in this time. But still the blow of this senior was strong, because our protagonist had to reach a few meters back to not be taught to the lethal damage. 
He notices that this boy has a certain talent, but still he lacks the experience and speed that would make him a good and strong student of such a great school. All his physical data is about on the level of a normal third-generation student, because the second generation doesn't take the time for his physical data. As his opponent makes a huge swing from the left side, he notices that he is extending his attack so much that it seems so slow and can be counterattacked in the meantime. Our protagonist easily parries this blow by dodging a few meters back and moving behind this jerk, then begins to prepare to make his crowning blow with which he usually defeats his enemies who are much weaker than him at times. It could be seen that this hand was filled with energy that could destroy even an entire mountain in a matter of seconds. Then he strikes this blow directly to the elder of the second generation who in turn was also attacking our protagonist. It seems like this punch was very good, but still our protagonist won the victory in this fight in a matter of seconds. Then this elder of the second generation received a very large damage that made him almost unconscious. But still, he somehow miraculously came out after that blow and even remained conscious, and at this time, he just wanted to stand up on his feet. He did not understand because he was able to shorten the distance very quickly and unexpectedly, and at the same time struck first than his opponent, but somehow he was defeated. But our protagonist to this says that he was very much predictable. He could read it when he just started his attack and made a dash because of this, and he lost. He then stands up and says that this you cannot be and that the third-generation student who behaved very arrogantly could not have repelled his blow. The one in turn says that he is not the weakest, rather, on the contrary. He is a master who could remove anyone, but because he is very experienced in such fights. Then our protagonist says that his main mistake is that he has the wrong technique and the wrong base that he trained in this school. He says that his technique is very wrong, because even so, if he breaks through a little bit because of this, his juniors will quickly catch up with him. Our protagonist says that he is very similar to a student of another school that he met and fought with him last time. He notes that he is very gifted for this time, but even so, he is not an exception even 100 years ago. Such things happened endlessly many times. He just couldn't recognize the results of the change. When he thinks that because of his experience, he is just beginning to see what abilities were hidden in such a young body. Then he says that he is very lucky to be Hua Shan's apprentice, because if he were his own free will, he would have beaten him to death long ago. But now he is still lucky, because he needs some internal motivation, and it will help him to develop. Then he says that he is very good, but he still lacks fighting techniques and also experience, which he hasn't been able to acquire all this time. And he says that he will help him with this, because he is the ideal teacher for such situations, and in his case, it will be very good. He says that he will now teach him what he could not have learned anywhere else, and he is very lucky to have met him in such a place and time. At this time, the second generation stalwart was surprised by his words. He just didn't understand what this little boy was talking about and how he could know the secret techniques of this school. The protagonist, despite this surprised face, notes that he will help him gain experience with a battle in which he will not use his hands or even his body, but he will use a real sword. But at the same time, the elder thinks that this boy is crazy because he really wants to use the sword against him even though he is not in the best shape now. Before he knew it, he was hit by so many balls it was more like an illusion. But he realized that it was not an illusion after he received some blows to his body, especially to his ribs. The blows were so powerful that it was like being hit by an unusual ball in white as if the sword was an embodied magic weapon. The elder was surprised that the blows were so strong and powerful. This is not usually the case because if you pay all your attention to speed, you lose some of your energy to strength and vice versa. It was clear that our protagonist was about to throw a punch that would knock his opponent out in a few seconds. And after this blow, the older one felt a hell of a pain that he had never felt before training was not so difficult. He felt pain in his head and almost fell back on the other side of the earth, and he realized then that the gap between him and his opponent was very huge. Looking at that boy, he thought that how could he choose him, and how did he become so strong that he could win the elder, and after this thinking, he passed out. Three hours later, it was already late at night, and he woke up and saw that Jongmen had been by his side the whole time. He was shocked that he suddenly appeared like that and thought he was crazy because any person would not expect such an appearance. At that time, Chang Meng smiled at the fact that he realized that he had lost to the younger one and would be the younger one from that day on.
Then the older one starts a word saying that how come and what he went through to become as strong as he is now. He asks why such a small boy is so strong, even compared to the masters of all schools, and asks him to reveal the secret. Then our protagonist thinks that even after going through such an unthinkable situation, he was able to accept reality quite quickly, and yet this one who was willing to live on his pride alone. Then he says that it's not his style, he was just pumped up and worked on his body. Then he says that it's all because of the fact that the elder is currently the weakest, and it's all because of that. But the elder couldn't accept that some little boy is saying that he's so pathetic that he can't even win a fight usually. He yells that some little boy shouldn't look up to him since he has been training all this time, exhausting his body, and he is the strongest in this school. But to this, the main character says that even though he is the eldest of the Peck generation and the best master, even if he ever becomes the main target and star of this school, he will still not be able to reach the heights. Because he says that all this is not proof that he is strong and is the strongest. He says that he is on a frog in a well. These words suit him just fine because he is a huge frog stuffing his belly at the bottom of a narrow well which other frogs did not even think to descend. The one in turn is angry that some little boy is comparing him to frogs. At this time, he thinks that there is some truth in what the little boy says because his ego has become so strong that he has even forgotten about it. He says that he knows all about it. He knows that he is arrogant. Sometimes even irritable, he realizes that he has faults that need to be corrected. But for the sake of it, he will put his foot down, and he is going to revive Huashan in his favorite way. But to this, our protagonist says that in his opinion, he did nothing of the sort. He locked himself in seclusion with the students playing house games on the way back and had a drink. It's nothing before the school assembly, and they've taken it upon themselves to train the younger ones in some way they want to show their superiority, but they've forgotten their problems. He says that he doesn't understand what his suffering is, but to do whatever he thinks and spend the rest of his time in a useful way is not diligence. For him, effort is when you reduce the time for your own desires. The eldest didn't try at all. He just wanted to become king in a small state called Huashan. After all, he had no one to compete with and no one on top of him to pull him into other things. His only enemy he could really fight was the neighboring school, and the other provinces are full of second-generation students who outclass them. Doesn't he think that getting a little ahead means he's stronger than everyone else? What he's saying is that so that they don't delude themselves about their strength. But in fact, they are the weakest among the other students of other schools. But when asked if other schools have students stronger than Jongmin, he says that it's nonsense because he is the strongest. But he says that he won. Not because he is the strongest, the reason is that the second generation is weak, they now can't even win Jongnan without picking other schools. So it's not that hard to take him down even if it's not him. To this the second elder says that he already knows all this and has known before, and to avoid such a future, he has done everything. But he says that nothing will change being a student of Udon school or the Nam Gung family, he should take what he has and try his best. Then our protagonist hits him hard to make him regain consciousness. He says that making no effort is the wrong way to prepare. Just like that, go down a path you don't know. That to realize how weak you are, you must fight someone who is stronger than you many times. Then you will only realize how weak you are in this world compared to others. When the one asks us what is the right direction, and if the person opposite him knows the right way, the one looking at this person says that he knows this way better than him, if not even better than many. He in turn asks if our protagonist can make him stronger as he knows the right path for him and for all the students of this school. The one in turn says that it is absolutely right which way suits him best and can make him much stronger. The one in turn stands on the position of the pig's disciple that he should accept his disciples in order for him to achieve his goal. He says that he will follow everything our protagonist tells him to do, but he keeps his word that he will become stronger after a while. He says that he is even willing to be trained by Junior. If only you can get stronger, if he says to call himself Big Brother, he will call him Big Brother. Well, that's our main character saying that he doesn't need and he doesn't want to and he just wants to help him with his goal. Then there was a strange atmosphere there, because no one else understood what was going on. That's what it was all about then, wasn't everything he said to show him the way. Our protagonist asks why he's going through all this trouble and it's very tiresome, then he says that he probably misunderstood him because he's not finished yet. He starts muttering that people have a very selfish trait. 
not to think about what they've done to themselves, to come up with some kind of agreement, to decide that they're going to pay for what they've done, has made him very angry. Well, yes, in principle, he paid for what he had done, but it was quite enough for the third generation of third generation students. Except that the payback for pissing him off wouldn't end there. Then our protagonist pulls out his blood sword to show that he's going to be very serious about him. He says that he hasn't tried to convince him of his ideas all this time, but now is the time to correct his mistakes. He says that the older man doesn't fully understand even now. It's clear from his expression that he still doesn't understand how it happened. He asks him not to worry because it's a long night. Tonight he'll let him figure it out. He sees that the older man has no sword, and there is no way he can give him a selection, and he will take advantage of this moment and train this older man. When he attacks our older second generation, they say that now he will realize the truth. A few hours had passed at this time our main character was resting and was glad that all problems had been solved. Well, he somehow heard a sound and turned around to where his elders were being punished for pissing him off. He thinks he beat him up badly but not enough to hurt his body, so he'll fall down a little and pass out and get back up on his feet. This fight won't hurt him in the future because he won't have any wounds, and this fight will remain just between them. After that, he thinks with the girl who also has this problem now, he even forgot about it at this time. Where did they come from? She appears exactly next to Chang Meng's face like a ghost who came to take the soul of a man. Our protagonist was very much frightened as he did not expect this person to appear near him. Well, after he came to himself, he sees that this man is a beautiful girl pointing with her finger somewhere to the side. She asks why he did that to his elder and asks if he killed him because he found out their secret or his secret. Then we notice that this little boy looks at his head and asks if he will kill her for this incident and says that she will never tell anyone about it. But our protagonist replies that if you hit the neck hard, you can lose your memories and it's better for her to shut her mouth for a long time. Then she pretends that she has never seen such a thing and does not understand what this little boy is talking about. It was obvious that she was trying to hide her understanding of these matters as much as possible and pretended that she didn't know anything about it, but it still looked very nice. But at the same time, she asks the protagonist to teach her how to communicate with a sword. The protagonist thinks that since she even saw him happily beating Beck Chion, it would be hard to just turn away from her. So why does she want the protagonist to explain to her the basics and techniques of how to handle the ball, why it's so important to her? What's the purpose of not letting her die, but she still wants to learn the basics of Jiang Min's skills? But she says that she can't tell him anything, not even the reason, but she must learn this style. It was clear that she was not pretending to be a spy of another school, and it was clear that she did not want to learn this technique because of her beauty. Then our protagonist says that she doesn't have to ask for this style originally belonged to Hua Shan, and with the passage of time, she will learn it herself. She replies that there are no other masters in Hua Shan who can teach her such techniques. Then Chang Meng realized that she was ahead of him and realized that the school does not have this technique and realized that only he can use this technique. That's right, she correctly thinks that the plum blossom technique is not currently available in Hua Shan. But still, he says that after a while, the lost technique will return to the source and will end up in Hua Shan. When then it is Sister Yu who starts to follow this little boy, because he has become abrupt and started to use Qi. At this time, Chen Meng, using the basic technique, filled his fingers with energy coming from his streams. He started to draw some scribbles. It was obvious that it was a very beautiful art showing the origins of the teachings. She looked at it was the path of the moon sword, so beautiful that she marveled at it very much. The sword she had spent the most time mastering and honing was very similar to this technique. However, these techniques differed from each other in some details that were hard for an ordinary person to notice. The difference was not just at the level of the movements it was as if it was at a fundamental level. It was clear that this man was showing it very smoothly, and clearly his movements were also beautiful. She could not believe that there were still people who could use the techniques of the great Huashan school on such a level. After that, she finally decided that she had to learn it, but she didn't even know the foundation of the technique. She says that now she does not understand, but with time she will most likely have the skills to use these techniques. She says that her job is to get results. If she doesn't get to a certain level, she can't learn it. So now she has to hone her skills and learn the basics first, 
which made Chang Meng very happy because he realized that she's not as stupid as she seems. He says that she's got it right, but in return, he'll never teach her if she tells anyone what happened. Zhang Men encourages her by stroking her head and says that she understood everything perfectly and from now on she will train with him. But she's kind of hurt because this little boy has put himself above the older boy, but she accepts the fact. In the end, our protagonist asks her to throw this older boy into the room. If she leaves him here, there will be trouble. This request was not particularly difficult for her, but at this time she was already flying in her thoughts. She was thinking about her father and remembered the moment when she promised him that she would bring back this Huashan style. It turns out his father was part of the disciples of the great Huashan school, and the last moment she remembered some words of her father about punishment. And now her main priority is to learn the basics and main techniques of the Huashan school. At this time, all the students were waiting for our protagonist to arrive for some reason. When our protagonist entered the main gate, he said that he was late for some reason and asked if the students were used to the new training. In turn, his friend said that this was not the case, and then there was a bigger problem and some noise was revived. The seniors came to the White Plum Pavilion because of the missing senior Bayek Cheon. At this time, our protagonist thought that just because Bek Cheon disappeared from school doesn't mean that he was kidnapped at the White Plum Pavilion. When he realized that he could do it that way and kidnap that asshole and teach him a lesson. At this time, the third generation elder asks how the protagonist is not involved in this problem. He in turn replies that he is fully involved in this problem and is even the main suspect among all the students of this school. Then you two ask what happened to their senior and where they were at that time with Beck Cheon. Then he says that it can't be, and he's probably wrong in his head about his theory. He says that of course it can't be Chang Myung is a smart guy and would never do that to Beck Cheon. Because in this case, if the younger one goes to the older one, there will be very strong proceedings and consequences for such actions. The main characters say that he just slapped him in the face like he said last time. The two of them wanted to believe Che Ryung's words because they realize how badly this situation could turn out for them. But still, they hope that it was all a joke and that the little guy is just messing with him. Then our protagonist says that he not only hit the older man, but then twisted him like a dog. Then he says that he's right and the older back Cheon has always been like a dog. Then he just realized what our protagonist said and got into a fight in his brain. He started calling him a crazy bastard because he has no limit to insanity. And how could he beat up his senior? Doesn't he know how much disrespect? After that, our protagonist couldn't tolerate this kind of attitude and just threw this man away from him. Then he said that there was no need to take his credit. Then he took care of everything so as to avoid consequences. So you have to calm down, Anim. At that time, he thought that no matter how crazy he was, he should be able to control his actions at least a little. Why did he have to beat up the older man? There is a basic boundary of what is permissible, but it seems that our Changmin didn't care about anyone. But all this our protagonist explained that he himself personally wanted to become stronger and asked him personally. This all of course surprised the elder as he did not expect such a response and that a person can ask to be beaten. It was somehow meaningless as any person would not ask to be beaten up very badly. But at that time, Joe Gol said that if you think about it, it makes sense because even they used to do that when they were much weaker. But the other one didn't agree with that because he was older, and there was no way he would let himself be beaten up by the younger one. And even if everything went according to their words, it was unacceptable as it was considered disrespectful. When he asked Chang Min if he had agreed to back Che on Yi's training, what happened then? He just answered that he agreed and kicked him in the face and just beat him to a pulp. Because he didn't feel satisfied, so he decided to just beat him until he felt better. I turned to them. He says, stop filling their heads with garbage and they should go to sleep now because they have to wake up in the morning and see for themselves. They were not happy that this little boy could beat up their old man, but it was real because he was so strong. But the other says that he realized one thing about our protagonist that he never lies and never blabbers, especially about serious matters. He always tells the truth and never lies, especially not even to them. The older third generation was devastated to hear this and realized that this little monster was able to defeat even back Cheon. The next morning came and they were waiting for something, something great to catch up with them. At this time, the eldest was wondering why the older second generation hadn't come in yet, because at this time they usually got together and... Always trying something new on them and always trying to get them in some way and give them something to study. 
when he remembered Locke's words about what he said about taking care of everything so to avoid the consequences so. At this point, he had no idea what else had taken care of everything, but it looked like things might be resolved now. Never would he have thought that beating his elders could mend generational divides. Then he is approached by Jogol saying that it is very quiet now, and most likely the elders will not hire them at all today, and from now on, it will be quiet. He is that our protagonist somehow managed to solve this problem since this problem was very serious. In turn, he says that this is probably true because he always keeps his word and never lies. And if that's the case, it means that Chang Meng is much stronger than the older second generation, and that's very surprising. He says now is not the time to guess because the outcome is the same and it's clear to everyone. I then Cho Gol asks what will happen if they fight against the Zhongnan school. Because you're amazing since Chen Meng would be able to defeat even the strongest second generation students from the neighboring school. The elder thinks that if Cheng Meng will participate in the next fight between the schools, it is likely to be so, since he not only the elder just beat him. In turn, Zhou Gol says that this is likely to bring a big change as this boy can show the real strength of this school. Of course, the appearance of a martial arts master in the school is a real cause for celebration, but in their case, just one master will not change the situation much. Of course, they will get some share of the glory, but it will not be for the face of infinity and will rather be eclipsed after a while. But if it happens that Chen Meng suddenly disappears, Huashan will immediately return to its original state. If they really want to revive the sect, they can't rely on Cheng Meng's strength alone. They must become stronger themselves. Wouldn't the true revival of Huashan occur when no one would dare look down on their disciples? At that time, they also became motivated and joyful as it was more like reality, but after a while. They discussed the upcoming encounter with Zhang Nan because it meant a lot to them. They wanted to test their strength against more experienced opponents. Cheng Meng is supposed to be the hero that will bring change to Hua Shan, but it is possible that he will turn out to be a dictator wanting to take over their school. Then the older man tells him that this is most likely just his fantasy, and the outcome of such events is very unlikely. At the same time, the main character is fleeing from some calamity saying that he doesn't want to teach because he doesn't have the desire to do so. It turns out that the disaster is the sister of Yu, who simply asks that he teach him the techniques of this great Huashan school. To this, our protagonist says that she should go and ask the masters to teach her the techniques she asks for. But in turn, she says that there are no masters who can teach the plum blossom technique better than our protagonist. The two watch this and are surprised that Sister Yu has become so active and shown such interest in other people. But at this time, the two and the elders were watching all this and thinking about what to do in the future, especially in the assembly in which they have to show their strength to other schools. At this time, his friend asks that how Baek Cheon, who is the top student of this school, leaving everything as it is and not doing anything. Because it doesn't seem like this little boy is even remorseful in the slightest. Wouldn't it be right to punish him somehow? Baek Cheon sternly asks how they can punish the young swordsman. He couldn't understand why his elders asked such a strange question because it was very logical. That in turn asks him to forget about these words and think about the upcoming meetings with other schools. Because he cannot admit that he was defeated the more he looks at this boy, the more the situation seems. Is it possible to beat a man badly while leaving me no external traces as it is possible even if it was a mighty master? When his friend asks why he is telling them to teach the third generation students a lesson, he really doesn't understand Bak Cheon's intentions. He thinks in his head that those intentions will not justify what will happen to them in the future if they continue to harass Chang Min. He just doesn't want to be around him with that monster and get beaten up again. That's the external factor that's preventing them. He replies that there's not much time left before the conference, only now he's realized how short-sighted he's been. They will still have time to teach the students a lesson, but the school meeting is an important event that takes place only once a year for the current generation, and his reputation is no less important than internal affairs. Given how important the upcoming conference is, he's determined to focus all his attention on it. Because in the end, the enemies are not their students, but the students of other schools like Zhong Nan. When he asks if they have already forgotten what they trained for in isolation from the outside world, at this time, the elder thinks that he completely lost his mind when he messed with Chang Meng. Anyway, it's good that he believed his words. If he said something like that, they should step back because they have a little monster. It sounded very strange to Bob. 
when he says that he's very grateful for this understanding on behalf of a second-generation elder. Then he says that he has to put the bodies with the students for later, but now he has to put all his strength into making the meeting and the school perfect. He says that he should order the students of the second generation to strengthen their skills one last time and think about themselves. After his friend leaves to deliver his words, he thinks that once the building goes to an end, they won't even remember the minor problems with the third generation students. After all, by then they'll have captured the incredible scene with Changmin, and they'll realize how careless they've been. Not only will they be surprised by the older second generation, but rather more surprised by the disciples and masters from Jiknan. He thinks that he will do what he needs to do, even though his plans have been a bit confused because of Chen Meng. But for two years now, his goal has been to prove himself in the eyes of Zhongnan and Huashan. There is also a huge reason why he wants to reveal himself and completely overcome his limits. However, considering what kind of people will be participating this year, he has no extra time left. This time he must definitely prove his worth to all the masters who will be watching the battle between these schools. At this time, there was a serious conversation between the elder and the mentor at the elder's house. Then the elder says that the guests from the other school will soon arrive, and preparations for this have been finalized. When the mentor replies that there were no problems during the preparations for the guests, compared to the past years when they didn't have enough food and the training ground was in poor condition, it seems that this time, he will be able to give them a proper reception. Then the head says that the longer he thinks about it, the more he's struck by how much of a great favor the boy Chang Min has done them. The speeches are not only about how hardy they eat and live well, but also Hua Shan. Then the elder asks his mentor how he and even his disciples live now. He says that this time, the flavor is much richer. He thought it would be light, since the tea leaves have been drying for a long time. But the happy flower leaves are said to have a much richer flavor if dried properly. And people didn't come to this until many decades later, which is reminiscent of their situation. As they managed to keep the sect afloat, it was still a struggle, even though the elder was struggling to maintain the already shabby state. They had to endure hardships for a long time, but they finally got their chance, and sometimes it was better to just hold on and wait for their moment rather than suffer with elaborate plans and suffering because they're not the only ones who'll be relieved. Sometimes he thinks the head thinks their current state is perfect. But people inherently move to improve until death, and since the head is on the path of the Tao, he is sure that the head will also try to become better until the end of his days. Because this man is a very militant and great leader of this school who in turn has been able to hold this school until now. In order to bring back the former glory of this great Huashan school, it is necessary to have such a good and influential person as the head. In turn, the head says that it is not only his merit, but the merit of all the staff and students of this great school. All that has changed in this school is through the whole stream, and he is just like a fish in this stream, plays an insignificant role. Because he is well aware of his shortcomings, which are related to his personality and life, which also affects this school. If Huashan had not been rejected, he would have become its head. If the brothers had not left their sect, he would still be reading the scriptures of Taoism. Then the mentor says to the head to leave such thoughts to himself as you leave Huashan. Those people recognize that they are not worthy to be part of this great school. And only he remained in this sinking ship and was the chosen true head of this great school, Huashan. Then the head of the very strong, tired, happy, and asked, how are you doing the second generation disciples? When the mentor replies that they have just finished training and are now resting and admits that he is now a little worried about this meeting, because he has some doubt in their disciples, and it's because they are rather underpowered by the disciples from the neighboring Zhongnan school. He sincerely wants them to be great, but as the head himself does not know that the difference in strength is very huge between the schools. Then the head asks what then he thinks about the third generation disciples who can give some kind of miracle. Won't they take part in the upcoming conference, and how are they doing? Then the mentor says that apparently they are working very hard, but that's putting it mildly. But they have only recently joined the school, so they don't have enough experience to beat the third-generation Zhongnan disciples. Then the head says that he imagines that a huge mountain will suddenly appear in front of him, and he needs to overcome it at any cost. Even he may sacrifice all that he has, but it is necessary to achieve this goal. If there was another path, he would just go around the mountain, 
Or if he had plenty of time, he could climb it sometime stopping to rest. But what if both options are unavailable and he has to overcome the mountain in another way? Then the mentor says that most likely he would not be able to climb the mountain, to which the head says that he would not get any experience either. Then the mentor asks why he should not just shave a smaller mountain next time. The meeting of the two schools was originally scheduled and had the purpose of sharing experience is not so important who will win and who will be defeated. Much more important is who will be able to use the experience gained and become stronger. After hearing this, the mentor turns to the head of the school and says that this person is absolutely right. Then the head says that their guests have traveled a long way and that they need to make sure that their reception is at its best. When the mentor says that since Mr. Huang from the Milky Way Trade Guild has offered to help them, there shouldn't be any problems. You can start turning up your nose at the conference. Then the head asks the mentor to ignore it in any way and just do his duty as usual. The mentor then took the head's words and asked that he check in a final check on all the preparations and left to check everything to a point. The head in his office thought that victory or defeat was not so important being a Taoist he so brazenly lied as if it meant nothing. The difference between the past and the present was that they now had the records of the seven plum blossom sword technique but it wasn't enough to bring Huashan back to its former glory. If only they had the holy plum sword technique, and if any of the disciples had this technique for sure, the head thought to himself. Transferring to the city of Huayin painted a huge, interesting, and beautiful building in front, in front of our eyes. At this time, one of the disciples marveled that Huashan was indeed one of the ten great schools in the past. It was Zhang, one of the second-generation Zhongnan disciples. Then he says that isn't their village too small and poor for a great school. Then some of the other Jin Gimrian students say that it is the opposite of such a village got a chance to exist only because here A wants a great school. Their school was incredibly powerful, so much so that they managed to develop the village to the point where ordinary travelers could come to this village and stay here forever. Sale Jong says that they didn't lose their power because he doesn't see any point in holding this event. The question arises as to why they should even compete with those who are obviously weaker than they are. It would be much more sensible to practice on their own. Then another replies that he is sure the school elder had a point and should try to be careful with his words. The other replies that he knows all this very well, but of course he has questions. He asks his friend if he thinks that there is any point in holding this conference and wasting time on it the only reason was to avenge the humiliated boy. And behind them was, of course, Lee Seong Bak, who heard all the words that touched him, but he kept silent. When he noticed that Lee Seong Bak did not recognize or show any emotion, he was like a stone. Then Jung, after the incident that happened at their school, this boy changed a lot. Then he turns to his older brother and says that they will finally be able to avenge the disgrace they once had at their school. At this time, Lee Seong Bak was looking at the mountain in Hua Shan High School and was just thinking about his future. Because the last time he came here with idle thoughts, everything was fine and he didn't think about anything. But now he can't stop thinking about that man, that boy he met last time. He thinks that right now, they are all masters and apprentices of the third, second generation is right in the tiger's den. Now we are transported to a place, some mountain place, and it was seen that they were climbing up the school. And there were sounds, and that given the mountainous terrain, what were they thinking when they built the Taoist temple in places like this? That's why Huashan fell apart. Doesn't it mean that they decided to move away from the image of the Taoist temple and became on the path of unity with nature? It makes sense that by studying the scripture boards and practicing self-refinement, they had chosen a place where it was not so easy for outsiders to get in, the elder suggested. Then one of the second-generation disciples says that what of Huashan Taoist temple half of them are ordinary? And they would understand if there were at least some shamans here for them to call themselves such a great school, that is. Having spent so much effort to get up here, they should at least feel that it was not in vain. But they will again be baked by the roots of herbs and kneaded in a dilapidated pavilion, they thought. And they dare not even dream of good food. They wish they had a place to sleep, and that would be enough for them to sleep. Then they addressed their elder brother and said that it was time to stop attending this useless meeting and that it was a waste of time for them to come all the way to such a far place. It was not profitable for anyone except the losers from Huashan. The elder says he knows that all this and all these people are unhappy, but they should try to keep their temper. 
They know very well how their mentors feel about Huashan. Then they say that they can't understand it because they can't get into their master's heads. Why cling so hard to a school that has long since collapsed and stopped developing for hundreds of years? They must be worried that Huashan possesses unknown hidden powers. In turn, one of the students says that if they had such power, they would have long ago returned to their former position as one of the great schools in the area. Doesn't their devastation dragged on for almost a hundred years say that this is where they belong? What happens to a school that hasn't caught the dawn of its powers doesn't matter. Others in turn agree with this and say that in some 100 years they will reach their limit and simply collapse. The school that does not develop in any way is too weak to share experience with them. Even they should not say anything to them and just accept their kindness. They were saying that they too were one of the nine great schools and they were worried that they would not spoil their report too. But at that time, a man started to say that one should not worry so much about the dignity and the whole state of Huashan. This person was standing there just watching everyone and hearing them talk about Huashan. It was, of course, Lee Siong Bayek saying that one wrong step and they would have to experience invisible shame. At this time, everyone just stopped talking, not understanding what this man meant and what he wanted to say because this school was on the verge of being destroyed in their opinion. Then Jong smirks and says that the seniors should be worried. Because this time, unlike him, they will not give Huashan a reason to be proud. On the contrary, they will destroy even what he left behind. Lee seong Bak did not like these words as he knew what he was talking about, but he did not want to tell anyone what had happened because he was afraid of it. He said that he meant that he could not be careless, but he said that there was nothing wrong with it because the enemy was Huashan. Then he heard the words of his friends or commanders and decided that they should do as they pleased, but that they would have to pay for their carelessness. At that time, someone agreed with these words, saying that in these words there is a story of truth and truth. It was a man about 40, 50 years old, who appeared to be very serious because when he spoke, everyone was silent. He then turned to all the second-generation Jongnan disciples and ordered them to take a break for a while. It was the Jongnan school elder Sama Sun who was telling them to forget the story of the Milky Way Trading Guild. At this time, the elder turning to the chief said that they understood it all and had not forgotten it in a short time. The elder says that at this time they were disgraced by the collapsing Huashan and they know how much it made the head of this school angry. They have already had enough disgrace from Huashan to achieve the title of the best. This Jongnan school would ever have to fight a grade school like Huashan. With this gathering, their head is going to put an end to their relationship with Huashan. If one of them were to show even a second of carelessness and let Huashan disciples embarrass themselves again, he would never forgive this situation. He says that a general who has been to the battlefield does not regret the consequences, and when not entering the rabbit, he invests all his strength. This meeting is just for me to bend Huashan this time, they are. He asks that everyone memorize these words and remember any time during the battle with this school. Then the head gathers everyone and says that since they have had a rest, they should get on the road before they all bite their elbows from waiting. After about three or four hours, they finally arrived at the gate of this great school called Huashan. Then they were surprised after they looked at the main gate, because the gate drivers were more careful compared to last time. When is the main thing to think that he knew that it was a Trade Guild Pro-sponsored Zero? But it happened just recently. In such a short period of time, they solved all the financial problems and even rebuilt the temple gates. It was rather impossible. They probably couldn't have stupidly repaired the gate first for display after receiving such a financial investment, but that was the only way to explain this situation. Then the headmaster of the school says that they probably found the person from whom they could get the money. He says that nothing to worry about can change the gate, but the essence of it does not change this act to their face because it is a lowly school. At this time, someone opens the gates of this great school, and it was obvious that it was the mentor, and he says that they have spent a lot of effort coming all this way. He introduces himself as Elder Huashan Hung San and says that they have met before, and he is happy to meet him again. The man then asks a question and is, of course, happy to ask why the head himself did not meet them. Then the mentor says that the head is a little busy now, but he is inside and is waiting for you when they come inside. Even he says that the guests have come from so far away, but the head cannot even greet them properly. Mentor, this has made him very angry as the elder orders the chapter to leave and their gentleness has gone out of bounds. 
Judging from their behavior this time, it was obvious that they were being very strict and arrogant towards Hua Shan's attitude. Then he somehow reassured himself that it was his duty to meet these great guests from the others. Then he asks that they pass. They have prepared a feast in honor of welcoming the Zhongnan disciples. Then the elder says that for this school that this gathering is some kind of mere feast and fun for food. But still he goes in after that as he doesn't want to waste such a precious time and says that he will meet the head first. At this time he was thinking how much financial aid this school was able to get from the guild's personal path. But one thing was clear as day considering that they had started to change the shape and form that first caught his eye. They shouldn't be enough for the interior decoration, but it was noticeable that this man was very seen. Because the training field was not on bare ground, it had been treated very well compared to last time. Then he noticed that the condition of the inner pavilions was decent even compared to the best schools out of the nine great schools. It was obvious that everywhere was much cleaner and brighter than before. Not only the gates had been repaired, but the whole area was very well groomed for a school like Hua Shan. The grounds were clean and smooth as if they were made of expensive materials that were not only hard to buy, but also hard to get and make repairs to a huge place like this school. He thinks that something seems to have changed a lot, and there is still someone who is willing to give such support to Hua Shan. He openly stated that those who claim the sign of the people will not steal. This is a very important matter for the mentor, as he could not hear such a thing from the same mentor from another school. He asked to watch his words because they have no right to exchange them for stealing and goes too far with accusations and suspicions. At this time, our main character yells for them to reduce to where they came from and for them to just silently like frogs walk away from the place. When they looked to see who had said this, they saw the displeasure of our protagonist. This, of course, made the main guest who came from such distant lands very angry and he became a mad dog. Then the same master from the neighboring school interrogates what this little boy said to him. At this time, Chogol could not think straight, such already ran a few hundred laps around this pavilion and thought, who are these people? At this time, our protagonist kicks his friend's leg very hard, saying that he should not mumble to himself but just run and train. Then he says that he meant it towards the students of this school and not towards the honorable man from Zhongnan. At this time, the Zhongnan mentor figures out that all that was said was in reference to him, and this little boy is just trying to cover it up with this action. At this time, an elder from the second generation of Zhongnan turns to Master Yi, asking him to calm down because fighting with a child will not lead to anything good. And he wondered who this little boy from Davos was who was acting so arrogant towards everyone. He was surprised at Che Ryung's insolence because he acted like he was the strongest in the world. And the way he treated the elders really hurt Jin, because such students in Zhongnan school were punished for disrespect. Then he asks the little boy to greet him and tell him his name because he wants to show respect by doing so. Then our protagonist says that he will do a favor for them because it is not difficult. He says that his name is Chang Meng and that he is a third generation student and is the smallest of all the students in the school. When he remembers that the student who humiliated the Zhongnan student is definitely called Chang Meng. He notices that he looks younger somehow. They expected to see a more mature student of this school. Because of some boy, Huashan has taken away all their deals with one of the ten greatest trade guilds. He says that this is unheard of, and he heard that their enemy S name is Chung Meng. He meant by enemy a good idea that they would train and exchange experiences. However, from what he saw, the young Taoist is not about the decency and fundamentals that should be laid down in this school because that is the principle of Taoism. At this time, Chang Meng says that they are too far away and he can't hear anything if they say something, they should come closer to him. Senior Jin says that he can't hear what our protagonist is saying and asks him to repeat his words. Then our protagonist replies that they have a hearing problem and they should fix it quickly because it can make a big problem later. This really pisses off the older second generation from Zhang Nan and he thinks that this boy can have such arrogance and self-confidence. If the fact that he flew away with one punch in the fight with Lee Sunbei and spat out a mouthful of blood is true, then his skill is not high at all. Then how dare he behave like that right in front of him since he is the strongest of his kind. Then he also asks if he is really a third generation disciple and is the youngest disciple in age in this great school. Cheng Meng doesn't answer directly saying that it's okay if he is a third generation disciple. Then he answers, if that is so, then he is a mentor apparatus for you. 
and it is right to approach him than to give him orders. He thinks that if he is familiar with the manners that should be trained in this school, he should certainly approach him, and then he says this out loud. Then our protagonist answers that, and it is also true if you think that this man is older. When how about passing these words to the elder who is standing next to him? Because his approach to the elder sounds much more polite than the approach of Elder Zhang Nan addressed to their head. This really hurt the second generation from Zhang Nan, since he only now recognized what a fool he was compared to Chang Meng. The reason for this is that this boy against his will made it look like he was pointing out his elder's mistakes. He doesn't speak first, but he makes the dialogue so that he sets himself up. He is angry that he is so cunning and by age very disrespectful to even his elders than others. Then he is stopped by an elder of the great Zhongnan school saying that he should stop now and he should just relax now because this boy is also sharp-tongued. Turning cloak, he says that his concern for the chapter has touched his heart and this time he will let him get away with rudeness. He says that in doing so, his rudeness cannot be compared to his rudeness to their chapter because there is a reason for it and it is the main reason. The main reason is that power plays a big role in this decision and is the main factor. He notices that someone's pointing out the rudeness somehow becomes rudeness itself, and if they don't say A, it will just close their eyes. Besides, the right to reprimand comes from the force, and that's the basis of everything. If you do not have the power and rudeness said by you will remain rudeness, while with my side of it the power of rudeness will cease to be rudeness. Before taking up the manner, he should learn to speak more simply, because if you do not possess the strongest weapon in this world, your words are comparable to the words of a worthless man. For it is much easier for a young man to be forgiven for his youthfulness and for his youthful dust, but some day he will have his rope around his neck. These words should not have been spoken by a master from the Zhang Nan school, but should have been spoken by Chen Meng since he knows it all and is the strongest here. But he followed that he should have kept silent because he didn't want to cause unnecessary trouble for everyone. He saw all the disciples and masters of this school who had come to the gathering to share their experience and power leave. At the same time, he noticed his close friend and acquaintance from this school whom he had met and fought last time in Zhongnan. That in turn stopped and his stream seeing our protagonist and for a few seconds just looked at their group. Then he nodded his head, showing that he welcomes and also respects all the actions and words of our protagonist, just wanted to show respect. At this, our protagonist was very happy because this student from another absolutely evil school was able to overcome himself and just greet an old friend. After that, he joined his group as he had to lag behind, but Lee Seong Baek was still happy to meet this boy again. Our protagonist was thinking that it was annoying that the thieves themselves had come to Huashan, but to dare to humiliate the head of Huashan was another level of arrogance. He was going to deal with it amicably, but it's all going to go downhill from here. Hey. It's all settled since they started this war. Cho Gol was mad at Cher Young because he was a madman who somehow thought of something that a normal person would never risk saying or doing. He made a remark that Chung Meng just now made a remark and went after a master from the great Zheng Nan school, which shows that he is very self-confident and can contradict the words of his elders. At this time, our protagonist kicks their friend's leg very hard just to get him to calm down and clean up his act. Then he turned to his elders and meet his generation and said that they should favorite society to win these Zhongnan exodus, since they act like they are the strongest. They say that they also dislike to hold back because they also dislike them very much. But what can they do because the difference in their strength is very huge, as it is a great school which is ranked among the top nine schools in the world. At this, our main character says that from now on they should listen to him carefully and not miss any clue in his words. Pointing at them, he says that here they are students of the nine great schools. But at the same time, if they then act very cruel and they will see the real anger of our protagonist. And if they lose to these Zhongnan disciples, he himself will personally kill each one in turn. He says that they can lose wherever they want, no matter who defeats them in other fights. Well, if they check in the school Zhongnan, he cannot tolerate it. In turn, the older generation meeting says that they are not even sure they can somehow beat these students from Zhongnan. The protagonist replies, how can they be wrong in themselves? They did everything for the sake of this fight. He says that if they are not sure of the expression, then they must be sure that if they lose, they will surely die, and they will all risk losing once. Just once then they will not be left alive. 
This is seen by the second generation disciples from Zhongnan and notices that this little boy yells at all the elders of his generation. Zhang was especially surprised that this little swordsman is somehow everyone and behaves so confident that he can win them all. In turn, the elder turned to him, saying that there is nothing to worry about since it is just a show-off. He says that he is not worried, just does not understand why this little boy does not even know his place and commands everyone and why others tolerate him. When the older one tells him to leave him alone as a rule, all those who jump up above their heads turn out to be wimps. Only guys who have not learned the heights of the sky can be so careless, and in this case it shows very well how arrogant a person can be. They say that there is nothing to regret and the future they will have the opportunity to fully punish this boy for his deeds and actions, especially these words. The older man says that it is not patient to check whether he can continue to crack a broken mouth is not proper for a student of 100 school to crack about such things. His friend says that if anything happens, it's not his fault because that little boy started it all. The older man agrees because that boy hurt them first and that's what the party with the power should do. After all, wars have only been fought with swords. Whatever he says won't change anything. Finally, he says that this meeting will probably be more interesting than the last because there's an intrigue. It's an intrigue concerning this boy named Cheng Meng and the entire third generation of this poor school called Hua Shan. At this time, there was a meeting at the elder's house and the Zhang Nan elder was surprised that they were too quiet compared to before. He assumed it was because they now had some provision money and seemed to be some kind of decent school. Although whatever it was, they still couldn't surpass Zhang Nan, it was like a sedative to him. He thought how carefree these people were and how one could be like this at such a crucial time, when great disciples from Zhang Nan came to them. He at this time said that he didn't like the taste of the tea that everyone was happily drinking because the taste resembled Huashan leaves. Then the same elder from this great school and Hua Shan asks if this is the reason because this is not an argument. Because ordinary leaves exude several fragrances, the smell of the earth of trees and even the smell of dew. Well, this time something is suspicious with the smell and taste of this tea. But together where the plums are, you can't smell anything but the plums themselves and it's very strange to him. The smell is so strong that it overpowers all others in the neighborhood. She says that it is arrogant, and somehow shows and connects this school with the leaves. He says that this world is a place where people live together in harmony nature everything else. That's why he prefers green tea with a light flavor to plum blossoms of broken harmony. Only when the mentor realized what this man and Jongnan means and made the whole story with tea petals, he means that strong plum blossoms fragrance disturbing harmony, he means the time when Hua Shan inherited only profit and appeared to work in harmony with Jongnan. Then this elder says that now is not the time to discuss some tea and should move on to the main business that brought them together in this table. He starts a word saying that they Jongnan think that this will eat and the meeting should be the last in this century and in the history between these schools. Then the head of the Huashan school asks why they have decided so and what is the reason that they do not want to leave the Huashan school. He explains that it's simple, and they just don't realize it now. How much this school is not comparable to the great school of nine schools. The point is that pointlessly pairing sex and schools is just a waste of time that they don't want to spend on such nonsense. They are of absolutely no help to Jongnan school and wasting their precious development time that they could have spent elsewhere. The chief financial officer is very angry because he doesn't like the fact that they don't appreciate them. At this, the master says that from this to the meeting was not invented for the fights in the first place they had to connect these schools together and create a friendly atmosphere of the mission. The master of the other school says that he and Hua Shan have never had good relations and it was all for show. The master from Hua Shan was in full agreement with this as there was no history of these two schools being on friendly terms. Then the master from the other school says that rather they have always been enemies because they have always competed with each other to see who is stronger than Hua Shan school or Zhang Nan school. He doesn't think that everything here wishes him well and probably wanted the disciples from this great Zhang Nan school to lose in this competition in shame. But in turn, he says that he can understand that, but he still wishes that his students would become much stronger and simply defeat this school. Because the relationship between their schools is like developing porcelain and it will take a lot of effort on their part to repair it. But even if they do, 
Will it be the same because the relationship has already been fractured for a long time? They are no longer going to participate in the meeting of the two schools, that is. They say that they have used all this time to publicly kneel down, thinks the master from Hua Shan. Even the master remembers that all this was really so and so, but still they could not talk about such a thing if they have any honor. He thinks what could be more offensive than this situation since they just put them below their knees. Then the mentor says that it doesn't seem too sudden for this man to talk about it, because this is a serious situation that needs to be discussed by both sides. Then the elder from Zhongnan says that they should have done it earlier since it was already a clear situation for everyone. He then asks if they really think that the current Huashan is good enough to be a rival for Zhongnan. They think that they have already done enough for Huashan considering how well they treated them, to which the mentor says that they are too arrogant about their achievements. Then the master tells him to calm down and affirms that they have in no way treated Huashan arrogantly. He says that they have fully held their past grudges and fully helped Huashan everywhere and always. Even though the meeting was always held at Huashan's place, they never complained about it. They even brought treasures every time to support them, and then they dared to accuse Zhongnan school. Mentor was getting angrier and angrier because he realized that this was not the reason why the meeting was always held in Huashan. They just wanted to make fun of them and see how low the Nepalis were, and also to show the superiority of their school. The treasure they were given under the pretext of helping them was only so that even Huashan couldn't refuse them. He thinks that he's sure that the head of the knife also thinks so. But what's more, they can't even answer that. Then the master says that if it is very difficult for them to understand this situation, he will try to explain in simple words. After that, Zhongnan and Huashan meet, and they have to be told that they are no longer interested in this. If they care about the fate of their students, then they should think twice because otherwise it will be very bad, and of course the result will not please them. After that, he just leaves in spite of anyone because he is not interested in any emotions of these pathetic masters from Huashan. You even the master asks why, and they are sure that they should break off the relationship with Huashan. If so, it will be difficult to fix it in the future. Then the master from Zhongnan says that it's already decided and there's no way he can change this choice. Then a mentor says that even though they have always behaved improperly during the meeting, they have not yet gone too far. When another mentor says that how dare they behave like that in front of the head of the whole school. Then they suggest that they should just say everything to the head and tell about the incident. Then the head asks them to just be about the case and says that sometimes words are useless. Why should they say anything? He says they can take all the humiliation they want, but he's worried about something else. He's very worried about the future of this school, especially for the kids who are studying here now who will become great in the future. That this man didn't just say that in his last words because this assembly is likely to be extremely dangerous for the students. He says that he doesn't care if he is insulted and humiliated directly. He just doesn't want the students to get hurt. All the mentors are thinking the same thing because they didn't want their precious students to get hurt over such nonsense. At this time, the mentor thought that it would be very dangerous, but even so, they can't just stop the meeting between the two great schools. If they give up before the battle, the clash and shame will follow the children for the rest of their lives. At that same time, a very strange atmosphere hung on this table, and no one understood what to do to fix this situation and not hurt their children. Then the mentor turns to the head and says that he thinks it's more than that. He thinks that what they want to show the gap between them through sparring is most likely their goal is to show that the knife cannot be respected by the area schools they represent. And this will be the final nail in the coffin of our and their already fallen school. The head thinks it's probably true because it's the most logical explanation for this situation. He says that if it is so, even they will not have time to do anything because there are very few days left. When the mentor says that this situation can be fixed and I need some ingenious plan, he says that to solve this problem, they just need to win every sparring match that will be held here. Not trying so hard the whole time they've been practicing like crazy. Especially their trump called Chang Meng has been training like a rabid dog to excel physically. He says that all this training can somehow bring a positive result in this dispute. At this time at the pavilion, the third generation disciples were practicing as much as possible in anticipation of this meeting. One of the main factors that they were practicing very hard was Chen Meng who in turn just wanted to win over every disciple from Zhongnan school. Meanwhile, 
The disciples who had come from faraway lands were tasting the brilliant dishes that the school had provided them. They were eating very appetizing chickens and were surprised that this school's food was comparable to those schools that had fully covered the money potential. Even in their school, meat was rare and here were dishes that could only be seen in elite restaurants that were very expensive for the students of such schools. You even this Straki says he doesn't like this situation at all. His friend notices that his mood is completely ruined after what he saw because he frowned completely. Senior looks like a disgruntled person who is arrogant about this school. He says that what matters now is whose martial arts are stronger and who will defeat the opponent in a short time in the future. He says that even though they present themselves in a pretty wrapper, a martial arts school without good masters is just a pathetic nothing. Then she is the eldest agrees because it's true and just because they have money doesn't mean they are stronger than them. But he says too that what he wants is just to destroy this school like this wand. Because that would be a great victory for such a great school like Jongnan, which its ages represents the best students. He gets up from his seat and says that whether it is fame, wealth, or martial arts, he wants to destroy them on all counts. He can't stand the fact that the ruined Huashan now dares to equal them. They will never be their equal because they are a pathetic school that only knows how to parody their meaning. He is addressing everyone saying that they need their determination, which will ultimately be the key factor for victory. He also says that their generation should raise Jongnan school to the heavens instead of partying like they're here on vacation, and it's all pissing him off. He says that everyone should immediately pull themselves together and become the warriors who are supposed to raise their schools. He says something that they must remember their original purpose. If any of them honor Jongnan, he will make them all bitterly regret it even before they do the elders. At this time, everyone agreed and started acting like real men despite such wealth. At this time, their master walks in clapping and saying what it was flawless, and it is personally a true leader. He says that it looks like all the words he intended to say have already been spoken, and it was magnificent. At this time, upon seeing his master, the second-generation elder from Zhongnan begins to salute and startle his dignity. All the followers, for example, the elder from this stream otherwise at one point greet their master. Then the master says that he is sorry knowing that this man will be here. He would never have dared to make a speech before this respectful man. Then the master says that it was a marvelous speech, even though he wanted to bring a real role model to their whole school. He says to keep it up, but winning won't be enough to make them afraid of their name alone. Then an older man from the second generation says that he understood even the deeper meaning of those words and to do whatever it takes. In martial arts competitions, no harm to each other is the ground rules. But their spirit is much stronger than expected, and even though they are the Jongnan school, but even they have a limit to their tolerance. The elder was very happy to hear such words as it meant that he could act on his own will and discretion. Then he says that wouldn't it be dangerous to compete with them when they are so animated. At this, the master says that of course nothing can be done about it, but they cannot allow their assemblies and their own disciples to be injured in the course of the fight. He says that they must all approach these competitions responsibly and make sure that not a single one of them seems injured, even if they have to break their arms and legs to do it. Then the chief says that he will make sure that everything goes perfectly for him and for this school. Then the master from Jongnan asks the elder of the second generation to continue. He agrees and says that he will fulfill it. He asks that he take good care of that dead boy so that he never dares to speak to them from on high. Then the elder one asks if the master knows about the boy named Jongmen. Then the master says that the young man who is not even twenty years old dared to argue with him. He does not sweat that such a child grew up in Huashan school. That's why this man should just remove such a magpie boy and never see him again. Then he calls for his friend and easier for him to come quickly to fulfill his duty. Then one unremarkable kid comes out of the stacks and quickly approaches the master and the best of the second generation. Then he says that his name is Song Wu Ran. Even though he has a quiet disposition, he is definitely the best of the third generation. When older, he says he could serve as their trump card to teach Chang Mian a lesson. He says that tomorrow during the conference between Hua Shan School and Zhang Nan School, he will do everything to fulfill their assignment. When does the master think that this competition will be the starting point on the golden path of Zhang Nan? Night has already fallen. And in this pitch, Black Yu are the third generation of Huashan school goes out to see who is walking in the street. That's when he sees his best friend from this school who is just looking at the sky and in the pavilion. 
It was Cho Gol who also noticed the presence of another person in that pavilion and looked and then sees his senior. Then they had a conversation about what they are doing here at this time and why they are not preparing or sleeping at this time. Then Cho Gol answers that he does not sleep because he is afraid that tomorrow he can fail in his mentors and also Chang Men, who in turn tried very hard for this. When it came to Chung Meng, he said that he was already fast asleep on his bed and had fallen asleep a long time ago. They think that this madman is not worried about tomorrow and the competition. They say that they can't believe he can sleep so sweetly tomorrow. There will be a conference between the schools and Zhong Nan. At this time, they hear a voice that says that it's not him who has the rest of the nerves, but just that they are very much worried like a cowardly wimp. He half-son asks why they are already awake at such a time, and they should have been on their beds. But his friend replies that they should be asleep, but they are afraid that they may lose tomorrow, and this makes them and prevents them from sleeping at this time. To this, our protagonist says that the excitement does not haunt only those who have not prepared well. And to this, the older man says that it's not that he's afraid that he won't be able to perform well tomorrow. They went back ten days to whether they thought he could have prepared better. It was a difficult question for all the students at this school, because they had been practicing hard during that time. And it was a trick question. At this time, he remembered that in ten days, he had gone through very strong and exhausted training. They were very ruthless, and he wouldn't want to remember it at all. Then the protagonist replies that excitement shouldn't bother a man who has already done everything in his power. Right now, they have nothing to worry about. They just don't have nerves. You just don't believe yourself, our protagonist replies. When he says that if they are weak, they just have to recognize and not even show up at the competition is the main rules of all swordsmen. And if they are fully who are at this time, they just have to accept it and sleep well at this time. But it's older says that he's been investing all this time into the fullest and there's no doubt about that. It's all fine. If that's the way it is, we should leave it to fate because they can't change anything at this time. No matter what the others say, he'll accept all the conditions they've already offered. That's why one should stop wasting time on nonsense and one should sleep at this time. The ability to sleep well before an important day also requires skills. At this time, do not ask among themselves where our protagonist is going, because today is the day of the meeting and it is not lucky to train. Our protagonist replies that the meeting is not that important. He just wants to train of his own free will, and training is 100 times more important than this meeting. Cho Gol at this time was very much that this man is insane, and at this time he can train without thinking, and don't strut at such a time. At that time, the senior turns to him saying that it seems like they were just worried, because they will only think that on the day of the conference this person called Chung Meng is acting the same as usual, now he feels very foolish. He says that Cheng Myung is right, if they want to say they did a good job, they should just sleep. He says they should go to sleep now. Meanwhile, his friend has already gone to bed without listening. But that doesn't change the fact that this man is a damn strange man. He can't believe that his words helped him get his mind right. He thinks that no matter what the outcome of the conference is, as long as they have Jae Kyung, the third generation will only grow stronger. So at this time, our main character was doing something in the bushes. Most likely, he was already trying to escape from the elder's pursuit. He was checking all the terrain every time so that he wouldn't want to run into his sister because she'd already gotten to him. He thought that if he met her again during training, she would probably be hung very strong. But at this time, he thinks that she will calm herself down because the younger ones are not allowed to hit their elders as it violates the rules of this school. At this time, he hears some sounds from other bushes and suspiciously checks every millimeter with his TSU. He just didn't want anyone to see him training again. The only thought that comes to mind is that his sister is trying to catch him during his training and convince him that he should teach her the great techniques of this school. But when he scans with his skill, and he realizes that it can't be her because it comes from another person, rather a man. Then he sees that there is not only one person, but a whole group of two people who seem to behave strangely at this time. He thinks that your people decided to meet in such a wilderness and in the middle of the night, and he thinks that now it will be strange. Curiosity got the better of him, and he thinks that if he doesn't look now and find out what you are about to happen, he will miss something interesting. Then he jerked a few miles to cover a great distance and jumped through the trees so he couldn't be heard over the clamor of the leaves. Then he notices one man. 
He was very similar to a man he had met, and then he realizes that this is an elder from the second generation of the Huashan school. When he looks more closely, he notices another person, and doesn't understand where this Jin senior from the second generation of Zhongnan school is doing here with this person. At this time, a very interesting conversation takes place between the two of them. The elder from Zhongnan says that it's probably his friend who is doing well. He asks how such a close person is doing in relation to him, and what changes have been made in the end, he says, addressing him as a brother. At this time, his brother says that the disciple from Zhongnan looks very calm and does not even feel tomorrow's fight. In turn, he says that he has no reason to worry because he knows his limits and strength. At this time, our protagonist laughs at the fact that his senior's name is Dong Ren. He could just burst out laughing at this time because it sounds so funny. After that, they heard that someone was listening in and somehow thought that some person might be watching them. It seemed to him as if some person was laughing at the time and maybe he just imagined it. But that's not the point. He says that he never called him by that name because he's Bek Chun now. Then Jin says that he shouldn't renounce the name that was given to him by his parents. It doesn't matter what his name is to the others, but he is still what she was called at birth. At this time, the protagonist explodes with laughter, as he had not realized until then that his eldest name was Dong Ren. Then the protagonist realized that they are brothers. One is called Dong Ren, and the other is Geum Ren. Now he is really curious to know who their father is. What was he thinking when he gave names to these children? At this time, the second-generation student from Huashan School was angry that he had to be called by his real and current name from now on. He was annoyed that his older brother could not recognize the fact that he had changed his name. He was also annoyed that his older brother could not recognize the fact that he had changed his name. For such a long time, it seems that he was the only one who thought and missed him, and it turns out that it wasn't mutual. He said that he was just wondering how his useless little brother who ran away from home and joined Hua Shan to defeat him was faring. He says that even after two years, he is still happy to see his younger and just as weak brother. But this has really annoyed the older second generation from Hua Shan because he knows that this man pretends to be kind and tries to hide his vile nature behind a gentle smile, but even his smile is disgusting because his rotten heart comes out of it. He thinks he knows exactly what this sinister man thinks he's brilliant for thinking someone is weaker than he is. He knows this from experience, since he went through it all until he himself ran away from his home to this Huashan. Then his brother says that he has a very good application for him that he can't refuse. If he kneels down right now and prays to him, he can then be accepted into the Jongnan school. In turn, he says not to talk nonsense because he is the oldest member of the second generation of Bek Chun and his goal is to help his sect defeat Jongnan, and moreover, he will do it with his own hands. And even if he started begging him, he would just laugh at him because it's his nature. Then his brother starts talking about how brotherly bonds are sometimes amazing. Even though they haven't seen each other for a long time, he still knows him very well. But he did now. If he really wanted to defeat him, he should have set foot in Jongnan when he had the slightest chance of accomplishing his goal. Laughing, he says that alas, his choice was for zero. Did he really think he could defeat him by learning from the outdated schools? Then Bak Chung replies that he is right about that. He joined Hua Shan to surpass him. He thinks he can defeat him by leading a sect he despises. He says that his original goal was just to mess with him. But then he realized that it wasn't enough, and he had to become stronger. But now he genuinely likes Hua Shan and is incredibly happy to be the eldest of the second generation Bak Chun, our protagonist hears this, and he was very happy to hear it. Then he also remembers the time when this second-generation disciple asked him to become stronger, and it only came to him why it was so important to him. At that moment, our protagonist realized how much it was important to him, and he could now see the full picture of what was happening. He didn't think that this man was really happy to be a second-generation senior in such a rundown school. Then his brother says that he is now completely crazy because he is saying such inconsistent words about Huashan. Then he says that to make his brother never dare not appreciate Huashan, he says that he finds it strange. But coming here, he realized that happiness is not in expensive clothes, delicious food, and luxurious life, he says that he really needs it together. So he set himself a school. He says that in this school, he has found his own purpose. Moreover, this school responds to him with kindness and care. The student who represents Zhang Nan likes it very much and responds to it by saying that he now understands what it is about 
that leads to his foolish actions and deeds. He realizes that until then he did not understand anything and asks him to listen attentively from now on. He says that for this man who entered such a useless and poor school that will do nothing for the next 100 or 1,000 years, because of his idiotic choice he is doomed to lead the rest of his life as a third-rate warrior, he will have nothing left but to be pitifully observed at the Huashan school. Then he says that his words mean nothing to him. His opinions and actions are like thick water to him. To this, his elder brother says that, of course, to him, his words will be as great because against his background, this man from Huashan is considered to be trash. But then his brother says that there is no way he will yield to him, even if he is of such a great school as Zhongnan. He will still defeat him in that fight. Then Jin answers to decide which of them is the worthiest and strongest of his kind, and in that fight he will defeat him so that he will never mean anything against him or say anything. With those words... Dongren disagreed as he thought that this time he would definitely defeat this brother of his in words. Then at the same time, his brother from the Jongnan school shows his A power with his energy that releases in huge amounts. Because of this, an aura of this person being the strongest in this world as if even stronger than attacks appears. It could be seen that this greatly frightened the oldest of the second generation Dongren, as one could see something different in his eyes as well. Showing his true strength, his joy said that today he would dare to do something that would affect not only his life, but his brother. Because in this fight he will defeat him by such a huge difference that he will never pick up a sword because it would be shameful for him. Only then Dong Ren realized that the difference in their strength is very huge, and most likely he will never have a chance to beat at least his brother privately. At this time, he is thinking how he can separate this brother of his who is actually very strong. He realizes that his older brother is one of the strongest in his generation, if not the strongest in his age. Then he turns away and plans to go back to school, but suddenly he notices that from a tree he is being watched by Chang Meng. He was surprised that all this time he had not noticed the presence of this man. Moreover, he was surprised that his older brother had not noticed him either. Then he couldn't hold back his laughter at the name of his eldest, but he tried to hold it back. Then he says that he heard it all and only now realizes how absurd the situation is for him. He says that he heard everything from the beginning to the end and only now realizes that these two people are not just alike, but are brothers. He says that it all looks very funny as he is a student of Huashan school and the other is a student of the school. But at this time for his eldest, it was a very strong burden as he didn't want no one to know about it because it was very embarrassing for him. You could read it all in his eyes because he was very upset that he had let his youngest down. Then Chung Meng says that he should forget all about it because he understands it and will not do anything about it. Even the elder will not speak. But he asks how crazy he is for leaving the school he's been studying at all this time and joining the Huashan school. He says that it's all insane since no one else could do that in his place since it's considered even if funny to memorize treason. His eldest says that the case was very difficult because of the school family and, of course, the environment that surrounded him during his studies in Zhongnan. At this point, there was a very strong atmosphere among the elder and our protagonist as they both realized how confusing the situation was. But still, our protagonist answers that he made the right decision by joining me in the school that is Huashan, no matter where he comes from or what his history is. Since he came to this school of his own free will, he is a full-fledged follower of Huashan. He says that he will definitely prove by his actions that he has chosen a good election decision to Huashan school. Then the elder Holmes that this is not at all what an immature child is capable of saying, as it is a serious statement about Zhongnan school and Huashan. But for some reason his words conveyed to his heart very good memories and hope that he still made the right decision to cook at this particular school. When the senior asks how he can prove what he said before and how he can see it in the future. Then our protagonist says that he will prove everything he said today during the duel between Huashan and Zhongnan schools. Still, he asks that he should not only rely on himself and others, and he should just believe that it should happen. It was already the morning of the next day, and everyone gathered absolutely all the masters and students of Huashan school were in formation. But it was evident that the disciples had some doubt, not even read the third generation. The second generation felt some pressure coming from this event. 
Seeing this situation, the master said that everyone is a little nervous, but don't be so tense regardless of victory or defeat. This conference should be a stepping stone for them, which will help them in the future. No matter what the result will be, they are still worthy students of Huashan School. He asks everyone to keep this in mind. At this time, our main characters thought that it all looks very pathetic in addition to the fact that they did not boost morale in any way. Master's speech did not even betray the determination to defend the honor of their school was evident on the faces of the second-generation students who were more experienced than the third. However, those words did little to soothe the hearts of those who felt burdened concerning this meeting. Master then concluded his words by saying that he hoped for all the disciples in Huashan and had faith in them. At this moment, the head of the Chunin sect, with his disciples trailing behind him, entered the arena with his proud and sharp stride. Seeing their future opponents, the masters and disciples of the Huashan school looked at their opponents with a disdainful and displeased look. The master of the Gunan school had already settled into his warm, umbrella-covered ready seat as his disciples were already preparing for their future bout. Immediately, a loud, sudden noise that came from the main door grabbed everyone's attention. The door opened, and a huge crowd of people behind it could be seen trying to break through the gate. A huge crowd, many old, high-ranking people who were going ramming through that door, even though they were uninvited guests. Everyone who was sitting here, including the sect heads, were very surprised by them. There was shock in their eyes. They didn't understand who these people were and what they were doing here. All this huge crowd was held back by one strong man who looked back realizing that he would not hold back this crowd. In his eyes you can see the confusion and not knowing what to do next. The people who burst in turn out to be very rich, very influential people of the whole country, which was clear from their expensive clothes. And these people are heading towards the place where the masters of the schools are sitting. There was a look of incomprehension in the eyes of the head of the Huashan school. He wondered like everyone else what these people were doing here. These people shouldn't be in this place. Wondering who could have called these people, he looked around, searching for the exact person who could have done this. Looking to the right and seeing the sitting head of Chuang Yan school, he was already guessing a little bit about who could have done such a thing. At this moment, remembering the previous conversation with one of the students, he was angry and realized that such an action was a cheap trick on their part. The very person who was holding back the crowd barely continued to hold them back with a confused look turned back and said that these people shouldn't be here. The head of the school with an angry look yells at them with rage, agreeing that they shouldn't be here and shouldn't have been allowed into this place. He was sickened that they were allowed here and allowed into this place. The head of the other school came up to him and told him that he was not the one who had invited so many guests and that he should not worry. He assured him that his school had not contacted them. The head of the Huashan school couldn't believe it. This was a very unexpected message for him. Still remaining in a state of confusion, he wondered if it wasn't them calling then who could have invited them here. The very man who had been holding back the crowd stopped holding them back and approached the head of the school. He tried to explain to the old man what had really happened. And at this moment, the man in the brown robe, who is the country's general, and who is familiar with the head of Huashan school, approaches them. Standing straight with a nonchalant face, he admits that it was him who called them. He insisted on the importance of calling the guests. The crowd standing beside them is a kind of audience. The man who called them felt that this competition would be very boring without them. For the others, including the gun and school head, this excuse was acceptable, and they completely agreed with his words. The old man in the brown robe looked with his peripheral average back, trying to find a certain person with his gaze. The person he found was Chen Man, an ordinary fighter from the Huashan school, innocently sitting alone. This old man opened a memory as he sat doing his duties. A man dressed in red approached him with a package for him. From this man, one very important letter wrapped in a rectangular shape was handed to him personally. Judging from his gaze toward Chang Man, the letter was probably written about him. All the spectating masters and guests of this tournament settled into their seats. Seated in front of the set tables, they were fully prepared for the upcoming tournament. The two brothers who were in opposite teams got ready for the start of this tournament. So the first opponents of the first pairing were those very same brothers. Each of the brothers had his own interests in this fight, but each wanted to prove to himself 
that he is stronger than the other. The spectators were already waiting for the fight. They were anticipating a very close and hot fight. The two brothers stood against each other in a fighting stance. They waited patiently for the fight to begin. The older brother inspired fear and trepidation as he looked very intimidating. The younger brother was also not far behind the older brother, his stern gaze also showing that he was also worthy of respect. The onlookers sitting nearby were eagerly wondering if they had taken the targets by chance, as they were very similar to each other. They were greatly interested in how such a young opponent would be able to face the white-clothed fighter Jin Gumrin. The younger one had a great thirst for this bout and sincerely dared to stand against his brother. This fight was very crucial to him, and he told his brother that he would not run away from this fight. His brother's confident and naive speech caused only a small smirk. And the younger brother prepared a special blue spell for him like a tiger. With this magic, he reached and hit his brother very quickly. But the elder, even though the speed of the blow, was able to dodge such a deft attack. It was clearly understood that the blow was very strong. A powerful wind blew from the epicenter of the battle. If it had hit him, he would most likely have been severely maimed. To others, it was a complete shock that such a powerful technique was used by the hands of a junior. This tiger technique was very strong and allowed its master to become much faster. It gave him unrealistic power. What? How? These are the questions that others have been asking. Everyone doesn't understand it. The speed at which the junior attacks is so fast that it would dwarf Jin Gimren himself. Such a serious attack surprised even the old man. When did he learn such a technique? The others, however, supported the junior by shouting words of encouragement and praise. Still, no one knew for sure if Junior could defeat him. In order for Junior to win, he has to make at least one hit. But he can't even get a hit on his opponent. Jin Gumrin dodged all the punches even though they were strong and fast. Junior was very angry. He didn't understand how he couldn't hit him and how his enemy was dodging his every swing. And all he could see on his brother's face was a nonchalant reaction. Angered by this situation, he decides to use all his strength. His entire body is wrapped in blue, Strengthening himself several times, he launches his fierce attack flying towards his brother. But even so, despite his best efforts, he was able to stop him without even expending his strength. All the pathetic efforts only caused him to smirk a little. Deciding that it was time to end it, he struck his brother on the back with a wooden sword. He falls to the ground tired and exhausted from this blow. He has very little strength left. His brother standing tall with a wide grin, just amused at his younger brother's pathetic efforts, it's time to end this spectacle. From his brother's simple punch, he simply flew far to the side, spinning and hitting his face on the ground. His sword flew off to the side and he was losing strength. Maddened by his helplessness and pity, he screams and doesn't understand where his hours of training have gone because he can't even touch his opponent. From such madness, he tries to at least try to change the situation. The injuries he received gave him some strength for a decisive attack. Even so, this blow had no effect. He simply fell to his knees beside the taller brother. It was a pitiful picture. One could see anger in his eyes. He's panting and lacking strength. And he tells his brother that he will still find strength and win it. This only surprises his brother. All his pathetic stubbornness is incomprehensible to him. Then he says that it takes him a long time to realize that he is very far from his brother. The difference between them is very great. The old man, seeing all this seriousness, assessing the situation, looks at him with the same serious face. Standing tall in front of his brother lying on the ground ashamed, he shouts to the whole arena, that's how big the gap between us is. The exhausted junior is simply forced to listen to his brother's word that he should leave this school because in his opinion, it will never catch up with them. The brother does not bother to take advantage of the situation to humiliate both the junior and the Huashan school by endlessly hurling insults in his direction. Listening to such arrogant words, he can't stand it, breathing hard and gaining strength, decides to stand up to shut his brother up. But not allowing him to do so, he doesn't give in to this exhausted guy and hits him with his sword, making him fall down once again. From such a strong blow, the younger just fell down and lay breathless on the ground, which caused the others to be worried and they ran to the one lying there to help. They didn't understand why Jin Gumrin was taking this fight so seriously. They didn't understand why the elder was beating his opponent so seriously, even though it was just sparring. 
There was genuine incomprehension in their eyes and resentment towards the elder for such actions. The elder said that he was actually succumbing to him and didn't fight with even half strength. Waving the wooden sword next to his lying brother, he said if he had an iron, real sword in his hands, it wasn't hard to imagine what would happen in that case. His arrogant look was accompanied with his arrogant words that his opponent had greatly disappointed him because he had expected that he would be much stronger and would have been able to last at least a little longer. The guys who were near the lying and mangled fighter worried about his health decide to take him to the infirmary. Standing up, he didn't want to hear such foul words in his and his comrades' direction, so he decides to challenge him to a duel. Smiling at such an amusingly naive situation for him, he gives his consent for the black-clad opponent to fight in this arena. So he summoned his comrade to fight against a Huashan school fighter, to which he willingly agreed. For the nearby merchants and guests, Jin Gumran's fight exceeded their expectations, and they agreed that he was worthy of the title of Shanzi's most talented swordsman. Gimran's broadsword really stood intimidating. It was because of a fighter like him that Zhongnan school really had the right to be called the best school in Shanxi. Merchants say that while Huashan school is showing its growth and in terms of investment, it is the school that is receiving a record amount of money, which is much more than Zhongnan. To the old man who was sitting next to them, their conversation of merchants seemed strangely fixated on money. And while the merchants are talking about such global topics, Another fighter loses the fight and leaves the fight in such a pitiful condition in the arms of his comrades. The gaze of that very influential old man in the brown robe fell on the little Taoist, who was watching the fight like everyone else. Chen Man sat straight and watched every fight with a serious face, hoping for his comrade's victory to raise the reputation of his school. His friend, wanting to know about his fighter's condition, who was watching where his comrade was being carried, asked if their senior was okay. On his face, he could see the excitement for the lives of his maimed and bruised comrades he was telling Zhang Man about. And on Chang Man's face, there was only a kind of indifference, as if he didn't care about them or him. His serious gaze is directed toward the side of the arena. His so cold and indifferent gaze pissed off his friend. He was puzzled by Chang Mian's cold reaction. He said that a junior should not behave like that, and especially when his comrade is very maimed, he should be worried for his life. With a stern and manly look, he said that he was sure that his comrades deserved to lose. They had no chance to stand a chance against their opponents. In the arena, a very fierce battle continued. The fighters were using all possible techniques, which created huge whirlwinds of air and shook the ground. He listened attentively to his neighbor's speech that victory was not achieved through hard work because in that case, everyone would have become martial artists. The main thing is not what effort offers, but how much effort one must put in to become stronger, just like in this fight. The others were very concerned about the defeat of their older comrades, and their faces showed excitement for their health. The friend was already beginning to despair, and was already worried that today's battle would be lost and part of the school would be dishonored. Turning his head to the right, he said that there was no need to worry about that. It only affects the second-generation fighters. It is their battle that is lost. Our battle? The battle of the third-generation fighters has not yet begun, and we will have to fight for them and restore the honor of our school. The Chunin school fighter is already starting to feel the victory close, because he can't feel his opponents, they are too light for him. This makes him smirk. Such a wild disrespect for his rivals and irritating smirk in the direction of Chang Man begins to piss him off and starting to get mad ready to take revenge on his comrades. Such madness that the students of a foreign school are doing to their rivals scares the nearby masters. The masters are already beginning to worry that such a brutal battle, one-sided beating and humiliation should be stopped. It's impossible to watch. The head says that he is unable to stop such a brutal battle, not understanding how one can watch such a spectacle. The head himself sits with a frightened face, completely confused and disorganized, not knowing what to do with such madness. Knowing that there are merchants sitting here, he can't stand up and tell everyone, our school has failed, and Chung Nan High School is stronger than us. Let's stop it. The old man won't be able to do that, and even with his serious face, he is very confused inside. The general himself realizes that this has already gone beyond friendly fights in the meetings. 
A sadness has covered his whole face that his gaze has traveled a thousand miles away. And the reason for his powerlessness before the merchants is not because of his personal honor. The honor of the school is already lost, he thinks. He can't end this bloody fight, or else the entire Huashan will be scabbed over after these words. He can't afford to say something that will end up destroying it. The master is at a complete loss after saying those words, finding himself in a state of shock. He does not know what to say, and only accepts what he has been informed. And the battle continued, and it became more brutal each time. Huashan fighters were being beaten, and they were flying off from the powerful blows of their opponent. And now another student was defeated and lost consciousness, hurting the honor of the school. The head of Zhang Nan school sits with a very satisfied face watching such a successful beating of his nemeses. His fighters have won ten flawless victories in a row, leaving no chance to their opponents, and this pleases the old man very much. The old man overhears the nearby merchants talking about today's battle. The merchants do not understand whether Hua Shan is so weak or Chunan is very strong. The general himself is very surprised how the once mighty Hua Shan school is now losing so badly and has become so pathetic. At the old man, such a reaction of the general caused only childish joy that even he cannot hide his ugly smile. He's already imagining Hua Shan's sweet victory and total defeat. He thinks that those long efforts of the Chunan school will come true. They only have to finish the last fighters and that's the end of the Hua Shan school's days. The master who is also watching from inside wants to leave the arena as he can't stand all that is going on here. Well, as a master, he can't do that. And so he decides to stay here as a man. Next, such a loud shout reaches all parts of the arena, meaning that the fight is not over. And now the fights between the third generation disciples begin. The third generation disciples who are sitting in the same row just can't believe how they lost ten fights in a row. They sit saddened and don't understand what they are going to do now. They have watched the second generation students who have been training and going at it for so long lose in such a humiliating way. This is how they first face reality. Now it's their turn to lose, they think. The blue-haired disciple turned his head to the right and noticed Chen Man in a shocked state who was muttering something under his lips. A gruesome sight, he thought. He was in full rage that he wanted to unleash on his opponents. His eyes were full of anger that was bursting outwards. It was getting harder and harder to contain. It was bursting outwards, which frightened the friend sitting next to him. And so for the long-awaited battle between the third-generation disciples, two disciples are summoned, the master announced. This meant that the new round would begin soon. On the side where the Huashan school disciples were sitting, there was some sort of house that was causing everyone's attention. It was unclear what was going on there. Maybe someone was fighting or someone had fainted. The disciples tried to stop someone who was trying to break out into the arena. However, they were unable to do so. The person who was breaking out of their hands was able to topple everyone, which showed his strength. That student turned out to be Chang Min. He was the one who dared to come out first to defend his school's honor. He stood in a full-length fighting stance in the middle of the arena. Even the master who was calling the students was surprised, standing in front of everyone in a manly pose, gaining air into his lungs. Chang Man was very angry, but also very determined ready to fight with everyone shouting that any Chun and disciple was a match for him. Even the head of the foreign school was surprised by such a very daring act. To him, such a brave act was somehow abnormal. But for the other, this situation caused another smirk on his face. He thinks that this is another victorious battle, where Hua Shan will defeat his honor, and the fighters will carry away all the wounded and maimed. Then he called a close comrade of his to fight Chen Man, and charged him to put such an impertinent fellow in his place. The fighter of the school was just as very determined, and he also quickly entered the arena, abruptly jumping into the arena and creating a wind around him. An aura of masculinity was coming out of him. There was also a huge confidence in his eyes. He was ready to destroy his opponent, causing his own to respect him and his enemies to fear that another battle would be lost. Chue Man decided not to waste any time and immediately pounced on his enemy with an unusually fast, unexpected and deft strike, not even a sword, just a fist. It seemed that he was underestimating his opponent. However, the opponent did not notice it, did not have time to dodge, and this powerful and sharp blow caught the Chunin disciple by surprise. 
an unusually strong blow flew into his face. No one, not even the head of the foreign school, was prepared for such a decisive attack. This move surprised everyone. There was a look of shock on their faces. The old man's mouth was open. He most of all did not expect such an action. It was such a strong blow that the wind shook the ground, and the opponent flew several meters away, and even Chung Mung himself could barely contain the recoil, almost falling down. His face was still full of anger, his eyes wide open, and his mouth threatened his opponent with death. It could be seen that he was not yet sated with one blow, and he was still hungry for revenge. From such a strong punch, his opponent spun in the air a few times before falling to the ground. Chen Man's boxing punch literally broke the laws of physics and almost killed his enemy. Chen Men flew back from the force of his own punch. While in the air, he had already imagined winning this round for his team. And now that he had landed on the ground, he would show everyone that even with his fist, he could win a fight. He stood straight on his feet and slowly walked towards the defeated enemy, already sure of the sweet taste of his victory. However, there is a heavy silence throughout the arena, and he can only hear the equally heavy pounding of his heart. The students sitting around him did not like how quickly the fight was over for them. Such an unexpected blow seemed unfair. They shouted insults at Changman, trying to hurt his honor in every possible way. But Jongman himself was not even surprised at his reception. He was more surprised that his opponent flew away faster, even without using his inner strength. There was no emotion on his face, and his heart was like a stone, feeling nothing. Lying on the ground, his opponent tries to find the strength to get up, but he is barely breathing and shivering. He doesn't want to give up so quickly because it would hurt the honor of the school, and he himself would be embarrassed by the fact that he lost so quickly. The fact that he overcame himself and stood up surprised Chang Mion. He finds his strength and gets up, preparing to take another fight. Exhausted, it's hard for him to even get air into his lungs. After Chen Man's punch, a huge red bruise appears on the face of his mangled opponent, and he can barely regain consciousness. He is badly injured, but despite that, he stands with dignity. Any other man would have been carried on his back by his comrades. But the effects of the blow make themselves felt, even after he stands up and a large trickle of blood flows from his nose, and the rainbow means he's not yet recovered. And this guy was very tough and strong. He didn't die so miserably and quickly, which was very surprising. Now is not the place for his own humiliation, he thinks. Chang Man looks at him with a soapy voice. What are you doing? Lie down on the ground, you're going to die. The fact that he survived was so unexpected that even Changman felt sorry for his opponent, who was in such a pitiful state. He pointed at him and suggested that the master call a medic and examine the wounded man. He wiped his nose, regained his strength and confidence, and prepared to fight. He wouldn't die in this place. It was obvious that he was in pain, but it hurt him more morally, as he was knocked back by the first blow from a boy a generation younger. Such survivability, even after such a blow, surprised the Shan men. Then he asked if he was ready to fight further. At the same time, feeling respect for his opponent, he suggested that he surrender peacefully and not torture himself. The opponent was furious that Chang men had acted unfairly and meanly by hitting him while he was making his speech. He also had a lot of anger built up. He knew that his honor depended on this fight more than the honor of the school, and he had to get it back anyway. And immediately, a strong desire to take revenge and crush the student of the foreign school came over him. His anger covered his whole body and heavy emotions came out of him. He didn't want to listen to the enemy's chatter, and his bad luck just pissed him off to death. Chen Manu, who felt sorry for his opponent after these words, became a determined pose and serious face is ready to put such an asshole in place. If he doesn't want to give up, there's no point in feeling sorry for him. He had already made his choices and would manfully answer for them. Then he heard sounds coming from behind him from the place where the students were sitting. He turned around to hear advice from the other students. He needs it more than that. They tell him not to underestimate his opponent and to realize the gravity of the situation. 
The senior is hoping for his man's victory to bring the school closer to completely defeating Hua Shan. Chung Man is bored by such a long talk and shows his face at the same time trying to piss off his opponent. He can't stand people like that, and he wants to finish what should have ended a minute ago after that punch. Then the student in the white and blue robe gets into a fighting stance and puts his sword in front of him preparing for the next stage of this round. He's not going to just give the victory to an asshole like Chang Man. He launches his first attack like a hawk very quickly flying towards his opponent. He thinks he's caught Chang Man off guard, that he's going to hit him as just another weak enemy and end the fight there. And even so, Chen Man was able to dodge this attack effortlessly and make his counterattack very nicely catching his enemy. That's the beauty of his fighting skill. Never before has that opponent been so paid for. That counterattack hit him right in the stomach and was so powerful that it seemed to cut him in two. Not even for a moment. It was like the Chunin disciple's last mistake in his life. After such a strike, it would be realistic to think that he would need to be buried. His punch was very confident that even Chunin's arm and body didn't shudder from such power. In that punch, he gathered all his emotions and howled at this opponent, leaving not a shred of honor in the enemy. He truly sent the enemy to hell. That one fell heavily face down on the cold ground, his mangled and breathless body seemingly unconscious. He should have surrendered in the beginning, but by not doing so, he was doomed to such humiliation. He stood beside his defeated foe, who lay miserably on the ground and looked down at him with his proud, arrogant gaze. It was the enemy's own fault for making such a choice, and what a shame that such a proud fighter was lying on the ground. That's what he wanted to prove. He showed everyone how strong he was and ready to defeat any opponent. His gaze resembled that of a killer who wanted more revenge. It was a look that meant that this would happen to anyone who dared to go up against the Huashan school. After that, he simply walked back to his comrades, sitting back down in his seat as if nothing had happened. His goal of winning his fight and showing others how to do things was accomplished. To him, such an easy fight seemed like an everyday occurrence. Even the old man in the green robe was completely shocked and puzzled at what had just happened, whether it was a dream or reality. How come the Huashan school won their first fight so easily was the biggest unanswered question for him. He wondered how a second-generation student could so easily defeat a student one generation older. His opponent was Chiang Myong, a second-generation student. Really? He doesn't know who this student is or what he's really like. Even though he was a generation above him, he was still lying in the arena, as if breathless and bleeding. That was the humiliation of lying half-dead in front of your enemies, in front of your team who hoped for your victory, in front of the teacher who trained you, and in front of the merchants who expected a spectacular fight. The old man who didn't know how to comment on this, not believing his eyes, the old man looked around trying to find his buddy to ask what he thought about this fight. Seeing his buddy with his eyes bulging, he was in a state of shock himself. Both masters were left speechless with only emotions. Shock, shock, shock. And at that moment, he was in serious shock. How could this happen? In this state of shock, he wondered how such a child could be so strong. He looked like an ordinary youngster, but he was extremely strong. It even seemed like he was seriously under dozen. Everyone's eyes were wide open in astonishment, and they couldn't at first accept the fact how such a kid could win. They stayed like this for a few more minutes. Thinking that they were doomed to a dry defeat, this kid was able to give them their first victory. Chang Mun inquired about this kid from the nearby seated master, who is he and how long has he been here? It was important for him to know the name of such a strong boy who had just surprised everyone. He was greatly surprised that this boy was able to achieve such a result in such a short time, and the result was that he was able to keep up with the level of the Junan school disciples and even surpass it. And the defeated disciple was taken away from the battlefield by his own comrades. He was still bleeding, and a huge red trail followed his body. He appeared to be heavy that he was being pushed by the two of them, only recovering from the recent shock of the unexpected victory. They were very surprised how that young man had experienced such a rapid growth. Thinking about his past was nothing unknown and incomprehensible. The old man was also very surprised that Huashan schools finally had such an expensive disciple worth his weight in gold. However, he didn't know much about him. Who is he? Was the question he was wondering. 
He thought it was pointless to expect anything from such a child. But no, he had shown that he was really talented and fit for such serious battles if he could defeat such an opponent. He had seriously underestimated him, since he had not shown much activity in Huashan, and it seemed to be for nothing. Everyone thought that he was an ordinary fighter with no talent, but he turned out to be the one who defeated an opponent who was theoretically several times stronger. And only now the head of the school realized his importance, his strength, his talent for his school, he would be the one who would save the school. The surprise was still on the general's face that he couldn't even accept the fact that after ten consecutive defeats, Huashan had finally won his first fight. It was then that the old man had an illusory hope that it was Chen Min, a student who was not taken seriously by many, who could revive the honor of the school. His gut told him that he would show the others how to fight by example. The traders sitting nearby were surprised to see such a lopsided fight. They didn't know that the Huashan had their own talented fighter. The old man thought of this fighter and remembered the incident at Yuna Temple, where the same Chang man had shown all his strength. However, the old man himself was unconscious during that incident. After that fight, he had no doubts about Chang Man's strength and no reason to believe all the rumors about it. The rumor said that Chang Man was a very strong disciple who had great potential. Chen Man is the disciple who will fight until the end, even though he is losing. He's the one you should bet on if you're going to win in an unequal battle. That's what Huashan School lacked. All the merchants understood all of Chang Man's talent, for his victory over the second generation disciple was no fluke. They had never seen such a shocking fight before, and so this youngster would remain in their memories for a long time. He had become a huge fish for all of them to reckon and fight over in the future. What a fortune the Huashan sect had made. The old man in the brown robe was also aware of this as he watched the arena with his favorite gaze. The general had been pondering about such a fighter for a long time, and today he had found one. An apprentice who would fight like a tiger. However, for some, one fight meant nothing. He needed to win a few more fights, and all the students of the other school to truly prove that he was a true talent after all. This was just the beginning, and for some it could be considered luck. The old man had real hopes for this Yutz, but wasn't completely confident in his flawless success against other fighters. Chang Man was able to light a flame of hope in the middle of the heads and masters. He had one more fight to watch to be sure of his student's true strength. Chang Men was in a relaxed state after the fight, which was perplexing to his comrades. He seemed like some kind of demon to them. His friends simply didn't recognize him. He seemed like some other person to them. There wasn't a drop of sweat on his body. What kind of monster did the Oin think he was? Chang Man's victory cheered up the other students of the school, and they truly gained morale and spirit because of him. The dismoral comrades had gained a new breath of morale, but that didn't mean they were completely confident of victory. This surprised the friend who watched as the other students, after so many defeats and after huge disappointments, finally started to smile. This was their first victory, and they all hoped that there would be many more victories. His comrades were praising that put Chen Min in an awkward position, as if the new star of the school. He, of course, refused such loud praise. Such a picture and the friendliness of his comrades lifted his friend's spirits. He longed for Jai Hyun Man to fulfill his long-held dream of fulfilling all other people's hopes for him. Chechen Man never accepts compliments, and this time he simply sent his friend, who stood peacefully by and watched. It was the turn of the next fight in which he was already participating the student with blue hair who walked into the arena with a confident stride. His comrades left wide open and surprised eyes accompanying their comrade with a glance. He was gaining determination to win in this round after his comrade's stunning victory. He was not allowed to fail. At this point, instead of wishing him luck, he told him if he lost, he would kill him, which of course cheered him up. He entered the arena with a wide stride, shoulders wide apart, and a straight back that even the wind blew in the opposite direction as if showing him the way. And so stepping into the arena, he shouted to all that he was ready to fight any student from the rival school. Angered after the last fight, the elder ordered one of the talented students in the school to fight that screamer. He was full of rage after defeating the Ashan school. He wanted to take revenge and not let recover after so many defeats. 
And so after the Schumann student got into a fighting stance, the blue-haired one remembered him. His opponent was someone he had fought a couple months a couple months before this event, but in that fight he had shamefully zero loss to him. He prepared himself for the upcoming fight by placing his sword in front of him in a fighting stance fully focused on the upcoming fight. However, at this moment, he was having flashbacks of his past experiences opened up where he was constantly losing in school noise on. However, he saw some of his comrades training hard and long, which gave him extra motivation to grow further and not give up. When Chen Man first came, he gave him extra strength to surpass himself and become even stronger. And now he stands in front of his opponent wanting to destroy him and avenge his past defeats. Then the student in white and blue and Diane flew towards the blue-haired man. His seemingly sharp attack was another simple assault with a predictable result. And this time, with a confident look, it could be seen that the blue-haired man was fully prepared for this attack. He was able to repel his opponent's strongest punch. Reflecting this blow, the opponents flew a short distance away from each other, which created a swirl of air around them. This action of the blue-haired man surprised his opponent very much, which caused great surprise on his face. But his opponent didn't waste any time and went for another quick attack. Flying upwards, he rushed towards his opponent. But after repulsing his last attack, it was obvious that his opponent was not wasting time and had been practicing all this time, because it was obvious that he had become much faster. The blue-haired man was able to fend off every blow from his opponent, even though his opponent was several times stronger than him. He was not only able to defend himself from his opponent's attacks, we were also able to push his opponent away. This surprised even the blue-haired man who couldn't believe his own strength. His ability to parry all of his opponent's attacks surprised the blue and white robe disciple. There was a look of bewilderment on his confused face as he was perplexed by his opponent's ability. The blue-haired man was already beginning to believe his victory by questioning his opponent as to his motives. His insolence made the blue-haired man very angry that the blue-haired man's words had completely pissed him off. He was ready to tear his opponent apart. He tried to attack and hit his opponent, but his anger brainwashed him and he didn't hit him. Dodging his attack, the blue-haired man spent his own kick to his opponent's stomach. This blow was strong that the blue and white felt all the pain and almost lost consciousness. But finding extra strength, he once again conducted his attack trying to hurt his opponent one last time. But this time, the blue-haired man decided to finally win his opponent. Swinging his sword, he prepared to hit his opponent from the air. He gripped his sword tightly, preparing to finish off this restless foe once and for all. Gathering in this ball of his inner energy, this sword was charged. But the last decisive blow, it was enveloped in blue flames that would end this battle. In the eyes of the blue-haired man, there was a strong confidence in this strike, for he wanted to finish off the enemy in one blow. As he swung his sword, it flew towards his opponent's head. Hitting both of them would have decapitated his opponent. But the white-blue was not too shabby either, and in the last final moment, his sword repelled the attack. This attack was so strong that it broke the opponent's sword that he wanted to defend himself with. In the end, this final attack was indeed the final attack, as it broke the sword and pierced the opponent in the shoulders. After this attack, the opponent fell to the ground. Decides to finish this bat and at the end shows respect to his opponent, saying that it was a great fight. All his comrades were in an unrealistic happiness of victory, and not standing up shouting and not holding back emotions were really happy about the victory of their comrade. Another victory of a student of the Huashan school simply killed the head of the sect. He was in complete shock at what was happening and could not believe his eyes. However, inside himself, he was really happy with this outcome. Returning to his row, he heard the praise and congratulations of his close comrades. Then he noticed Ghoul standing there who looked at him with surprise. Ghoul was puzzled as to how to win the next fight. Not but happy with the battle won, the blue-haired man tells him not to worry about the upcoming battle, you will win it anyway. Such a wonderful victory made Chang Mian excited and he praised his comrade well too. It was a surprise for him to hear such warm words from Chung Men's side, but even so he took his words very close. But for one thing, Chang Men gives him a lesson. Then a picture is presented of a blue building with iron foundations, whose weak foundation breaks and causes the whole building to collapse. There is another red building with a stronger foundation, and even though the building is hit hard, it doesn't collapse. Also with martial arts, where the foundation is as important as real buildings, 
and if you break the foundation of the opponent with one blow, you can defeat him with ease. Martial arts is where it is important to hone all skills from start to finish to build a strong foundation that cannot be broken. In this, Ghoul fights his opponent by deftly fending off his quick strikes, parrying his nimble attacks. Counterattacking his opponent at the most opportune moment, he was able to break his sword with a single blow. Exhaling from such a hard fight, he couldn't believe his eyes that he was finally able to overpower his opponent and bring victory to his team. He was quite surprised by Zheng Min's lesson, as he had told him that the training seemed easy. But Chang Mieon says the opposite, that it's the opposite, that the training is harder, and if they were easy, each of us would be unrealistically strong. At this moment, another next student of Hua Shan's school goes for another duel in the arena. Chen Meng continues his speech, saying that not every person is willing to exhaust themselves to the extreme, to surpass their yesterday's self. A student from Hua Shan school performed his quick attack, catching his opponent off guard, knocking him over and putting him down. Chunin's school had to pick up another defeated and wounded comrade from the battlefield for the third time in a row. There was pure amazement on the blue-haired one's face because his school was actually able to recover from the long defeats. At the same time, the morale among the students was rising with each battle. They are becoming energized and more motivated for the next fight, which meant that the school's chances of winning today's tournament are becoming real. Another Chunin fighter gets hurt and flies away from his opponent's punches, and so the next opponent would also fly off and lose his fight. And with each fight, the Huashan disciples get closer to victory. They celebrate each victory, which makes the Huashan stronger. On their faces, you can see the joy and fun, despite the seriousness of this tournament. However, on the faces of the opponents from Chunin school, there was only dejection and despair in this situation. They had lost so many fights in a row that really hit their morale. A sincere smile and joy appeared even on the faces of Chen Man's friends already soon. Victory is coming soon, thought they. Even though the last ten matches turned out to be victorious, the overall score was 10-10, that it was a tie at first. Such words of Chen Man surprised him and his comrades. He is not happy about the draw because he doesn't know this word. He becomes angry again and wants to rectify this situation. Chen Man takes his sword as he is not happy with the draw. He decides to win one last battle for his team and end the confrontation between the schools. He's ready to avenge his school on all those who have harmed it in the past, especially the one who beat up the senior in the very first fight of today's tournament. He is not going to let go of who dared to enter the Huashan domain and those who tried to humiliate the sect head. There was a look of madness in his eyes, willing to go to the very end to achieve his goal. He would never back down, so he seemed to be a demon. Taking the sword in his hands, he rushed from the center of the arena to the next fight. Without words and with full confidence, he was going to win the fight. Everyone was watching Chechen Man as everyone's attention was drawn to him after his fiery speech. For others, he became a kind of motivator and savior, and their gazes were directed towards Jai Hyun Man. His back became very recognizable, for it meant that there was still hope for the school's victory and the restoration of their honor. The sect head, who is getting a magical massage sitting relaxed on a lovely chair, can't believe that such a beautiful day has come one day. Tears of happiness flowed down his face that he had lived to see the days when the honor of the school could finally be restored. And even the one who massaged the head of the sect was also happy for his comrades. They really did well, which only makes him delighted. The head is very city with his students. He can't find the exact words to describe his joy and the quality of his students. Closing his eyes, he could look calmly at the face of his ancestors, for he had almost restored what had been lost. And Chang Man confidently walks into the arena with a broad stride and a city gate to bring the final victory and put a point between the schools. And about the rivals, so and sit with downcast looks of disgraced honor, completely crippled and demoralized. The head of the school was unrealistically angry, which created a heavy atmosphere because his students had almost lost to Hua Shan in front of a full row of spectators. The draw had pissed off even the senior, because a draw against Hua Shan school was tantamount to a defeat. Stepping into the center of the arena, Chang Meng raises his hand, forcing his attention to himself and calls out to Mr. Huang. The old man looks at the young fighter from Hua Shan school with surprise, wanting to hear what he has to say to him. He wants the old man to choose the winner of today's competition, as there should be only one winner.
He asks a very curious question about who the winner of today's battle is, leaving others to ponder the question. The old man appreciated such a confident act from the young apprentice who dared to come out alone to ask such an important question. And the merchants began to wonder who really came out the winner. They thought that the winner should be chosen. The old man says that one must look to the future, and the last ten victories of the Huashan show their great potential. They argue that the Chunin disciples are more experienced but younger than the Huashan disciples. Then Mr. Huang realized that a definite verdict would be very difficult to reach because of the different opinions. In this case, Mr. Chang Man proposes to make one more, but final bout as it is, felt that the fight is not over yet. Such a harsh suggestion makes the senior of Chunin school angry, and it is clear from his face that he is very unhappy with the young man's antics. Even the head and the general were very surprised by such an unexpected and abrupt proposal from a third-generation disciple. His comrades considered this proposal very crazy, since the students in the school Huashan is the third-generation students of my opponents will be one generation higher. Mr. Huang listens very carefully behind the very reasoned statement of Chang Man. He proposes to make a battle of all on all where absolutely all students from the two schools will participate and only one school will be the winner. Only the one who has at least one person left on their feet can emerge victorious, and the battle will go down to the last person. Such an impudent offer made the elder from the other sect even angrier, and he was ready to explode with rage, barely able to contain it. He ran his finger along the back of his neck and made the gesture that he was ready to destroy them. With this move, Chen Man has put checkmate to his opponent, since they can't refuse. Otherwise, it shows that they are afraid of Huashan. The suggestion of a team battle plunged the head of the Chunin sect into a rage. He is infuriated that this pathetic youngster thinks he is someone who can suggest such things. The sect leader tells him that he's in no position to do so. Chang Man, however, makes a nonchalant face, pretending not to understand the head of the school's claim. He suggests that he discuss the problem with the head Huashan. He knew within himself that all the cards were on his side, and that's why he acted so proudly. Angry more at such insolence from a youngster who in his opinion shows great disrespect to the sect head, he begins to lose his temper. If there was a chance to finish off such an insolent kid, he wouldn't hesitate to do so. Then the merchant said that this is a very tempting offer, and it will be very interesting to watch the team battle between Huashan and Chunin schools. It would be a beautiful and unusual spectacle. Chen Man only has to get the consent of the two sides, because the merchants and all the spectators agree to this fight. No one would not refuse such an interesting idea, which gave all the conviction Chen Man that he will be able to pull it off. The head of Huashan is still puzzled by such a proposal from his own disciple. He doesn't understand what kind of madness his disciple is doing. Such insolence and such self-satisfaction from a once unnoticeable youngster simply amazed him. The sitting master next to him wants to convince the head that this continuation is actually a good chance to restore the honor of the school and that it is absolutely necessary to agree to it. It's all or nothing, and by supporting his student's initiative, morale can be raised. Chang Man is still standing in the sunlight in the middle of the arena, waiting for the other side to agree. Everything is going according to his plan, which gives full confidence for his decisive plans. He is going to drive the Chunin school into his prearranged trap. The master has full confidence in this young man as he has never offered nonsense. He thinks this is a great chance to end the insolence of their opponents and put them in their place, bring them down. He suggests that the old man trust this young apprentice as much as he trusts himself. This guy is very talented and he knows what he's doing. He doesn't know to take a risk just like that realizing that it would put the school in a vulnerable position. Thinking very deeply about Wu Master's words, he tries to make the right choice that will improve the school's position. This choice is very difficult, which makes him use all his strength because the choice that will decide the future fate of the two schools. The head of Huashan eventually agrees to this battle, which forces the head of Chunin, who is sitting across from him, to also agree to the terms of the battle. At this moment, a comrade grabs Cheng Meng by the scruff of the neck and drags him with all his might behind him. Judging from the blue-haired man's emotions, he didn't like such a crazy condition of Chen Man's, so he yells in his face that they don't have the strength to stand up to the older generation. 
Then Gen Man made him think of a really great chance to defeat the opponents, since they have a lot of good fighters. Ghoul looking at them in surprise only makes him admire Jin Geumrin in the eyes of Gen Man, because he has a full chance of becoming a second-generation apprentice if he tries a little harder. However, if Jin Geumrin enters the arena, it will completely destroy the entire Huashan formation. There is really no match for this very strong and ferocious fighter. He is on a completely different level. He is ready to annihilate his opponents with just a glance. The blue-haired man is really surprised by these words of Chang Man and wonders even more about whether they have a real plan of action. This old man called Jin Gyumrin over to his place in full anger and told him about Hua Shen's possible plans for him. But the elder's words were as confident as his gaze. He is ready to destroy everyone even despite the enemy's numbers. Yobek standing behind Jin Gimrin agreed to the account of the plan proposed by the head himself, where he himself should come out first against their fighter. Standing in a hero's pose with his sword on his shoulders, Chang Man was confident in his abilities because the key to victory was himself. The head of the Chunin school called all his fighters and put them in a row to prepare for the upcoming battle. Yobek stood in a fighting stance with his sword in front of him, and his look was full of confidence in his abilities and he was ready to bring victory to his school to destroy the Huashan. And Chen Man himself was already ready for the upcoming massacre against the Chunin fighters. He stood confidently on two legs, swinging his sword, creating whirlwinds under his foot. Turning his gaze sideways to make sure his friend was watching the fight, a friend he wanted to show him how to fight. Chunin's disciple was annoyed by this arrogant behavior of Chen Man, and he sincerely wants to put him in his place. Chen Man decides that it's time to end with idle talk. He sticks out his sword, saluting his opponent. The opponent from the other school does the same, doing simple formalities before the battle. Chang Men's gaze gives him goosebumps. It pierces through his opponent. His gaze is so intimidating that he no longer looks like he came to play. Ghoul, who was standing nearby, watches his comrades cheering for Chang Man. And he also decides to vent his positive emotions out. They realize the seriousness of the situation, of this upcoming fight, and prepare to watch every action of Gen Man carefully. Chen Man, with an intimidating look, is ready to destroy his opponents, and he will give first to the legend today. And the Chunin school disciple has already started using a very special technique against Chang Man. This technique caused the Huashan sect head to be perplexed, because no one expected Chunin to master such a technique so quickly. This technique was very fast. The sword swings were piercing and dangerous. The technique was so skillful that it raised smoke all around it. Having used this technique in his first attack on his opponent, he expected to destroy him in one go. Well, what an unexpected reaction from the disciple with the white and blue robe was caused by the powerful parrying of such a technique. Chen Men had very nicely repelled such a heavy technique, and the power of this technique could be seen by the fact that there was a surge of energy between the swords. It was such a powerful strike with a stronger parry that even the Chunin disciple himself flew away from his own strike and could not land on his feet. At that moment, Chang Man made his first counterattack, trying to hit his opponent with all his might in the shoulder. But the opponent was not a weakling, and having seen such an attack, he was able to barely avoid being hit, thus saving his life. He balanced himself and stood on two legs without falling. Holding his ground, he planned his counterattack. But it wasn't to be, and Chang Man continued his series of swings, and another swing went straight for his opponent's head, which could kill him. Barely repelling such a deadly blow with his sword, it created a huge explosive wave that spread throughout the arena. The power of this strike was so strong that even the clan head sitting nearby felt a strong wind coming from the epicenter of the strike. Chen Man's final strike, we successfully, even though he was repelled, he was able to stun his opponent with a single dance strike. The opponent simply fell to the cold ground after such an attack. He couldn't come to his senses and realize what had just happened. In his eyes was lost. He was on the verge of death but barely dodged it. But even from such a strong blow, not a single nerve on the face of the winner of this fight was shaken. He was hungry for another opponent. The head of the alien clan was stunned by such a magnificent sword art of Chen Man because that youngster was able to take down such a fighter using only basic sword techniques. The insanely heavy aura that emanated from Chang Man was very tense. It frightened the clan head. The proudly standing kid would become unrealistically strong and invincible if he started to train further, and so he should have been stopped right there. 
when the old man decides to give him a much stronger opponent, a very talented and close apprentice named Sohan. The white and blue-clad Sohan has a very serious look in his eyes as he is ready to do as we commanded. Sohan had to wear down his opponent. Changman continued to stand in his intimidating pose. Any glances in his direction only caused fear in his opponents. But even though his comrade had been annihilated a few minutes before, he adopted a fighting stance and dared to confront Qian Man. But the look on Gen Man's face became even more intimidating. His eyes remained blue from the rage that was within him. He felt his lust for victory over those who had humiliated his school. This time he decided to attack first and flew towards his opponent. The opponent simply did not expect such a sharp, decisive action on the part of Chen Min, and as a result he missed one very strong and important blow. He had destroyed his opponent with just one blow without even spending a single drop of his strength. With another nonchalant face, he demanded a stronger opponent. The others were shocked by this picture, wondering how Chang Man could so easily defeat his enemies in a fraction of a second, and most importantly, he didn't even look tired. He also stands in a manly pose, wanted his opponent lying on the ground, almost breathless and very mangled. His stern gaze only meant that no Chunin sect disciple would walk out of here unpunished for their grave sin. He is willing to leave a heavy stigma for this sect. In the past, when the Huashan school saved the world, and when the fighters of this school gave their lives to save humanity, others simply betrayed them. The anger that emanated from Changman was very strong, and he was about to unleash it on his opponents. Such a heavy aura that emanated from Chen men, frightened Chunin disciples, on whose faces was visible pure fear for their lives. And then another disciple who believed his strength dared to come out against him, although it looks very naive. Chang Man is not going to give in, and he used his special technique in just one A and ended up behind his opponent's back. This punch left a huge press near his opponent's shoulder that would actually kill a normal person for sure. But his opponent wasn't going to give up, and with a lost look of despair, he decides to make his own kick to the back of Chung Men. But Chen Men did not forgive such a counterattack, himself went into it and almost killed his opponent. His body was just lying next to him. The others are just watching the battle and can't find the right word to describe what's going on here. They watch their comrades every action at the same time. Chen Men is indeed very strong. His usual posture only causes fear in his opponents and respect from his comrades. Thus, another of his enemies was defeated with a powerful back kick. Chen Min doesn't feel it this time either. For him, these fights are very easy where he doesn't waste even a little of his strength. Such a pathetic spectacle from his school strongly demoralizes Chunin's students, who look lopsided, beating with a confused look. And Chang Man is as unflappable as he was. It even seems like trying to take him by force won't succeed. This pathetic sight makes Jin Jum Ryong lose his temper. He blazes in anger that he wants to fight the enemy himself. He can no longer stand by and watch such a scene. He is ready to take on the arrogant bastard right here and now. He tells the others to stay here and watch as he himself is going to restore the honor of his school. Taking his sword in his hand, he heads towards the bastard, determined to fulfill his promises. However, the old man decides to stop him just before he retreats to the arena. He asks his other apprentice to step out in place of Jin Gumran to further continue to wear down his opponent. The old man sitting too with a serious face has his good plan, which he follows and waits for success. Stryge has called him to his place for an important conversation to discuss something they can't discuss in public, and the whole old man isn't even sure if the others can stop this genman. It caused a desperate look to be directed down to the ground when the head of the school said something that this youngster is just a monster. What the elder wants to say to his closest and most talented student is that they should stop Chen Mon right here and now, when he is still young. When he grows up, he'll be that monster. But the elder's words caused Jin Gumran to misunderstand her, because he basically agrees that this little guy is very strong, but he didn't understand why this made the elder worried. Jin Gumran thought that he could be the one to destroy the Chunin school. The thought of the elder putting Jin Gumran on par with that brat just pisses him off. The elder realizes that Jin Gumran is a very talented student, but he also realizes that he should not forget about other students like him. He had to listen to the old man's hurtful words that hurt him so much that it turned into anger and irritation. I will try to convey that on talent alone you cannot go far to become a monster you need to train and get better every minute. The elder's admonition to his apprentice just pisses him off. 
The elder's speech about monsters and gifted warriors is not close to Jin Gumrin's views. During this conversation, Jin Gimrin is again standing next to another humiliated and maimed opponent in the blazing sun. What the elder wants to say is that even though this brat is strong, he's still a child, so he's young. Even so, these words still hurt Jin Gumrin. Jin Gumrin can't grasp the whole point of this conversation and the main point that the head of the school wants to convey. Then the head of the school looks him straight in the eye with a cold face and says that he should kill the brat. The old man says it's very important to get rid of such a monster before he reaches his full potential. Jin Gumrin can't believe his ears. It's clear from his distracted look that he thinks the old man has lost his mind. Lowering his gaze, he wants to make it clear to the old man that this youngster will never surpass him. But if his existence is threatened in his school, then he is willing to take any risk. Looking at his elder, he was willing to do absolutely anything to protect the future of his comrades, the school, and the elder. The old man liked this approach very much, his mad gaze accompanied by his crazy plans for Changmin's fate. Another student of the Chunin school was brutally defeated by the sword of a youngster who didn't even try. His opponents, the weakling eating another school, was becoming more and more terrifying. But Chen Men himself didn't give a damn about them. Then Chen Men's gaze turned to one very brave boy who entered the arena. This guy looked very confident and was ready to fight the most talented fighter of the Huashan school at full strength. Prepared to take revenge on our comrades and take this bastard down once and for all, bringing back the honor of his school. And so he begins to draw his sword in preparation for another round between the two opposing schools. Immediately, Chang Man begins to use a new technique that shrouded his sword in blue, and his gaze was sternly directed at his enemy. At the same time, the white-blue robe disciple turned on berserk mode and with rage in his eyes was ready to tear him apart. His fury was coming out of his eyes, to him extra strength. Using those strength rushed towards his vis-a-vis, -vis, and Chen Man just stood still and prepared to show this overconfident guy a big lesson. A couple of meters away from a strong strike with the Chunin School's special technique, and with this strike, the fate of the Huashan School should end. Well, when he got even closer, the young man in front of him simply disappeared and everything around him turned dark. With such a technique, he was defeated by a powerful blow from the heavens. He couldn't fend it off, it hit him right in the head. And so was defeated by a seemingly strong opponent who didn't expect his elder's vindication. He had already won nine fights in a row, and would also be the tenth he didn't know, but he only noticed that the head of the alien clan and his close disciples were standing behind the curtain. His gaze fell just with the strongest disciple of the Gunnan school with Jin Gumrin. And Chang Man's gaze never once changed, and it was obvious from his gaze that he was eager for a battle with this particular person. The spectacle that Chung Man gave to his audience and comrades was very unusual, because never before had the Chunin school been so disgraced. On the faces of the masters of Hua Shan school, was incomprehension what to do now, because for the first time in a long time, the school can look so proudly in the eyes of their rivals. The head of the school believes that there is no need to do anything yet, but only to observe how the balance of power will change in the upcoming battle. The maimed and exhausted students looked at the arena as if they had already given up hope of winning. There was only despair in their eyes. And so Jin Gumrin and Jen Man stand opposite each other in their mounts waiting for the fight to begin. Jeng Man is trying to be humble in front of his opponent after his offer to congratulate him on his nine consecutive victories. And this behavior seemed very arrogant to Gumrin, which of course pissed him off. Chang Men was a very arrogant boy and very well-mannered. Gimrin never liked him. Gumrin, with a very angry face, said that his strength could justify his arrogance he didn't mind. However, he could never become stronger, his only chance to achieve that was when he could be part of the Chunin school. It was obvious from the expression on Chen Meng's face that he did not like such confidence in his opponent about his abilities. Standing against each other, they exchanged pleasantries about each other's school and personalities. Gumrin was sure that he could take revenge on this young man and fulfill his promise to his elder. But Zhang Men was as steadfast as ever, his gaze sharp and fixed on Gumrin's heart. He was ready to destroy his enemy. He was reminded of a student of a foreign school that his mother once fought. The words that tugged at his heart opened up new, new memories, and his hands began to tremble with anger. It was anger that filled his heart. This time, he would not let his opponent go for the full deeds of his school, and today would pay for it in full. 
This time he will not fight as a student of his school, but as a noble plum blossom blade. Changman is ready to make this fight so that his opponent will never forget such humiliation and suffering. At this moment, a completely mangled, barely walking, exhausted senior student of Huashan school finds the strength to come to watch this fight. To his worried about his health and safety, a fellow schoolmate offers him a seat to watch this fight together. Kneeling right in front of the arena, sitting the closest to witness such a momentous moment. Refusing to sit on the chair, he begins to watch the action in the arena with the full support of his comrade. Hearing the voice of his older comrade, Chang Men gains more strength for the decisive fight. The fight has just begun, and the opponents are already rushing towards each other at full speed. This speed was so fast that they disappeared from sight for a split second. They both hit each other's punches so that they flew a great distance away from the force of the blow. The two fighters were so fast and agile that no one could capture all the movement. But even though they were so fast, the two disciples did not miss a single blow from their opponent. Their speed, of course, completely dumbfounded the nearby seated spectators. None of them could catch their movements. Because of the powerful blows, the entire battlefield is enveloped in a kind of blue dome. After the grueling fights, both Changmen and Jin Gumren decide to mutually rest for a couple seconds just by standing still without swinging their swords. After that, another fight continues, and Jin Gumren uses a huge technique that space around him into a blue ball. All that blue ball was just a trace of Jimren's swift sword blows, but Jin dodged his blows. The technique was called the snowflake technique. This technique had long belonged to the Hua Shan school, but now it was being used by Jin Gumren himself. According to him, such a technique now belongs to them, and Hua Shan will go into oblivion. Jin Gumren wants to prove with this technique that his ancestors created this technique for a reason, and he can destroy any enemy regardless of its use. At least he is going to prove that this technique will be the sign of the end of the Hua Shan school, and for that it is worth trying to use it against him. A sudden smile appeared on Chen Men's face in the middle of the battle after he called this technique worthless. This just pissed off Gumran, who was yelling at the top of his voice because he was pissing him off. It pissed him off that this kid had a lot of attitude. In fact, Chang Men didn't care about the opponent's technique because he knew that his school's technique was superior to that of the gun in school. And I was the final turning point because it finally pissed off the best fighter of his school. He begins to use his strongest technique to completely break with this scumbag who obviously doesn't watch his language. This technique was so powerful that it caused a huge blue storm the height of a multi-story building. The spectators sitting next to the students couldn't believe what was happening. What they were witnessing now could be surpassed by few. To others, such a beautiful technique resembled the plum blossom sword technique, but it was something different from it. The beautiful blue radiance that reached the heavens enchanted others. It was a very beautiful technique, but also very dangerous. Chen Men, on the other hand, just watched and observed, but he did not admire it. He only despised this technique as it had been stolen by the Chunin sect. However, to him, this technique was only a shell that should collapse with a single swing and that should not intimidate him in the slightest. He was ready to finish off his opponent's technique once and for all. The masters had already realized what technique Chen Men was going to use. It was obvious from his stance that he intended to use a really strong technique. On the faces of the masters was only fear that the technique called Seven Plum Sword technique that Chung Meng wants to use has not yet been mastered by him could lead to disastrous results. The technique used by Jin Gumran is superior to the technique used by Jin Gumran in every way, since the technique used by his opponent is a poor copy of it. No matter what sword technique Jin Gumran uses, he will always be stronger than his opponent's technique. Chen Men's technique shrouded his sword in a pink color. The strong windstorms that come from the side of the Gunnan school disciple are easily cut, and the sword that is like petals of dense forests blossomed like flowers. These petals, pink and beautiful, will bloom until they are plucked by the strong current. They bloomed like a true pink sakura. The sight was something extraterrestrial, full of heavenly beauty. To those who were able to see it up close, it was something naturally stunning. The embittered Jin Gumren himself was completely puzzled as to why the Huashan sect still used such a technique. He believed that this school had long ago abandoned the practice of such a sword. Chung Mang used this technique to show the world well right in front of his eyes reveals the plum blossom sword technique. The red and white petals were little creations of art. 
both cute and at the same time frightening. Jumarin's illusion that he wanted to intimidate his opponent simply disappeared under the onslaught of Jin Men's technique, forcing his opponent to go on the offensive with his own hands. Enraged, Jin Gumrin finds himself in a state of confusion because his strongest Twelve Snowflakes technique has been dispelled. Overwhelmed with anger, he can't believe what is happening. Being in shock, he asks how it is possible, shouting while he is still blazing blue. He admits that it was very naive to think that the Huashan sex techniques would use the plum blossom shape as a base. All sects in the world strive to make the highest formulas of manifestation customs as close to nature as possible. The distinctive feature of the plum blossom technique was that unlike the others, it did not only create or illusion, it actually blossomed its flowers. But it's about the plum tree itself and how it actually blooms. Proudly standing, Changmen spread his sword, beautiful pink plum blossoms behind him that made the picture very beautiful. The most important intention of this technique is to keep the noble name of Huashan sect in one's heart. The searing gaze of the essentially caught in his own net and trapped himself in his own trap was destined to wander forever in the quagmire of the humorous outline of the plum blossom tree. He is going to put an end to his sword technique and lay the stigma of defeat on the memory of Jin Gimrin. He promises to put them in these chains forever, and this will be the final revenge on the enemies and their immorality. His comrades and he suffered from their treachery, lost sword techniques, and suffered an attack by the nemeses where they were burned by fire. A completely enraged Chan Men is already ready to destroy his opponent for the sake of the idea that the Hua Shan will still live. The world will be reborn and die again and again until the end of time, and during this time the closed secrets must be learned. Cheng Men sincerely regrets that he has not gotten all the knowledge he needs before now. But even so, he is ready to show everyone the power of this technique. The general and the masters and the head of the Huashan school are all shocked by this mastery of a technique that many have already forgotten about and in the eyes of his comrades was a huge black fear of such a sinister scary but at the same time but at the same time serene technique one blow he wanted the technique to create walls and these walls then immediately crumble into dust and the dust having risen and spun to turn into a real whirlwind around chung men flew pink petals protecting him and this time becoming his weapon he wanted to use the huashan sect's sword technique in a single strike the very strong infinity plum sword technique and the plum blossom swirl sword technique this very moment when these techniques came together, it created such a heavy atmosphere that even the strongest person would try to disappear. All of these techniques flew towards Jin Gimrin, completely enveloping him in the pink color of plum blossom petals. These blooming petals caused him a lot of damage, causing him to start losing pine. At this point, he wondered what he was doing wrong. Eventually, those petals that had bound his body let go of him and he collapsed to the ground face down, completely exhausted and crippled by such a heavy technique. For Changmen, it was the place where he could show himself, putting the honor of his school and showing his abilities in front of the audience. His teammates were overjoyed at this victory. After all, at first no one believed that Huashan's school would win, but in the end, Cheng Meng had given them the victory. The master, general, and elder of the school were all in tears of happiness at such a grueling victory. No one could believe the victory, but in the end, winning this tournament intoxicated everyone. All the students were in a state of ecstasy that even the smile didn't fall off their faces for a long time, and they were jumping and running with happiness. Their actions were even to the point of madness, such as Ghoul choking the blue-haired man, but they could understand how sweet victory is not always given. There was red blood on Changman's lips, showing that he fought very honorably, even a little too much but his gaze was directed towards the opposing sect. He realized that this was not the end. I would not be opposing each other for a long time. But for now, it's a good result. The person who announced the opponent pairs this time forgot to announce the victory. In the end, after a subtle, bloody, very tragic battle between the two schools, Hua Shan came out as the winner. After the results were announced, all the students ran towards the hero of today's massacre, the strongest fighter of today's competition, Chung Meng. While the disciples were having fun together, the seated high-ranking people at the back were also cheering for them a little. It was a very rare sight to see the entire Huashan gathering together and rejoicing over something. 
The common victory brought everyone together. This was the kind of joy that was so great that the master suggested the head to end this competition officially. The far-seated Chunin school head sat alone and stared at the ground. He seemed to be uncomfortable watching the jubilation of the competitors. The old man congratulated the Huashan school head on his victory, though his face did not show any joy at all. He sat with a very nonchalant face. But the Huashan school head also smilingly encouraged him that this time his school was just lucky to be the winner of such a battle. This happy face pissed off the head of the other sect, for such a shameful defeat after a brilliant start had hit the morale of the school hard. Angry at the pity and defeat of his own students, the old man said that a few defeats in the battles between the second and third generation students wouldn't change anything. Just because they won once didn't mean they were stronger than Chun in school. At that time, Chen men approached the two heads of the two schools to receive praise and pass words of encouragement to the losing side. He reprimanded the ghoul standing next to him for his disrespectful behavior of the losing school. But he eventually stood his ground and disagreed with Chang Men, which of course made him angry, and Ghoul received a strong kick on his leg, which knocked him down. After the wonderful fight between the schools and the unbelievable spectacle that was organized by Chang Man, he asked his elder to show a sign of respect to the head of the Chunin school. But the old man continued to sit with a sour face, not recognizing the fact of deserved shameful defeat. To him, the defeat had become the responsibility of his students. His anger burst out, and even his hands began to turn purple, which were shaking with anger. His gaze was directed towards the battle hero, as if he was going to end him right here in front of everyone. Changman said that from now on he would greet him on every occasion as a sign of respect for his arch-rival. The old man was on the verge of a breakdown, that he was going to attack him if he said one more unnecessary word. But the old man was able to stop himself and tell his students that they were going home and his students were in the same pitiful condition as he was, and from the outside you could see the loss and shame in their eyes for such a fight. And already leaving Chen Man looking back realized that this old man cannot restrain his emotions and next time with him should be more careful. Thus the head of Chun school, after a stunning defeat, left the tournament arena having lost the honor of his school. Hua Shan school head remembered his second youth after such a fruitful and successful competition, and he once again praised the protagonist of this celebration. Chung Meng had no choice but to accept the praise and say a huge thank you for it. Many merchants who had rushed into the place in the beginning wanted to meet and talk to the head, but the guards were holding them back. After such a stunning victory, almost every merchant who sat in this arena wanted to discuss many business deals with the old man. They were interrupted by an old man in a green robe, asking if they were interested in another deal. There was a fervor in this man's eyes in discussing such a topic. He was willing to discuss them with the old man since he was the head of the finance pavilion himself. He led all the merchants who wanted to talk to the head of the Huashan school to a secluded place to discuss all the nuances. In the end, the head had to say goodbye to his favorite students in order to discuss more global problems together with the country's dignitaries. Then one of the students from the defeated school approached him personally, which surprised Chang Man personally. He was supposed to be with his companions, but for some reason, he came to him. In fact, and you already had little in common with those members of the Chunin school, I had become literally nothing to each other. He decided to leave his sect of his own free will because he hates the traitor more than the enemy. He's really grateful to Chang Man for the lesson he was taught during the battle. His lesson really changed his worldview and his life. It turns out Chang Man, in one of his battles with him, said that no one should control and tell him what path he should choose. Only he himself has the right to choose himself to go to him in this life. Even though it was said by a member of another sect, it really affected him, and he decided that he would not be a member of any sect and would only look up to his teacher. He said that Jin Gumran would not let it go without revenge after such a defeat so he should be wary of this crazy and very strong man. After all, Jin Gumran is a very talented fighter full of potential. However, he has made many enemies he will have to deal with the consequences of his strength. For Chang Man, the path that his interlocutor has chosen is the path of a strong man, and this path will not be easy, so he is a little worried about his new friend. Well, such anxiety only causes a happy grin on his friend's face. Nothing is impossible to hide from Jong Man.
but he should go his own way. And he really says goodbye to him and starts to walk away. Stalking him with his gaze, the young hero realizes that a lonely battle awaits him, which will be an unrealistically heavy burden for him. Looking at his friend's back, he trusts his abilities and wishes he could learn the many techniques of the Huashan school. But suddenly the blue-haired man takes Chung Men's attention away from him, giving him the information that the head of the school is looking for him. He was heading on foot towards the large brown door to the place where the Huashan school head himself was heading, while using this time to think about justifying his strongest technique and all that he had been able to do in the previous fight. In front of him stood that old man in green robes and with a very strange smirk began to praise him and ask about his condition, which of course did not like Chen Man himself, who wanted to get away from this man as soon as possible. That old man was stretching his cheeks to the sides, and judging by the very unhappy expression on Chang Man's face, he was hoping for the head to stop him, and the head was only asking about his health. The old man looks towards his favorite disciple with thoughts that he is indeed a great man, although he has the very equanimity on his face, but inside he is really happy for him. Right now, Changman is following his mentor with a very joyful gait. His teacher asked him to follow him, and he wants to show him a place. They are standing on the edge of a huge cliff, literally over a precipice from which you can fall, and both of them stand admiring the beauty of nature that is available to the eye from that place. The teacher with a satisfied face looking into the face of his student asked a very serious question about the very technique he used in the battle, and judging by the facial expressions of the student, he was afraid of this question. From the abyss of this cliff were visible landscapes of huge mountains shrouded in gray, and with these beautiful views, Chen Man began to justify about his technique trying not to give out unnecessary information. And the teacher makes a bow in front of his student, as a sign of gratitude in honor of this victory that he brought. Chang Man was so surprised by this action that he fell into a stupor of surprise. The bewildered Chang Man tried to be modest and downplay his merits, asking his elder not to bow before him, because it was the merit of the whole team and his own. Despite this, the teacher continues to bow before him and even says a word of thanks, adding that he does not elevate himself to a hero and remains an ordinary young man because modesty is a good quality. Chen continued to answer his mentor's question, saying that it was a pure accident and happened by itself in this fight, because during practice, he was not really able to achieve the desired results. From the expression on Sensei's face, you can understand that he, and understand that he asked a very stupid question, and he will not answer it seriously. He also had a confidence that if real work can be mastered this technique, then every student will be able to become strong like him. On the face of the teacher appeared a kind of joy after the words of his student that they, in the Huashan school, will soon be able to achieve the highest degree, the title of the Plum Blossom Blade, if all students can master such a technique. In front of Zhang Man's eyes, there is a memory of him spending time with his comrades, practicing and relaxing, laughing, and having fun after the teacher's question about what the Huashan sect before him is. He imagined a picture of Chang Man fighting with his friend, and then making up with him again, where they are measured between them by an elder. Even though they mutilated through each other, this picture seemed very nostalgic to him. In front of him, a picture from his memories of his two older comrades, walking through a beautiful garden surrounded by pink sakura trees, asking the same question to each other. After realizing the meaning of his memories, the truth that the Hua Shan school where he spends his time is simply the Hua Shan school, the place where he builds warm memories, struck him. After he realized such an important thought, a smile and joy shone on his young face. He felt true happiness for a moment. His gaze was directed towards the distant, boundless horizon, and there too all his aspirations were directed. Such a profound and philosophical answer of his student caused only a small smile on the teacher's face. After all, everything that Chang Man said was all that was needed for an ordinary student of the school. After such a conclusion, Sensei turned towards his student and put his hand on his chest, promising him that the school and he himself promises that they will protect Chang Man at any cost, because after the victory, he will have a lot of enemies.
You can tell by the look on the teacher's face that his intentions are serious. And hearing such words from his teacher was very important to Changman, who instead thought that the elder would ask him very uncomfortable questions. Realizing that the entire school and sensei would be on his side, this caused Changman to be immensely happy. Smiling, he said that he wouldn't let his comrades down. Inwardly, his respect for his teacher increased tremendously. The disciples at home are relaxing and having fun among themselves. They reminisce about the former battle where they showed their techniques and strengths to the whole world. They played different games of jumping and running. The blue-haired man listened very carefully to every word of his comrade Ghoul, who said that he dreamed of the outlines of that sword technique every night, as if it had taken over his thoughts. This technique, where the blade strikes the opponent with a pink blow tearing the air in half, seemed like some kind of fantasy that really didn't look like something from real life, and it blew his mind. Ghoul looked at the ground and thought deeply about the question of whether the students of the school, including the two of them, would be able to use this level of technique. This question was so engrossing that he couldn't hear his surroundings. After listening to him, the blue-haired man began to explain to him about his intention to simply become stronger, but learning techniques and especially techniques of such complexity was not a priority for him. However, as the oldest third-generation disciple, he realized that it was not worth it to say that. In the middle of their conversation, they both returned their gaze to the other members of the Huashan school. These disciples were having fun, and Ghoul and the blue-haired one assumed that the other third-generation disciples were thinking the same thing. It could be seen how these disciples were having their best times. A smile never fell off their faces. They were laughing, and there was a good atmosphere around them. But were they ready to use the technique used in that battle? Just as suddenly with the strongest kick on the front door, Chang Man burst in very loudly. Literally dumbfounding everyone with such an action, he caught everyone's attention. From his actions and facial expressions, it was clear that he was very angry and displeased that his comrades had decided to congratulate each other and spend their time on entertainment, even though they had failed in the tournament. Chang Man was easily angered by the fact that instead of practicing and taking the hard path like his friend who had recently left the Chunin sect, they had taken the easy path, which was literally a waste of time. He scolded them so much that his words of humiliation and admonishment were just like a sword painfully piercing the ears of the disciples, and after he called them mansions, they were ready to fall to the ground. After hearing such hard words, the blue-haired man with a bashful look wanted to reassure Chang Man that his words were partly true, but the current results were not bad either. After all, everyone makes mistakes on the battlefield. After saying that, it completely pissed Chang Man off. Well, so angry after such, in his opinion, stupid words that he was already starting to go crazy. An opponent wouldn't feel sorry for his enemy after making a mistake. One must not do things one must practice. Chang Man continued his abuse of his comrades. He yelled at them after they fought badly with that attitude. They could have fought better, but instead of training, they wasted their time on such nonsense. Anger almost made him lose his mind so much that he started gaslighting them. He made a very stupid face, letting them know that he didn't take the words of the slackers and weaklings that were his comrades. Standing in front of them, pointing his fingers, he of course agrees that there is no reason to be upset because it was one battle, but there is no reason to be happy because there are more battles ahead where they have to prove themselves. Autumn Haired asked him a question about whether the day would really come when the students of this school would be able to use sword techniques if they practiced without stopping, which really made Chang Man sink into a misunderstanding. Such a silly question makes the situation worse as the dick man's eyes turn red, and he says that it doesn't matter whether that day comes or not. The important thing is that all the students of this school are required to learn the technique. With one loud shout, he was able to get everyone to go outside to practice. Every student started running towards the exit, afraid of making things worse and getting kicked by someone who knows the most powerful technique. After all the students had left for training, one person approached him from the main entrance, an unexpected guest that really surprised Chang Man which was evident from his facial expression. It was an older apprentice one generation above him, and it was clear from the look on his face that he had come for nothing. 
He suggested that he go and walk outdoors for a while and discuss a very important topic with him. Chang Man agreed to spend his free time with him and take a walk near the forest. Settling down on the rocks, he started acting like a child, doing strange things due to the fact that his legs were very tired from walking like that. This behavior, of course, did not like the older man because Chang Man is still young, but behaves like a man knows. But despite this, he thanked Chang Man that he agreed to go with him. Of course, thanking him for a seemingly small favor seemed very strange to him, and the whole situation and I, especially the place he chose to talk, seemed a little suspicious to him. Does the elder accidentally want to pick a fight with him again? But the elder says the importance of this conversation is that as an elder, he saw how others reacted to his successes. Of course, many saw his strength and were very happy for his victory, but the joy has subsided and now many have conflicting feelings. The real reason the elder called him here surprisingly was that he wanted to become stronger. Of course, this surprised Chang Man a lot, because usually it's the younger ones who want to catch up with the older ones and ask for their help. Of course, asking a junior to do so was a very shameful request, because they should ask their teachers. However, teachers can't teach what Chang Man can give for him. It was obvious that the elder was embarrassed to ask for such a thing, but his fear that the third-generation disciples would overtake him in strength was stronger and the best choice was to ask for help. However, it did not mean that he doubted the strength of his teachers. Of course, such a request caused Chen Man's reaction to be indifferent, but he really admired the fact that the elder had set aside his pride and such, and was asking a younger comrade to teach him many techniques. But the elder was taken aback by his response. Chang Man needs to give something in return for his request, after all, he already has additional responsibilities and is not willing to waste time on second-generation fighters. The older man didn't know what to say because he thought that since they were both students of the same school, they should help each other. However, Chang Man wouldn't be able to find enough time if he didn't benefit from it. But the senior personally didn't understand the logic of Zhang Man, who is willing to train third-generation students without personal gain. But he's not going to train the second generation. He sees a contradiction here. However, this only makes Zhang Man smile at the amusingness of the situation, even he doesn't know why he's training them. He's also amused that the elder is getting angry about it, which makes him laugh because of it. And the older one is not laughing in this situation. He's now seriously trying to convince Chang Man, with an angry face, that there are rules that all disciples of the Huashan sect must follow. Then Chen Man remembers how the third generation disciples train, they train like children not seriously and get tired quickly, leaving them without energy. And he's not sure if he can teach the second generation disciples there using the same method. Chang Man tells the older man that he's barely found a way to train his own, but it will take him a long time to find his own approach to training the elders without getting punished by the head of the school. He is presented with pictures from your memories, where Ghoul destroys and wins over his enemies using his special technique that he has trained by spending thousands of hours of his honest labor. He also remembers the sincere joy of winning this tournament where everyone gave their best. Such sincerity is very rare, but brought so much happiness, you could fly to heaven. At this moment realize the whole situation directed his only to the ground, the elder decides to use his trump for Chang Man. With shame on his face, he says that every student has the opportunity to learn, and from now on he will address him as Master Yes, the end of the training. The night ahead drank him in because he wasn't entirely happy with such a proposal. He put forward his counterproposal, saying that the elder would have to call him Master before and after the training. With an indifferent face making you think he didn't care, also added that he would be his teacher for the rest of his life would teach him everything and the elder would have to obey him for the rest of his life. One could see the obvious anger on the elder's face because of such a profound proposal. It was indeed a humiliating offer from the younger one that the older one had to exhale heavily to contain his anger. Then the elder remembered the painting of that very great technique of plum blossoms, where there was splendor without rose petals. Or such a picture alone should make him decide to make such a humiliating offer. Then after thinking over the pros and cons, deciding that power and personal future were far more important than Malaya in front of Junior with a disgruntled face, 
the elder still agrees to address Chang Man as master from now on. After the elder agrees to call him master and further promises that not a single second-generation disciple will use his rank against him, a very ugly smile appears on Chang Man's face as if he's trapped a mouse in a trap. A group of third-generation students were leaving your house through the main exit, and many of them look tired and unwilling to go to training. They've been going to training for days now, but still can't get used to it. Walking out through the huge doors, their gaze fell into the direction of the group of people across the street, which caused shock on their faces if you could judge by their facial expressions. It was the group of people that left them falling into a stupor. They were their fellow second-generation students from school, and all of them stood like obedient students, steady, silent, and in a single row, preparing for the long and torturous training ahead. They had all been summoned by Changman for today, even despite it being so early in the morning. This really surprised the third-generation students who hadn't seen the elders in this courtyard for a long time. And on the face of the elders, a disgruntled mien and a harsh look is at first glance to pierce through and take revenge on Chen Man. It was very humiliating, but they still need to train to become me. The second generation disciples looked at the younger ones and couldn't say anything to his side. With this agreement, Chang Man saved the generation from conditional humiliation by the elders, which of course makes them happy. Adopting a must pose, tariff palm fist with a purposeful gaze, Chen Man was eager for the start of the long awaited training. He shouted cheerful words and teased everyone with the start of training. He began today's training with an introductory speech, telling his students that they should train very hard without eating their hands, and that they should not have time for entertainment. You could see on his face that he enjoyed training people and making them stronger. He shouted a speech about not looking for easy ways, and every training session should be full of effort. The students listened attentively to his words, and all of them agreed with his words with a chorus shouting, Yes, sir! It was evident that everyone had a spirit of collective responsibility. The eyes of the older generation turned to the right towards the younger ones. They were looking at their backs as Chen Man ordered the younger generation to show what they were capable of with their first training together with the other generation. But suddenly, a devilish smile appeared on the faces of the second generation disciples that intimidated and truly frightened the older ones. The younger ones felt pleasure at the thought that they were on the same level as the elders. Gathering the large stones into a leather sack and throwing this sack on their backs, they officially started their first training session together, rushing towards the older generation, which caused the latter to be shocked. There was poor enthusiasm from the younger ones. Then the beautiful second-generation female student personally approached Chang Man with a serious look that meant she didn't just walk up. She asked Chang Man to train her personally separately from the others, since she didn't get a date. This, of course, didn't please Chang Man as it was an extra burden on him. He accepted her request, but only on the condition that he would not spar with her. She was not surprised by this answer, because all she wanted was to learn from him personally, and sparring was not in her interests. She was a really persistent girl, which annoyed Chang Man. The attention of all the students was directed towards Chen Man after he shouted to their side to tell them one important thought. Huashan students should not set their main goal to learn that technique is only a part of training. Everyone listened to Daos, Cheng Man's words, for he was saying a very important thing that every student of the school should also remember. They must now train the foundation. In other words, they must expand the techniques they would listen to in order to create cherry blossoms. His father appeared in front of his eyes, so reminding him why he should help others. Before he didn't care at all at least about his comrades, and he was only trying to improve himself, but now he is willing to become a teacher of others. Looking into the eyes of his students, he thinks he can't do it alone, but instead of fighting alone, he must fight together with his comrades, because in the future, Huashan school will fight not just one opponent, but many. Each student in the crowd is already ready for training, and each of them is engaged in their own business. Some are socializing, and some are standing alone. Meanwhile, Chang Man hopes that each of them will learn the plum blossom technique in the future and will help him to fight for his interests. At this moment, that same scary and sinister smirk appeared on his face. After all, his plan is that through joint efforts, he will be able to unite all the Jiang Hu sects 
and the plum blossom will bloom on all the heads of the Shaolin monks. At this moment, the schoolmaster is looking at his own on the edge of one high cliff near the arena. Being in such beautiful scenery, he was watching his fellow schoolmates training. From the look on his face, it was clear that he was really happy that Chen Man had taken up the training of his friends and was trying to raise Hua Shan school to a new level. He believes that there is no danger of doubting his actions, for he is following the path of Taoism. As he sits down, he stares off into the distance thinking about the training of his students. They have made significant progress, but they are far from martial arts masters. He realizes that a heavy burden has been placed on his shoulders. After painting a picture of his students, he finally realizes what it's like to be a teacher, because a teacher is someone who guides and helps others to create one invincible family, and as a bonus to see the happiness on the faces of his students. He imagines walking with his teacher leading the way forward with his head held proudly high by a row of Huashan students. This picture is like a metaphor for the fact that Chen Man is the second teacher in this school to lead this sect. Sitting as a Taoist monk on the edge of a high cliff against the backdrop of such high mountains, he has chosen to retreat with nature, as the pillars of Taoism say, that it should not cloud his mind, that it is more important to make a considered decision in the moment. He slowly tries to create a blue plasma ball gathering all his inner energy, concentrating on this goal, and he succeeds. From this, he concludes that there is no rush, he just needs time, and from this point on he can move forward more confidently. Watching himself in his hands, he clutches it. His stern look showed that he has a clear picture of his future. He would achieve what he had set out for himself no matter what difficulties, after all, it was part of his identity. The realization of his huge peeve and future possible plans brings a genuine smile to his face. After all, he's not a plum blossom blade, after all but an ordinary Qian man who needs to become stronger as a person. Winter had come. There was a lot of snow the trees had gone into hibernation, denuding what was left of their green garb. The time of cold weather came that covered Mount Huashan, and the snow shrouded everything not alive in white. Then came spring, and from that moment, everything that had fallen asleep or died during the cold winter woke up and bloomed anew with new color in a new way. A second life was given, including the beautiful and red plum of the whole world. And so two years passed. Some guy of medium height and gray clothes climbed a very high mountain where the Hua Shan school was located. He was breathing very hard, and it was clear from his actions that he was very tired, as he had been climbing to this place for a very long time. This guy was looking up towards the sky as if this school was a reminder of his great journey upwards, which is a metaphor for success be life. In fact, in fact, his father had sent him here, and the kid hoped he'd made the right choice. He saw the great Huashan sect sign, didn't realize he'd gotten to the right place. And in these two years, the reputation of this school had only increased. This guy had come partly because after that Zhang Huashan meeting, interest in it had increased. After knocking on the main entrance, the door was opened for him and on his face was a great happiness to see the door being opened to him, was a huge chance that there would be no one here, and all his efforts would just be in vain. The main front door was opened by a brunette, and a student of this school who was dressed in a black robe, but from his facial expression it is clear that he was very surprised that someone knocked on this day, and even more so climbed so high on the mountain. The guest had nothing to say when he heard what he had to say. Before that, he said that he should have met with the head of the village, but he was told that today they do not accept guests, and he should return tomorrow. And this guest was not going to leave, and he showed the seal on his clothes that belongs to the nearby Hua Shadow sect, and he needs to meet his head very urgently, and only today. He also realizes that it's his own fault for not finding out in advance whether he can come to see you today, but is also asked to tell the head everything about what he told him. This caused the student of the school to be surprised, as Hua Shan is an annexed school. He was met by a not-so-suitable person who looked at him with a very mean smile, as if his thoughts were only tied to money and his self-interest. And here the friendliness even seemed suspicious of the guest. In front of the table sat three people, and the same old man in green clothes stood close to the guest and offered him the opportunity to borrow at a good interest. 
which immediately showed the whole nature of the old man. It was obvious that they are tied only on material things. But the head of the school interrupted the old man and asked him not to talk about it anymore, but this caused a negative reaction from the old man, because he thought he was helping his guest, and the head was acting too mature. The guest is very worried when he tells the head of the school of the nearby masters about his goals. He came with his father's request to ask for help from the school, and specifically to take the very hero of the Chunhua meeting with him. Hearing this, the head of the school was at first very surprised and did not believe his words, thinking that it is a complete madness to demand as a help Chen Men, and asked again whether this young man is sure of his words. In fact, the problem was that next to the shadowy Veliki school, Huashan opened a new martial arts academy, which was taking in many good fighters from all over the area. He had a very confused face when telling about this problem. But the problem didn't end there. His father was badly injured in the battle against the Path Academy, and it seems the conflict won't end there. This academy wants to evict the Huashan sect from the Nanyang Valley, and that's why he decided to ask you to contact them. Such words made the head of the school think for a moment. After all, the real issue is very confusing. He does not understand the motives of this academy and why it needs to interfere with other schools if it is to follow the path of Taoism. The head realizes the importance of the situation and that he really needs to help the Hua sect. However, of course, the methods of solution proposed by this young man seem rather unsuitable for the Huashan school. Master proposed to wage a war against the new academy as it was done in the past because something must be done because they can't leave it all with nothing. Huashan has gained enough power to fight back against the Udan sect. The other master also agrees with him that it's necessary to send Chen Man to the valley against the Udan sect. He thinks that Cheng Man should not just be left in the Huashan Mountains, because he is not only following the path of Taoism and should face the harsh reality. The old man inquired about what Chen Man is doing right now. It turns out he's in a secluded training program far away in the mountains. He should be finished soon, so they still have time to discuss it. The blue-haired man was called into the office to discuss with him about Chang Man's future departure. He asked with great surprise and curiosity about the details of their entire plan, because he didn't understand the whole point of what was going on. And not to believe that such a man is going to be sent so far away from the school immediately after he completes the training of the second and third generation students. But the plan is a plan and the head follows it. The blue-haired man accompanies the guest to introduce him to Chang Man at the request of the head of the school. The guest's face shows great curiosity about the person who is accompanying him because he seems to be an unusual person. He walks behind him and feels a powerful aura emanating from the blue-haired man, as if he is composed of an ocean of powerful internal force. The blue-haired man has become much stronger this time, which really amazes even the guest. Climbing up the mountainside, the two men have a dialogue about how everyone knows the name of the sect's dragon, Cheon Man. However, for the second year in a row, he has not been seen or heard about him, and that is why he is very interested in meeting him in person. Talking about the rumors around the dragon sect Huashan on the guest's face shows great joy, as if he is a real fan who talks about his idol. There are different rumors about Chang Man. Some say one thing, others say another. His face lit up with happiness when he learned about the place where the Taoist himself was training. His reaction only brought a smile. He, he bad with joy in anticipation of finally seeing the very legendary hero who trains and achieves enlightenment in this place. As the second generation elder tries to move the stone that is the door to the building, he starts shouting at the top of his voice and calling out for Chang Man, letting him know that he has visitors. The guest doesn't understand why the blue-haired man is doing this because he's never seen anything like this before. Turning his head back because of the very loud noise behind him, he saw something that caused a shocking reaction in him. He was at a loss for words because the stone that served as a door was destroyed in a second and split in half. And out of the smoke created by the stone comes the very man the Hua sect is hoping for. He emerges so mysteriously that he seems willing to do anything to achieve his goal. This is the man who will change the fate of many people. It was our protagonist who came out of this bottom for the first time in a long time of absence from Huashan school. It was obvious that he was dissatisfied that he was so disturbed by such a responsible time. And clarifying why they had summoned him and why did they need him now. 
because he shouldn't be disturbed for a while because he has very urgent matters related to physical training that he will need in the future in future battles, he asks that they quickly tell the problems they have as he doesn't want to waste time on it. When he saw the real emotions and behavior of this man, this little boy thought that he had mistaken Dao's Chung Meng, who he had imagined before in his head. He thought that this is a very humble and wise man who behaves very decently in the midst of other people. Then the third generation elder says that he should have woken him up a few days earlier because there was a problem with the Huashan Shadow School. Then our protagonist notices the little boy and sees that he is wearing clothes that confirm his elder's words that there is some problem that needs to be solved related to Huashan. Then he says that if it is a very important and key mission to solve the problems of their subordinates from other schools, then it is directly related to Huashan Main School. Then he also says that he should go to the elders first to say hello after such an absence from the main school and then solve the problem. This is all the video the boy from Huashan Shadow School and was surprised at this student's behavior regarding his elder. Then he says that they don't have much time now because it's an emergency and they have to find the shining dragon of Huashan, which they have to find in the meantime and go on their way. Then an older man says that he doesn't know what this little boy is talking about but that the man he is looking for under the name of the great dragon Huashan is this very man who came out of these stones. Then all notions of such a great hero that he believed in are completely shattered as he could not imagine that this man who looks like a bandit could be a great dragon. At this time, Chung Meng was already sitting at the table of all the masters of the financial mentors and with the head of this school and discussing about the appearance of enemies that hinder them and their allies. He then states that this is inexcusable, and they should definitely deal with this matter as it directly affects the responsibility and pride of the Huashan school they must protect their subordinates who are even far away. But in turn, his senior said that he should behave very wisely because he has such a great name and is among the masters and the head of Huashan. But he did not intend to stop. He gave an ultimatum that he must go and deal with this matter because the disciples from other hostile schools are very brazen. Then the head says that it will be so, but he has conditions that Chung Meng must not only go, and he must have an escort from the other students of this school. This condition was even pleasant for Chang Meng as he realized that he needed a few people who would just control the situation during the trip, thus providing peace of mind for him. After that, they were already leaving. But then the head of this great Huashan school asked what happened in this training and what the protagonist had achieved. Then he also replied that this person would get an answer to this question from the disciples of that school who somehow managed to attack the Huashan Shadow School. At this time, all the masters and staff were thinking about this situation. They all had doubts that this was all arranged to somehow prevent the great dragon from Huashan. The mentor was in complete agreement with this, as he realized that this person, that is, the disciple had received this great name for a reason, and all the other schools had a desire to eliminate this person. Since such a title at such a young age to receive only a genius who is born in times of tens of thousands of years, thus upsetting the balance between the schools that they just want to push and eliminate. But in Huashan, this great man has another nickname. This is Mad Dog Huashan, which gave his elders and his generation in the form of his true instincts and manners. At this time in the dining hall, everyone was eating. This was the morning breakfast in which everyone was some unusual because they were behaving very strangely just today. Most likely it all has to do with Chung Meng. At this time, this disciple who asked for help to see a very strange price in front of his eyes that some person who got such a great nickname is behaving very inappropriately. And at the same time, everyone else had good table manners that they were overdoing. And in comparison to them, and our main character stood out very much in front of this boy's eyes. Another thing that was noticeable was that everyone was unhappy that the third-generation elders had somehow dragged this monster out of their lair, thus disturbing their peaceful lives. But then after our protagonist left after eating very well, he asked why everyone was acting very strange when this person was with them. Because it was obvious that after he left, everyone was very relaxed, and while Chang Meng was eating, everyone was tense and couldn't even eat properly. Then he also says that it is a very strange topic in which you can't tell others because it is a very long and forbidden conversation. It was already the next morning and everyone was gathering in the main training pavilion to go on the road to save the school. 
Then the same boy you mark very strong and his second idol after the great dragon second generation disciple Bek Chun, who was called by the righteous Baal Hua Shan. He saw that from this person emanates a very noble aura that he meets for the first time and was admired by this person. And at this time, the elders of the second generation welcomed his teammate for the elders' team. At this time, the younger one asked how the elders had slept during the night yesterday. That in turn says that he is mocking that he is still this monster from his training area, thus providing him with training and sleepless nights. When as this little person greeted everyone, it was noticeable that someone very strongly appeared behind her, and her aura very strongly encompassed in all, even the older second generation. She was a beautiful girl, and only then did this boy realize that he was about to meet one of the strongest warriors of the time called Huashan's sister Yu by her disciples. But this calm atmosphere was interrupted by some person because it was obvious that everyone stood in a stupor and felt a very strong aura emanating from Chen Meng. At that time, our notable protagonist appeared and greeted everyone and was happy that they had become and were already packed for this trip. But everyone was not happy that this man had confused them very much yesterday, thus they were tired. And at this time he came out at the very last. But at the same time they had already greeted their head who came out seeing that all were already assembled and gave orders that they were already going on this journey. They were very grateful that the head himself had given the order and said that they would surely fulfill the words and promises of the head and thus fulfill this difficult task. Then they set out on this long journey in the strongest warriors who could turn mountains if they wanted to and were ready in any battle they would face in the future. At this time, they were already in the city in which they had to gather the provinces for such a long journey as they would have to be on the road for several days. And at this time, our protagonist shows them a very interesting tool. Everyone was paying attention to the fact that such a thing is in the possession of Cheng Meng. Then they see that this thing is very, very expensive because it was a wagon that already had horses in it, which is very useful for everyone's life because they won't have to walk the whole time. At this time, they had a conversation about what they would do if the schools that threaten in Huashan school since they behaved very indecently. Then the second generation elders ask why they are so insistent that they leave their places and threaten them with blood. Then the boy says that his father was very fanatical about the Huashan school, as he always believed that this school would revive and become better and would rebuild and was glorious. He does not know why this school is threatening them, most likely. It is because they were so loyal, and another reason is that they are very close and they want to just cut off contact and force them to join them. He also says that his father resisted, let's fight back even the elders from the other school, but somehow the other school was able to win his father's strength, while even his father was not the weakest of Huashan. Then Cheng Meng thinks that this is really true, because the elder from the other school were getting stronger and stronger, and because every year they are honing their skills and eventually becoming monsters. Hearing all this talk, he was very indebted and said that he would definitely punish those students from other schools because they somehow dared to threaten them. He would grind them to a halt and simply destroy this story, and they would regret even looking at the Huashan places. At this time, the Huashan Shadow School had a situation going on, and it was generally bad because this boy's father was very sick, and it was very bad for him to even stay on his bed. At this time, his subordinate was telling the master to just agree to the conditions of the masters from the other school and just join them. Then they will not be able to somehow get out of this one. He says that if the same continues, his condition will worsen even more, then already death will be closer than life. Looking at his master, he thinks that this man is very great, and even because even such a moment he does not give up and believes his Huashan that she will help such a school. At this time, to the main gate of this school already approached, not expected guests that they wanted to meet in their lives. These were the very people who threatened them to just give up their possessions, and then they would be fine. Everything was under control until this man arrived. He was the second strongest of the second generation. And when the master saw this man, he said that they should come at least every other day so that they would have time to think. But at this time they said that they have already little time and they can only give six hours. After that, they will have to do it all with effort. Then also the strongest second generation of the school, Duan, orders them to solve and all this in a short time because his time is not worth theirs. 
They have another condition that they must change the signboard at their main gate to the signboard at Duan School, and then just burn the past signboard that is associated with Huashan. Only then can they mend their relationship, and then they will be free like a bird in the sky. But on this master was totally disagree because he was sure of his statement, and totally disagreed with such a condition of the contract. Then this disciple says that if they do not want to cooperate and even to come to a truce, they have no other choice, and they will return with different conditions in six hours. At this time, other people arrived in this place who were very secretive and could not be seen through this hat and clothes. But it was seen that they were very bold as they just pushed the students out of this school because they were blocking the road. Then one of them says that he arrived at this school and that everyone should just go away without disturbing them to deal with the bodies. The disciple was surprised that the other people were very confident, because they even if they didn't know if they didn't even recognize him, how could they act like this disciples of great Duane? But at this time, Hua Shan's disciples were just speculating about what would happen and what they would do in this school. Then the son of this master says that he brought the great disciples and the Hua Shan school to somehow help solve this problem. Then everyone notices the emblem that associates the Hua Shan school and sees that they have actually come from a distant land. Then the eldest of the second generation, Beck Chun, welcomes all the disciples and masters of this shadow school, saying that they have come to help them.